Hello, good morning and welcome to Kit Plus TV where we count down to NAB 2023. I'm Simon Tillier and I'm joined by Matt Robbins. Hi, it's, yeah, it's that time of year again where we head off to Las Vegas for our annual pilgrimage to the NAB show. Uh, and today we're going to be speaking to a whole host of uh, exhibitors and visitors and uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Absolutely. And you may be joining us on NAB Amplify. Uh, welcome. Or you may be watching this on our own YouTube channel or even on our brand new website, kitplus.com. Wherever you're watching, whatever time it is, you're very welcome. And we're going to be here for the whole day. And uh, something very special. We've got a got additional a chair. Yeah. We've got another chair. We've got a red chair. We've got a red chair. Shall we, uh, shall we see, see who we've got? Who's in the red chair? <laughs> Neil Nixon, All NAB. Right. Great to see you, Neil. Great to be here. Thanks, guys. Good morning. So we're looking forward to the day. Uh, you're going to be here all day. Um, yes. Nipping in and out of our chair where we've got other people coming in and out. Um, Tell us, tell us what you're doing here. That would be a good start. <laughs> that would be a great start. So, yeah, yeah, I'm, um, I'm here representing NAB Show. Um, I effectively, with my colleague Ben Gill, we effectively run NAB Show's European operations. So, right. uh, yeah, I'm their spokesperson for today, although we do have some... Uh, for, for some senior guests from NAB show joining us later on in the day, I know. Look forward yeah. and we can, we can challenge them with some uh, uh, awkward questions. I'm yeah. sure you will. <laughs> so we were, we were talking off air a second ago. It's the 100th centenary of NAB and we, yeah. we couldn't fathom that. Did it happen in 1923? I guess it did. <laughs> this is the 100th year, the centenary celebration. There's loads going on to celebrate that this year and, uh, you know, parties and various events and conferences. So, uh, yeah, really looking forward to it. It's I, important to say, actually, as well, isn't it, that NAB isn't only, we think of it as television because of where we've come from. But it's, broad, it's broadcast, it's radio, it's, you know, it's a big... Absolutely. Big yeah. yeah, it's the whole it's the whole gamut: cinema, whole whole radio, yeah. TV, yeah, yeah. And, and streaming and everything in between. So, yeah. uh, I guess back in a hundred years ago, it was possibly more radio focused than it will be today. Quite yeah. Possibly. So, when does it all kick off now? So, the show floor opens Sunday, the sixteenth of April, runs through Wednesday, the nineteenth of April. So, okay. uh, yeah. So, for people that haven't been for a while, the, the whole Sunday thing was a new shift that started last year, wasn't it? That's correct. Yeah, they, that was something we piloted last year, really to attract the community from the West Coast uh, okay. studios uh, to give them an opportunity to travel on a non-work day. Uh, it's proved to be very successful, so it's being repeated again this yeah. year. And a new hall as well. Well, not a new hall. It's in. The West Hall was the New West to Hall. a lot of people. It was new last yeah, year. Yeah, new last year, but back in the West Hall again this year, slightly uh, bigger space taken in there this year. Um, it's going to be a real buzz in there. So, yes, we're, we're operating, as previously last year, across Central, North and West Halls. Yeah, there was a good buzz in there last year, but uh, it's, it's grown, has it, as a... As a it's grown and, I mean, we were in there last year. We would, I've previously been running Connected Media IP and Future of Delivery mm. at NAB yeah. show actually for the last 10 years. So, uh, and last year we were in West Hall. That's where you've uh, been. That's yeah. where I've been. Yeah. Uh, and it was really, uh, it was, there was a really good buzz in there. Uh, but this year there's a load of content in there. Um, and, and, a, and a lot more exhibitors. It's going to be fantastic. And with the loop, it's actually quite, cause it's, it's quite a walk. Well, for those of us that, you know, that aren't used to those uh, American distances. <laughs> but uh, uh, but the, the, the loop makes it really quite easy. The loop makes it good, yeah. Um, it's worth saying the loop's a Tesla loop, isn't it? You, oh, yes. Yeah, you get yeah. in a autonomous car that has a driver. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it, it's, it, I think it went through various iterations. It was going to be a, a tube, and then it was a, car, a driverless cars, right. and now we've got uh, Teslas with drivers in. But the, the main point is that it makes it very easy yeah, to get yeah, around yeah. The, the, the whole yeah. uh, venue. Yeah. So back to technology, what are the hot topics that people can, can look forward to this year? I guess, you know, the topics you would expect. AI is huge, mm. obviously impacting broadcast. 5G is huge. I mean, we've seen that at other shows as well. Um, sustainability is a big, big topic Massive this topic. year. Yeah. Um, and, and NAB have actually launched some sustainability awards to, to celebrate all the effort that's going on in that uh, area. So I think those are going to be the key things. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, it, 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 that will be evident across all the uh, theatres and all the and all the exhibit spaces, no doubt. Yeah, and what um, shows normally have feature, don't they? What what new uh, new features have you got coming this year? 
OK, I may have to refer to some notes yeah. for that one. I, but, I, I uh, think we're all going to be doing that. Yeah. Then, yeah. I, I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> Mainly yeah. because NAB, you know, one of the great things about NAB show is that it refreshes itself every year. Mm. So it adds so many new uh, features. But this year we have uh, Cine Central, uh, okay. which is a new uh, focus in the Central Hall, as the name probably suggests. We have the Post-Production World Conference. We have programming everywhere. Um, there's other things. There's there's lots of uh, uh, workshops and things like that going on as well. So there's some experiential zones, did I hear? The experiential zones are, are a, no, a development of last year. Uh, right. so, yeah, there are four experiential zones. Uh, three of them are in the West Hall, and then the other one is split across North and Central. Cool. But they are, I'm, I think we're going to go into those pro probably a bit later, but yeah. in a nutshell, they are the, the connect, the create, the capitalise and the intelligent content zones. Mm. And each of those hosts a couple of theatres yeah. uh, and various other attractions. Yeah. And in terms of the, the visitors you get, what sort of international appeal has NAB got these days? It's very much a global show, and, and this year the pre-reg is showing a really strong uh, return of international visitors, mm. because obviously that was hit course, uh, yeah, with yeah. the pandemic. Um, but so far, I believe we have registrations from 155 different countries. Um, we have 50 international delegations coming. Mm. Um, right. We also have the, uh, the international pavilions, which... Mm. Uh, also help attract, uh, you know, both visitors and exhibitors. Yeah. And exhibitor numbers, is that, you know, again, it, it did suffer uh, uh, last year a little bit. Of course, some people had their roll the rollover from whatever they put before the pandemic. Um, but, uh, but there is a buzz. There is, you know, people are interested in getting back to shows. So exhibitor numbers are back up there? Exhibitor numbers are really back up. Um, I think the uh, the sales team have, have uh, you know done a fantastic job in making yeah. sure that uh, you know there's a real a lot for people there's to see. There's a reason to go. Yeah, yeah. I believe we're at pl over 1,200 exhibitors again. Mm. Um, so, you know, which is a fantastic number, um, and yeah, should should ensure a real buzz during the during the four days. And hopefully, yeah. some some announcements. It's, it's, it was always something to look forward to at shows, wasn't it? When you, you yeah, know. I think over the last couple. Of years, people have almost done continuous announcements, haven't they? Whereas historically, it was IBC, NAB, they'd make the big announcements. So, but yeah, as yeah, you say, so hopefully it'll, good, it'll uh, come back as you know, there'll be, there'll be, yeah, I, I think there will. So. And I mean, I've, I'm fortunate to have had some insight into what some of the conference sessions are going to be, and mm. uh, a number of those are being used for, for product and technology launches. So, mm. I think we can yeah, expect yeah. that, yeah, absolutely. So, generally, great to be back, really. Fantastic to be back. And you've got, you, I mean, you've arranged some people to, uh, arranged us, but probably a bit, that, um, uh, not quite the right thing to say, but you've got some people coming in to chat to you today. Yeah. Who, who are you going to be talking to? What, what kind of people? Well, I, I, I'm really looking uh, at some of the international visitors, um, yeah. you know, trying to understand, uh, uh, you know, what, why they go and what the appeal is. Yeah. Um, so we've got um, Morwen Williams from the BBC. I believe she's going to yeah. be my first guest yeah, today. She's coming on in literally about 25 minutes. Yeah, so it'd be fantastic to have her with us. Um, and then, as I said early, earlier, we uh, we end the day with uh, Eric Trab and Chris Brown, uh, yeah. two of the you know senior execs from NAB shows. So it'd be great to get their insight into uh, what's going on this year too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Well, we look forward to... Uh, to a busy day. Yeah, well, we've got our first guest lined up already. So uh, we, 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 we've got over 100 guests coming in throughout the day. If you scroll down on the YouTube description, you'll be able to see the timeline um, and when we expect all the people to arrive. There's going to be some differences. It always happens, but we can do our best. So we're delighted to welcome someone well, that you spoke to. Uh, absolutely, um, Ivy. In Barcelona. Show in Barcelona. Ivy Lee from... Well, telecam. Telecam. Hi, Ivy. How are you doing? Morning, Ivy. Hi, Simon. Hi, Matt. I'm doing pretty well. How are you? Well, at the moment, we're OK. Let's, <laughs> let's you know, come back to us in a few hours and we'll, 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 we'll have a different, uh, <laughs> a different line. No, no, it'll be good. <laughs> so um, you're our first guest. Welcome. Yeah. And uh, uh, you've, you've, well, really, you've got five minutes to tell us everything that you're going to be showing at, uh, at, at, at NAB show. Off you go, Ivy. The floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so this year in the NAB, uh, we are upgrading new features for our Vision Plus series, including the 4K NN and 3, which is our 4K 60p PTZ and NDI HX3 PTZ. 
new features including auto tracking, 3D, and the upcoming 12G SDI gen lock. Uh, as you may remember, um, we showcased the better version of the auto tracking firmware in the ISE show not long ago. Mm -hmm. And now it's also supported by our 4K60 PDZ camera. So during the show, we actually gained a lot of feedbacks from the uh, customers or visitors, and we really appreciate that. So we added some great customized features. For example, okay. you can uh, you can adjust the subject size showing on the screen during the tracking from the 1.6 to 1.20s full body. And also you can keep the subject in a certain area of the screen. So when you use the auto tracking feature in the stage with, uh, let's say, a virtual whiteboard or LED screen or furniture and decoration that you don't want the subject stand behind of anything and you can keep them in the left in the middle or in the right and also uh, you are able to set up the pt limitation for the tracking well uh, when you need to switch the tracking target you can do it from the remote controller or the web ui and you can see the tracking person is in the highlight frame via the hdmi output and uh, press the left or right button to easily switch who you want to track and that won't show via the IP or NDI output. So it doesn't affect the live stream. And the built-in auto tracking does not need any uh, external software or assigned gesture to trigger it. So okay. only one click to enable it. So it's very ideal for churches or universities when there's no professional cameraman. So this is the customized uh, uh, features that we did, we added on according to the feedbacks. And the next one is the 3D that's going to be added to the Vision Plus series. We know 3D is a protocol to exchange the PTZ cameras tracking data so that they can be used together with the third party VR or AR platforms seamlessly. And 3D is now supported by many uh, popular hardware or software systems like VizRT, Virtual Studio, Brainstorm, Zero Density, and many more. And uh, Telecam's Vision Plus 4K and is now built in with 3D, which can send the PT, uh, PTZF data to the VR and AR systems uh, through the VSCA over IP. So we are really looking forward to bringing the demo units to the NAB show. And uh, the last one is a sneak peek to the upcoming new feature. Uh, it is the 12G SDI gen lock that's going to be added. So upgrading from 3G SDI to 12G SDI enables our cameras to output the 4K 60p via the traditional SDI interface. We know 12G SDI is widely used in the broadcast studios. So this makes GenLog a very much wanted demand for broadcasters when they have multiple cameras or switches on site and they need to synchronize the various video sources. And the yes. GenLog will be the way to enable each video signals to be precisely frequency locked. So actually for us, GenLog is not a new feature. We actually produced and sold cameras with GenLog, but but uh, with 3G SDI. So now we just need to yeah. adjust the hardware design to enable the 12G SDI output interface and GenLock will be easily added. So uh, auto tracking, 3D and 12G SDI GenLock. These are the features we are going to bring to the NAB and after NAB. And uh, where, where are you in the show? What Do you know where, where, what your stand number is? Yeah, I don't know. It's C four five four five. Central Hall in the four Central five, Hall. Four five. Is it? Is this your? Is this your first yes. uh, NAB? Yes. This is going to be your quite first. Excited. So excited. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. And just before you, you go, Ivy, is everything that you're showing at uh, NAB, is that all shipping now or is there some lead time there? Uh, for the auto tracking and 3D, we will launch it on the NAB, but for 12GSDI, because of the supply chain issue, 
that might be delayed to the IBC. Cool. Fantastic. So people can find you Central Hall 4545. Four, five, five. Five. Really. Now, we're actually going to be passing by your booth as well to have an in-depth chat as well. So um, we're really looking forward to seeing yeah. you in Las Vegas, Ivy. Thank you. Thanks very much indeed. We're looking forward to seeing you. Yeah. Safe travels. Thank you. Have Take a care, nice day. See you there. Bye-bye. And I think we're already we've got our next guest already coming up. We're running, running think, behind think, already. Well, we're only a few seconds <laughs> yeah, behind. We'll soon yeah. catch up. Go so ahead. our next guest, our next guest is uh, Pellington from Pellington, Net, yeah. Insights, Net Insights, who Insight. we're going to be chatting to. Um, yeah. As I say, we've we've got uh, well 99 guests left now to chat well, to today. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we're going to yeah. get through them at least 99. <laughs> um, and I think Perry's ah, ready now. There we go. Hello, Per. Hello. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Good to be here. It's great. Yeah, we <laughs> spoke to you before about uh, about your partnership with Tata, I think, and, uh, and and demos you were doing on the stand. So, uh, well, NAB Show 2023, what can we expect to see? I'm again, I think definitely going to be exciting NAB this year. Uh, we will be at the West Hall and we will be demonstrating you can say, a full breadth of our video transport solutions from cloud native cloud uh, and internet contribution transport into full 100 gig IP SD 2110, you know, tier one remote production workflows. Uh, one of the demos we will demonstrating is really bringing these worlds together. It's been very much two, two different workflows, but we will use our JPEG access uh, streaming SD21 uh, video uh, over TRO7 directly into live cloud, uh, where we will also showcase transcoding between JPEG access and MPEG streams. Uh, so this is a cool way to, to combine these, uh, these worlds, you can say. Um, we also will be showcasing I think two major themes. Uh, one is about IP media security uh, and our trust boundary solutions. The other is uh, around orchestration and to be able to simplify the workflows for IP media. And we, we're also launching, we actually launched today, uh, a partnership, taking the next step, you can say in our partnership with Skyline Data Miner, uh, both for our cloud-based uh, workflows with Nimbra Edge and, and in our IP media gateways. Uh, so th those are interesting, but uh, also I think we have two really interesting partner uh, demonstration that we're going to show live. Uh, one is with, with MediaKind. We're going to do really glass-to-glass -glass live demo. Uh, we have integrated our cloud-native Nimbra Edge platform with our uh, encoders. So we're going to bring uh, directly uh, from the from the booths, uh, uh, live streaming from the media kind encoders into our cloud transport, uh, and then uh, into a Trellio uh, cloud production instance in AWS, back to the branch into the media kind uh, virtualized uh, cloud play out, and then that streaming directly into mobile devices in in both our booths. Uh, so that's, that's really going to show the glass-to-glass -glass, uh, cloud production from contribution production and, and distribution. And then actually with Tata, we will also <laughs> show a really cool demo. Uh, we're going to do um, in the Tata booth uh, demonstration with Moses, uh, okay. the, you know, uh, showcasing what I would say really next generation of remote production for tier one sports uh, events. Um, so I, I would call it remote production 3.0. Um, I don't we'll talk more, probably going to see more about that. Uh, but I, you know, I encourage everyone to come over to Tata Bofta and watch it because it's pretty cool. Sounds yeah. like a busy year. Yeah, we're, we're chatting to Moses a bit later on as well, so we can get and some media more in, kind in a minute, I think. I mean, kind. I so just in a nutshell, why is NAB show so important to Net Insight there? I think it's definitely, you know, our 
probably biggest together with IBC, our biggest shows, uh, you know, and, and I think especially now after, after COVID uh, to get together and meet everyone, both partners and, and customers and, and be able to talk again, not just online like this, but actually meet face to face, I think is great. And then, then I think the conferences in, at NAB, uh, I think especially this year uh, gonna be great. And what I hear from friends in the industry, I think it's gonna be well attended this year. Yeah. And are you are you expecting to see any major trends that are going to come out of NAB going forward? I, I think definitely, you know, cloud. I think the trends we've been seeing after after COVID, when it comes to moving into cloud and moving to IP, is that, that's just going to continue. And we're going to see a lot about the twenty one ten workflows and cloud production workflows. Uh, and I think what, what we're showcasing in our demos just highlights that. But uh, I think that security also going to be a theme this year, mm -hmm. definitely moving to IP to have that trust boundary capabilities when moving between different IP domains in the studio into the service provider domain and, and back into uh, cloud and, and, and studio is going to be very important. Uh, but I hope to see a lot of cool demos as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Where can we find you at the show? We will be at the West Hall. In the West. Um, yeah. So, uh, so definitely come there. But also, as I said, visit our partners with uh, with MediaKind and uh, and Tada because we're gonna have some cool demos there as well. Yeah, you're on West Hall one seven two five. I have written down here. Correct. Thanks. Yes. And have you just before you go? Have you got any top tips for anybody new to NAB? Uh, what they can do once the show doors have closed. Where can we uh, find you well, in the evenings, Pear? <laughs> that's the nice thing with NIB, right? It's in Vegas, so there's a lot of things to do. You, you can you, know, <laughs> you can eat, eat uh, and dance and have a really good time. And just move around in the strip or go out uh, outside in the old Las Vegas. It's also very nice, actually. It's cool. Excellent. Pear, Great. thank you very much. We're looking forward to seeing you in Las Vegas. Safe travels, and I hope you have a really successful show. Thank you. Yeah, looking forward to be there. Good See to talk to you. Fantastic. Thank you, Pet. Thank you, Pet. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So uh, the conveyor belt continues. Is, are got, they, are they I, I, think, I don't know. I think, do we have Sanjay, John? We're just lining Sanjay out. So behind the scenes, we have John Pratt here, who he always looks after our streaming needs, looks after many other needs as well. Um, yep. And John and Beth are behind the scenes doing everything ah. that they've got to do. And there we, go. we have Sanjay, Sanjay from Planetcast International joined us. Hi, Sanjay. Uh, Simon, hi, correction. This is Venu here. Oh, uh, it's Venu. Yeah, I, well, I was going to say, we, we, we spoke to... Oh, we've got another one, yes. Last time, didn't we? We spoke last year. Yes. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> uh, My I've apologies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so Planet Card, welcome, welcome. You know, you're one of our early ones. So we're still warming up. Excuse us for that. But uh, NAB 2023, NAB Show 2023. What can we expect to see from Planet Cast? Ah, um, Planetcast will be there, um, in, you know, in full strength to uh, showcase our uh, range of distribution solutions. Uh, we've we've had a very interesting year. Uh, you know, we've had a fresh infusion of leadership. Uh, Sanjay has uh, come on board as our yeah. CEO now. He, Sanjay has been with the organization for a long time, but uh, him running affairs uh, is really the uh, you know catalyst for a. Uh, massive change in the way we are doing our uh, business. Uh, we um, are going to foray heavily into the uh, into international markets uh, with our cloud and SaaS based solutions. We also recently um, completed an acquisition of uh, a, an Indian, uh, what you could call it, a content supply chain specialist okay. called Desinova. Um, and we will be showcasing uh, our integrated solutions with the Desinova content suite. Essentially, it's a cloud-native uh, platform that lets you, uh, you could call it a MAM that has a tremendous versatility on the uh, content processing side uh, for all kinds of post-production function, and it works, uh, fits hand-in-glove with our MAM. That's a very play-out-skewed MAM uh, to kind of embrace the complete value chain and give content owners a uh, single window of operation. So that's something we'd love to be showcasing. We're also going to be showcasing our uh, partners, uh, Switch TV uh, and their OTT platform end-to-end. -end. 
once again, a full spectrum end to end OTT solution for a lot of our media customers who have been, uh, you know, uh, who are looking for new ways to monetize. So, yes, we look forward to a really exciting time at uh, NAB this time. Yeah. And the NAB show, I mean, you know, again, uh, I, I, Simon's asked this once the importance of NAB show to, to an international company like yourself, it, 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 it's got to be a big event for you. Oh, absolutely, yes. Uh, it is a huge event for us, mainly because uh, we've been doing a, a tremendous amount of, uh, you know, uh, elaborate work and very complex, challenging work in this side of the world. Um, and we would like to showcase that for uh, companies in the U.S. Um, and, you know, re uh, close by areas, uh, mm -hmm. proximal areas. And it's a fantastic window for us to meet not only and showcase our work, but also get a sense of what the market requirement is and where the mode's at. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And um, as we touched on uh, earlier on, you've just appointed a new CEO. How, how is that going to affect your your expansion plans? Uh, sorry, I, could you come again? Uh, what exactly would, uh, uh, the, are you referring to? The appointment of the new CEO um, oh. and, and how that oh. affects the expansion plans. Uh, Sanjay's uh, uh, okay. That it's expected to affect affect it in a dramatic way in being able to drive us forward. Uh, our mandate under Sanjay is very very clear. Uh, you know, globalization for us and to kind of uh, integrate our uh, sort of suite of products that we have uh, brought together to be able to solve customer end problems. So everything from post production to uh, you know um, play outs to post production to uh, OTT to fast um, has to be kind of aligned in a way that it addresses market requirements and customer uh, you know problems. So that's something that we are hoping to do under Sanjay's leadership. Fantastic. And where can people find you at NAB, Vinny? Oh, yeah. Uh, we are at W1647 uh, the West at Hall. NAB. Yeah. Uh, we will be happy to share our coordinates. I think Nick will uh, pass those on as well. And uh, yeah, I mean, come by and do look us up. Uh, we have a couple of demonstrations set up for both, um, you know, uh, the MAM uh, solution that we were talking about, the content supply chain management and ODT as well. So look forward to seeing everyone there. Fantastic. Thank you very much really? indeed. Thanks Good to me. see you. And yeah, hope you have a great show. We we'll look forward to seeing you in Las Vegas. Thank you, Simon. Thank you. Same here. Bye bye. Bye bye. And we've got our friend Ronan is he, from, is he, is from he, Live View. I think um, already here. I'm always nervous at this point that no one's turning up on time. But I think go. it's us uh, overrunning that's probably from, the case, yeah, yeah, it helps. So yeah. we're just finding uh, Ronan Artman from Live View, who no doubt Live is View, going to be talking to about well, the latest. Well, at, at every show, um, and they always make the effort to get to NAB show. Ah, here yeah. he is. Ronan, good morning. Good morning, folks. How are you doing there? Yeah, we're very good. Good to see you. Very good. Good to see you as well. Well, it's, it's uh, yeah. So let's get straight to the, the point. What are you showcasing this year at NAB? Well, um, this year is a special one, I mean, uh, as always. Uh, we're going to showcasing our hybrid cloud-based solution. Um, we're going to present um, the entire production workflow from contribution to production and distribution uh, over our uh, proprietary uh, reliable transport protocol, which is the LRT. And then yeah. the importance being in that is that we're really boosting efficiency in live production, uh, meeting the increased demand for quality content, and optimizing the monetization of content assets, and and that's 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 we are there. Um, we're going to showcase our leading five G field unit solutions and our cloud based solutions, mainly uh, Live View Ingest and Live View Matrix, which is our distribution platform. Um, and we're going to show also our production approach, uh, leveraging LRT across the entire workflow, uh, together with Easy Live, uh, the live streaming cloud production solution that we acquired. Uh, last year, so um, kind of uh, in a very, very high level. Also, important one to note that we just announced yesterday that we joined the uh, AWS Partner uh, Network. And, uh, we will demonstrate our live workflow uh, utilizing the LiveView solution over AWS private network. So this is a, a brand new hot from the oven. And there are additional uh, announcements that we are going to make in the following days before the show, um, so stay tuned. 
Stay tuned. So how's the take up been of the Easy Live, uh, Easy Live IO uh, solution, that cloud production solution, if you like? Has, has it been a, yeah, has it, have people taken to it? First of all, I think yes. I mean, that, that was the reason that we actually acquired the company. I mean, we felt that there is a, a growing need uh, with the remote production approach that we've seen in the last two years taking a really, um, a really big step forward. I think that cloud production is yet another thing that we've seen an, an increase in that. I think over the past year, what we've been doing is actually uh, integrated uh, easy life into our workflow and I think if you if you come to our booth on uh, the North Hall you'll be seeing just that a demonstration of the entire workflow together with easy live over LRT uh, and we believe that again the live is not just a contribution company any longer it's a contribution production and distribution so uh, I think the workflow, uh, Easy Life, is definitely a, an important part in the overall one. Um, not necessarily uh, what we call the primary one, but we definitely see a growing increase of customers uh, in the digital in the digital domain in the digital workflow to actually adopting uh, the, the Easy Life approach and and moving into a full suite of cloud production. And, yeah. and we're really glad to see that uh, see that coming. Uh, and we'll showcase that in the show. If, it, if there's one thing, uh, Ronan, that people passing by need to see, what would be the one thing that you tell them to stop by and see? So I think mainly, I, I think it's 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 the, the our, our approach to cloud solution. I think that that LiveView has been uh, and, and still is, you know, the leading backpack company. But we want to make sure that people understand that we are no longer just a backpack company. We have a full set of solutions. Over also, we will be showcasing our full set of solution going over private five G networks and to showcase how we're treating a video that coming from the field, how we're adding meta tagging into that, how we're really having a complete solution for the ingest, and more importantly, also the distribution part, which is a live view matrix. So really the uh, the complete hybrid solution, our, our approach to, to uh, I can say it, to the end-to-end -to -end, uh, uh, live video transport, I think that that's something that people will come to our booth and, 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 see, and, and see just that. Yeah, and where can people find you? In the halls, Ronan. You're in North Hall, aren't you? Oh, we are in the North Hall. Yes, North. yes. Sir. I thought he was going to say something like Formula One car or, or some, some stuff. Oh, no. No, no, not this time. <laughs> not, not this time around. Oh. Yeah, but but uh, stay tuned. We have some some nice surprises coming into our show. And uh, we welcome welcome uh, we'll visitor customers, yeah. everyone who comes to the show. Absolutely. Yeah. We will be spending some time on the live view stand. So it's, yeah. it's North Hall 3058 where people need to head and see Ronan and the team. Ron, thank you very much indeed. Safe travel. Thank you very much, guys. See and, you. See you, um, and see you in uh, two weeks. See you on yeah. the other side. Fantastic. Yeah. Cheers. So we're going to widen the shot now, John. We're going to have uh, Neil. Yeah. You've got a special guest coming in, Neil. I have indeed, yeah. Really pleased that uh, Morwen Williams, who's the UK operations director for BBC News, is joining us. Fantastic. Brilliant. The floor is yours. <coughs> the floor is yours. Let's hope Morwen's ready. Here she is. Hi, Morwen. <laughs> Good morning, Morwen. Good morning. It's great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, you're the first person who's joining us today as a visitor rather than exib an exhibitor. So uh, that's rather exciting and uh, gives yeah. us a different line of questioning. So, uh, you know, you're, you're a major UK broadcaster traveling all the way to Las Vegas. What's, what's the appeal of the show for you? I mean, I think it's a key stage for both exhibitors and broadcasters to come together to talk about where we want to go next. It's direction of travel. Uh, and for me, it's for looking for uh, potential solutions to uh, uh, issues I might have, but it's also looking for the things I don't know. That's the, that's the most exciting thing about a show like, like NAB. Uh, it's, it's finding out if we did that and if we put that together, what could that achieve for us? And it's that inspiration that it drives. It, it, it's always great to meet up with uh, suppliers and exhibitors and people we already know, and we can iterate things that we are already doing. But that element of, I didn't know that, I could do something with that, is one of the most exciting uh, for me. Yeah, I think it's that um, 
you know, not knowing who you might meet, not knowing what you might see that makes the whole uh, event so exciting, isn't it? Do you yeah. have any particular technological challenges that you're looking to uh, go and solve this year? Um, it's all it's, for, for me. I'm, I'm uh, head of news operations uh, for the BBC, and that's uh, both studios and the teams that go out uh, and uh, for the contribution. So news gathering teams. So it's always about anything we can do in that news gathering space about contribution. So cameras, uh, any live connectivity, uh, anything we can do in that space, but also uh, about where the uh, the future of studios are going uh, and IP. Uh, clearly, that's very established now. But what more we can do uh, in that space um, to be fleet of foot, uh, and be first and be really flexible. I think the pandemic showed us we need to be flexible. We can't always do everything on prem. Uh, and the more that we can do remotely gives us that uh, that flexibility to be able to broadcast. Uh, and, and in something like the pandemic, that's what we had to keep on doing for our audiences, because obviously they were really uh, uh, needed our news updates on something like that. So hopefully we've moved on from the pandemic. But some of the lessons learned about being remote, being fleet of foot, we're really keen to do more, more with and learn from. Well, I'm sure the show floor will uh, will 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 offer you a lot to, to look at, as will the conferences. Are you, do you think you'll have time to visit some of the sessions during the show? Uh, I hope so. Uh, not sure at the moment. It's it's quite. A, I'm not there for the for all of the the, the show. I have to leave a day early, but uh, so I'm hoping to get to some of them. Uh, it just depends on timings, really. Yes, it looks like a really good agenda. Excellent. Well, I hope uh, you have time to enjoy Vegas as well while you're there. Um, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a, a real, real pleasure talking to you and we look forward to bumping into you uh, for one of those unexpected meetings at the show this year. Brilliant. Look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's, that's the amazing thing about shows in general, isn't it? It's, as Maureen said perfectly, then, it's not what you know, it's what you don't know. And it's not, you know, well, it's who, also you're who you're going to bump into. Yeah, yeah. You don't realise coming yeah, out yeah. and bumping into Bill that you haven't seen in 10 years that's doing something different. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. that's the power of, of events, isn't it? You know, it's, yeah. it's those uh, those yeah. connections you make that you didn't even know you, you needed or didn't know you were going to make, but lead to something yeah. incredible. Yeah. And that's yeah. great. And, they, so. and those staff on exhibitor stands, you think, oh, I didn't know you worked there because you worked there last year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's <laughs> it. It's a pretty fluid industry, it isn't is, it? As yeah. we all know. People so. don't move out of it. They just move across. <laughs> exactly. <they>? Sometimes. Exactly. <laughs> so we are we're waiting for our uh, next guest to come in, I think. So we just, uh, he, he, he is coming from Australia, so I guess we can figure him. He's got a long way to come. He has got a way to come. Oh, right. so, um, <laughs> he hasn't forgotten. So, yeah, we're going to be chatting to Mark Clemenson from uh, Miller Support. Um, Miller Tripods? Would you Miller say? Tripods. Miller, Miller Tripods. Miller Tripods. Miller Tripods. Miller Tripods. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, so we're just waiting for, for Mark to patch through. But yeah, um, the, 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 I mean, this is it. We travel a long way. And we, I mean, obviously, we've joked about it in, 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 in the past that everyone from the. the uh, where we are in the UK in Thames Valley, which is all this manufacturing and all this sort of broadcast mm. uh, sort of uh, industry going on here. And we all travel thousands of miles to various parts. Corners just to get that just meeting, just yeah. To get that meeting. Yeah, yeah. But so, yeah, that's the funny side of it, if you like. Uh, slightly comical and slightly unnecessary. But you know what? It, it makes it worthwhile when you travel all that way and you bump into somebody that you... You know, you didn't know you were going to see. Yeah. So we've got. Um, it's worth probably worth mentioning. Uh, we can be chatting to guests all day, aren't we? But we've also got at twelve o'clock. We're breaking for an hour when Jenny Mark Evans and Amber Holbrook from Disguise have got a very esteemed panel of ladies. Um, um, she talks is the name of the session. Uh, yeah. And they're going to be talking to. Should we? Should we go through the list? Because we've got a, a minute while Mark just connects. Yeah. It's going to be Gay Bell from hey, Platform Communications. Dorian from uh, the VP of Audience Development at NAB. She's the... Dorian Sullivan. NAB. Anna Heard. Anna Heard from, from Hitomi. Hitomi. We're going to keep her lips in, lips in sync. We're going to <laughs> oh, yeah, try. got to say that. <laughs> Anna Heard. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Claire Wilkie, I think, yeah. is also joining. Um, should we Very go? interesting. Yeah. yeah, Claire's fantastic. Uh, Vijaya uh, Cherian, I hope, uh, editor of Broadcast Prime Media in the Middle East. We got Barbara from Class X. Barbara She's Dina, technical Dina support and yeah. sales manager. I didn't even attempt to pronounce the surname. No, no. Well, that's, that's okay. We, we get there. Lucinda, Lucy from IBM. Amy. Amy DeLuise from 
Gallows and Gear. I'm looking Gallows forward to hearing She's from America. Gallows and Gear. It sounds up. US, isn't it? And of course, uh, uh, Penny West Penny. from Interra, who we're yeah. going to be talking to her in depth actually before she talks, and then she'll stay on in the red chair. Right. And she'll be joining um, Amber and um, Jenny for what is going to be a really interesting hour of discussion. Um, they can be talking about the show, first time visitors, technology, all that type of stuff. That, that should be really quite cool. Yeah. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You'll see the little red button um, on the bottom right of the screen. Because we will be on the show floor. I think it's important to say that, you know, yes, we're doing this preview show, but we are speaking to uh, 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 many exhibitors actually on the show floor. So, you know, people who we're seeing today will be able to know what they're talking about. You'll be able to see. Yeah, we've got a pretty full on lineup, haven't we? Yeah. Through from Sunday through to Wednesday. Oh. I think we're interviewing about 120 odd interviews. So, yeah. um, so uh, slightly less we, condensed than today, but I, there we go. I so saw, we're on. I saw Mark there, and then he went oh, again. Oh, he's gone. So I think. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, it is worth saying if you want to catch up on any of the content that we did at ISC in Barcelona back in when was that? February, February time, wasn't it? End, yeah. end of January, beginning of February. Just um, open up a new window. Don't shut this window, otherwise you're going to lose this. But you can check out the playlist for all the shows we've done. I think we've got about two and a half thousand interviews that we've done over the past. 10 years or so at various shows. So yeah. Always something to watch there and catch up on. And uh, we've got a brand new website that launched last week, was it? Yeah, and whilst it was, uh, has been eyeing out a few bugs, it's been pretty much, always, always, uh, a few bugs. always a few bugs. It's been a pretty smooth process. Uh, so the new website is there. Uh, much easier to get around. Um, all of the content is, is on there. So uh, uh, you should be able to find everything you want. And of course, you can find the new website at kitplus.com. Um, you can add news if you want to add news. You just log in. It's all free to register, free to add news. So if you've got any industry news or anything exciting you've been doing, you can just simply create a free account on kitplus.com, um, upload your news. Yep. So we're going to come back to uh, Mark in Australia shortly, and we're going to um, just nip to Chris I think now. Chris probably from Media Chris Kind. From Media Kind. Hello, Chris. Welcome to the I've show. Been, I've been... Dialed in super quick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you saved us. <laughs> you can only feel for so long, can't you? Yeah, absolutely. I've run out. I was, gonna, I was, yeah. I was impressed. Yeah, that was yeah. a few minutes. You guys. Yeah. Uh... Chris, it, it's great so, to see you. I, I, I'm not sure we've spoken person to person before. So thanks for joining us. Um, what are you? What are you showing? What's media kind of doing at NAB this year? Yeah. So that? NAB this year. So obviously we're a video software technology vendor you know so we're mainly focused in the kind of broadcast content owner sports space as well as pay tv operators um and actually for us the theme this year really is around two things so we're really looking to show solutions and give our customers opportunities on you know how can we help you save money and how can we help you make money those are the two big things happening in the industry at the moment a lot of the conversation is around profitability it's around how do i do what i do today better more efficiently um, and then at the same time find ways to to create and generate new revenue streams so that's where we're really focused and a lot of our solutions and a lot of the products we're going to share are really around those two things it's either about how do we optimize or how do we amplify that monetization aspect and increase the lifetime value of your uh consumers so yeah as an example right um if i look at the optimization piece right really that's about how we've we've taken cloud technology and kind of redeveloped our software stack to be deployable across a whole different different set of infrastructures uh, to really support the base broadcast and streaming workflows that our customers are wanting to do, make it all API driven. So we're going to be showing that, but also we're going to be focused around, well, on-prem is still very important. There's a lot of our customers that are still driving on-prem. There's still a lot of conversation about, you know, running 24 by seven broadcast and streaming channels on-prem. Mm -hmm because it makes sense. So we introduced earlier this year, really our SG one platform, which is a GPU based video encoding solution. Um, and that can save, you know, power consumption and, and for video encoding by up to 70%. So it's a really cool little, uh, little solution that we can show. Um, and we've got some big plans for that as well in terms of density. Um, so that's on that piece. Um, 
around kind of the streaming angle, right? So how do we how do we enable our customers to grow their viewership and and extend their their reach? We're going to be looking at you know the part some partnerships that we've built in the space around standing up kind of dynamic streaming channels. Um, event-based and permanent streaming channels in the clouds, you know, bringing in partners for production and play out. Uh, and we're going to be announcing closer to, to NAB some partnerships with other vendors in the end-to-end -end workflow for a live event that's going to allow us to, to be able to offer um, and show, you know, yeah, you're doing connected with workflows. Insight, aren't you? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yes, yeah. we are. Um, so Memory. we've got the Net Inside partnership yep. that's coming up, and you know, for us, that's really important because it allows us to connect our edge products. So we have a suite of edge products um, that we've really focused on making simple to connect to cloud workflows, uh, and those products can now be connected through that kind of Nimbra platform, uh, and that's really powerful for us because it, it lets people get access to our partners through our um, through our products, but also allows them who are already using those partners to connect direct to us in the cloud. Yeah. And that's cool. Um, yeah, and, and to kind of showcase a bit of innovation in that space, we've got two cool things for streaming. Um, so one of the bits we're really excited about, which is still quite new for us, is we're going to be showing new kind of technology to enable premium DRM protected ultra low latency streaming. And this is something we've been showcasing and pioneering with one of our um, sports customers in the U S right. um, and we've got traction with it. And we think it's, it's something that we want to make a splash about any So we're going to be showing this technology um, and we're talking sub two second latency DRM protected. Um, and we'll be enhancing that tool set as we go. Um, over the next year to really try and unlock some new revenue opportunities and new experiences for our customers. So that's really cool. And I'm super excited about that. Um, and we're also, we're also showcasing around a new product family that we've got. Um, we're going to be focusing in on machine learning based upscaling. So that's going to allow customers who have archives, say VOD archives or have made catch up archives in a cloud environment or external to that to gain access to uh, a new workflow that we've created to allow them to upscale that to uhd content um uh, and then re-monetize that content through their platform sure. so that's cool and i'm super excited about that um, as well yeah and then we've got a whole host of stuff around monetization <clears throat> as well and and helping our customers you know create you know manage entitlements on their platforms and also yeah. kind of unlocking hyper targeting so helping them create fast channels and, and other other ways to to drive sustainable revenue in their business. So yeah, I'm I'm pumped. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a lot yeah, on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I think before we wind up, uh, uh, there's there's if I remember rightly, you, you had some race sims at a previous show demonstrating something, didn't you? Right. <laughs> yes. Are you um they were cool. We did those last year. We're not doing those oh. this year. <laughs> can't so them. I've probably just blown it, right? No one's going to turn no. up to the stand now. We can't we don't see have the race in. The business propositions that you've just... Yeah, yeah, you're, you're. I know, no, we your enthusiasm that. and passion strikes through that we, we, yeah. we, yeah, people need to come and see what media kind of doing. Exactly, there you go. We don't need race simulators. No, 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 no. it's really exciting. <laughs> Although it was cool, we did that IBC, and we ended up we had a young lady who was like a local esports rally driver okay oh, wow. which is a thing okay. and she came to the stand lots and lots and was just racing <laughs> just smashing <laughs> smashing everybody's time on the track it was so. it was ridiculous yeah brilliant but yeah so um, where can people find not this show? we are west hall and we are 2100 so 2100 is our cool. booth number Fantastic. um that's awesome. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thanks, Chris. Thank we're you. Look, look, looking forward. I think we're actually up. spending time on your booth as well at some point yeah. as well. So we'll be, no doubt, chatting directly to you um, in Vegas. So, yeah, safe travels. Even even without the race sim? Oh, yeah. We'll oh, come maybe, there, maybe not. Yeah. Maybe yeah. not. Yeah. We'll see. No, no, I'll be there. <laughs> That's cool. Thank you. Good Thanks very that. much, guys. Take care. Really Cheers. good bye -bye. to talk to you. Bye-bye. 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 Yeah. So we're just waiting for our red chair to be occupied, aren't we? Um, we Are we? We've got Jeff... 
Oh, no, we're actually going to go back to no, Australia. We, we, we're we've got Mark from yeah, yeah, yeah. Miller. Fantastic. Yeah. So uh, we just wait for Mark to be patched in, and yeah, uh, that'll be, be long good now. to have a quick chat to him. Hopefully he's found the right button. And well, hopefully he's uh, got his camera on a good tripod. You think he will? It be stable. It should be stable, You'd shouldn't so. it? We shall, we shall soon find out. Um, and... Uh, yeah, all we've got is his name at the moment. So, so let's carry on. Ah, oh, there we go. Mark, let's. Are you with hope. us, Mark? Yes, I'm finally here. Yay! <laughs> <It's Simon. laughs> How are you doing? Uh, great to see you. That. Yeah, technology is a wonderful thing, isn't it? No, yeah. great to see you guys again, finally again. Yeah, um, absolutely. Been a little while, hasn't it? It has been, been a while. Yeah, been a while. it has been a while. Totally different format. Yeah. Yeah. It's, so. Um, so, Mark, what, what, um, what can people expect to see from Miller at NAB this year? Uh, we've got a bit lined up this year, so we're looking forward to getting, uh, getting there soon. But um, uh, let me just introduce under the, um, the Miller Cine brand, we're going to have two, two new large um, fluid heads, the Cinex 8 and 9, um, and also the Cinex 20, 23, 25, the smaller ones. So that'll give us a, a nice full range in the cinematic fluid heads. Uh, so we're looking forward to introducing those um, five new models in the cinematic range. So it'll give us a full full range of um, uh, payload capacity in that in that marketplace. Um, the Cinex 9, um, being the larger head, it's going to be just standard with a uh, Mitchell base flat base adapter that you can fit also ball levelling too. So it's quite versatile. Comes with um, you know side load. Ari camera plate with 150 mil travel um, and, and a host of accessories that you can mount to it. Um, so, and, and obviously we've added the new feature with the um, counterbalance system with 16 positions of counterbalance. So um, we're looking forward to introducing that and um, taking a few orders, no doubt, uh, from the show. Hey, we've also got the version of the Cinex 8, which is Got the, it's a, a built-in clawball head um, with the same kind of features, uh, but that's slightly different, Mark. We find some people just prefer having a fluid head with a clawball. Some people want the traditional flat base and being able to play around with it a bit, make it um, suit various applications they've got, along with, um, obviously, um, a lot of the accessories that can go with it um, on these heads, including ARRI mounts and, um, you know, viewfinder mounts, all kinds of things. We've got um, articulated pan handles now. Right. <laughs> I lose track of actually all the accessories. You need a you need a small Bible to work it all out sometimes. But well, look, we're, yeah, looking forward to those models big, coming out and having that full range. Big cine, big cine, cinema tripods, if you like, is, 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 you know, I mean, that's Miller all over, isn't it, really? But you've, you, yeah. your video yeah. stuff, your slightly smaller your ENG stuff, your lightweight stuff, has that been evolving at all or...? Uh, yeah, we have obviously um, in, in in one way we've evolved is making them uh, more versatile and compatible. So we're, we're um, uh, introducing new camera platforms, side load camera platforms with the Versa camera plate, cool. which is compatible with the uh, Manfrotto 501 plate, which is quite popular in the marketplace. So yeah. along with the, our standard Miller plate, you can um, uh, also uh, include either buy the head standard with a, uh, um, a Versa plate yeah, yeah, or yeah. a Miller plate, or you've got the choice. If you've got an old Miller head, uh, you can change the platform as well. We sell it as a kit. Uh, so just introducing these models uh, with that uh, extension of the V for Versatile, uh, which cool. makes it a bit easier. So. Um, that that's going to happen um, with the Compass X range. So we've got the Compass X V, also with our smaller head, um, uh, the air head. It's also going to have a um, a Versa plate put on it as well. So we'll be showing those off at the uh, NAB this year um, in in that range of uh, the smaller uh, heads as well. Are you in the same area as normal? Where, where we we because we we normally find you pretty much in the same spot, don't we? Yeah, look, it is. Um, I haven't got the. I did look at it a week ago, Central. and uh, we're next to um, our telemetric friends and four two two one. I've got. Yeah, that's the the stand number. Yes, um, uh, it was here in front of me. Yeah. Uh, C four two two one. Um, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did see telemetrics and Canon. I think we were close by. And, okay. Yeah, but um, yeah. Fantastic. Uh, it's yeah. No, looking forward to this year. Um, and uh, so we've got yeah seven new 
products uh, at the core we're introducing, including a new little um, solo queue pod as well with a um, nice little feature on it uh, to make life a lot easier setting them up as well. Uh, it's got like a, a queue button for releasing. Uh, so you don't have to, um, you know, with the leg locks, you've got those six leg locks, you can easily um, collapse it and extend it and um, do it up so it halves the time for setting up. It's a nice little feature. Fantastic. So we're looking yeah. forward to having that ready and available, yeah. Cool. We're uh, out of time, Mark, but thank you very much right. indeed for joining us. Okay, really then. good. And nice, we're, we'll nice make sure... you guys. All we'll, the best. Yeah, we'll make sure people head over to C4221 in a couple of weeks' time to see everything that you're offering. Yeah. Excellent. Good stuff. Okay, guys. Thank you. Brilliant. Take care. Bye-bye. 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 So we've got a we've got a live person. At last, we've, we've never <laughs> had one of these before. <laughs> yeah, we, our red chair is yeah. occupied by our yeah. friend Jeff Mills, SJ. Yeah. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. How are you doing? Yeah, very well. Thank you very much. Been a long time coming in. Since me. I know, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's great to be sort of back in person. And is I guess everyone's saying that, but it is true. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Absolutely yeah, good right. to get back to Vegas again. I think this yeah. is. Although we were there last 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 year, of course. Now it's the first year that we can all freely travel. Which yeah, is probably nice. do it. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So, um, so SGO, at NAB. Mm -hmm. What's what, what are you going to tell us about? Well, um, I guess, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, we're, we're coming back to NAB. We're going to do it in a slightly different different way. And I guess we're all trying to feel how shows are working for us uh, now we're coming back. Mm. And, and obviously, we've learned a lot of different things during the pandemic, I think, on how yeah. to engage with our, our customers, which is important. And we've been leveraging more and more our, um, our software-only based solutions. Mm. We still sell the big turnkey systems for doing, you know, 8K color correction and things like that, which is, which is great. Um, but more and more people want sort of software applications. Mm. And, um, you know, over the past years, we've been taking all of that sort of power and sort of functionality that we have with, uh, with Mystic Ultima as a finishing system and breaking, uh, breaking that functionality out to, you know, tackle sort of task-specific problems. Mm. Um, and, uh, and obviously, we've got, we've got things like Mystic VR. We have yep. Mystica Boutique, which is um, a subscription-based, you know, finishing product for color grading or whatever. And uh, and our, probably our most exciting product, I think, is Mystica Workflows, which right. is all about sort of you know, managing your media, transcoding it, and delivering it, and sending it to wherever you you want it to go. So that's uh, that's been very very good for us in the, in the past few years. Mm. So if you would if you were explaining that to someone that hadn't come across it before, what would it be your typical elevator pitch on that particular? Well, Mystica thing? Workflows. Mm. Yeah, I think anyone who needs to sort of you know sort of um, you know manage their their, their content, their media, be able to transcode it into different formats and then send it off, whether you're copying it or sending it off to, you know, sort of FTP sites or, mm. or other places within your facility and things like that. That's what it's about. But it's a very, very cost effective solution. Mm. Um, and the great thing about that is we can handle the different file formats, you know, um, resolutions, frame rates, um, of obviously things like, um, you know, um, HDR and, and all those things that people need mm. to do and even upload to things like YouTube and stuff, which all sounds very easy, but actually it's, it's not. Yeah, that straightforward. It's like yeah. a digital runner that doesn't yeah, get Yeah, exactly. Hopefully. And there, there are other yeah. solutions out there that, that do similar things, but they're normally, you know, quite expensive to buy. And this is yeah. like not 79 euros a month, so it's very, very okay. cost effective. Okay. Um, it's very, very easy to configure. Um, it's, and it's obviously, we, we provide a high level of support on the product as well. But the other, the other exciting thing about it, I think, is, is that it's fully Python scriptable, um, which is one of those things that sets it apart from the other solutions out there. So you know, anyone who, who likes to do Python scripting uh, or even actually have their own scripts already can actually leverage the, you know, the product. Mm. Yeah, so we've got a whole new sort of storyboard and gallery, uh, you know, coming, mm. which is going to make everything much, much faster and easier you know, you know, to use. So. Are you offering any or do you provide any training or education for people getting into these new technologies? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've got a, a ton of tutorials on there, which are very sort of application specific, you know, mm. showing people what those workflows are. So, yeah, it's, uh, we've got lots of online sort of stuff. But equally, we spend a lot of time talking to our customers, working out you know, actually what they what they need to do and, and the mm. challenges that they have. And the great thing is, is that, you know, a lot of the time we already have those solutions for them. But if they if they don't, then we can um, we can offer bespoke custom development services. And we, again, we do a lot of that for our customers mm. where we actually then tailor the solution and give them exactly what they want. And, uh, mm. and that's, again, yeah, it's, that's an exciting part of our business, yeah. I think. Possibly not $79 a month. Uh, that is $79 <coughs> a month, but uh, it's still very cost effective. Good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, have you got a typical case study you could talk about? I know you can't mention names often. Um, things, but. Yeah, well, yeah, unfortunately, the majority of the things we get to work on are <laughs> under, under NDA. But I think, you know, 
if you think about sort of um, a lot of the the say the virtual production stuff that's going on with the studios, you know, a lot of those are using our technology mm. to you know to sort of deliver that content and, or create that that content. Um, we are working with a company that. Um, does uh, you know sports tournaments and they're uploading sort of material up to up to YouTube and things mm. like that through mystical workflows. Uh, so we we have lots of lots of different examples, but most of them, unfortunately yeah, we're a little yeah. bit so sort of hamstrung. And, and what type of visitor are you expecting to see at NAB this year? Uh, that, that's a really good question, actually, because I, I think our feedback is, um, you know, from talking to people, is it's quite, it's quite mixed. Actually, mm -hmm. I'm hoping that we're going to see people who are looking, um, you know, for, for new solutions uh, or, or, or things, to, you know, to solve their problems that, that mm -hmm. we have, and hopefully the sort of the words out there. I mean, we're, we're very lucky with Mystica VR because we own that sort of stitching space. So anyone who's doing, you know, sort of, um, you know, serious, um, you know, immersive, you know, content production, they want to stitch the cameras. Typically, they're using Mystica VR yeah. because actually. Mm -hmm. The, the camera manufacturers, you know, are offering that as well as, as yeah, a yeah. solution. So yeah. that that's quite good. Um, yeah. And then, of course, you know that you know those workflows then spill into the other products like Mr. Boutique and, and workflows naturally. So mm. yeah, yeah. Now this is not. I mean, we're probably the same age-ish. This is not your. your, your you've been going to be for a long, long, <laughs> long, long time. Yeah, yeah. What are your sort of tips, <coughs> either in the show or outside the show, for people that this might be their first visit? Um, I think just actually just keep your eyes open and wander around and, and talk to actually I would suggest people go and talk to the people that they don't know yeah uh, because it's very easy isn't it for us to engage with all the people that we've known over the years and, and, that, and that's that a fun earlier, part yeah. of yeah. what we do but in actual fact people should go to the show and actually look for those cool bits yeah. of technology that they didn't know existed yeah. because a lot of it out there not, not just from us we have some great stuff but you know other, other people do as well and actually the thing that I like of what we're doing at the moment is is you know, years ago, you wouldn't share your technology or, or, or want to work with other companies. No, now you have to do that. Yeah, yeah. You know, like with Mystica Workflows, you know, we've got integration now with Autodesk's um, Short Grid. You know, right. they've been very helpful to help us, you know, leverage that development. Mm -hmm. And all those things, I think, make it fun and exciting. So, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. So, so we've established that we're in West Hall. Yep. I think one they've moved our, our, our uh, booth number, but well, I think they're... 1068. Yeah, I think it may be slightly different well, than that. But, I'm uh, sure people will see a big yeah. J plus. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, there's going to be four of us there. and We're going to have a lot of fun. And, you know, I, I think it's just going to be great to get back and engaging with people once again. Yeah. And anyone that have problems that need solving, they come and see you. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. That's well, the good thing about being able to talk to people as well, isn't it? You know, people can, you, you can actually get a feel of yeah, the, exactly. the challenge. It's not necessarily a problem or a complaint. It's just a challenge that people are yeah. facing and how you can solve it. Yeah, we've got, we've got some of our customers are coming you know, onto the stand as well to, to be around to talk to other people as well about what they're doing and how they're using our technology. So, yep. um, mm. so yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be good. Looking yeah, forward yeah, to it. Yeah. What's your most memorable NAB you've had? Oh, crikey. Um, I, think, I think probably going back actually uh, quite a few years ago now um, in the Quantel heady days <laughs> when you know we used to spend huge amounts of money on stands and, and bring technology that, that quite frankly... You know, people didn't know existed at all, mm. um, and uh, and excited yeah, them there. And actually, and, and also yeah. people spent a lot of money then. You know, things have changed enormously yeah. now. You know, when people were spending hundreds of thousands of of dollars on a system, now they kind of want it for free because it's software yeah, based. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, and I think that's that for me. That's one of the disappoint disappointing things that's happened with the industry is that software has become devalued, and it's such a shame because actually the effort that goes into you know producing that software and the things it does is is quite extraordinary yeah, yeah. so this yeah. is why we're saying about the professional services doing those custom developments yeah. are important because actually people see a value in that so the software arguably could become could become almost you know free mm. but you provide that you know that extra it's level of service. you know service and service support, support especially that, go, that goes around it and uh, and, we're, and we're doing that so yeah evolving yeah. the solution yeah so cool. there's a visitor that's just strolling past the stand and you could grab them in what's the one thing that they need to look at mystical workflows I think because that that's a bit of software that anyone can use. Mm. So you know, Mystica VR, you've got to be doing you know, yep. you know immersive you know content. Yeah. Um, if you're looking at boutique, you're going to be doing finishing and color grading, yeah. etc. Um, but Mystica workflows, no matter what you're doing, if you have to manage your media and your content, 
it's it's a perfect product and it and it's seriously cool you know some of the stuff mm -hmm. we're doing metadata management and stuff is 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 really game changing at that at that price point yeah. um, and is this is new for NAB it's it pretty it, we did show it i think the last time we went to NAB okay. pre pandemic but it was very very early days now it's a, it's you so know it's, it's all shipping it's, it's all yeah it's, yeah abso all, absolutely all and available. we're showing some new functionality at the show like embedding metadata into EXRs which is which is really cool loads of people want to do that mm. so we're really trying to unlock the you know the the, the problems that people have in VFX workflows especially yeah. so so yeah it's good mystical workflows yeah what mystical about? workflows yeah brilliant yeah. Jeff thank you very much indeed so Pleasure. West 1068 and yeah. Uh, yeah we're looking forward to seeing you and there. we'll see you there yeah fantastic yeah. fantastic we'll, we'll brilliant come, stuff come and find you hopefully we've got someone in the wings yeah hopefully yeah uh, we, we, we're working on now I think we're going to I'll bring Neil back into the into the hot seat. So um, at some we, point, yeah, we, I hope we, we can have a chat to him about um, anybody. We got a case from Mware TV, I think. Um, that was that was good to chat to Jeff, wasn't it? It's, it's yeah. nice to be able to talk to someone virtually and physically. Uh, uh, absolutely, as well. it's, yeah, it's, it's yeah, nice. yeah, yeah, no, having somebody um, in the room. So right, we, so we have are case, yeah, going okay. to case from Mware TV. Good morning, case. Is it good morning where you where you are? Yeah, we're basically, good morning, everybody. We're based in Amsterdam, so indeed, more or less good the same morning. time zone. So good morning <laughs> for you as well. Cool. So let's get straight to it, Case. What's, what can we expect from um, Mware at uh, NAB this year? Yeah, well, thanks for the invite uh, to share that with you. Um, um, maybe a quick introduction. Mware provides a complete platform to facilitate live TV and video on demand services. And at the NEB, we're uh, going to introduce, um, let's say, TV as a service, a managed IPTV service, basically for ISPs and MVNOs. It combines all the content you need together with the whole platform. So we're kind of one-stop shop and sign one contract, and basically you can run your TV service. And that, that makes it very easy for those uh, companies, tier two, tier three, to offer TV service as part of their uh, value-added service portfolio. Cool. And um, why is NAB so important to you? Well, um, like, uh, well, uh, you, you know, uh, uh, the IBC in Amsterdam, which is our hometown, and the equivalent of that is the, uh, the NAB in, in the US. Uh, last year we went there for the for the first time. It was quite successful, so we said we have to uh, to launch this new service there as well. Although we also visit uh, you know shows that are more targeting uh, ISPs and and those MVNOs as well. But uh, we believe that we have to show uh, what we have to offer there. So um, yeah, we're very excited to uh, to go to Las Vegas. Cool. And, and what um, what type of visitor are you are you hoping to drop by your booth? Well, that, that is a mixture. Uh, think about internet service providers. Um, think about how they, they offer internet access, but they would like to combine it with TV services. Uh, think about mobile operators doing the same, searching for value-added services. Think for MDU companies uh, or service providers that would like to offer uh, a TV service to their, to their dwelling units, to their apartment complexes. Um, yeah, that are the main three target groups yeah. for us to visit. Uh, and of course, uh, in addition to that, service providers that are targeting those uh, types of market segments. Hmm. And, uh, and uh, quickly before we round up, is, is the NAB show, how important are you finding that as an, uh, as an international audience now? Not only, you're not only going for the Americas. Well, this, this particular uh, launch of the product is really targeting the U.S. Uh, you know, content is, is very well regulated in the U.S., so you yeah. have that, that act together. Um, we also see some appetite from uh, Latin America uh, yeah. for the NAB, especially uh, from C-level people, uh, uh, based on the experiences we have. Um, yeah, this year will be the proof of the pudding for us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> to be honest, if if it's if it's really bringing what we expect, um, and then we can decide how we will move on next year. But we have some something interesting to uh, to bring to the table. So let's let's hope it will be a good one. Brilliant. Brilliant Where can we find you? Let's have a look. West Hall, one three six seven. There you go. Yeah, thank you very much indeed. We've done your job for you. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, and uh, okay, success with your show. By, see you there. Yeah. Thank you. Very much. Okay. Good, good to talk to you. Thanks for joining us. Bye bye. Have a good day. Bye bye. Cheers. Bye bye. Cool. So, hopefully, we've got Remy in the background at a time. I think 
Remy's coming he's, in. Yeah. Uh, he should be ready. Um, we've got lots of. Uh, now we've spoken to a Tim on a couple of occasions, and uh, I think I, th I, th well, I think we spoke to Remy f f on the last time we did a preview day. We did. We That's did sustainability. Yeah. We did. Yep. Uh, yep. So. Yep. Um, you can always um, search a TEM oh, in, the, uh, in the is. search box of YouTube and it will come up with all sorts of stuff with a TEM because it'll be tagged probably. Um, Remy, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? We're very good, very thank good you. So How are you? Far. Excellent. So the floor is yours, Remy, to tell us everything wonderful about a TEM and NAB. <laughs> Thank you. So we are super excited by the upcoming uh, Centennial NAB. Uh, like any NAB, we are here to uh, solve business problems to our customers. And actually this year, there will be a mix of evolution and revolution. So we will be on the show floor to explain how we can help our customers transform their video delivery. I'm talking about smart contribution, distribution to the cloud, how we can leverage the hybrid architecture to help our customers in contribution, primary distribution, or D2C distribution, whatever this is over cable, satellite, or over the top, to streamline their video operations. Especially, we will showcase the latest improvement in terms of uh, reduction of OTT latency, so that now we are on par between OTT and broadcast. Okay. So that's one part of our job. The other part, I was talking about the revolution. The other part is really how we can help our customer leapfrog, meaning how we can help them provide new experiences, new experiences with the viewers, with the sports fan, with uh, the ability to reach the broadest audience, but also with engage with their audience. And so here we will showcase innovation around the virtual launch, meaning a sports bar, a digital sports bar where you have multiple OTT player. And so you can go into this type of metaverse light experience. Metaverse is a bit of a bad buzzword. So that's why I'm using the word virtual launch. Uh, yeah. And then you can enjoy with your friends abroad, an OTT stream and uh, an event. We will be also showcasing how we can use 5G in order to reach the broadest audience. And last but not least, how we can help engage uh, the fan, uh, the sports fan by having a complete solution from compression, highlight creation, down to enrich push notification onto mobile. Last but not least, we will be also showcasing the latest innovation in terms of next-gen compression and immersive audio, everything about the quality of experience. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely a lot going on there for you, NAB, 20, uh, NAB Show 23. Yeah, that yeah. will be the biggest booth of ATEM to date. Okay. Uh, with the 14 area of demonstration, like I was mentioning, B2B, uh, B2C delivery. So that's, uh, we're quite excited. Yeah, and Neil, you've, you've, you've got an interesting question. Well, hi, Remy. It's Neil here from, uh, from NAB Show. Hello, Neil. Hi, how are you doing? Good, and you? Yeah, it's great to see you again. I just wanted to quickly pick up. I know you're speaking in the Connect Theatre uh, in the West Hall on Monday, the 17th, I believe at 11.30 a.m. I just wondered if you could give us a little insight into what that might uh, be, uh, be, what you might be addressing there. Sure. On that front, uh, we will be explaining the latest innovation that we are bringing to the next-gen TV market, aka ATSC 3.0. Uh, so we are an active leader on that front uh, in the US, in Korea, and in other countries adopting uh, the ATSC 3.0 standard. And so uh, we will be explaining our latest innovation in terms of statistical multiplexing, as well as low latency dynamic ad insertion, targeting the next-gen TV market. Fantastic. Well, we look forward well, to that. Yeah, we look forward to that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is, that, is that them on their own? Or are they part of it? They're part of a. They're presenting bigger... on their own in uh, in the Connect uh, Innovation Theatre. Okay, okay, and that yeah. and the Connect Innovation Theatre is going to be around about West Hall. It's in the West Hall. It's part of the Connect Experiential Zone. We touched on we that touched earlier. On earlier. Yeah, we'll go into more <laughs> detail in a bit. Yeah. Remy, thank you very much. That's a great insight. As yeah. People could find you the West Hall booth. I say booth. It's probably bigger than a booth. Yeah. Uh, 1517. Exactly. Looking forward to seeing all of you. Brilliant. Thank you very much indeed. Oh, thank Have you very much. Have a nice one. Take Thanks care. Bye-bye.
Right, so so we um, it, I, it's probably just worth answering one of the questions we've had on the comments: why we don't put the titles of who's speaking on? Because well, uh, it it would be nice, wouldn't it? It would be nice. <laughs> but the challenge we have with a live show is that often a different person will come on, and we'll have the title lined up, and it'll be the wrong name, the wrong company, and people don't often come in in order. We've got about hundred and hundred or so people connecting in over the day. Um, so it would be possible it'd be horrible to put the wrong name and title. Well, I've already got it wrong once, haven't I? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so good, yeah. goodness knows what we'd be like. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing we can say is once you, once the show's over and yeah. it's available on demand, uh, we'll have the the running order in the YouTube description with a direct link to the person, so you can you you'll be able zip to see who it is, and they will be named, and they will yeah, yeah it'll so all be run through. We'll try our best to introduce people correctly at the beginning of each one, but uh, yeah. that's basically in a nutshell why we don't have titles on at the moment. But next time maybe. And that hopefully we've got Robin in the wings now uh, from Dalit. Have we? I don't. I don't. I don't think we have yet. Have we not yet? Uh, oh. I think we. I think we're skipping straight on to Adela and Broad Peak. I think. Um, right. If Robin's okay. lined up. Yeah. Oh right. um, yeah, we are getting him in. Yeah. Yep. Um, see, there's a prime example of why <laughs> we'd have had it in all the wrong order. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, um, but yeah. So, so we were touching on. The West Hall, because we've had quite a few people. The, the well, West Hall, busy West. It is busy West, yeah. and if you haven't been to Vegas for a couple of years now, there is a there's a tunnel. It's called the Loop, isn't it? And that goes between uh, South, which is not on use, and is it Central or North? Just outside Central, it, isn't it? Just outside Central. Just right. outside yeah. Central, yeah. you can get the the Tesla Loop. loop um, that takes you directly into yeah. West Hall in about two or three minutes, isn't it? It's great. Yeah, much easier. And yeah. there were no queues last time, were there either? It was quite no, good. No keys. It was great. No just get a Tesla. Actually, it, fl it, flew, it flowed very easily. Very nice driver. Yeah. Have a little chat. Flow. Great. Right. So, yes, we have got Robin from Dalit. Hi, Robin. Nice to see you. Hi. How are you doing? Thank you for having me. That is nice to see you. Um, so, what, uh, what can we expect at NAB from, from you? Well, we, we can expect a lot. Oh. Uh, we are all super <laughs> excited about the show this year. Obviously, that's a celebration of the 100 years of the of the NAB, celebration of the show. Um, it's going to be even bigger think, than last year, so we are all super excited for, for this year. Um, and well, that's a, that's a great opportunity to say hello to the, to the new Dalet as well. Um, we have been um, uh, hard at work into, uh, into delivering some of our biggest technology shifts in the past uh, uh, 36 months, I would say. And we are unveiling that at NAB 2023, which is really a uh, a big change. It's a single technology uh, stack platform that we are uh, unveiling as a SaaS, available as a SaaS okay. for our consumer to uh, uh, to consume, uh, and really to answer the industry most pressing use cases and workflows. We have been uh, really working on that, identifying what our customers are looking for in terms of workflows. Um, so that's a, a big part of the announcements we are making at NAB around uh, specific use cases, and I'll talk about it. We've got a number of exciting product updates as well. I will touch on them, uh, on them. and also uh, key events coming back to to NAB, uh, including the uh, executive breakfast, uh, which has been one of the biggest uh, breakfasts uh, we were having uh, throughout the year at NAB every year. So I'll touch on that at the end. But first, let me tell you a little bit about those use cases I, I, I mentioned. Um, uh, really, we are looking at four main use cases where we feel and we see our customers are really looking for innovative solutions, cost-effective uh, solutions, and also agile solutions uh, to boost their business. The first one is really around their archives and media libraries, to bring them into the cloud, to bring them uh, into their content supply chain, uh, but also to monetize them, to make the best use of them. So we have been uh, developing an end-to-end -end solution for that, uh, which is a really a cost-effective way for them to migrate the archives into the cloud and be able to make the most of those archives to monetize them uh, and to bring them into their production and distribution workflows. That's the first uh, use case we are uh, showcasing on the booth. Um, the second one is really about the supply chain, uh, the content supply chain and the distribution. As we all know, the number of consumption platform is exploding. You've got new OTT uh, platforms, new social media outlets uh, almost every every month. And obviously, you need still to serve uh, your traditional uh, and more uh, uh, classic uh, 
endpoints uh, distribution consumption uh, platform then that's typically the solution we deploy uh, with our customers to do that uh, which is an orchestrated automated content supply chain to bring the content uh, in the shape and the form that is needed to the different uh, consumption platforms a bit advanced format like uh, IMF or OTT platforms yeah. like Netflix or more traditional broadcast uh, broadcast format the third one is really about the production and that's something where we have been expanding a lot our product capabilities I'll touch on that just after and to streamline those production assets management workflows uh, and that's somewhere where uh, we really want to help our customers eliminate those production silos uh, unsupported file format or friction that can bog down the, the, the production workflows uh, be it for studios uh, for big broadcasters with production capabilities as well as post-production houses and we really want to help them to, to monitor what's going on to predict the cost per project and to go much faster uh, and, and enable collaboration between, uh, between everybody and finally, uh, getting back to our roots, really, it's about news production and distribution. So that has been a, a, a big player in that area for many, many years. And, and, and production uh, of news, distribution of news has been changing fast. Uh, so our product, Dale Pyramid, I'll touch on this just after, has been getting lots of updates, including a brand new, uh, I would call it state-of-the-art, web-based editing uh, a solution, which is really uh, giving the ability to journalists, news editors, and producers to do everything they need into a single uh, tab in their browser uh, to edit uh, proxy-based files uh, and, and, and work with full mobility and multimedia file uh, and being able also to package for not only traditional broadcast, but for all digital platforms with the right aspect ratio, the right graphics, doing that in their browser on the field, wherever they are. So that's the fourth one. <clears throat> and all those solutions are being shown on the booth, uh, which is uh, W1935. Let me check that. That's it, W1935 in the West Hall. Uh, so we are uh, showing all of that on the booth. And we'll also be uh, present on the AWS main booth, where we'll showcase uh, live production workflows in the cloud. So that's some of the main updates. If I take a step back and talk a little bit about the product, uh, so um, we have two main platforms. The first one is really Dalit Flex, which is our media set management and collaboration uh, platform. Yeah. And we've got two main updates here. The first one is really the mobile app that we have been unveiling, called Flex Mobile, and enable you uh, to really uh, manage your media on the go seamless media management on the go for iOS or Android, as well as do reviews and comments, approval workflows. That's a big update for us, really bringing that uh, mobility to media professionals, uh, not only news professional, but any media professional. And Flex Reviews, it, this is the review and approval module in Flex, which allows you to uh, collaborate on the review and approval of files, uh, add time-coded comments, and so on. And talking about the new side, I touched on it, so I'll be faster, but Pyramid Cut, our web-based editor, it's a big news and it's available uh, for showcase and test on the Dalet stand. And the second one is the planner, the Pyramid Planner, which allows you really to do an intuitive calendar-based calendar planning of, of news uh, across teams and regions. So think about big broadcaster, they have different uh, stations throughout the country. They might have a broadcast team, digital teams that enable them to bring everything together and to avoid work being done at the same time by different persons. You see everything going, going on, like a, a Kanban-based view, but for news planning, which is really a revolution in, in news production that changes from the rundown-based approach. Robin, so those are Robin, the big Robin, updates. Sorry to interrupt, Robin, but we... Those are great updates. Thank you very much. But we are literally <laughs> yeah. out of time. So yeah. where can people find you um, at NAB? Uh, we can uh, and we'll welcome everybody on our booth, which is W1935 in the West Hall. And that's perfect because I'm done. So thank you so much for <laughs> the time. Perfect Robert. timing. Robbie, yeah. thank you very much indeed. It's great see talking to you. And yeah, I hope you have a, a successful NAB and we'll see you over there. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye. That's a lot to fit in there, wasn't it? It's, 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 it's pretty, pretty interesting stuff. stuff but... I mean, we're already late. Yeah, yeah we got all the time in the world. But Olivier's okay. He'll be all right. Olivier's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, He's, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, so but, it, uh, it, it, it takes a few seconds to switch people in and out. So um, it's probably a good time yeah, to just... I... Remind people that we're here all day. Uh, we'll be chatting to people. <laughs> yeah. um, we've got about 100 people lined up. Um, and our next guest is Olivier, I think, from Broadpeak. Yeah. Olivier, hi, how are you doing? 
Hey, very well. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. Nice meeting you. Thank yeah. you for inviting us. That's that's okay. We we we, well, we spoke the last uh, preview to uh, Matthias, I think it was about uh, Propic IO and the software as a service that you were launching. Right. Yeah. So uh, so let's start with trends, shall we? What what trends do you do you expect to see, see at NAB? So um, I, if I had to pick, I would say like uh, the the main trends we are um, seeing, I would say on the market. Uh, the first one I would say is an acceleration of uh, the transition from uh, broadcast uh, to streaming. This has started, of course, several years ago, but um, uh, we, we've seen um, that uh, major broadcasters like the BBC and a few others are even predicting that uh, broadcasts will simply disappear within a decade or so. So effectively, what it means is that uh, the scale of uh, streaming is going to enter into another dimension in the longer term. So this is really the, uh, the acceleration we can expect. Second trend, I would say, is uh, really around monetization. Of course, the market has started shifting towards uh, ad-supported models, uh, especially since uh, uh, media giants like uh, Netflix and Disney have announced, you know, those uh, those uh, offerings for subscri for subscribers where uh, they can go for such an option. Um, so same thing here, we seeing an acceleration. Uh, which is really basically impacting everyone across the media chain, media delivery. Um, I think uh, publishers want more control um, of uh, how they monetize uh, their audiences or they monetize their me their content. <clears throat> Maybe I would say the third um, the third trend, which we we started observing actually more than a year ago, is the uh, expectation and the need around um, personalization. I think what is interesting okay. is that if you look at the on-demand world, whether you watch, uh, you know, content on YouTube, Netflix, Disney, or you listen to Spotify, the experience is fully personalized, 100%. If you go on linear streaming, it's almost the opposite. If also, it's almost like if you were in a broadcast um, uh, schema uh, with everyone watching the same content at the same time. Mm. <clears throat> and I think end users now are expecting a much more... I would say a contextualized, personalized uh, user experience, matching their preferences, their expectations, uh, and and so on and so forth. Mm. <clears throat> Last trend I would like to highlight is really around sustainability. I think most actors um, in our industry, starting from the uh, media production down to the end delivery, uh, are um, really um, understanding that um, they need to change their decision criteria. Um, to go towards more sustainable solutions, technology, uh, services, platforms. Um, it really impacts everyone across the board. And we see that really um, more, uh, I would say, acute uh, with, with really a, a strong uh, impact on the, how the uh, decisions are being made. So mm -hmm. I'm sure there are many other trends, but really those four are the ones yeah. uh, which we think are very, uh, very um, observable. Yeah. Yeah. So, what um, solutions will you be <coughs> highlighting for things like monetization and ad insertion at the show? So, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's good point because really monetization, as I just mentioned, is one of the strongest strengths we are seeing. And um, <clears throat> we're, what we're basically uh, say, saying here is that um, um, monetization uh, needs to happen across the board, um, not just like on a subset. Publishers are really looking for at uh, uh, leveraging, I would say, the end-to-end end-user uh, end journey, uh, not just for uh, specific opportunities. And this can happen through many different ways in a different uh, through different schemes. Typical examples are, of course, the um, in-stream server-side ad insertion. This is, I would say, a baseline which is very powerful, very strong. But there are new ways. Um, that can be combined with this kind of schema to, I would say, expand from this uh, initial subset. And one um, demo that we're showcasing is actually the, 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 the use case where you can uh, combine, I would say, ad insertion with, um, in a traditional way, with overlay ad insertion, which means that the end user experience is less disruptive. Yeah. You get, I would say, a small um, burned in um, ad in a corner of the screen while you're watching content, which is completely different from an end user experience than you know, having an ad break 
for five yeah, minutes uh, yeah. and, and so on and so forth. And uh, and there are even other um, use cases uh, that can happen, you know, outside of the video itself, just within the client application. Um, so th these are a couple of examples. Uh, the other um, use case we're demonstrating at the show on our booth is, um, I would say, um, low latency with ad insertion. This is, of course, very critical for live sports streaming, uh, where you want to really take advantage of your audiences. Uh, and this is precisely when your CPM is the highest. So this is really uh, going to be key for uh, any uh, publisher doing live sports streaming and monetization uh, through ad-supported models. So that will be part of our demonstrations uh, on the booth uh, at NAB, yeah. uh, for instance. So just quickly, because we're running out of time, <laughs> what other applications available on your SaaS platform? So uh, on top of the ones I just mentioned, uh, we're also showcasing uh, personalization at scale. And maybe the best uh, use case to illustrate that capability is what we call Fast 2.0. And this basically means that every end user watching a Fast channel um, can get his own programming. It's almost like if you had your own Fast channel with your own content. Okay. And today's technology, like the one we offer on Broad PKO SaaS platform, can enable that kind of use case. And we're demonstrating that with a... Uh, recommendation engine technology. We have several partners in this uh, arena. And uh, maybe the last um, uh, demo we are also showcasing on the platform is uh, the ability to combine content replacement and monetization. This is very relevant for over the air you know, broadcasters who need to remain relevant and who need to basically be stay in business while transitioning to streaming when they do not have the rights uh, for uh, certain uh, pieces of content. So fantastic. Olivia, we're out of time. Just enough time for you to tell everyone where they can find you at the show. Definitely. So uh, we are basically on in West Hall, booth uh, 1913. Fantastic. Olivia. West 1913. Great More to talk West to you Hall. as always. Um, we're actually spending time on your booth at the show as well. So we'll be, we'll Great. be doing yeah. a, an interview with the guys there. Um, so look forward to seeing you there. Likewise, thank Take you care. very much for your time. Bye bye. Bye bye. Senior the advice. Right. Cool. And we've got, um, we've got James from uh, James from Cinedex. James from Cinedex just being patched across. We'll dispose of that paper. Yeah, we that, uh, last time he was, they were doing something with Edit Share, I think, from memory. I think they were. Yeah. Yep. I think they were. Um, I mean, I think they're working with a lot of people. You have to in, in, in his uh, in, in their situation. Yeah. Uh, here and he is. Here he is James. Uh, Good morning, James. Like Good morning, gentlemen. How are you doing? Very well. Nice to see you. We're all right right now. Ask <laughs> <laughs> me tomorrow. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. you know we're running behind time because because like. we've kept you waiting. So thanks for that. Um, <laughs> no problem at all. So NAB, the floor is yours, James. Yeah. So um, obviously last year for us, we're super excited about this year. Last year for us, we won um, best of show for our CD2 ingest software. Um, and this year we're looking to do something um, bigger and better. Um, so we're launching our um, connector, which is a visual workflow creator. And it's bridging the gap between ingest camera uh, to man and S3 to simplify file delivery um, workflows. Um, so that's something that's um, completely new and will be launched at um, NAB. Um, we've also done a number of IP2110 projects over the past 12 months. Um, and anybody that's looking to obviously move into IP2110, we've got some super exciting news um, that we're hoping to share at NAB as well. Um, obviously, I can't say too much around that at the moment because it's still in dev. But, um, but yeah, that should be... Um, that's something that's, yeah, that's something that's really going to um, um, be a game changer, I think, for people that's moving to IP2110. So, yeah, that's, um, that's something that we're super proud of. Um, obviously, we're going to be at, we're going to be in the hall... In the West Hall, 3777, if you want to come and have a chat with the team. Um, we'll also be on our technical partner stand, so we're going to be on Edit Share. Well, that's just about um, what you part yeah, it's a big part well, of what you do, isn't it? Yeah, Yeah. so we do. We integrate with um, with Flow. Um, so they're, be gonna, they're going to be showing um, Cinedec Ingest um, to be able to check straight into, into Flow on their stand. 
um, as well as a new partnership, which is with um, Open Drive. So I believe we're going to be on their stand as well. Um, so yeah, we've got quite quite a lot going on this year, um, and we're super excited. Got quite a, quite a big team out there. So um, so yeah, it's going to be um, fantastic. Very much looking forward to it. Cool, James. Thank you very much indeed. Um, we got his, we got his thing. Yeah, West <coughs> uh, West three seven seven seven. Yeah, room three seven seven. Yeah, room That's three, it, yeah. Seven, seven. yeah. That's yeah. it, James. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. And uh, yep, yeah, have a great show. And we'll hopefully, see you over there. Yeah, definitely. Take care, guys. Take care. Thank you. Right. Bye bye. Bye bye. So, so Vidyak, I believe he's in the wings. He's, Vidyak, he's waiting. He's he's, he's yep. being set up as, as 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 we speak. And we're talking uh, to Edit Share as. But James, we will be James it, yeah. mentioned their partner um, or Later people on. they integrate with. Which I think this afternoon we're talking to Edit Share, so that'd be quite good. Yeah. Um, they won't yeah. be far away. Do subscribe to the channel. You can turn notifications on to alert you of uh, what's going on. And right. we have Vignac from can... Magnify with us now. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. <laughs> oh, you're uh, muted. You're could muted. You mute, please <laughs> unmute. Let me have a oh, good afternoon, guys. There we, there we go. go. Fantastic. Thanks for joining us. We've been saying that a lot for the last three years, haven't we? So, Unmute. what can we expect from you from Magnify at MAB? A couple of interesting things. Magnify is going to be launching their latest solution called a Clip Engage, uh, which is fo focused on entertainment shows and video content. Um, NAB attendees will actually get a first look of the solution. Uh, there's going to be a lot of priority uh, given to the early access wait list uh, for the people who are going to be attending the NAB event. Cool. Brilliant. And and uh, so so I mean, uh, you, any more any highlights? What uh, you know, or or who are you expecting to see? Who do you want to turn up? Uh, we, we are kind of looking to meet everyone in the ecosystem, right? Because we, we were there last year. Uh, we did not really exhibit last year. Uh, we are kind of going big this year. Uh, the company ended up raising a Series B last year, 47 odd million dollars. Uh, we are now present in 18 countries with uh, teams in with teams in four different countries. So we're kind of expanding. Uh, the idea is to kind of meet all our existing customers, all the potential customers and all the new ones out there. Uh, quite a few exciting partnerships that we have in line are going to be announced at NAB yeah. as well. Cool. cool. Neil. Oh, hi, Vinayak. It's Neil from uh, NAB Show here. Good to see you. Um, Likewise. AI and machine learning are going to be very uh, prominent technologies at the show this year. Just, and I know that's very much at the core of what you do. Can you just tell us yep. a little bit about what you'll be showing in that regard? Sure. Uh, I think uh, I'm going to break it down into two aspects. Uh, how AI is impacting the consumer behavior and how and what we are going to be showcasing this year. Uh, so we believe that the AI has, been, uh, has been impacting the consumer behavior for a while in three specific Vs, which is volume, velocity, and viewership, right? Volume in terms of the humongous amount of content out there, velocity in terms of how fast these content need to be produced and viewership because everyone's fighting for the viewer's attention. AI is going to be very important because it's going to help personalize a lot of content. So AI algorithms can analyze user behavior, preferences, uh, interests to provide personalized recommendations and content creation. Uh, that's what we specialize in. AI can generate content based on user preference, search queries, enabling businesses, platforms to create content that resonate with their audience. And I, I truly believe that uh, it's important for broadcasters and a lot of people in the ecosystem to now start understanding and applying AI because the attention span of consumers has gone down considerably. Viewers prefer short form content over long form and the speed at which the content needs to be delivered has to be extremely fast. Otherwise, you're going to miss out on the viewership with the social media out there. Uh, I think to satisfy all this business means deploying an army of editors and content creators does not mean any sense when you can do all of this using AI. I think that's what's expected out of us, and that's what we're going to be showcasing this year at NAB. Mm. So it's a very important <coughs> part of broadcasters. You know, they've really got to understand this going forward, haven't they? Yeah, absolutely. It's very, very critical because uh, it's it's only possible to do a limited amount of task manually. Uh, you have to move towards automation as much as possible. And I think in today's age, with the amount of consumers out there that are consuming content online, it's important to personalize content at different levels. And you can't do that manually for millions of users. And so mm -hmm. AI has to be there to kind of automate a bunch of these tasks. And you mentioned consumers there. How is AI affecting the behavior of consumers? 
and it's spoiling them for uh, multiple choices because it's understanding what the consumers like watching uh, it understands a pattern it understands uh, the different kind of content genre that they're excited about ai can actually analyze and help create that content uh, in real time uh, which means that use your existing file to create content or at least push the content in a sense where users get excited to watch the content i think that's going to be important because ai is going to be holding a ton of data in terms of what the users understand and kind of consume content in their own patterns. Fantastic. Where can people find you at the show, Vidyak? Well, we are going to be there at the booth. Uh, our booth number is, uh, I, I don't recollect my booth w number. W West Hall, another West yes. Hall, uh, 1272, 1272. There we go. There go. And I know also, Vinayak, you're speaking in the Create Innovation Theatre on Monday at uh, 11 o'clock. So uh, anyone that wants to learn more about this interesting topic can come and see you there. Absolutely. Looking forward to meeting everyone. Fantastic. Thank you very cool. much indeed. Looking Thank forward you. to seeing you at the show. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Ray. See bye you. Bye. 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 Cool. So now we've got uh, a mate of ours. Mr. Mr. MXF, Mr. MXF. Joined, otherwise known by Bruce Devlin. Bruce Devlin. Who's, yeah, um, we're going to find out all what he's doing in a second. Just wait for him to be patched through. Uh, if, you watch, if you watch Kit Plus TV on a regular everywhere. basis, yeah. Bruce is a regular um, insert, shall we? And he's normally demystifying some jargon we don't understand. He's helping us understand the world of broadcasting. Indeed. Tech. And yeah. Bruce, he your smiling face. It's good to see you. <laughs> good morning, chaps. How are you? We're well, very good. Very thank good. you. Who's the person sat to your to your left? Is that, that that's, that's Ken? He's my focus assistant. So right. whenever you whenever you see my videos being blurry, it's because I've lost Ken and he's either fallen down or broken himself. He he tends to drink a bit, so he's he's got problems. Poor old plastic Ken. We do need a Ken, don't we? I think Absolutely. everyone needs a Ken. Yeah. So as we as we well, touched on just then, we we speak to you regularly about demystifying the industry. What are you doing at NAB? What's your focus? So my focus is a project that I'm putting together called metarex.media. Okay, and basically, right. I'm trying to make metadata flow. Anybody who's done anything in um, remote production or virtual production or tried to do multi-stage QC knows that it's a lot easier to lose the metadata on the floor of your production studio, or it's a lot easier to only do QC once than it is to persist the metadata all the way through the value chain so that you can go glass to glass with metadata as easy it is to go glass to glass with video and audio. So metarex.media is essentially a project I'm putting together where I want a large number of companies to put a small amount of money in a pot. I will then use that to create some free open source software that they can then put back in their products. Okay. So there's a framework that will get your metadata, whether it's from a lens or a tripod or a widget that you made out of a Raspberry Pi on Thursday morning and get all of that into the production chain so that you can use it from end to end in your productions. Right. And that's it really. And I've got a website and I'm basically going around talking to people to see if anybody cares. Luckily, what? it seems that people do. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's going to care, really. But uh, I mean, it, uh, how important are these kind of things? You know, you've been involved in a lot of, uh, let's say, you know, standard packages and standards of methods of delivery and all the rest of it. You know, why is this important? Well, we live in an age, I don't know if you've noticed, where AI starts to become important and gathering the metadata that's important to you makes yeah. a difference to how you make your productions. And if we leave most of the actual metadata on the floor, but then try and guess it and make it up with AI later on, that seems like a less optimal approach than actually knowing who was in front of the camera, for example, when you were shooting them. Mm. Because that person in front of the camera, they got paid. So if accounts are able to remember who was in front of the camera, why can't engineering and production remember who was in front of the camera? So having that concrete information that you can then mine at a later stage with your new fangled GPT-11 T7 or whatever it is that you're going to mine it with, that seems to me like an important thing nowadays. And what's funny is we first demonstrated this back in the basement of the BBC in 1998 and nobody cared. However, the video and audio paths became the MXF file format. Yeah. So people cared about the video and audio back then, but metadata seemed like some airy-fairy, namby-pamby thing, you know, why yeah. would you bother? But I think now in 2023, it's important enough that if I can get enough different companies from different bits of the industry to just put a little bit of metadata into the chain, then maybe we'll get something interesting out of it. Yeah. Brilliant. And yes. are people going to be able to talk to you and see this over in Vegas, Bruce? 
Yeah, well, I'm basically walking the floors. So what I'm doing is people who I think should be interested, I'm making appointments with. But if somebody wants me to come and visit them, uh, metarex.media is the website. There's a contact form there. Please just say, come and see me. And I will then work with your di diary, whoever you are, to try and figure out how I can find you. And um, I will do all the walking. I will come to you. I'm, I'm that keen to make this work. <laughs> <laughs> and will we see you on a bicycle? You will see me on a bicycle, yes. Hopefully our Friday bike ride will still take place and hopefully we won't have random hailstorms or anything else crazy that the weather might throw at us because that bit of the world's a bit weird at the moment. Yeah, so that's it not an exclusive thing. That's basically no. we, we'll give you more information a bit later on in the show, but on Friday, the whatever it is, on the Friday before NAB, yeah. we'll all meet outside the Westgate at 6.30am and we're doing a, a road bike ride, which well, is pretty much hot. off on cycle path, most of time, path. It? to the Hoover Dam. Yeah. It's a lovely route. Me and Matt have done it a few times. Smooth pavement. And anyone interested could just drop us an email, drop us a line on social media, whatever, and very welcome. And Bruce um, will be there to tell you all about it. And Bruce will be all there all is. about, to tell you all about metrex.media for four hours. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> I can talk for that long. I'm on a bike as well. So I'm sure you fine. can, yeah. <laughs> no one's <Brilliant>. died yet. <laughs> Bruce, thanks for demystifying it as usual. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to seeing you on the bike and on the show floor. Thank you, and good luck with your marathon, guys. Hope it goes well. Cheers. Take care. Thank Thanks you. again. Bye-bye. Ciao. -bye. So, uh, Vislink is next. Vislink, Jerome. Jerome, yep. So, um, uh, we're just going to patch him across, and... Uh, yeah, yeah, great. I can't remember... Do, I, do you know, Vislink's one of those ones... I, I, we speak to them often, but I can't remember where they came in the last, Mickey, the last marathon. Mickey, wasn't yeah. it, normally? Yeah. He did, didn't he? Hmm. Yeah. Um, it's... Uh, yeah, it's uh, hopefully uh, um, it, it, it won't be long before he uh, before he gets in. And they sort out their technical issues, but that that bike ride, it has to be said while we're waiting for Jerome to come in, um, it is good. It's it's a good it's, it's, it's a good it's networking a good session. Actually. Jet lag cure. Jet lag cure. Because you get lots of fresh air, and at six thirty, it's, it's, it's not 6 as hard it's as pretty it fresh. Sounds. Oh no, yeah. no, it's, it's all no. flat, isn't it? It's all flat. <laughs> yeah. Jerome from Vislink. Hi, how are you doing? Yes, I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, fantastic, thank you. What part of the world are you are you calling in I'm, from? I'm a, a country right next door in the Netherlands, uh, okay. Netherlands right now. So fantastic. not too far away from you, I believe. <laughs> no, absolutely. So straight to it, what are you doing at NAB? Well, we have a really exciting NAB. Um, uh, you know, we're going to show a lot of new products because, as you may know, Vislink bought a company uh, called Mobile Viewpoint about a year and a half ago. Yes. And obviously, you know, we've been integrating the companies together. But the idea was, of course, you know, to also release combined products and, and especially services as well. So that's what we've been working on. And one of the first things we are releasing is a hybrid solution between the Vislink Kofdom uh, transmitters and the mobile viewpoint cellular 5G technology. And so we're the first ones to do it. And I think it's really exciting because this opens up, you know, markets, new markets, but it also helps improve our cli uh, clients' stability when they want to go live somewhere in the world. So to give you an idea, you know, if you're in the stadium, you know, it's busy inside, you want to have, of course, the cough them, uh, coverage, you know, with the fixed receive yep. points and everything. But then, you know, when a team wins, you, you go outside. Obviously, you want to cover that as well, but you're not, you know, no longer in the area where you actually are covered by traditional cough them. So then we seamlessly move over to 5G. And same goes, for example, in aircraft, you know, if they're flying in mountainous area, if you're high up, you may have cough them connectivity. If you're lower, we can switch you over. Um, so we're releasing a new product, for example, called the Click. It's a, a smaller uh, encoder. Um, it has two video inputs, H.265 encoding. And, you know, this is a unit that can, for example, be used for traditional uh, camera transmission. But also, you know, we see a market for building it into, you know, the, the, the bigger drones, the UAVs, you know, the fixed wings. Yeah. And then you have a, you know, a, a, a call of them link um, uh, streaming back to video from that system. Now, also, what's nice about it, we're also releasing a, a 5G module for that one. Uh, so, again, you get that hybrid solution, of course, but it also has some other, you know, upside. For example, it links then into the Link Matrix platform, which traditionally was the mobile viewpoint management platform. Now we're rolling it out all over Vislink. And we use that platform, first of all, to help you manage your systems in the field. Um, so not just setting it up, but also support. So we redid our support department now offering 24-7 support with dedicated support people that can actually remotely log into your unit and help you out. 
but also it gives you the ability to actually distribute video elsewhere in the world. So we use SRT as one of our uh, transmission protocols. So you can either go to from one of our encoders to another system elsewhere in the world, managed through link matrix, but also you can use it like type of a VMS where you know people can just aggregate all the videos in there and then share them anywhere uh, with anybody anywhere, either on a laptop or also on your phone, because we also provide a web app for it. So there's really a lot of stuff happening in that space as well. Then, you know, talking about drones, we also show our drone backhauling kit. The, the, one of the big things I always think is, you know, if you get the video down on the ground, it's great. But those smaller drones, you can very easily do it because, you know, you have this proprietary uh, link between the controller and the drone. But from there, we need to get it back in real time, if you can, of course, to a studio, for example. Now, we, we offer something called the base link, which is a, a, a smaller cellular encoder. Um, and, you know, you just hook it up to your, to your controller, you flick it on, and it automatically connects back to the studio. And we actually can deliver that in a belly case type of solution with batteries and, you know, everything that's, that's connected to that. So I think that's really exciting. And then uh, also, you know, we have the Remy solutions, uh, our four camera uh, systems, uh, Terralink 4CM. It's a four camera input. Uh, it has full tally control uh, or full tally and Remy control. So you can do shading and white balancing, uh, making it possible to, you know, very cheaply or inexpensively, however you want to call it, you know, do a remote production for it. And lastly is, of course, our AI solutions. You know, we have vPilot, which is our fully automated studio where we use AI technology to just, you know, uh, uh, do a full production where we actually compensate automatically, for example, when people are moving in their seat or stuff like that. Or, you know, if somebody looks over, you know, we see an ear picture, you know, we don't want that, that we automatically switch over to another camera. But also Trolley Live, you know, our single a box unit that you just click open and then you have one camera which we for example used in the uh, olympics uh, the last two olympic uh, games we did so it's a whole uh, broad portfolio so i encourage everybody to come over so we can show you in person absolutely and where absolutely. can people find you we're in the west hall uh you know right where a lot of the whole uh, little st streaming is going on yeah. uh everyone's in west uh, hall so far yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh really okay yeah it's good yeah it's, it's really where we see a lot of stuff happening you know and we realized yeah. last year you know traditionally we've been a lot in central but we thought okay this is a really nice opportunity and i think there's a lot of other companies also that are in the same space as we are so hopefully that enhances you know uh also the traffic for you know the same kind of crowd that we're looking for uh you know and we've got a large booth we show everything so you know mm. uh, i'm really excited about going there Brilliant. yeah fantastic so west hall and yeah we, um, i think we're spending time on your booth as well so we'll be looking forward to catching up I like the, yeah i like the sound of i want to go and see more about how that is actually arriving the, the combination of Cofton and 5g in one box and yeah uh, that, 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 that yeah, it's, it's, delivery it's really interesting yeah, because you know nobody has yeah, it yeah. and uh, i mean the yeah. opportunities are are everywhere you know you yeah. can use this you know on, on for example the stadiums we did the the super bowl the rihanna part was done with our systems you know it's just to show you know that's the space we're in now yeah. if you can enhance it by actually getting videos while she's moving out and doing all the stuff yeah. well, obviously going. it's going to be really Seamless. exciting so. brilliant fantastic right. thank you very much indeed we're looking forward to seeing you in vegas hope you have a great show absolutely thank you Jeremy. have a great day thanks guys Take care. bye bye, bye, -bye. Yeah. bye, -bye. Yeah. now our next guest guests we're guests to do a double up we've got um chris and edge i think from bubblebee uh, edge aj i don't know edge. Edge. right okay so um and I have to be we're, them, we're, we're, we're okay. talking to them about well hopefully we can hear them because that's what we're talking to them about yeah in ear monitoring <laughs> come in yeah we use it and uh, absolutely it, it's transformed our um uh, our ability to, to, to communicate. It has. Uh, you know, doing our um, doing our remote our TV stuff over the... Over the yeah. You know, so and with guests. But during, it's worth saying, during production. COVID, we were remote 50 miles apart with a green screen in respective homes. Yep. Um, communicating via an earpiece, yep. which we we tried a few, didn't we? Yeah, um, we had and a couple, they, uh, and, and they were appalling. And if you sat there all day, it starts to ache a little it, bit. Yeah, it just gets in the way. So, and, until and now. Course, until now. Until now. And uh, here they are. We, so, we'd like to welcome Chris and, Chris Ash, and Bubblebee. Hi, Bubblebee, how you doing? Bubblebee, how you doing? Hey, Matt. Hey, Simon. How are you guys doing? Hey, guys. All right, all right. right. We can hear you loud and clear, which is a good <laughs> thing, uh, because we're talking about <laughs> in-ear monitoring, aren't we? Yes. So, so tell, us, tell us what we're wearing, because you can probably describe it better than we can. Sure. So what you guys are wearing, as the same as Chris and I are, are 
is our little IFB earpiece called the Sidekick. That's it. So okay, lovely. Yeah. It's a very small. It's it's one of the smallest drivers in the world, and it sits inside just inside your ear canal. Yeah. So when you're wearing it, uh, um, it's virtually invisible to the eye because the cable is so thin. Mm. And despite it being thin, it's very robust. Well, we made that um, comment early on that we thought, uh, how long is this going to last? But it's yeah. tough. <laughs> it, you know, it, it, isn't, it isn't an issue. Mm. Exactly. The, you know, yeah. the cable's Kevlar reinforced. So yeah. um, I think we tested it on about uh, 100,000 weighted rotations. And it was, wow. you know, we had to give up the test in the end. <laughs> they were like, this thing's no not going to yeah. break. Mm. Yeah. 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 Well, also the other interesting thing about it is one of the one of the previous in ear monitors that we used, the, the old fashioned. Uh, I've got to, I can't remember all the different elements now, but uh, the driver sits on the back of your collar, and it goes up a, a, a tube into the sort of is it the accordion or the or the cone that goes into your ear, something along those lines. Now, yeah, the, the point here is that the driver is actually in your ear. It's in. It hasn't got distance to travel. Getting the amplification in the old fashioned ones was. Bit yeah, of a I mean you it? can't you can't it, it's hard it's a hard product to actually talk about isn't it because you've got to experience what you can hear yeah and the clarity yeah so we're using them obviously here to hear you and also we've got a switch so we can hear John and the team talking to us off off air so we know yeah I guess coming next so we know what's going on and the clarity that we've got in our ear just through this tiny cable is just incredible yeah I mean, it really is excellent and, and as you say like you kind of really need to experience it to to get an understanding of how good it is, mm. um, the the beauty of it as well is um, the the ear tips that we that we provide with it. You have three different ear tips for different kind of applications. So I'm not sure if you can see this. It's very small. We, so we, we call yeah. this one the oh, satellite. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's it. It's got a, it's got these little holes here. So this is perfect for kind of broadcast applications, or you know, even with uh, the two of you speaking. You know, it means that you're uh, the passage to your to your ear is not blocked by the whole kind of driver and the whole, whole earpiece. So you've still got some room for um, your co-presenter to hear them nice, yeah. nice and clearly, uh, clearly. as yeah. well as, you know, receiving your comms from your producer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it's such a comfy fit. I mean, I'm wearing this other mic over, over my ears as well, but honestly, you don't even feel it. It's just weird. It's, exactly. Um, I, I think the weight is 360 milligrams in total. So, you know, a big yeah. difference yeah. from, you know, it's lightweight, as, as you low said, the old acoustic air tubes. Yeah. 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 No, it's, yeah. It's, it's brilliant. So, what are the typical applications? Because I, I, I still see people on BBC News with big, big coils behind their ear. Yeah. What's, you know, why are they still wearing these what old, still wearing old things <laughs> when, when you've got these yeah. amazing things? Yeah. Um, they're, they're a little more expensive than the, um, you know, the traditional acoustic in-ear tubes, which are very cheap. Um, yeah. They're kind of, you know, almost throwaway items when the, when they break mm. and things like that. Um, but so, the, you know, the, the Psychic is a little more expensive. We're actually running a promotion on it right now, which is 15% off. Okay. Um, through our website or through one of our resellers worldwide. Um, that's That finishes on Friday, actually. Um, cool. Okay. But yeah, it's, it's just a, a matter of people getting used to, to the new technology. Yeah. And for the sake, can, 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 where where can they find it on the show floor at NAB? Is there is there anywhere? Is there any resellers out there going to be? Is 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 Bumblebee going to be there? Are you going to be? On? Unfortunately, we're not going to be there this year in an official capacity. Um, we do have some of our our demo products on the sound devices stand. Sound okay. devices is, is probably the yeah. place to send them then. Yeah, where yeah. people can uh, uh, hopefully get a yeah a demonstration. And how how do you see like? An evolution of in-ear monitoring. I mean, is is this the best? I mean, this this is fantastic. It's amazing, the best I've ever heard. Is there a next level, or is this basically what we've got? Yeah, <laughs> I, I think the, the yeah. next level. The next level is is to to go wireless. Um, you know, there yeah. are some wireless ones on the market at the moment, um, but they are insanely expensive. Mm. Um, with and you know that they they work on a uh, two point four gigahertz frequency. Okay. Um, so cool. really, if if you want to get solid wireless, you need to um, be using your typical kind of IFB receiver, which yep. works on your UHF frequencies. Mm. Um, yeah. Right. The next the next level is to try and you know eliminate the cable completely. I mean, as you can see, I'm wearing it, and it's 
it's probably a little more visible on me because obviously I don't have hair <laughs> um, <laughs> to, to, to hide the cable. But um, yeah, to, to, to make it wireless, I think the earpiece alone yeah. is probably the next, yeah. next yeah. kind of your, evolution of it. Your your Zoom image is Zoom frozen. Is we're, we're still hearing yeah. you loud and clear. Yeah. Um, oh, I think we might have lost them. Oh, we've lost them. Well, it was very them. good, and we we know we can send yeah, them to it's, sound device. It's, uh, oh, we're, we're, oh, we're, we're, we're back. back. We're, 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 we're back. Fantastic. So, just before we leave you, if you've got anything else that you want to shout about to the people watching, uh, so yeah, I, I guess I'd. So our main kind of um, product range is based around um, accessories, mounting options, wind protection for Lavelia mics, shotgun mics. Yes, um, of course. We've got a lot of exciting developments coming up this year um, within those ranges for a whole range of different microphones for location, production sound, broadcast use, and even a videographer as well. So, yeah, keep keep an eye on the website, bubblebeeindustries.com, and our social media channels. We'll, we'll have a lot, to, uh, a lot to come this year. Cool. Bubblebeeindustries.com. We shall make yep. sure we put people there. And yeah, thanks for joining us. It's been really interesting. Thanks, Matt. And thanks, Simon. Thanks, thanks for letting us use your, your, your yeah. in-ear monitoming because everything's no coming in loud and clear. Thank you. Take care, chat. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. So we've got Fabio here next, I think. Yeah, I think the, the V-Nova guys. Yeah. Uh, so, we've yeah. spoken to Fabio on a number of occasions, haven't we? We have. Um, Always a, a really interesting chap to talk to, as are all our guests, of course. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I'm, so what I'm trying to remember is what we last spoke about. I think uh, it was the new codec, the OCEVC. Um, OCEVC, which I always get my tongue twisted around that one. It's, but, um, it's, it is a, a tongue twister. Here he is. Good. He's, he's nearly ready. Morning, Fabio. Good morning. Good How morning. are you? <laughs> I didn't quite catch if uh, the tongue twister was uh, something related to me. Is that <laughs> my better acronym that I'm going to talk about, L I guess? LVEC, LCE, no, <laughs> LCEVC. LCEVC, yeah. we, we just don't say it quickly, that, that's all. Yeah. So. Uh, no, 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 no. Is, uh, MPEG specializes in uh, acronyms, and uh, they ran out of three <laughs> letters, four letters, so we got to the five letter acronyms now. So. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> so, Fabio, what, what could people expect at. Um, NAB this year. What's new in MPEG-5? Yeah. yeah, I mean, the, um, I mean, very excited again to be at NAB this year as um, as a company. I represent Vinova. We are one of the sponsors of the LCDC showcase in the West Hall. Uh, MPEG-5 LCDC is a compression standard, is, uh, is one of the latest MPEG standards, is an enhancement layer, is a technology fundamentally that provides uh, higher efficiency enhancement, LCEVC stands for Low Complexity Enhancement Video Coding. Uh, we joke that the complexity is only in the acronym because the, 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 the standard itself is low complexity and provides additional compression efficiency and computational efficiencies to other standards. So it can enable higher quality for lower bit rates, up to 40% savings, uh, 3x, faster transcoding time, so better sustainability even, right? When applied to existing workflows, they use ADC, HEVC, AV1, or even VVC in the future. Mm. So it's uh, it's hard to talk about uh, technology. It's hard to talk about technology at trade shows. So what we've been doing uh, together with 30 other companies really is put together a bit of a showcase, right? Moving from the technology to talking about products in real life applications. Mm. So we're coming together with, as I said, 30 other companies uh, showing products uh, across different uh, application broadcast, OTT streaming, social media delivery, and even XR and uh, VR. Cool. Companies include, uh, we have right, companies from Allegro, AMD, Amlogic, Atem, Harmonic, Intel, Main Concept, NVIDIA. Uh, real tech, other less known companies, perhaps uh, smaller companies that are just growing in, in new applications like Red Pill VR and Presence, Teal Player, and of course, Vinova themselves. Mm. So, hopefully, really, the idea is to show kind of real life applications for the technology and interoperable products for all from all these different companies. Mm. So, what, um, what type of demonstrations are you going to be showcasing on the yeah. booth, Fabio? Yeah, recently we've uh, um, 
together with uh, broadcasters, streaming companies, we've uh, conducted a number of different trials for the technology. For example, with the in the during the World Cup at the end of last year, together with TV Global, we put the first uh, live uh, LCVC channel uh, on air uh, as a trial. We've done also uh, trials using uh, BBC as a base technology for the future of digital terrestrial television in Brazil. So the idea is to bring some of these trials into the whole at NAB and show basically uh, the encoders, the players, the, the equipment that was used to deliver some of these trials. So we have demonstrations with three different commercial encoder vendors and uh, software players used in uh, kind of popular open source projects that are used by streamers like Shaka Play or ExoPlay or FFmpeg as well. We have uh, uh, video decoding on TVs and set-top boxes, so we're basically putting an end-to-end system where you know we pipe um, video through the encoders, decoding them on TVs, on set-top boxes, on PCs, on mobile apps, showing really that uh, whatever the application, the ecosystem for support for the technologies is coming together. It's now real and people can start deploying uh, kind of services using LCVC. It's interesting to see because, you, you know, demonstrating these things in a show environment when you're actually really talking about <laughs> putting signals all over the world mm. sometimes, yeah, it's, it's got to be uh, tricky. Um, yeah. It is tricky, it is tricky, and, uh, you know, uh, it is always within the constraints of, uh, uh, you know, the, the show environments uh, and the, the availability of equipment there. But the idea is very much to get people to, you know, to, to see and touch with hands uh, the uh, kind of the tools that are available yeah. for them to then follow up and uh, carry out their own trial, their own tests in a real life environment, right? This is what we want. We want uh, kind of like to be people just to try it. Yeah. And where are they going to find you? I bet you're in West Hall. Yes, you are. <laughs> we are in West Hall. I forget the actual booth. Well, we're actually two. in two booths. So we're near yeah. the, 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 the theater W3074 and W3075. Uh, I wrote it down so that I can, <laughs> I can have it handy just in case you ask. We've got, yeah. Brilliant. Well, I've got to have notes. Fabio, that's great. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks for joining us. And um, yeah, we, we'll, we, we'll be seeing you over at the show. So um, Yeah, hope to see you in uh, Vegas. Thanks very much for having me. No, thanks for joining us. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, have a great day. Bye. Bye-bye. 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 Take care. Bye-bye. Uh, so next up is Miguel from Brains. Miguel. Uh, yeah. We last... Spoke to, I think I last spoke to Miguel at ISC in Barcelona um, yep. when they, we were talking about VR and all that type of stuff. Yeah, VR, XR, etc. Uh, everything, there we go, everything green screen. If you see a green screen at uh, is that a, a green, big green screen. Miguel, uh, is that, that a green that, screen yeah. or is that a background? Yeah. It really looks like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I mean, if you can tell, it's good for me. <laughs> there you go. Good morning, Miguel. Great to see you. <laughs> good to see you too. Um, so we last spoke in Barcelona. Give, yes. um, assuming people haven't seen the video, lots have, but assuming they haven't, tell us what you'll be doing at NAB and what you'll be talking to people about this year. Well, NAB is a different show than ISC, so the, what we're showing is a bit different yeah. as well. Uh, that is we were showing Edison, which we will be bringing at, uh, to NAB as well, but in a different manner, just to uh, to show how it, Edison can help uh, broadcast in a different way. Uh, but of course, uh, for NAB, we want to show our, our, our best as usual and our latest advances and developments. Uh, we want to show virtual production at its best, and we want to show all that it takes to bring a huge show uh, for any kind of, of content creator. So we will have a, uh, last year we, we started combining with a green screen with a LED wall. And this year we're doing more or less the same thing, but evolving our offering, including much, uh, more developed, uh, features and, uh, and the higher end stuff at, at the same time. Mm. Yeah. I mean, a brainstorm have become known for combining technologies haven't you from vr and xr and and virtual production how, how do you see this progressing into the future well uh, we've been in virtual production for for 
years, decades, I would say. Mm. The thing is that the technology that allows us to create such virtual content has been evolving. We started from green screen with huge uh, hardware. Now we have a uh, more compact workstations, still very powerful. Uh, but uh, what we had only for, for green screen, because there was no other media available, now we can combine with other um, visualization media, such as LED screens. In this mm-hmm. case, at the Navy, we're partnering with Unilumin, and we will be showing a combination of green screen talents with a uh, on-life um, real uh, talents within a, a, a LED wall environment, which we can even evolve, as I mentioned earlier, with a set extension, color matching, um, all kinds of, of course, camera tracking with our partners of Stipe and, uh, and Panasonic and, and some others. And, uh, of course, creating a huge environment and a perfect environment to show how virtual production can help broadcasters and any kind of content creators today to provide uh, a fantastic show for the audience, regardless if it's drama, film, um, entertainment, or even news and sports. And and you'll be taking this the, the, your, your usual crew. I don't know why, why, why that's of interest, but it, your presenter is fantastic. Yes. He, says he knows he knows what he's doing, and they they just have a brilliant way of put you know of of, of showing it off. Well, uh, as a live crew. show, the the presenter, the talents are a, a, an integral part of the whole offering. I mean, they they do they know what they're doing. Uh, we come up with a script that they can perform and 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 make it uh, attractive for the audience. Not just a pure raw data explaining features, but also telling a story, which is all about. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it is storytelling, isn't it? Yeah. So, if 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 you if you had thirty seconds to just to pitch to one person why they should come and see you at NAB Miguel what would you what would you say well uh, 30 seconds I try to make it in 20 I mean uh, if you want to go to virtual production for any kind of application uh, serial drama news and sports uh, even including augmented reality data driven graphics everything all together in a, in a very simple and attractive way Please come and see, brainstorm, and you'll see how our products can perform anything that you would like to do. Fantastic. Now, you're in the North Hall 2639, I believe. 2639, that's correct. Yep. And we, as usual, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be spending time with you and the team as well to find out a lot more. Um, but until then, Miguel, safe travels, and we're looking forward to seeing you in, in Vegas. Looking forward to see you guys. Yep. Take care. Thanks Take for joining care. us. Take care. Bye. Thank Bye-bye. you so much. Yeah. Bye-bye. So we've got Philippe, Philippe, I believe, from Newsbridge. Newsbridge. Joining us next. Newsbridge. I reckon cool. this is AI based. I think it is. From what is that? Because uh, question one is tell us about your groundbreaking. Oh, it is. AI that, yeah, technology. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, I just, I actually genuinely remember <laughs> I, I, I that. Know. <laughs> Did a little bit of research before I came on. <laughs> Not much. <laughs> Good morning, um, Philippe. How are you? Uh, hey guys, I'm fine. And you? Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Very good, Philippe. Matt's got a question for you. Well, no, I mean, it, you've, it, this is all about AI. And actually, I have to say, Newsbridge is new to me. Uh, Newsbridge and AI, tell us more. <laughs> <laughs> so, basically, we're addressing an issue that everyone knows in personal life. Um, but um, we're speaking about video. So, today, searching among video is complex. It's very hard. Finding a good piece of content, a blog article on Google is easy. But when you need to find the very accurate moment of a video, that's another mess. And media organizations are facing, are facing this issue. They have tremendous amount of content in their archive. They are in mind to digitize, but they're saying, well, we can digitize, but we need to be able to find our golden nuggets that are inside to generate value. And basically, our AI is able to do that, to do all the heavy lifting. And we are working to make content accessible, whether if it's tons of archive or tons of live streaming, simultaneously streaming. Uh, so we're using AI to be able to detect what's inside the content based on computer vision, based on what you're processing, transcription, translation, so that with a simple search engine, it's very easy to find out the 10 seconds the editor needs to build um, a relevant edit. Cool. Well, what's the impact on the customer here? Because, you know, uh, okay, great. You uh, Anything that you're bringing in now, anything in just now, anything in archive. 
where that archive might be is 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 a you know is, is another question it cloud or, or on prem is it what's the impact of introducing your ai solutions into that news environment so the, the claim we have is that any editor or journalist will be able to find content within two seconds uh, without having a good knowledge um, in how to search Searching in an already existing legacy archive system requires quite of skills, like uh, you need to know, okay, should I write a car or auto or vehicles to find out yeah. um, a, a truck, for example. We make it semantic so that um, you don't need the help of someone that knows how to index to find the content. It's really simple text, like a Google good search, and it's very easy to find out because it is semantic. And that's... Uh, how journalists can work with this kind of tool that you need to build an edit of five minutes. Um, sourcing content will take maybe 50% of the time of the edit. If this sourcing content part can take like one or two minutes instead of 30, then you can build more content and also build more relevant content. So that's what we're doing for them. Yeah, cool. it's a real efficiency tool. Uh, and yeah. yeah, so this is the new AI detection tool you've just released. So we um, we uh, we have two announcements. One is um, is a pre-release that is not official yet that will be uh, uh, announced just before NAB, and it's a second breaking AI tech. But that the one that is official is about landmark detection. Landmark detection is a key thing. So think, let's think back about sourcing content. As a journalist, the first thing you will want to your edit is to set the location. Where does this story is happening? So in nearly every story, you will need um, like a five or 10 second shot of, I don't know, a place, a picture of a place is setting, setting up the location, the White House, the Eiffel Tower, the Sydney Opera. And in any content, you need that. So what we've, um, what we've done is to build an algorithm that is able to detect that on video on, based on massive amount of data sets so that you want you are working on an edit on Miami, for example. Then you want you will just write Miami uh, location, and you will have the Miami capital, uh, and maybe some famous landmarks inside Miami that have been tagged automatically by the machine. Mm -hmm. And 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 I just mentioned to one of our previous guests that it's quite difficult to demonstrate these things on you know in, in, within the limitations of the show floor. You, we, we can just come on and just get a live demo. We, have, you, have you got masses of media in a uh, on store and the uh, you know in storage on, on the on the uh, on the stand that we can come and? Yeah, absolutely. So there, there will be two setup. Um, first, within the announcement, uh, we'll provide a way for um, any contact to test how powerful the AI is and how it will help solving problem of media logging. Uh, and of course, in the booth, we have lots of uh, workspaces with tons of content, whether it's sports or news, so that um, any people can imagine what it would look like uh, on its own content. Basically, it's a generic AI that can work on any kind of content that can be trained into 100,000 of hours of video. So it's it's relevant on any kind of use case involving videos. Yeah. And just finally, what other demos can uh, people see on your booth at the show? So we'll we'll see um, uh, uh, this new release uh, working into one of our flagship products, which is called the Media Hub. The Media Hub is um, um, a central repository with a search that is very simple, very easy to use, and people will be able to see how powerful it is to find out contents that have not been indexed by human, but only by the machine. So how in two seconds we can find relevant pieces of content to build edit. We'll also showcase our live asset manager, which is a tool that can index content in live, so based on 100 live stream in the same times, uh, and also our media marketplace, which is a media with uh, media receivability functions to generate new revenue stream based on assets. So we'll have those three demos with our new groundbreaking AI tech that will be unveiled very soon. And we can't wait to show uh, to to the show at NAB. Yeah. Fantastic. And finally, where can people where? find you, Philip? Uh, uh, so, good question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll be at on uh, West Hall Booth 2073. Yeah. Fantastic. Philip, thank you very much indeed. That's really interesting stuff. And um, I'm sure we'll be dropping by in a few weeks' time.
Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah. Well, thank we'll, you. Uh, we'll come thank by. you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Um, that's cool. Know. That's interesting stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, no, really cool. cool. I, I, again, it's another one of those things that drives efficiencies. Mm. It's, it's, it's just yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah. making life easier. Yeah, well. and, and you say it's a challenge to demonstrate this on a on the on the show floor. So it's good they've come up with ways to actually visualise it in person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so we've we've got, got Jeff. straight on to um, Jeff Steden from SDVI Corporation. Uh, just waiting for him to come on, come in. Yeah, I think we should, um, he, he, they help people. They help people get to the cloud. Want a better way of putting it? I yeah, think. we're, we're going to find out. Memory. Be, um, yep, yep. Yeah, there's that transitional process of going from. Yeah. Anyway, Jeff. Hi, you're here. I think. Morning, Jeff. Hi. How are you guys? Yeah. Very good. Very good indeed. Very good indeed. Looking forward to hearing what SDVI are doing at NAB this year. Yeah, sure. So I'm sure you're hearing a lot of interesting things from from all the different uh, folks that you're interviewing. It's always fascinating. Yeah. You know, so we, we um, yeah, we're we're excited about this this NAB. Uh, last year we went back as one of the first one after the pandemic, and great show last year. But we're expecting uh, really good things this year. Uh, obviously, we expect a little bit larger attendance. But uh, what we're excited about is the international contingent that we're expecting to see. And uh, you know we're excited to show our our media supply chain platform. We've um, we've got a lot of uh, new enhancements that we've been working on. You know, it's interesting. A lot of companies sort of save up their releases for NAB, uh, but as a cloud SaaS provider, we don't have the concept of major releases. We we issue new features every two weeks uh, throughout the year. Uh, but as we look to NAB, we want to kind of bundle them up and talk about them. We've got uh, new support for 4K and HDR, so. Uh, some new support for uh, new applications like Cinesert and CloudFront. Um, all of these sort of make the Rally platform uh, even more relevant to companies like movie studios. You know, we've traditionally been in the large broadcasters and large media companies. Uh, and with some of the new features, we've really enhanced the platform's usability by the studio community uh, for their supply chains and for their preparation of content. Hmm. It's a full, uh, it's, yeah, it's a, yeah. You've got a lot going on. I think. Have you got? Have you got a question now? Hi, Jeff. Neil from Hi. the NAB show. How are you doing? Hey, good. Good to see you. I just wondered if you could tell us a little bit about what you'll be doing in the West Hall studio because uh, you've taken over a fair chunk of uh, of the time slots in there, and it. Uh, I know you've got some customers and people coming in, but just be good to know, uh, you know, what you'll be covering off in there. Yeah, no, we um, we are t taking a number of slots in that studio in the in the West Hall, and and as you mentioned, we plan to interview uh, really a, a, a wide variety of, of both customers and non-customers. So we're really looking for sort of industry thought leaders and some partners of ours. We want to have conversations about this migration to the cloud, the the evolution of the media supply chain in each of their of their respective organizations. And we feel like you know one of the one of the things that we um, really try to promote and what we find very valuable in the market is when we have the opportunity for end users to talk to end users or customers to give their experiences to others. Because uh, there's a lot of learning that's happened over the last few years as, as companies have transformed their business and have, have migrated to the cloud. And so the interview studio is an opportunity for us to try to get those folks to have those conversations. We'll record them, we'll, we'll post them, uh, but really trying to, to just enable a dialogue uh, between us and, and those that are interested in talking about their experiences. Mm. It comes down to, again, that, that whole thing of, uh, you know, getting people to talk in person. It, Absolutely. Live in an event. Mm. It, it, it makes a difference at a show. Creating it, those network opportunities is uh, is what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Learning, Absolutely. coming together. So um, you're in West Hall. That's right. We're in the, the West Hall uh, 2723, I believe, is the booth number. It could be 2327 as well. 2327, that's it. <laughs> well, it's by the details. Yeah. The West Hall. I mean, it, it, it seems like a real buzz this year in West Hall so far. It does, so, yeah. Uh, it seems um, really cool. But, uh, it, you know, people are it, definitely going to have to make the effort to, to go over there. Yeah, no, I think so. You know, the, the one interesting thing about the West Hall is they've got those different zones. So there's the content monetization zone. There's a content okay, intelligent, yeah. intelligent content zone. And uh, 
uh, content everywhere kind of zone. And, and it, interesting, our booth is located not not really by design, although I should take credit for it, but we're right on the border <laughs> where all three of those kind of come together. And, you know, you think about what companies are trying to do these days in terms of monetizing their content and, and all the work they have to do to prepare it for all these different platforms. It's kind of a perfect place for us to be where that all those topics kind of intersect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking Brilliant. forward to it. Jeff, so, thank you very much got, indeed. Yeah, yeah got the West we'll um, make sure people go to West Hall 2327. And, 2327. Uh, and they can, <laughs> they can hear all about it from you. Thank you very much. Yeah, we'd love, love to talk to folks. So looking forward to seeing everyone there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Have a good show. Take care. Thank you. Bye you bye. too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, it's important to say that, you know, that, that, and, and these are the kind of people that we, we all talk about this change. And mm. so many people don't know how to achieve change, how to get yeah. to the cloud. How to get, and these are the kind of people that help people help yeah. uh, customers. And, and this is uh, an example of, of going to a show and finding out something you didn't know before you got there, isn't it? As, yeah, as yeah before. absolutely. Uh, but also going there with an agenda of actually learning something. Yeah, um, yeah, no, absolutely. So we've got so, uh, Dave Letson next from Calorec Audio. Calorec, yeah. Uh, we, we, we chat to them pretty much at every show we go to, don't we, really? About their, their amazing so. desk. Did you, I think did you speak to them in the Gravity Media truck outside NEB? Last time. Yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah. <laughs> if you um, if you ever no. want to watch outtakes, we we normally do out, outtakes, no need and it, it's it's quite hard when you're interviewing someone outside and an inside inside and an outside, outside broadcast. In, inside and outside broadcast truck. Outside. Inside. Yeah, yeah, inside. But look up the uh, outtakes from NAB 2022. It's quite funny. But um, also, we saw them at IBC. I mean, I, you yeah. know, it's just another show. And I think, I don't know, we'll find out from Dave when he gets it. I think this might be the first time they've got the Argo, the Argo. which is their new. Well, it was definitely modular, the first time at IBC, wasn't it? So this will be the first time yeah, at NAB. Yeah, first time at NAB. So it'd be interesting to, to, to see, see if yeah. it is. We just hope it patch through. Um, yeah, you can search all, our, all of our previous interviews we do at trade shows. We normally have a playlist for a, a show. Um, so you can look at the ISC show back in Barcelona a few weeks ago. Uh, IBC, of course, and NAB are all up on the playlist. Um, just search our website, kitplus.com, for Argo, for example, or Carrec, and you'll come up with the video with a bit of luck. Absolutely. Um, uh, well, and, and, and or Gravity Media, and you'll see that Gravity one. Media, yeah. I, th I think we're doing another one. Well, we are we are filming Calorec this year, and they have asked if we can, um, if we can go into the truck again, so that would be quite cool. Well, you can uh, do it this time. Inside or outside? Inside or outside. Yeah. Out, uh, inside the outside broadcast truck. Inside the outside broadcast so, truck. Um, um, so we, 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 sh we can um, go back to talk about the bike ride we're doing on the Friday. Absolutely. We, um, well, yeah, reminder about the bike ride from the team. But I want, also wanted to make, make a point of, of, of coming up at, is it midday when uh, oh, uh, Jenny's? Um, yep, she talks. So she talks. We've got an amazing hour, which when we take a break, um, from 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock, Jenny Mark Evans and Amber Holbrook will be hosting, with Penny Westlake as well, I think, will be hosting an hour-long um, session with eight or nine guests, female guests. Gay, Dorian, Anna, Claire, Vijaya, Barbara, Lucinda, Amy, Penny. Sounds, yeah. like it's, sounds like a song, That's, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> um, and they're all going to be coming in, talking to Jenny and Amber about technology, NAB, um, top tips, what to do, what not to do, what to see, and, and so on. So do make sure you tune in at 12 o'clock for that. It's going to be really, really cool. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, I think Dave has actually made it into the room. Dave. Hey. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Good. So were we right in our ramblings before you came on that Argo is making its first appearance at NAB this year? Um, it's making its first appearance at the L uh, Las Vegas show. Um, we yeah. did actually have a, a NAB in New York as well, which is a, a much smaller show, but uh, it's not the first time it's been seen in the US. Cool. OK. So what are your product highlights this year for NAB? Um, so the product highlights, we, we actually launched, um, obviously we launched Argo in uh, IBC. Um, so this is the first major US show we'll be showing it. Um, Argo comes in two variations, Argo S and Argo Q. Argo Q being the larger of the two products. Um, it's really designed for, for high-end um, television applications, OB trucks, studios for, for live events and stuff. 
Uh, and then just before Christmas, we launched um, a, a product called Impulse One, uh, which is a new uh, smaller format uh, DSP core, IP-based DSP core for Argo. Uh, we've had Impulse around for about four years now. We've got a, a number of installations. Uh, Impulse is great um, for multiple console a, a, um, applications, but where Impulse One really comes into play is a, a, a smaller one console one Argo solution. So, and that's really the mainstay of our business. We look at news applications, uh, uh, sports applications. That's typically what we're doing. An OB truck doesn't generally have multiple consoles in it. So Impulse One uh, really helps with them, with those sorts of applications. And what are the trends you're seeing across the broadcast audio um, sector? Uh, well, it's still the transition to IP, um, although that, that's continuing to evolve. Uh, if you know, we we talk about uh, as an industry, we talk about IP very generically in in sort of the uh, the holy trinity of trying to get everything done at once in a new a greenfield site. But for a lot of applications, there is a, a change in how people are looking at it. So we're seeing customers adopting existing baseband technology with IP interfaces. We are seeing greenfield uh, sites, and we're seeing sort of the joining between the two things together. Um, so we, we're actually implementing different styles of IP. Some broadcasters building IP islands around one studio, one DSP core, one, one small router and one comm system as part of a larger system. Um, so IP isn't really one size fits all. It's, it's about a, a number of diff different things going on. Uh, what we are seeing for sure is, is a bigger trend toward utilizing things like NMOS uh, compliant uh, systems, so ISO 4, ISO 5, but also that expanding out into control systems. We have a no number of control systems working with um, that can control our impulse cores, our impulse 1 and impulse 2, as part of their, their, um, their delivery of uh, an IP infrastructure. All, and all, but all of these new technologies, all these new efficiencies that you're going to introduce, you've got one uh, 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 one panel for, for, for multiple jobs. You've got uh, this move to IP. It throws up a lot of challenges, I'm, I'm sure. What It does. Yeah. Go on. Uh, yeah, it does. I mean, what, one, one of the challenges um, in IP is just the transition. Um, you know, there, there are some soft challenges like trying to get staff who can fault find, staff who can actually build these systems. Um, there's a training need for operators to understand what a stream is. You know, they've, they've never had to think about a cable changing before. That's essentially what's happening in IP. Uh, but as you rightly say, there's, there's other challenges where uh, broadcasters are actually trying to leverage uh, the product to do more. Um, and this gets muddled with things like working from home, being able to access the, the console remotely. Um, you can also, we've done some um, trials with having operators use uh, consoles from, from home. Um, we have a, a, an installation uh, with we're working on with a client where they have a type R at the facility and the operator has a type R surface at home and he's able to control uh, that sport event. So that gives the potential for A1s to make more use of their skill set and their times across the globe. Mm. We were talking to the head of BBC News earlier on, and she was saying one of the reasons she likes NEB is for discovering things that she didn't know. What, what will people discover on the Carrex stand that they maybe didn't know already? Um, well, I think uh, there, there's a couple of things. One is um, the suite of products we have in IP now. Um, you know, we're, we're seen as this big console vendor, and absolutely we are. Um, but we're also providing IP solutions, which people wouldn't necessarily associate with a console manufacturer. Mm. You know, providing um, a, an IP core is one part of it, but actually it sits within a wider infrastructure. Uh, and I think people would be surprised to know the number of types of uh, integration we've done with other vendors. Uh, with uh, uh, companies in particular who have got done their own developments. All of those kind of things we're very, very open to. Um, but also, we still are an audio company. So, you know, we people get quite surprised when we talk about things like Dolby. <laughs> we live in a broadcast world, but Dolby Atmos is key. Um, so that's one of the, the highlights of Argo, for example, is, is uh, we're still able to do Dolby Atmos. Um, and, and actually, we do quite a lot of training around both IP and Dolby Atmos on our website. 
uh, we offer um, a, a free uh, online training course on how to do uh, uh, Dolby Atmos on a 5.1 console. Uh, we actually use our smallest product to show that you can actually do things. So I think you know, understanding the wider CalRep portfolio and our commitment to training the industry, I think, w- would be a surprise to people. I hope this isn't going to end in a disappointing no, but do you manage to get the beer over to the US? Or I think you did. Sadly not. No. <laughs> the Hebden Bridge Ale, that was, uh, that was, was, was always a, a highlight of the Colour X stand. So, two things left. Um, where can people go online to see the training information? And where can they find you in Las Vegas at NAB? Yeah, so um, on you can just go to carac.com uh, and look in the top menu under training. Um, there's a, a, a couple of different training courses. Recommend the IP training course if you're starting out with IP. Um, there's also the Dolby Atmos course on there as well. And then our stand um, is C6107, so Central Hall 6107. Brilliant. All right. That's brilliant. Dave, we've, we're going to be spending some time on the Carac booth at NAB as well, so I'm sure we'll catch up further then and give even more information to those watching. So thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Take Cheers. care. Bye-bye. Thanks. So, we're so now we haven't got to wait for our next guest to Well, we don't need to be connect. told that he's here because well. we know he's here. <laughs> <laughs> Rustling papers in the background. Rustling papers. In the red chair. So we'd like to welcome Darren Whitehead Darren. from IABM. Hi, Darren. Hello. How are you? We're very good. Thank You've you. You've been up earlier than I have, I think, today. <laughs> Does it show? Does it, yeah. <laughs> We're, we're only two and a half hours in. It's early days, early days. So, Darren, we're talking about what IABM is doing at NAB. I think John's got some slides that we may be able to cut in as we're talking. So, um, okay. So, That's who knows? Helpful. <laughs> might, 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 might so, what are you doing? So, I guess we should start. People watching this that have never heard of the IABM, who are you? What do you do? Uh, well, obviously, we're uh, the trade association for the suppliers in the broadcast mm-hmm. and media industry. So exhibitors, effectively, at the, at the show. If if you want to call it that, yeah. yeah. But I think what we, we would like to th- feel is that we engage with the whole broadcast and media mm. community. You know, we might be focused on on the exhibitor side, the supply side, but ultimately we engage with the whole community, okay. uh, be that customers, be okay. that systems integrators, you know, however you want to define the community, yeah. we, right. we engage in the whole of that community because our, our role is to support our members, yep. grow their business, yep. and we can't do that unless we engage with everyone in the community. Absolutely, yeah, of course. So actually visitors and your exhibitors effectively, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Workflow, yeah. So at, at NAB, you know, we'll be having the usual uh, kind of approach that we do, mm-hmm. uh, which is tried and tested tested we have the member lounge uh, room n110 which is off the central hall boulevard Mm -hmm. uh, which is free for use for members to come in and use just like an airline lounge really casual seating relaxing do some emails do some work have meetings and this year we've actually got two meeting rooms as well which are bookable free by the hour by members so they can have off booth meetings and and in particular it allows members that don't have a booth at NAB this year to still come to the show and still do business yeah on the Sunday morning uh, we've got our business briefing session um, which is uh, a sea level kind of uh, session in the Westgate Hotel starts at eight in the morning uh, and that goes through uh, various things that we're introducing to the industry, mm-hmm. uh, one of which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, but it starts off with our proprietary research mm-hmm. by Lorenzo Zani, our head of knowledge. And then we have uh, a customer panel and a, and a, and a supply panel. Yep. And then finally, Stan will be there updating uh, the industry on his um, technology trends roadmap okay. as well. So it's a really important session. It's timed so that uh, people can come to that session understand what's going on in the industry, hear direct from customers and suppliers, mm. understand how IABM is 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 helping them understand the industry. Yeah. And it finishes so that everyone can still get back in time on their booth yeah. ready for the show opening at 10. Is that something that people have to sign up for in advance or can they just turn up on the day? Absolutely both, okay. to be honest. Uh, yes, please sign up in advance if you can because it helps us uh, get yep. the catering right, obviously. <laughs> Important. Uh, but if, if, you, if you just turn up on the day, we're not going to throw you out. No. And where can they sign up? Uh, on, on the website. IABM.com. 
It's oh, the IAB dot org. Oh, dot org. I completely got it wrong. It's <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. You've, you've only been a member for five that? years, Simon. Don't yeah. worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> so the other event, if yeah, I may so, continue, yeah, yeah. sorry, so, yeah. slight monologue here. Uh, yeah. The other event that we're, we're doing. That, we? yeah. <laughs> the other event that we're doing is the BAM Awards. Oh, That's on yes, the Monday yes. evening I was ask about that. Yeah. in the Westgate as well. Um, I and saw an email last night actually on the nominations. Yeah, You've got some really. Yeah, it's it's a, a tough lineup, isn't it? Well, we, the, the, you know, I know I'm biased, but, but what we like to think at IABM is that the BAM Awards are the most prestigious in our industry because they are they're not anything to do with finance. They're not anything to do with advertising dollars. Mm. They're not anything to do other than right. members and non-members submitting what they think is the best mm. product or service in the last twelve months. The judging panel is is over 40 odd judges globally, mm -hmm. uh, a mixture of customers yeah. and and other suppliers. Uh, so it's peer group judged, and we feel that gives us uh, you know a real bite to the fact that if you yeah. win one of our BAM awards, it really does mean something. Yeah, yeah, it's important. And that probably is something you need to. Uh, I mean, if you want to be in the audience at the BAM awards, who can be there? Uh, again, that's open to anyone. We're we're not okay. prescriptive. For, for, from our perspective, uh, although IABM is a membership organisation, there are certain events that we run where there's so much about promoting our members, we allow anyone in because that's going to help them. So yeah. uh, visitors, customers, um, anyone can come in, no yeah. problem. And you've touched on uh, what the members get now. Are you offering any additional member services going forward? Well... Uh, yes, and this is where maybe if John's got the slides ready, Q John, we can talk no, about that. No pressure. Here we go. Um, We've got a slide up on the screen now. Yeah. So intelligence. Yeah. So l this is a little bit of a history lesson. So you know, IABM was one of the well, was the first organisation to launch something called the Global Market Valuation Report, which was uh, a, a, a big report that was about how we uh, size our market and our industry globally. Yeah. And it was really important. It really put our industry on the map. And that has been in place and, and with variations of it and smaller uh, parts of it uh, available to members and non-members for the last 15 years. What we've been doing in the last year and a half is really thinking about how much we can help our members understand what's going on in the industry now. There's so much change mm. that you need so much data to understand yeah. that change and you need so much analysis. If mm. you let us know when to do the next slide in, in, in yep. true Chris Whitty style, please. I will, I will. <laughs> uh, John, yes, next slide, please. <laughs> So, so the, the, the real problem is the more data you have and the more analysis you need, right, normally the higher the price. Mm. And let, let's be clear, you know, if you want, if anyone out there wants to commission a report, it's going to, a decent report, understanding what's going on in our industry, it's normally priced by others at around 20 to 30,000 pounds, wow. which is a lot of money. It is a lot of money. So what we've tried yeah. to do is, is, is combine all of our market intelligence into one place so that we can um, make market research more accessible to our members and also make it uh, more interactive, that they can share it and understand it a lot more. So we're launching something at NAB called the MediaTek Vantage platform. And this is a platform where all of our uh, MediaTek intelligence will be based uh, in the future. Um, and where we can offer f so much more functionality to our members. It, it's almost like for them, they can cut and slice the data and run different reports. It's almost like having their own business intelligence unit mm. in their company. Okay. It's that powerful. Right. It really is. Sure. Um, if we and can this is a platform on the website? Uh, it's, a in, it's a separate oh, platform. platform, but, uh, but yeah. yes, it's, it's uh, browser-based. Browser yeah. 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 Okay. John, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so... What we've got here is we've got the MediaTek Vantage platform, and within there, there'll be two main offerings. The MediaTek Trends, which is all the surveys available to members free of charge, and a new thing which we're launching, which is MediaTek Sizing. Okay. And that is really going to bring the huge 200-page global market valuation report into the hands of the average member for a very modest price. Mm. And that's the real kind of thing that's going to be revolutionary, I think, to help our members plot and plan their future growth in our industry. Mm -hmm. Final slide, please, John. 
So um, this is just to go over which uh, um, media tech trends reports we have currently, which are free to members. So all these will still be free to members, and they'll be, uh, you know, helping members as part of their membership fee. This will be on the new MediaTek Vantage platform as well and give up, again, our members, instead of just getting a static report, this is a live report that they can, can play with and, and, and uh, you know, Still interrogate, can interrogate yeah. themselves. Yeah. Mm. Good, good word. Yeah. Thank you with the slides. Thank you, John. So that's really exciting. Yeah. Uh, and for us, it's a, it's a, I wouldn't say revolutionary, but it's a big evolutionary step to allowing our members understand what's happening in the market. Mm. And they can, I, 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 yeah, don't want to put you on the spot, but on the, uh, at the lounge, will they be able to come in and will you, will you get a demonstration of how they might be able to use it? Exactly that. It, and, and thank you for reminding me that yeah. that is happening. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yes, we have uh, Lorenzo Zani, our head of knowledge, and yeah. our new senior analyst, Martin Redhead, both at NAB. And if any member would like a demonstration of this new platform, they will be able to do that there in the lounge at NAB. Fantastic. And what are you doing on a on a more regional basis this year? So, um, the, the, in a word, more. Okay. Uh, and, and that's not trite. It's about the fact that the pandemic's over. Uh, more and more shows and more and more countries are opening up. Mm -hmm. China's opened back up. Uh, and if you talk to the uh, IABM Regional Member Council in APAC, you know, the, the APAC region in general, and certainly Southeast Asia, represents huge growth opportunities for our members. Mm -hmm. So what we've done is uh, we've committed to support all the main trade shows in that region. So BIRTV, CCBN is back, it, back on right. this year. Okay. It's not cancelled, yep. it's back on. Uh, Broadcast India and Interbe in Japan. And importantly, what we've done also is we've re reappointed um, uh, uh, a chief representative in APAC for IABM, whose role is to, to live and breathe that region and to support our members okay. and new members in that region and understand that, those markets. He's a, he's a fantastic guy. We've known him for a long time. He's actually uh, an ex-council member of the APAC council. Right, okay. His name is Liming Fu. He's based in Beijing. Um, and he's already giving great help to our members understand the market opportunities in mm. China as that opens back up. Yeah. Brilliant. So in a nutshell, um, w why should somebody become a member of the IABM and what does the future hold for members? I think, I think for me, there's, uh, there's two parts uh, to, to that answer. Uh, the first part I would say is that IABM is a trade association, mm -hmm. okay? It's not an organization that is uh, owned by an individual for profit. It's a trade association, and we exist purely for the benefit of our members. Mm -hmm. They tell us what they want and how they want it, and it's our job to then deliver it back to them, which is what we do. Mm. So I think it's important distinction to make that that's our DNA. Yeah, that's yeah. what we exist. We're a non-profit making mm. organization. Um, and the, the more, I guess, business-like answer to your question is that IABM is a marketing channel. We amplify our messages uh, that our members have out mm. to the customer base. Uh, we, we give massive trade show support. You know, we've just talked about what we do at NAB, mm. uh, which, you know, to have meeting space alone at some of these trade shows yeah, is, so is, is worth its weight yeah, in exactly. gold. Um, and of course, ma the market intelligence that we've discussed, you know, mm. what I call the torch in the dark room. You know, where's the industry going? Yeah. What are the nuances of change? Yeah. How do I work and navigate my way through that? Yeah, fantastic. Cool. So the so lounge and is it, is it, did I did I get this? There's the lounge. Is there a, sh um, a booth if you like? No, just no, the lounge. Just so the lounge. That's, yeah. and so that that's was where we find you. N one one zero, which is the corridor, isn't it? A corridor meeting room Central off lobby. Central Hall Boulevard. So, yeah. It's yeah, past all the food stuff. Down a little bit. Turn left. That's it. All the dodgy food stuff. Ignore that. Come straight down. Come straight to that. Yeah, yeah. And I think you'll be joining us for the uh, the fabled bike ride as well. I will on the on the on the, uh, on the Friday. I will. Bruce and maybe a, a few others. As well. I will. I will. I uh, you know that th the um, attraction that you've put on this year is amazing. And uh, you know I, I don't know. You're probably calling it the cycle ride to Hoover Dam. <laughs> I'm, I'm calling cycle it to hell. You know, <laughs> it's like 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 the Bear Grylls program last night on Channel Four. I'm calling it the cycle ride with President Zelensky. Yeah. You know, and the fact that we've got his body double here <laughs> gives us a huge, huge uh, push to get as many cyclists out there as we can. 
Fantastic. We'll right, there. we've just been told we're 20 yeah. minutes over. Yeah. So, Darren, we're going to push you out. Thank you very much for joining us. It's great to see you. Yeah. And uh, we'll I think we'll even there. see you on the plane because I think we're travelling together. Right. Uh, right. With okay. enough. <laughs> Looking right. forward to it. Fantastic. Thanks, Darren. Thank you, Darren. Cool. Get, uh, and Judy. we're going to welcome Julie, uh, Judy, Judy, Judy Zhu from Killerview is yeah. joining us next. So we'll just connect Judy. We're going to have to get a wiggle on. He's on our way. Um, so, Kill of you, we see them. You speak to them a lot. Yeah, we speak to Judy, we speak to at, Judy most shows. at most shows. Um, uh, be nice to see them at NAB. Hi, uh, Judy. Okay, how are you doing? NAB show. Hi, I'm Matt. <laughs> really Hi. good. Nice to see you again. Yeah, we're sorry to keep you waiting, Judy. We're we're running a little bit behind. But Simon can't stop talking. It's good. To, it's, it's great to see you. Um, let's get straight to NAB. What can people expect yeah. to see on the Kill of You stand? Yeah, you know, actually talking about NAB, um, you know, actually we, we met each other at IBC last year. We met each other at IC two months ago, one month ago. And actually every time when we meet and talk about QV, every time we talk about our roadmap, our new products coming out. And actually, you know, for NAB, it will be our first time to show the KiloView overall ecosystem and all the products, solutions, um, uh, you know, get everything in life uh, in the US. So actually NAB will be really, really important for us. You know, uh, in if we go back to 2018, 2019, KiloView was there, but you know, actually we stay with NDI Central and they're showing a little bit separate products, but uh, this time, you know, at an ID show, everything everything will be there, the whole ecosystem. So um, first, every, uh, you know, we, we're going to show our overall IP-based video transmission solutions. So um, all the NDI converters, you know, KiloView is very specialized in NDI products and solutions. So uh, all the KiloView NDI converters, no matter it's the new product or any of the you know, existing products, uh, we will be putting everything there and uh, get everything in live. While at the same time, you know, we will have all our software systems and also the new products we announced at IBC and the, probably we, we, we did some kind of live demo uh, at IC and for NAB then we will bring everything together. So it will be a real ecosystem that's running, you know, from the video capturing, from all those encoders, decoders, uh, going through our software systems for centralized management, for routing, for everything. So then you can uh, easily, you know, form different kind of uh, workflows for different applications, especially for broadcast industry. Everyone can see how uh, NDI is working, how IP is working in this industry um, efficiently. Well, you know, uh, for, for KiloView, at the same time, we were always uh, coming with, you know, bring new products at the big shows. So there will also be a new product coming out and then we will have the um, demo there and then probably, you know, something new. Um, so, yeah, so the, the new products. Yeah, probably we, we, we can talk a little bit so about yeah, the new product. But you're going to need to tell yeah. us a little bit more about, now, you, now you've whetted our appetite, Judy, you're going to need to tell us a little bit about what's coming up. What, what can we expect? What's new? Yeah, uh, actually the new product will be our uh, bonding encoder, new bonding encoder. As we previously um, has the existing bonding encoders that uh, when you know customers always talk to us, can you have the HD65 encoder that will based on the 5G uh, network for bonding and for everything? And uh, definitely, we're going to bring out a new product that will have everything the customers uh, expect. So it will be you know 5G more 
channels for 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 the connections. Uh, we will have a dual interface for three three G SDI, four K HDMI, H two six five. We will have touch screen for previewing the videos configuration and also even for return videos. Uh, we will have dual batteries for you know non stop streaming, and at the same time, uh, it will be supported by our free Kira Link server, our uh, intercom systems and everything so it will be really you know a very cool product <laughs> and uh definitely <laughs> everyone can come to our booth and check that yeah there's Absolutely. always there's always so much going on on the killer view booth you've got the, the the workflow there and the new products it's, it's always good to spend time where can where can we find you um in the halls judy yeah, we will be in Central Hall, and the booth number is uh, C4545. Oh. Well, at the same time, you know, actually, there will be a lot of the floor signs getting you to keep a view booth. So if you enter into Central Hall, you will never get lost. You can always <laughs> follow the, the signs, and then you'll find Kilo View easily. <laughs> Kilo View, we do like good signage, don't we? We like good signage. Because yeah. we, do, we do walk a lot of miles at these shows, so the more signage, the better for us. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to be spending time with you as well at the show, Judy, so uh, we're looking forward to that, and you'll be able to tell us um, everything that's going on on your booth then as well. So... Thank you very much for joining us and we hope you have safe travels to Las Vegas and we're looking forward to seeing you in a few weeks. Yes, thank you so much, Sam, and see you in Las Vegas. Thank you. Bye-bye, Judy. See you there, Judy. Bye-bye, bye, bye, Sam, and bye, Matt. Bye-bye. So, um, uh, we're now joined by Atikia from... Atikia from Orca. Orca, yeah. Orca, yeah. A, another, I hate to say regular, but another regular that we, we, we speak yeah. to well, Atikia at all to sorts them. of shows. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we do. In fact, we, we spoke to her at the IBC preview show last year, didn't we? We um, did the, our previous yeah. preview show. And, yeah. uh, and, and here she is, there Atikia. We go. Hi, how are you doing? I'm oh. fine, and you yeah. both. Hi, glad to be with you. It's lovely to see you. Yeah. So... Give us a quick introduction of Vera Orca. Okay, so if you don't know us, it's because I'm not doing my job yeah. enough well, <laughs> I guess. <Yeah. laughs> so by, by Access Orca, VEO for the friends, yeah. is a subsidiary of the Orange Group, and uh, we are a technology provider of uh, data-driven end-to-end solutions, service delivery platform, um, anti-piracy services, content protection solutions, and our strategy is really to uh, to bring everything together to provide end-to-end -end solutions to our customers and um, with who are service providers, content owners, um, TV operators, and um, as the our industry is evolving fast. Um, it, it's important also to add added value uh, features, solutions, and always evolve. That's actually why it's our new tagline, by the way, always evolve. Um, so we we will talk also about targeted advertising, about fast, about um, new forms of uh, piracy, because there are new forms, and much more, I guess. Mm. Yeah, so these trends are probably throwing up challenges that, are, well, I mean, it's a new challenge every day. Um, how, how, how do people... Uh, experience these, you know, your solutions on the on the show floor. If you if you can, they come and actually experience it there. Well, actually, if um, uh, we will try to address many many different topics. So obviously, um, uh, NAB show this were this year is uh, actually uh, quite um, interesting because it's the 100 year anniversary. Of course. So I'm sure there will be plenty of surprises beyond what we expect as trends. I'm sure we, we cannot miss AI, generative AI, and uh, we will uh, talk about it also on our booth at VO, because with all of our uh, personalization solutions, that's also powered by AI, by uh, machine learning uh, and uh, artificial intelligence. So this is something we cannot miss. Um, it, it, the, the, the four pillar, I would say, to our technology is uh, um, deliver, protect, monetize, and personalize as well, because we need to engage also. Uh, These are the trends, aren't they? Users. Really, these are the trends that we've been seeing happening in the in 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 in, in broadcast content delivery. Hmm. 
Yeah, for sure. And uh, beyond this, the, we still have the usual suspect. I would say that we hear for a few few years now, such as the virtualization and going to cloud-based solutions. So this is yeah. also a topic that we see still very important. Um, that's why we say we are um, we have data-driven solutions. It's very important. Mm. It's actually covering, and it's also covering the security aspect. Um, our core business was security, so we, we don't forget it. Uh, either. I was talking about antiviruses. Yeah. There are new forms. It's not just about credential sharing or um, about uh, redistribution of illegal um, uh, live sports on the on the over the internet. It's also uh, we will be discussing uh, CDN leeching. As I'm not a tech uh, person, right. I, uh, I invite <laughs> you to come over. And uh, this is very very interesting. And this is a big threat yeah. raising those. Uh, yeah. those days raising awareness well because i guess every time there's an advancement in technology from someone else there's going to be a, a piracy issue that you guys need to solve exactly yeah for sure um as long as there will be pirates yeah. there will be video <laughs> <laughs> and our experts because we need experts for this this is very complex topics yeah. and this is uh, we're leading to a kind of cyber security approach for the content video industry That's yeah. Yeah. yeah well we're going to be spending time with you and the team um, at NAB on your booth so we'll be talking to those experts we'll directly to get right even there. more information than you've given us sure. so um, where are you at the show oh yeah where can we find you so it's very easy. Um, if you're going at NAB, you can find us at W1272 Booth, West Hall. West Hall. West Hall. Cool. Yeah. Fantastic. And Brilliant. for people that want to find you online, via access .com. So Yeah, for sure. Um, if you're around, please contact us. If you're not around, please contact us. So <laughs> by access orcacom It's very easy. Thank and um, thank you so much, Simon, and all the team yeah. and everybody. Thank you. It's a yeah. great work you're doing, and uh, I look forward to seeing you there. Yeah, we'll always look there. forward to seeing you. Yeah. And, uh, yep, safe travels to Vegas. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you in a few weeks. See you. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And we are now we're now going into intercoms and audio, aren't we? Now comms, we're comms. Yeah. Uh, we're going to chat to a regular, really, Simon Brown from Clearcom, who I think we're just going to. We be spoke to John up. Sparrow for, for for the last uh, um, uh, intro, uh, preview day we did. Did we? Okay, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, it, so Simon starts, is all starts, uh, to um, all starts to merge, doesn't it, into one? But um, it does. We'll just get rid of those bits of paper. But, uh, we do have we do have Simon waiting for us. Here good he morning. Is. It is still good morning. Good morning, Simon. How are you doing? It, it's still good morning here. Yes. Hi, I'm doing well. Thank you. <laughs> Fantastic. So, Simon, um, not only is it NAB's 100th year, it's a pretty big year for Clearcom as well. It is. It's our 55th year this year. Wow. Um, so yes, we'll be putting those two numbers together on our stand for sure. Okay, and you haven't been there for the entire time, I guess. But uh... <laughs> feels like it sometimes. <laughs> Just give us, give us... brutal, funny, but yeah, yeah. give us a flavour of what uh, we can expect to see on the ClearCom booth. Well, this at this trade show we're at NAB, we're going to be showing um, an emphasis on new workflow for Intercom. So the ClearCom uh, matrix-based Intercom will now have something called role-based login. Um, so what this does okay. effectively is allows somebody to go to a, a, a intercom panel, um, a, an intercom wireless belt pack or a wired belt pack or a, a virtual client, um, and they can log in as themselves onto that device. And their pre-configured set of keys and audio that they require will come up in each of those form factors. So that if we, we are finding uh, a lot more people being more mobile and moving around, doing different things. There are some of our markets where people are doing three or four jobs, if you like, that historically was done by one person. And yeah. so the ability to move around and go up to any sort of intercom station, be it belt back panel, whatever, and just log in and then take pick up their keys is, is a huge advantage mm. rather than having somebody centrally reconfigure all those panels for them. Mm. I think that's probably a good... <laughs> It's good for the hardware as well because you've got one, you know, less variations of hardware panels and hardware. To, you, you know, a lot of it is software, and then belt packs. You just have maybe one or two versions of the belt pack. It, it sort of helps in that sense. Um, we do offer quite a lot of 
variants because a lot of people have very different ways of looking at these these devices. But essentially, it's more about allowing people to be less tethered to a sort of fixed station, or right. if they're in that role where they have to go between a fixed station and a mobile device like a belt pack, it's easier for them to be able to grab it and go. Um, there's also the, the aspect of redundancy. Um, it's not uncommon, for example, for a device, a large device on a production to fail, and therefore they have to move to the, the control room next door. Um, that's yeah. not something so simply done with a, if you if, if haven't already pre-configured. But if you are on a sort of a login-based operation, they quickly move to their panel, log in, and get their, they've got the same keys as they had before and the same the same routing as before. Mm. Um, the other thing that helps is what presence information. We're all used to knowing when somebody's available or not available on Teams, for example, or on WhatsApp, whatever. Yeah. Um, so this is, allows us to show presence. So if, if you've got a key marked for the, the particular person, it will be dimmed out if they haven't logged in at all. So you'll know they're not even there. So uh, And then on the V-Series, you could leave a message if you like. But uh, generally speaking, you'll, you have some indication of people being available. Yeah. So you've seen a lot of, uh, not you, going back to that, you you haven't seen, there's been a lot of change in 55 years uh, <laughs> in, in, in comms. Uh, now, you, you, the, the trends that you're witnessing now, I, you've been, uh, you know, ClearCom has, has been uh, um, at the forefront of, of leading IP and mm -hmm. as we've just described, the, you know, being able to log in to software or hardware, wherever. What, where do you see it, yeah, is, is, is it going, is it, going to continue in that direction or is there more to come i guess is where i'm going with this question well we, you're right the, the recent history of um, intercom has been to allow more remote operation yeah we do it in our home lives we're doing it professionally as well so the the ability to sort of uh, not necessarily be tethered to a fixed operation is so helpful. And I think we'll just do more of that. We're also seeing more and more wireless. We're seeing more clients and we're seeing intercom becoming more sort of, if you like, um, server-based to allow for this distributive intercom that we that we absolutely need in, in now and in the future forward. Mm. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, it's interesting. Brilliant. Thank you, Simon. Where, can, where, where are we going to find well, you? Yeah, where can we find yeah. you at the show? We'll be in the central aisle. We'll be in a normal place for those who know us um, in, in Vegas. Um, I haven't got the number particularly, but... I think there's... I have. C5507. Well done. There you go. Yeah. Thank you very much for helping out we there. Try, yes. and make, try and make a note. But yeah, <laughs> go, go into central, turn left down there, sort of middle yeah. left-ish. Yeah. And aside from, is anybody a show you look forward to going to? I mean, people have different personal things about traveling to shows. What is it about it? NAB that either you love or you hate? Well, I think uh, Vegas is definitely an interest. And I think you can see why it's a conference town. It does have a lot of things outside of the, the trade shows mm. for people to entertain themselves. And I think it's done well in that. And I think it's actually grown up a bit in the last 20 years. Those who go to Vegas over long periods will see that it's now much more sort of um, trade show friendly. In the past, it, hadn't, it wasn't always so. There was It was like the trade shows were tolerated. But I think now it's it's sort of I think it's embedded itself, and uh, you know, I think that the hotels and the facilities are a lot more easier to to use these days than they have been. Yeah. Yeah. And sure, uh, yeah. and I think it's it'll continue like that. Yeah, yeah, cool. Well, congratulations on your fifty fifth year. And Thank you. We wish you a very successful NAB, and thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Cheers, Simon. Nice to see you. Bye bye. Bye for now. Bye bye. So we're moving swiftly on to Peter Blatchford from Starfish Technologies, who I think is going to be joining us very, very shortly. There's a good thing on the NAEB website, actually, um, where people have been sharing their mem memorable um, stories and people have been contributing. Um, yep. NAB.org forward slash 100 forward slash stories. And I think there's loads of stories. Actually, there's a story yeah, we, we, quite we put together on our... Through to it. Yeah. I don't want to bore people, but on the bike ride. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's, there's there's loads of really interesting stories there. Yeah. Um, Here's Peter. We're joined by Peter. Hi, Peter. How are you doing? Hi. Yeah, good. Thank you. Good. Peter, so it looks like you're at uh, you're, you're at an event. I think you. I think Peter's at the DPP event. Yeah, the European Broadcast Summit in Berlin. Yeah. So we're going to come into that on just a second. Okay. First of all, should we cover what you're doing at NAB? Okay. Um, we're continuing to have discussions with potential customers uh, relating to our transport stream processing products. Um, 
we've been shipping this product now for uh, well over a year. We've got over a thousand channels in live production systems. So that product is, um, is pretty mature at this stage. Um, development will continue with that based around customer feedback. But also we have a new development that we're happy and want to talk to potential customers to NAB, uh, an OTT origin server. Okay, cool. And how do people? I mean, how what, how are people going to experience this at the show? You know, when when they come to your booth, what what? It, how Pretty good judging? question. Yeah. It, it, it with with the sort of stuff that we do. Um, <laughs> incredibly difficult it's infrastructure products so yeah. you can't really set up a demonstration that's meaningful we've done it in the past with sort of um live demonstrations but it's um it's transport streams that you're passing in and out so we don't i mean the last couple of years we don't actually show anything at all we're there uh, we have meeting times appointments we're on the stand throughout the whole show um it's and discussing the how people are working and providing and working out solutions, I guess. Yeah. You know, you're exactly. there to, you know, people will hopefully understand what you do <laughs> and will be coming to you because they know they need your type of solution. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, and, and even okay. better if they don't understand what we do. So that's a great opportunity to come and talk to us uh, and, and let us explain. Yeah. So tell us where you are now, um, Peter. Hi, I'm doing? at the DPP Broadcast Summit in Berlin. Okay, and what is people that may not have come across DPP or what the summit is, what's it all about? The DPP is a really interesting organisation. Um, it was started a number of years ago by some UK broadcasters, but it's really expanded and grown significantly in the last couple of years. I have to say, um, I'm incredibly impressed with everything that they're doing um, in terms of bringing vendors together and also uh, broadcasters and arranging uh, networking opportunities for broadcasters to meet vendors and vice versa. So um, they've had a number of events at the end of last year, and, and I think they're incredibly worthwhile. Yeah. In danger of you repeating yourself now, that is, why are you there? Or, sorry, not you, but why is staff, no, no. why are you representing Starfish there? Yeah. At the event, it's a great opportunity to meet European broadcasters yeah. right, and cool. discuss what we're doing and, and talk about... Um, some of the projects that they have in the future. Mm. Yeah, yeah, cool. What type of sessions have, have been going on? Because I'm guessing there's seminars going on all, all day long covering different subjects. There are. Um, to be honest, the vendors are not invited in until this afternoon. Okay. Um, right. So it, it's, as far as we're concerned, it's going to start just after lunch. Brilliant. Fantastic. Well, where can, actually, where can people find you at NAB? Do you know your booth number? <laughs> Don't yes, worry. we're in the North Hall. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, uh, we're in the North Hall N2966, and we're on the UK Pavilion, where we've been the last couple of years. Yeah, we that find that works uh, really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah fantastic. We're Brilliant. talking to Mark Birchall, actually, who runs the UK Pavilion a bit later on, so he'll be talking to us about that. Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed, Peter. I right. yeah, I hope the DPP is, is that enough. Out. You'll extract the relevant parts out of that that you need. You're you're alive, Peter. Yeah. So we've we've oh already extracted it. We've already yeah. done it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I hope today okay. goes very well, and I hope that. you uh, you, you managed you. to persuade some of those broadcasters to come over to uh, NAB show this year. <laughs> we hope so. We hope so. Fantastic, Peter. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Enjoy Peter. the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Thanks bye -bye. very much. So we are now going to Dan McQuillan from Broadcast Bionics, who we do spend time with, don't we, at various shows. We do. You were you were on their table, weren't you, last NAB? We were at the table. Um, I, I can't uh, think what the table was. Was it the last sure. NAB? Yeah, I mean, yeah. it was a table. Uh, I'm sure, Dan. Well, I, and it was... I looked at the virtual rack at IBC last year, but you were... Yeah, they, um, they have some tools on it. It's, yeah, yeah, the table was quite yeah, cool. Up. The table was very cool. And yeah. Dan's here. Dave, I'm sure Dan can tell us what we saw. <laughs> Hi, Dan. How are you doing? I remember what we saw. I hey, Matt. Hi, Simon. How are you? Yeah, we were just recapping rooms, what, what we yeah. were chatting to you about at NAB la last year. There was a table. The, but I can't think what the name of the table was. It had a name. Well, it, 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 we, there was a long meeting, and then we called it Bionic Table. Bionic Table. There you <laughs> go. Yeah. Yes. Well done. <laughs> Brilliant. So um, we, ch we chatted at IBC about the virtual rack. Um, are you, is that what you're showing people at NAB this year? Or what's, what's going on? 
Yeah, so we'll be leading uh, with probably virtual rack being the newest product, which is going to be commercially available from uh, from NAB. So we've got products integrated in there from from a number now of vendors. You know, the, the story is containers are a fantastic IT infrastructure for broadcasters, but they have struggled with some of the um, Linux operating system complexity, some of the hardware specificities. A virtual rack bundles mm-hmm. an appliance, which like an Apple Mac is a is a perfect melding of software and hardware together to ensure success uh, and a, a, a nice, simple interface to deal with the networking complexities. So, yeah, Virtual Rack hopefully is helping introduce broadcasters to uh, containerization and virtualization in a broadcast-friendly uh, way. And we have some new uh, technology we built into that, uh, and it's now a more mature product. And, yes, that will be next to the table, which is the other probably big conceptual product that we've had over the last couple of years. But, again, now uh, shipping and commercially available and helping broadcasters to think about some of the challenges that we've got around creating additional content for all of those non-linear streams and all that additional content generation. You know, we're, we're really seeing, I guess, the agility that comes both from Table and from Virtual Rack being important to broadcasters, that they now have to generate additional content at a different price point or in a different way or using different talent or creating a different kind of content. Uh, and that's probably the big trend we've seen over these uh, few months since NAB is that that increasing agility and scalability. Those you mentioned the new um, features you built into Virtual Rack. What challenges are they solving for people? So it's, this is really around security. It's around resilience. So it's around making sure that if you, as you move to IT infrastructure, that you're able to deal with uh, failure in any any individual system or any individual appliance. And that can sometimes come natively in the containers and the software that we're running on uh, on Virtual Rack, but sometimes we're adding that over the top by building basic resilience of being able to have multiple appliances monitor each other and and deal with that failover. And so, so some of those challenges are now dealt with far more elegantly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we've even built in some some low level failure modes. So in the event you actually really mess something up and kill your Virtual Rack, there's now you know there is a command line you can get to to actually resurrect it from you know, from a near-death experience. So, yeah. yeah, just just literally making it hopefully deal with with user error, with network error, with hardware error in, in a way that means that, uh, that you can get yourself out of trouble. I think also, you know, you've got a broad uh, uh, spectrum of potential customers. It, you know, there could be so many, but uh, Simon asked this someone earlier, and I liked it. Who's your perfect customer to come up? This, this you know, who, who do you want to meet at NAB? Um, I mean, yeah, we, we're looking, I guess, to meet uh, probably, probably our non-traditional customers. So we, we've had a lot of success over 30 years with the very large customers, with the, you know, the BBCs and yeah. the national broadcasters. And so actually, the entire stand is pivoted away from that. You won't see that big studio that we used to build of sort of big studio equipment. So we're, we're leading with Camera One and Caller One, which are actually are smaller products that that, right. that that go to a different part of the market. But that is particularly for the US and some of the international markets, the customers that we're now increasingly talking to. So, yeah, so we are looking for probably for, for broadcasters who don't think they can afford to do what, what we've traditionally have done, because I think that very much is also, you know, as well as scalability and agility at the high end, it's also actually democratizing that access down to a different kind of content creator who perhaps thinks they can't generate the sorts of content that we generate or, or work with a, with a supplier like ourselves. And this so, could be radio, this could be uh, visual radio, this could be TV, this, you know, this applies across. So we, we have got in the UK TV broadcasters, the BBC are about to use some of our visualisation software to generate live yeah. BBC2 and, and news content. So yeah, it's TV people converging with radio workflows. It's radio people using TV technology and it's podcasters and smaller streamers using the technology that previously might have been seen as premium to generate additional content. Because as we've been saying to broadcasters, all of the broadcast regulations used to mean our limitations were external. But now the only constraints on broadcasters are those we place on ourselves about cost, about complexity and about capacity. Yeah. And our aim is to hopefully remove all those limits to allow new monetization and content opportunities by removing those limits, whatever that's, whatever the size yeah, of the broadcast. That's a really, really, really good summary, isn't it, of the users and that, yeah. how they're using things. That says it in a nutshell, really. Yeah. Um, Dan, where can where can we find you? 
um, in the massive halls of NAB? We've moved. We've For many, many years, we've been in the North Hall, and along with a lot of other people, we've been tempted to, to the excesses of the West Hall. Oh. So, yes, you'll find us in the West Hall, stand 1867, yeah. if you can remember yeah. that. But, uh, we've yeah. got it written down. We don't need to remember it. <laughs> 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 we're going to be chatting on the show floor as well with yourself and the team. So we're looking forward to that as well. Um, yeah, in the meantime, safe travels. And we're looking forward to seeing you. Brilliant. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Simon. Take care. Cheers, Dan. Bye-bye. Take care. Cheers, Dan. So moving swiftly on, we're joined by Paul Glasgow now from we're Mark Chris Broadcast. But I don't know. We're probably catching yeah, we, up. No, we're doing well. We're doing yeah. okay. So just while we wait for Paul to join us, we are literally about 45 I minutes we're away from... Dan to leave us rather than Paul to join us. Think, yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure I'm sure yeah. we get rid yeah. of Dan somehow. Look, but we we we're, we're not long we're only yeah. forty five minutes away from our lunchtime special with Jenny uh, Mark Evans yeah. and Amber Holbrook who are ten of them hosting a yeah, an hour long an hour long of um of discussions. discussions. And some amazing women in technology there. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, we're just waiting for Dan to disconnect from Zoom and then we'll Paul will be allowed yeah. in, yeah. Um, which will be amazing. And I think we are there. Paul, good morning. Hi, Simon. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm very good. How are you? Yeah, excellent. Thank you. Fantastic. So let's get straight into it. NAB, not long away now, three weeks. Yeah. How are plans going? Really good. Um, we've got some really big announcements. Um, I think the the most important is if anybody has Sony cameras and Avid production, uh, we we've deployed a new solution which which tightly integrates the two in a way that's never been available before. Um, and it doesn't matter whether it's Avid edit; it's all in cloud. It doesn't matter if it's Avid edit on demand, Avid production management, or Media Central. So we cover you know the production bases, the um, the large uh, post production environment, and also news and sports. So it's pretty exciting. Mm, absolutely. And are you going to any be with seeing any particular trends that you're addressing this year? Yeah, I think it's um, for us. It's always been around um, solving difficult integration problems. I think mm. um, so. We have different parts of our business. One is the product side. But the other is, um, you know, how do you deal with lots of you know, complicated, dirty laundry? Mm. And we've been working on some you know, really interesting projects that do just that. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting. I, yeah, I, I, and, and how with these challenges that you've had to? Okay, you've you've been doing this, well, Marcus. You've been doing this for a long time, uh, and you've been building a lot of uh, solutions. The new stuff, when they come to your booth, how are they experiencing it? Because you've got excited about it. Are you showing it live or is this a discussion booth? Yeah, so that's, that's a really good question. And we're really proud that this, this solution is actually being demoed live on the Avid ex exhibit at their booth right. and also on the Sony booth. Okay. Um, and, you know, it's, it does some really clever uh, relinking. It's got a really nice uh, metadata workflow. So, for example, if you have production planning or um, a newsroom, the, the metadata, the assignment data is passed through to the camera, through back through to the C3 portal, back through to the Avid um, production environment in seconds, and it gets richer on the way. So, you know, for example, we add um, geospatial data, we add, you know, who the crew were, and, you know, it does. it's not reliant on freelancers to add that. That's That could be a proxy workflow over 5G. And then the really clever bit is, we just go back and get the high-res content, content, so you know, high-quality standard industry standard files, and we may only get five seconds or ten seconds across 5G, but it means you know you've got a really high-quality production which you've actually turned around, um, you know, in seconds, yeah. and that's mm. from glass to edit, and you know, there's no one else that can do that at the moment. Mm. So in a if you're stuck in an elevator somewhere with someone that you want to come and see your to see what you're there how are you how are you going to address that in 30 seconds of what they should come and see on the Marquis booth well there's, I, I think there's, there's there's three things there's this this new big integration with avid and sony i think there's the project side which is where we solve you know complex technical question uh, problems you know particularly with there's lots of uh, mergers and acquisitions at the moment and there's a need to integrate the back end 
of production. So, you know, um, you know, a big broadcaster A who's merged with B doesn't have the same back end infrastructure and you have to consolidate that. So we've been working in those areas for library migration and uh, complex uh, data storage management. So that's that's a couple of things. And then, of course, there's our products, which are, you know, they've come on another generation, um, particularly around cloud operations, particularly around things like um, pr protection against ransomware attacks. Mm. And we're kind of preeminent in that area, I think, in for television production. Brilliant. Brilliant. Where can we find you? Well, we're on uh, our booth is uh, C2113. So and the central the hall stand and the average stand, yeah, absolutely. So we're we're uh, dead easy to find. Actually, where where where, where do anyone I, 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 avid? Where would they be? Because we're talking they would to them. We're talking to them later oh, on. So we'll, later. Them, yeah. we'll find out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, they're probably in West. If, if, yeah. yeah, we know where Sony will be. But, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, Sony are in the central hall as well. They're they're about hundred yards from us or hundred oh, meters, cool. should I say? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic, Paul. Thank you very much indeed. We'll um, brilliant. We'll see you in Vegas in a few weeks. Looking forward yeah, to it. Yeah, I can't wait. Thank you very much, guys. Cheers. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. All right. Goodbye. Bye. Now, I think... Um, Another example of someone who is uh, relatively local who we travel thousands of miles to, to meet up. He, he literally lives yeah. about yeah. 500 yeah. metres away <laughs> from me, <laughs> but uh, I never yeah. see him in Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're hopefully next moving on to... Uh, Neil has got someone to speak yeah, to. Yeah, we're going to go to the wide shot, John. And, uh, yeah, we've got... Um, we're just waiting for Paul to disconnect and... Then we can and bring the floor will be yours, Neil. To yeah, touch we're excited to have um, Platel uh, Rocco, who is the MD of HBS TV in the States. Uh, right, joining I us. think we've got him, and, and here he is, in fact. Here he is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Hello, Platel. I almost feel like I need to fake a, a British accent with you guys, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for getting up early to join us. Yeah, that's that's all right. <laughs> it's great to see you. Um, so perhaps you could just tell us a little about what. Uh, what NAB show means for you this year because HBS TV is something in Europe that we're very familiar with but of course is a, a newer um, endeavour for the, for the uh, North American market. Yeah, well, you know, for us it feels like a little bit of, uh, you know, the Butte ball or, you know, Cinderella getting into the ball or something like that. Um, it is it is for us um, um, our, you know, official coming to the U.S., um, sort of introduction. Uh, we have a few uh, events that we're trying to do it. NAB, of course, is the, the biggest of them all. Uh, it's where we can meet uh, both sides of the industry, the sides of the, the, the people that we're trying to serve in the U.S., and also the, uh, the, the companies that will help us do it. So it means a lot to us that we're participating in the event um, this year, uh, and and how we are doing it because you know obviously HBS has been a part of the event for many many years but as a as a US entity is our first. And what what's the um, rationale behind that, um, Plateau? Why why have you decided to expand and open up in the North American market? Well, I think it's it's a a, a natural. Um, expansion of, of the project, uh, which is HBS, right? It, it started as a one single uh, project entity and, and has expanded to support uh, the broadcast industry in, in many different aspects, in many different events. So the U.S. is obviously a, a great market for what we do. Uh, we bring, I think, a different um, eye to production to host broadcasting to the way that we do things that not necessarily is uh, better or worse but it, it is different and we think there's a space for the kind of um, um, attention to detail uh, uh, working together with um, our um, rights holders to deliver a, a full picture of an event that we bring to the table that we, we can add to the US market. And um, the Copa de America is something I know you're involved in. Will the will the next World Cup be something you'll be involved in as well? Well, I, my primarily uh, primarily uh, I am involved into this expansion of the U.S. Uh, entity. Obviously, we've been involved with World Cup. I personally have been involved with the World Cup. Uh, on the other side, I have six uh, behind me. 
So obviously it would be awesome to participate in a in a in another one to use an American expression. Uh, but uh, but you know it remains to be seen. I uh, I think that from now to 2026, or at least my objective in talking to Luke Antoine and Dan, uh, the leaders of the companies, to develop the U.S. market. So we are um, you know expanding our, our footprint here on the back of uh, the relationship with CONCACAF that we have putting Gold Cup together, uh, the men's version this year, women's version next year, and many other events to come. And in terms of, I know you're there to meet customers and to develop the business, but are there technology um, challenges that you're looking to to solve You know, through meetings and other things you might discover during the show? Yeah, I, I personally, you know, I... I recently joined HBS, but uh, I've been uh, going to NBA, NAB for a long, long time, um, since the late 80s, not to date myself too much. But I, I for me, uh, NAB is sort of a, 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 a guide into the future, right? Every one, two years, uh, you see something different that will stick, that will change the direction of how broadcast is conducted in the marketplace. So it is important for me personally, for, for the company to be attuned to the to the trends in the future. And a lot of them come out uh, persistently in NAB. Well, that's great to hear. I know you'll be joining me in the Capitalize Innovation Theatre, I believe, on the Tuesday afternoon for a, a what we describe as a fireside chat. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Um, I wish you safe travels to the event and look forward to seeing you in Las Vegas. I have a, sh I have a shorter way to get there. So I'll <laughs> see you guys over there. Yeah, look forward to it. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Excellent. Brilliant. Sounds good. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's yeah. an interesting fireside chat. I wonder where the term fireside chat ca came from. Because I don't know. Have they, have they ever taken place fire. by I, a fireside? I, I, <laughs> can you imagine a naked fame in, in, in there? Just not go there. Uh, we've got Ben Davenport joining well, us next. Pepperville, from haven't they? Pepperville. Pepperville. Fireside of Pepperville. Fireside Pepperville. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Ben uh, from Pixotope is with us in a minute, yeah. I think. Um, yep. We just, we just uh, need... Uh, Need, uh, hang on, is he still there or is it is it a frozen? Uh, He's just, just need him to log out. Oh, just need I'm still here. Yeah, yep. he if, now needs to go. If you can, then, uh, if you can disconnect, if, so if then we can disconnect, then join we can on with bring, Ben. We can bring Ben in. <laughs> so yeah, uh, we're only about thirty minutes away. We are running a little bit behind time, so the lunch time slot with Jenny and Amber might be about five minutes late, but they'll get the full hour still, so it'll be fine. And Ben, welcome to the show. Simon, Matt, how are you doing? We're doing very well. Are you okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm very well. Very well, yes. Uh, look, looking forward to Easter and then on to Vegas. Okay, I, another, another person who's relatively local who we thought was going to be here, but you're, you're at an, are, you, are you at an event today of your own? I am literally jumping in uh, the car as soon as we're done here. So, um, yeah, right. halfway through loading it up. Uh, <laughs> we're heading over to the, uh, the University of Gloucestershire. Um, Brilliant. And I think, uh, as, as you guys know, but for, for everyone's benefit, uh, Pixtope launched an education program at, at IBC um, with the idea to to help encourage the next generation of uh, virtual production professionals. Um, you know, we know there is a massive shortage of talent in in the media industry as a whole. You know, we don't have those young people yeah, yeah, coming yeah. through, and that's a particularly acute um, in the kind of virtual production. Some of these. You know, newer technologies. Um, so we launched the program to try and aid that. Um, we've got a number of universities signed up. We've got a really exciting announcement coming eh, either at NAB or just after. Um, I'll just have to tease that one for now. Um, but yeah, we're off. We're off to the University of Gloucester today to spend um, spend some time with some students and uh, yeah, try and enthuse them and bring them into the industry. And so, and so, what about NAB show? Uh, what 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 are we going to expect to see from Pixtop there? Um, so, uh, two big hitters for, for NAB. Um, when we talk about virtual production, there are a number of people that are, things that are kind of holding people up from going into it. One of them is the shortage of talent. Just talked about that with the education program. The other thing is the kind of complexity in getting virtual productions up and running um, and sort of running those productions. So, 
Um, we launched our XR edition. Um, I think we, we announced just after IBC and we, we yeah. released that around Christmas. Um, so that will be actually in several places on the show floor, um, not just on, on the Pixto booth. Um, and that is uh, targeted specifically at uh, productions using large LED volumes or small LED volumes. It doesn't really matter, actually. Um, and, you know, tackling some of the issues that those productions hit, um, particularly in things like the setup, which can take a long time and really eat into the kind of the production days. Um, so that's got some wicked features like auto calibration, where we're using computer vision to to align the wall with the um, the virtual graphics and the physical set. Um, and color matching, um, which is really important for those yeah. scenarios where you want to have not just the in-camera effects looking at the, 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 the LED wall, um, but if you want to use augmented reality for the set extensions or to bring other things in. Um, so uh, those are two cool features um, that, that, that we kind of be showing off around the show. Like I say, not just our booth, but on, on several actually. Um, and then the other thing we'll be talking about is our tracking. Um, uh, again, around IBC and just after uh, we, we launched something called Pixto Fly. And this is um, a tracking solution that uses the, the through the lens image from drones or other aerial cameras. So it could be um, cables, cams, that kind of thing. And it uses that, that, that just the, the video with computer vision again, um, to create tracking data so you can reliably add augmented reality to those, that footage coming from, from aerial cameras. Um, which is just spectacular for effects um, and works very simply. It doesn't need markers on the ground. Um, it just works on the incoming image. Um, and it's been really used really effectively um, for a number of productions that I'm, I'm limited in how much I can talk about. But, it, cool. but we've seen it um, unused on large American football matches and, and, and other things. So um, really exciting. And so we'll be talking about that at the show as well. And so, do you go to the effort just quickly before we round up? Do you? Oh, well, so that's because if you don't, that's going to sound really bad now. But do you actually create a volume? You've have you got an LED wall there? Have you got a you know? Have you have you got a full setup? We there? haven't on a, we haven't on our own booth, um, yeah. but there are several of them. There are several, but there are several of them at the show. Um, so um, uh, I believe the. I'm not sure if I can say this, but the Planar booth, uh, which is in the West Hall, I think, is running yeah. an LED volume. Um, and there's another there's another one in the West Hall as well. Yeah. Uh, we're also yeah. working with a company called ProPsych who are in the uh, the North Hall, um, and they've got a large virtual studio set up with a big green screen. So we have virtual studio there, XR in the West Hall, and then um, augmented reality in the Central Hall. We're kind of spreading spreading well, the themes out a little bit. Yeah, that's all the sounds of it. There we go. <laughs> exactly. Your exactly. Central Hall. Uh, your, uh, Central C eight seven two five. That's what I've got. Fantastic. Well, we'll leave you to load Marvelous. your car, and we and, and, and actually, <laughs> good luck with the the university. We yeah. we really would like to have a further chat to you about that once, uh, just to see how it's gone and what you're doing with the yeah. education sector, because that sounds like a really good initiative. Perfect. And I'll uh, see you both in Vegas. You will indeed. You Take will. care. See you soon. Take care, guys. Bye. 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 So, so now we are we moving just on need to look, uh, perfect, Raj. Perfect. Perfect customer. He goes out straight away. He's finished. He leaves. That's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> um, we got so, Raj yeah, we from got Media Raj. Proxy next. Media Proxy, yeah. Um, we've, yeah. We obviously chat to Raj. We often. know Media Proxy. Um, Raj's claim to fame is he was on Pointless once with his wife. Oh, right. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Here Raj. He is. Raj. Is how are you? Hi, chaps. How are you? Yeah, good. We were just reminiscing about your fame for five minutes on Pointless. It was probably longer than five minutes, wasn't it? No, I think I lasted <laughs> two first rounds and one second round. It was... Okay. Oh, well done. Good. So, good. anyway, anyway Ned didn't win the trophy. <laughs> it's, it's, it's lovely to see you. And Thank you. The, the show is yours for five minutes to tell us what you're... What's being, happening at NAB show? What's happening at NAB? Go for it. Okay. Thank you. Um... As you know, you know, we're an engineering driven company. You've met Eric, yeah. you know, Eric. Um, and as the market leaders in compliance, logging and monitoring, you know, in our little bit of the market, um, we've got lots of new features. Sadly, I'm not allowed to tell you any about them. Oh. <laughs> Please visit us in our stand at the West Hall uh, 1321. Um, we've got some real game changers there, so please, you know, come and visit and see what we've done. Um, and so, 
Is, it, is this, uh, I mean, uh, you, you can't say too much, but uh, obviously because you're trying to keep it secret until, uh, uh, until uh, yeah, till, till people see you on the show floor. But, uh, you know, there has, we always talk about industry trends and reacting to industry trends. You know, what's out there at the moment that you, you're, you're having to really react to? So we've got lots of, we've had lots of inquiries about cloud and we've had cloud implementation. So we've done, um, let's just call them the world games twice, <laughs> you know, winter and summer, because yeah, no, we're not allowed to mention the names. So we've done that. We've we've done monitoring and compliance logging in the cloud. Uh, we've just got some customers who are cloud owners themselves who have started TV channels. So they're coming to us. So that's the trend we see is that, Cloud is the way and people want to monitor in the cloud. So we're doing that with them. Mm. Um, that's so, the biggest one for us and moving our software yeah. in a different way so that it's easier to use for everyone, not just the compliance people, yeah. but mm, right. other departments in the, in the facility. You know, it's not just we're not just a boring old logo anymore. <laughs> people want to use this. In every department. Yeah. So what yes. what type of people are you hoping to see these new things? Logo anymore. <laughs> people want to use this in every department. Yeah. So what yes. what type of people are you hoping to see these new things you can't tell us about? What what are those new things going to appeal to who? So everyone who's interested in cloud, come and have a look at, you know, we've got examples. We've got the system running um, so they can see what we've done. Uh, we've moved to 4K, you know, it was announced yesterday the Olympics will be in 4K mm -hmm. in Paris. So okay. we've got software, you know, that can now record 4K. So we've already got customers using 4K and Ultra HD. So that's the shift mm -hmm. that we're seeing. Fantastic. Um, sorry, Matt. You about no, I was just thinking about the, uh, and, and when, uh, is that one of the demonstrations that people can experience on the booth effectively? Yes, or they can. Is, yeah. And, and we we hopefully fingers crossed we may have eight k. <laughs> don't don't, no. don't don't yeah hang on a minute easy yeah. <laughs> easy yeah, yeah I know easy. I know <laughs> yeah cool. fingers crossed you no. get in trouble if you start telling on when you have and then yeah I know I know I know um for me also it's you know I haven't been to NAB for a while and we have a lot of global customers as you know the industry is now sort of unifying we've got big global customers and for me the interesting part is to learn from because everyone yeah. impl implements our software in different ways mm. yeah, yeah, so yeah. just to learn how they've implemented it in the us to what their office in the uk has implemented yeah but yeah. so that sort of thing's really good yeah um great to catch up with my colleagues i haven't seen them for a while you know I, I, and um yeah. the good thing is you know i'm flying out with um Becky and Fiona from Page Millia. So champagne all the way. You know what those girls are oh, like. There you go. <laughs> and yeah. then uh, fly <laughs> back with uh, Neil from Axel, who's on later with you. So he and I, red wine and <laughs> Bloody Mary's on the way back. Where can where can people find Media this. Proxy in the halls, Raj? <laughs> so we're in the West Hall, 1321. And if people really want to book a specific time, because you're welcome to come to the stand, Please go to our website, mediaproxy.com, and there's a tab for NAB meeting so they can book a specific time and date. Fantastic. So, so. Brilliant. Raj, thank you very much indeed. We will thank you. most definitely see you in the West Hall at some point, I'm sure. And enjoy, we will do indeed. In, Take enjoy care, your Tom. travels and your, your hospitality. Thank yeah. you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye -bye. See you. Okay, so... We've got we don't someone. Have to wait to we kick don't know. We, we, we've got someone. We've got someone in the red chair. Shall we, um, <laughs> Matthew? Nice hey, to see you. How are you nice doing? Nice to meet you guys. Hi. Yes. Matthew, so, well, we've met you virtually before, haven't we? <laughs> yes, we have. We have. Yes. Yes. A peer net. For those yeah. that might not come across a peer net. Yeah, quick. so, well, a peer. Um, so it was known as a peer TV. Many okay. people in Europe knew us as a peer TV, but we mm -hmm. rebranded uh, about two years ago now. Um, but we are um, media processing and delivery experts. Okay. Um, and um, the company was originally spun out of Tamburg Television, um, okay. So okay. based in Norway. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So NAB yeah. show it's looming. 2023, it's looming. three weeks away. Yeah, um, um, 
what can be, why should people come to visit you? We've got lots actually this year that we're very excited about. Um, so firstly, um, one of the biggest announcements we've made recently is around the launch of our hardware accelerated SRT solution. Um, so that was announced okay. just a few weeks ago as a pre-NAV release. Um, we're really excited about this one because we do genuinely believe it's a quantum leap in SRT performance. Uh, right. We're able to provide for, for our customers. Um, traditionally, um, there have been limitations in terms of what you can do with SRT, um, particularly if you look at um, HEVC um, mm. for, for contribution. Um, if you had multiple uh, uh, UHD cameras, for example, um, the yeah. you'd have to have multiple servers to be able to facilitate that. Um, and now with one uh, a peer X platform, we can facilitate up to 22 UHD camera feeds. So wow. it is really a big shift in the capabilities. Um, and we also see right. it as a really good um, solution for, uh, for distribution as well. So uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it can uh, facilitate up to 72 gig of traffic. Um, and is that 22, I mean, uh, excuse me, this might be a dark <laughs> question, but is that basically 22 hardware encoders in a, in a in so in one unit alone, yeah, we can we can handle up to 72 feeds from. So if we've got a live event, for example, previously you would have needed multiple multiple yeah, servers course. in a yeah, rack yeah, to. Yeah. So the economies of scale just didn't stack just, up. Whereas yeah. now we've managed to condense it all down into one hardware accelerated X platform. Mm. Um, so for for contribution, it's 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 going to be quite a game changer. Is, is that purely a a space saving advantage or what, what yeah, else I mean, does it it's give both. I mean, we've obviously seen the industry move far more to remote production, um, mm. ma mainly forced by mm. uh, the pandemic. Um, so as people have looked at ways to create cost efficiencies and um, operational efficiencies yeah. um, and really condense uh, what they take um, on site, to a live event. Uh, that's one thing where Repair has really excelled. Mm. Um, so across our solution, we really pride ourselves on the density, power efficiency of our solution. Well, because, yeah, it impacts on carbon. And it, yeah, yeah. It, exactly it's, that. It's everything. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that, yeah. that's something we're very pr proud of at Appear, the, um, yeah, the efficiencies uh, that that can bring to, to uh, a workflow. I, I think it's going to be a, a continuing theme at shows like this, sustainability and you know, Absolutely. it's going to yeah, be yeah, high yeah. on the agenda of a lot of companies, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. But you're not going to have 20 cameras on the booth uh, uh, and encoding them and then setting them somewhere. So, so what, what <laughs> <laughs> how, when, so we, when we get people to come and see you at the, the show? The booth's yeah. going to be great this year, actually. So we're being a bit playful. We've got a sports bar theme. Nice, we'll be there. Um, so there will be beers from four o'clock every day. So <laughs> I'm sure I'll see you guys there at some point or yeah, every day. Maybe. Or maybe. Yeah, yeah, um, you never know. So, yeah, we are, we're demonstrating all of our products, actually, um, yeah. at the show. Um, so we've got um, we've got numerous demonstration walls. So we're trying to recreate a, a typical workflow. So we've got a, a one wall that demonstrates what we can do in in the contribution world. Yeah. Um, and then we've got our little knock that we've created. And then we've got our distribution demo wall where we can show, uh, in particular, what our XE platform can do um, in terms of um, the operations within the head end. So absolutely. Uh, uh, and who are you hoping to see there? Who are you hoping to drop by? We're also really excited to be opening. And in fact, I'm arriving to um, Las Vegas slightly early and we'll be going over to LA because we're opening a new LA office. Oh, okay. Um, so okay. we have, um, over the course of the last year, expanded our team in the US. Um, as we started to go more direct, we used to work uh, predominantly with resellers. Mm. Right. Um, but we're growing the team. We see a really big opportunity for us in the contribution market. Mm. Um, so we're hoping to catch up with some of those partners and resellers, yeah, but yeah. also an opportunity to introduce some of our new team members uh, to existing customers, to prospects. Yeah. Um, yeah. NAB is a great show for that for us. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and, and of course, probably the first one that we're... Although it was kind of normal last kind year, of, it's yeah. the first <laughs> normal, I think normal. Last year it was just the the unknown leading up to show whether you could you travel. Know where you could yeah, get it was just like it was just yeah. like yeah. Oh, I booked everything. I don't know where I'm going. Am I going to make <laughs> it? I remember the excitement yeah. of finding out that we didn't have to wear a mask on the plane <laughs> yeah. last year, and yeah. now that's kind of forgotten about. I yeah. know it's, it's bizarre. <laughs> so yeah. where can people find you in this? In the oh, now you're testing me. We are right. in the West Hall where? W two five one two. Have you got it written well down? Done. Oh yeah, we, we were just <laughs> testing you just. 
just just to see, yeah. yeah. And you passed. That so is please correct. Please you passed. Yeah. Um, anything well, else do you want to add to it? before? No, I mean, one of the other big things for us this year is um, we're talking a lot about um, our, the, the cloud strategies with our customers. Mm. And we've got some other announcements that we're going to be making um, possibly post-show, where we, we're actually working with some customers now who are taking some particularly OTT transcoding out of the cloud and mm -hmm. back on-prem on prem using okay. um, our Neo transcoding solution. So we've got some exciting mm -hmm. announcements in that space. And also watch this space for another big announcement with um, NEP about contribution of a major sports league in the US. So um, yeah, lots time. of news Great stuff. coming up. Lots, lots going of on. And, uh, yeah, brilliant. Sort of, yeah, working in this hybrid sort of world now. Yeah. Yeah. That's key. Matthew, thanks very much for coming in. It's great to see you. In. And yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll see, see you in Vegas in a few weeks. See you over at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Four o'clock in bar. the uh, West, <laughs> West West 2512. Cool. Yes. Thank you very much indeed. Brilliant. Thanks. Thank you. So um, next we've got Jesse Foster from Multidyne coming in. Um, now he's got a very early. Very early. He has got very early, isn't he? Has he has got very early. Yeah, he's yep. over um, there. He's, he's, he, 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 he is yet. over there. He is, um, but he's no know, doubt connecting I don't know if he's any moment. He's connected yet. I think but, he is. Uh, he is. Jesse, how are you doing? Gentlemen. Wide awake. <laughs> how are you? We're good. Thank you for rising so early today. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah, that's what I get for procrastinating and picking a time slot late. You know? it, 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 it's a good start to your day. I, I feel you like you're going to get a lot done today. We'll find out, but it's all downhill from here as far as it's <laughs> So let's go uphill now to NAB. Um, what well, can we expect for Multidyne? That's really good news in the, another Emmy, isn't it, as well? Oops. Yeah, yeah. So we have quite a bit of uh, news going on. So just on the business front, you know, we're opening... We've opened a engineering office in Poland um, under uh, the stewardship of uh, Sebastian Muka on our team. And uh, we're also moving into new headquarters in Long Island in King Park, uh, moving from Hopog where we've been for years. Uh, nice new campus, very uh, nice, nice new digs for us, technical feel and everything, very uh, Silicon Valley feeling. So, mm. so that's exciting. Um, but yeah, we have... Uh, won our second Emmy, uh, Technical Engineering Emmy. Uh, this time is for the Silverback Fiber Optic Camera Adapter. Yep. So yeah. we'll be uh, accepting that award on Sunday at the show, and then we'll probably display the uh, Emmy Award in our booth. So that's that's that's, that's pretty that's much the, uh, the latest news on Angel thing. Yeah. outside of product. You know? Yeah. So let's <laughs> cool. talk about the products then. Uh, what uh, what problems are you are you solving for people now? Yeah, so um, you know, we made this acquisition of uh, Niagara Video uh, late last year, and they're a streaming encoder company. So um, under the leadership of Mike Golly, uh, VP of Streaming Products, we have a new line of uh, encoders and decoders coming out. Um, they're in the same packaging as our VB series, so that's our fiber optic transport gear, so we can have these racked uh, alongside long-haul fiber transport, and you can build some pretty interesting systems, but uh, AVC, HEVC, 12G, HD, supports SRT, RIST, you know, all the latest, greatest uh, technology there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we also have plans to bring this out in open gear this year. So we'll have a standalone and rack mount open gear offering for this line of encoders and decoders. Um, other uh, focus this year has been, you know, on the camera adapter line, uh, there's a trend in the industry from Aerie and RED, uh, their, their latest digital cinema cameras are 24 volt. Um, they require 24 volt power for you know the processing, the imager, yeah. you know, all the technology yeah. they have yeah. packed into these small cameras it requires 24 volts. Our system has traditionally been 12 volts, you know, 14 volts for standard cameras out there. You know, like the Sony Venice is still you know 12 volts, which we support. So the Silverback Ape is uh, an addition. It's integrated to our Silverback line. It then brings 24 volt power over the SMPTE cable, very long haul, like you know, 10,000 feet capability, uh, if you ever had a cable that long. Um, but it also brings in the uh, hybrid and single mode conversion capability that we have, you know, so you like 10 kilometers over single mode and then 10,000 feet over hybrid. Um, but it also gives you an array of uh, accessory power outputs, 12 volt, 24 volt, USB-C, um, to power lens servos, monitors, and Ethernet switches, you know, whatever's going at the uh, camera end of these systems, we can now power with plenty of headroom. So 
Um, that's the latest addition to the Silverback family is, is the Ape. Uh, it's also available in our VB series. So like, you know, the Sony FR7, popular new PTZ camera, our VB series is, you know, it's yeah. a one RU tall, half RU wide, fits right underneath the camera. And we have a plates to integrate to the camera and a tripod or whatever, you know, the base is. Mm -hmm. And then this power system could then be integrated to the VB. So we have that long haul power capability, and then you could power all types of accessories, including the camera at 24 volt. That's a 19 and a half volt camera. So this, the system lends itself to that platform as well. Um, and then the other thing that we're introducing okay. at the show is the Honey Badger. Uh, okay. It's a line <laughs> of um, high capacity uh, transceivers for stadium, campus, facility interconnects. So the 5RU box on the bottom goes out at the remote side, goes into like a junction box at the stadium or the arena. And then the 4RU box is back in the machine room. So um, we have plans with consultants for systems that, you know, have like eight of these remote boxes. They all come back to the primary location in the machine room. The system supports like four uh, IFBs, wet IFBs, there's eight by die audio, eight by die video, two gigabit ethernet, serial data, contact closures, tally. So everything you really need for remote production for announcer booth is all rolled up into the Honey Badger. So. This is, a, this is an exciting one for us. I mean, I, this has got to be a very, very quick answer, hopefully. But you've got, I know, Silverback, Ape, etc. You know, the names all work. Does Honey Badger, is to, hey, Honey Badger actually a thing? Or is, have you made that up? No, yeah. Honey Badger is the most vicious animal, you know, in the is animal it? kingdom. Uh, well, and yeah. Okay, I, yeah, because yeah. we don't know about Honey Badgers. I wonder what we call them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They have a, there's another name for them. And they're kind of like, similar to skunks but they are tenacious okay. you know I and um, honey. yeah yeah with the honey and the free. sting them you got to yeah. go google honey badgers you guys there's a whole culture of honey badger <laughs> fandom out there uh this is the tip of the hat to the honey badger <laughs> jesse your um, personalized ads are going to be very interesting <laughs> anyway go on sorry yeah. you carry on jesse <laughs> did you have anything else to, to tell us no those, those are the three main products Brilliant. that we're introducing we have enhancements we're going to have a really um uh, you know a lot of uh talent at our booth you know sebastian's coming here from poland we have our new mechanical design engineer coming in really? from montreal we have Michael Jordan coming in from Toronto, you know, so it's really the whole team is getting together. This is like, you know, our first show back and um, we're Fantastic. really going to bring it. Brilliant. Be a great so show. We're finding you in Central Hall. Uh, you had it on your screen a moment ago. And so I think it's C4730. Thank yes, sir. C4730, yep. Central Hall. And we're going to be spending time with you talking about multi dye and open gear as well at the show. So that would be cool to learn everything that's new there. And people will be able to watch that after the show. Yeah. Uh, once again, thank you for getting up so ridiculously early and telling us Thanks. about Honey Badger, which is a revelation to, to everybody yeah. here. I can't wait to find out more. <laughs> Google it. You won't be disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> so, I've heard that before and I regretted it. <laughs> Don't, forget <to> <laughs> yeah. Don't forget to click leave when you go, because otherwise we can't get our next guest in. Got it, guys. <laughs> Thanks, Jesse. Thank you very much. See you in Vegas. See Look you forward there. to it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right. Take care. So cool. And uh, now Neil, Neil's going to be um, taking the reins for a moment. Be taking the strain. Uh, so uh, we've got zero. We got zero from and, uh, Cobalt. Cobalt Digital. So, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. What are you planning to talk to Cobalt <laughs> about, Neil? What have you got planned? Yeah, just to find out what they're showing at the uh, at the yeah, event, of course, event, this yeah. year. What uh, technology challenges they might be. Mm. trying to solve for us all. Yeah. I uh, think we, 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 we're we spending some time on that. We'll probably see yeah, yeah. Suzanne, uh, Suzanne Brady. Suzanne Brady, Brady, yeah. Brady yeah, yeah. Uh, who get involved with wrist as well, don't they? they get, yeah, all yours, get Neil. Wrist Off you all go. yours, Neil, yeah. Sorry. You can leave. Well, hi there, Ciro. Apologies if I pronounce your name wrong, but um, this is Ciro Naronha, who is the CTO of Cobalt Digital. How did I do, Ciro? You do all right. It's not wrong yet, but that's fine. <laughs> Well, I, I'll, I'll take that. Thank you very much. So it's great to have you with us today. Um, perhaps you could just tell us a little about what uh, we can expect to see from Cobalt Digital at this year's NAB show. Yes. Well, I'm going to start with RIS since I'm also the president with, uh, of uh, RIS Forum, right? So um, VSF or RIS has uh, recently issued uh, the R64 uh, Part 1, which is source adaptation, which is the ability of uh, an encoder, a source, 
to uh, change the data rate in, in, in response to network conditions. Cobalt's got the first implementation of that. The function itself is not something new. The, there's other things in the market with that, but it is the first uh, uh, interoperable implementation. So it's just Cobalt now, but we're hoping that other people will, will implement that and, and, and have an ecosystem just which is the intent of RIST. So ability to um, change the bitrate in, in, in response to network conditions. That's the first thing we're gonna be showing. Um, next, uh, we've been very successful with our 702110 un uncompressed video line. So we're gonna be showing a, a quad channel processor, 2110 processor. So nature 2110 in, 2110 out, and all kinds of good, interesting processing like pre uh, scaling and color correction and HDR and all, all that stuff. And together with that, we're going to, to be showing the, our 9904, which is the 4K version of the same thing. So all that good stuff that we have with us with the Technicolor, with dynamic HDR, you can now do with uh, native 2110 in and out. Those, you have a question, go ahead. I was just going to ask you, so, you know, looking at, uh, at both your role with RIST and with Cobalt Digital, what, um, what sort of technological challenges or, or what, what issues are your customers currently facing that you're going to be able to help them solve? Well, the, the issue is always I want to transmit, use the Internet as a contribution link. And RIST has been putting together the pieces for that. And the, the important thing is to do that in an open manner. So the customer is not tied to a single vendor. And I, I have my RIST hat when I say that. I, I want they, them to buy Cobalt, but they can buy interoperability is guaranteed, right? And, and this last part, which is the source adaptation, is the ability to change the bitrate is important. Because if you go to a hotel room, and you, 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 we all know how our hotel Wi-Fi is, right? You, you need to have that to have a reliable transmission. So it was demonstrated back in, in February at Vitrans. I actually had the setup running in my hotel room over Wi-Fi with a computer as a gateway, and I had a fine SDI stream in there uh, just going. And, and that's, that's important. So that's the kind of, I would say, the last major piece that is needed came out in November, and now Cobalt's got it in the product. So this um, this sort of in, improves the customer experience, but also protects revenue streams, presumably. Yes. Yes, well, and, and reduces uh, OPEX, right? Because you don't need to buy uh, dedicated lines. You can just use the internet. And this was really the last piece to make it reliable. So if people are interested in finding out about RIST at the event, would they come to your booth or is there somewhere else they can uh, locate them? Well, they can come to Cobalt booth. RIST itself doesn't have a booth at NAB, but many RIST members have booths. So any of the members will have a little card to say, here's all the RIST people in the, in the group. And we are going to have a, a cocktail on Monday at the 4A booth. Fantastic. Well, as you've uh, been kind enough to join us, I think we should uh, ask people to head to your booth for, uh, to learn more about uh, Cobalt and also about RIST. Um, I see you're in the central hall. Um, I have you on booth 2108. I hope that's correct. That is correct. Well, should we... have had in my background, but 2108 central hall. Go come, come talk to us. Uh, Susanna Brady, who's the, the chair, chairwoman of the Risk Forum, is going to be there as well. Um, and we're happy to talk to you. That's fantastic. Well, thanks very much for joining us today. Uh, safe travels to Vegas, and we look forward to uh, coming to see you when we're there. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, for those of you that have tuned in at 12 o'clock, we are not She Talks. <laughs> no, we are we are overrunning by about five uh, minutes, and long. Jenny, Mark Evans, and Amber Holbrook will be with us in about five minutes' time. We've just um, we're going to go well, next we guest. Can. We got Morris yeah, Snell from quickly. TSL, well quickly, yeah. um, and we're going to chat to Morris um, once uh, I think Sarah is yeah, disconnected. No, we're ready. We're ready. Morris, we're hi, ready. welcome to the show. Hi, nice to be here. Thanks for having us. No problem at all. 
Morris, what, um, what are TSL doing at NAB this year? Right. Well, um, this will be my uh, first NAB with TSL, and it's uh, it's a reminder for me of what it was like um, a few decades ago <laughs> at my first NAB when we're, I'm part of a, a small, agile company that's um, – very responsive to our customers' needs. And so we're showing lots of stuff that's what we've done in response to their needs. So mm. so it's cool. So we're going to be in the central hall, um, C2416. Okay. And we have our three main um, product lines. And in each of those, uh, as I said, we're showing the stuff that customers have asked us for. So um, starting with the power distribution, we actually won best in show last NAB, um, intelligent power distribution. And customers are asking increasingly about security and sustainability. So being able to monitor and control every port on a power strip individually is, is helps address those needs. So remotely monitor whether uh, the power that's going through OK, being able to turn stuff off to save power when you're not using the kit, um, uh, being able to power cycle units individually, that's uh, delivered through those products. Cool. And then moving on to our um, audio monitoring products, um, which is something TSL has become very well known for over recent years. Um, the new things that our customers have been asking us for, which we're showing at NAB and delivering now, is the addition of cost-effective um, IP monitoring. So in addition to the SDI, discrete MADI audio that we've had before, uh, you can now monitor 2110-based IP audio um, with NMOS control um, in our one RU and two RU. Uh, cost-effective audio monitors and then um, my area of uh, involvement is more around the control systems um, that's what I've been doing uh, for many decades in broadcast and so for TSL um, we're showing um, insight our monitoring tool that uh, can be used to monitor those power distribution and uh, other TSL and indeed any other uh, broadcast or infrastructure products in a simple web-based graphical customizable way um, and we're showing the latest generation of our um, live production control solutions, uh, the GTP um, product that can now run in the cloud as well as in um, appliance server rack unit, rackable units. Um, and we're showing CrossConnect, which is a cost effective way for customers to bridge between the worlds of baseband routing um, and again, IP. Um, 2110 particular NMOS control. So customers can take what they have, all the workflows and all the external connectivity they've had for years with uh, baseband routing and uh, start to involve 2110 systems as well. Mm. So um, I'll be there on the booth. Um, lots of my colleagues who have all the in-depth uh, knowledge and expertise across all those three product lines. So yeah, we look forward to seeing you and uh, come and chat to us and see how we can help. Fantastic. What type of um, people are you hoping to see there, Morris? So uh, TSL has a very um, wide user base, really. I mean, um, a lot of the big broadcasters around the world um, use our products as part of their overall systems. Um, but we also um, work with a lot of system integrators, um, who many of whom are, know how to configure our products. So a lot of them buy the products and then build their customers' systems themselves. Mm. So, yeah, we're looking for all, all types of broadcast users, really, uh, across those three um, product lines that we have. Um, so, yeah, we're looking forward to a, a good show. Yeah, and where can people find you in the halls? So in the central hall, um, C2416. Fantastic. Um, so uh, it's quite near the front, yeah, it'd be quite uh, easy to find us. Fantastic. Morris, thank you very much for joining us. And I'm sure we will we will see you at the show. Yeah, we'll make sure. Thank we'll you. See, see you there. Thanks very much indeed. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. Now we've got another real person. Another real person. Quick one so that we don't Quick one. So, crash. yeah, just, uh, just, just uh, anyone waiting for Jenny and Amber's show, um, stay there. Yeah. Literally a few minutes. We're joined by... 
Penny Westlake from Intero Systems. That's right. How are yeah. you doing? Quick one. I'm, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. I'm, I'm actually joining your, Jenny as well. Well, you're, so. you're, you're staying there. there for the duration, <laughs> yeah, exactly. so you you're don't have to worry about anything. You're, 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 right, so they're going to have to put so, up with me for a bit longer. No, so let's just have a quick intro to what Intero Systems are showing at NAB, and then we can leave you and the ladies to, to talk. Okay. <laughs> the ladies, I like that. <laughs> is that, is yes. that wrong? Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, totally wrong. Probably. <laughs> yeah. The experts. Let's yes. call us that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, Intero. Uh, we, as, you, as you probably know, and certainly people out there interested in this will, we're pretty much um, global experts now on QC and monitoring, and that's right across the whole sort of broadcast VOD mm. uh, streaming chains. We are showing updates to our major product, Baton, that is pretty much in use globally mm. um, right. now. But we're not sitting on our laurels. We're adding more and more um, additions to that. So we expect quite a lot of customers are coming mm. to see what's going on there. We've also got a new product, Baton Captions. Um, a lot of people who do um, QC, Baton does do um, QC of subtitling and captions and all of those good things. But we, a lot of our customers ask for something a bit more specialist. Um, so that's a product that will not only generate, auto-generate subtitles and captions, but it will also QC them, and it will also um, you can also look at the positioning and drift and all, all kinds of stuff right. that uh, people need now. It's particularly uh, useful in multi-language operations where... Um, you know, obviously localization is a big thing at the moment, mm. and uh, we've uh, we've had an awful lot of interest in bait and captions because of that. And the other product that we're majoring on, obviously all our products will be there, is um, our Orion Orion OTT family of products, which are real time monitoring for, say, for example, Orion twenty one ten. We have um, SD SD over IP monitoring, and you can monitor at very very detailed level. But you can also, we also have um, overarching products that mean that you can use those over multiple um, sites and multiple locations, even in mm -hmm. different countries. So um, if you're doing VOD or live monitoring for streaming, then we we have we have the, the technology. Yeah, yeah it sounds like it. Yeah, yeah. And what are you looking most towards NAB for? What are you most looking forward? It's always lovely to catch up with our existing customers mm. and have detailed discussions, but we also use an NAB, of course, to, to meet new people, mm. you know, yeah. people who may not have, have thought of us uh, up to now. Yeah, yeah. But because our specialism really is is in the area of, of monitoring and, and quality control, mm. you know, we have products that work, media analyzers that uh, are used in labs and people who are developing codecs mm. as well. So um, the feedback we get from these kind of shows is, yeah, is yeah. makes it well worthwhile. Yeah. yeah. And Fantastic. where can we find you? At you the show? can find us in the North Hall this time. We okay. were in West Hall last year. Oh, someone's moved from the West. Oh, yes. Right, yeah. right. Hey. We have. Breaking yeah. news. <laughs> we have. <laughs> um, but we're now in the North Hall and um, you're looking forward to the show very much. Fantastic. So Brilliant. stay right where you are. Penny, uh, we haven't gone on about Kit Plus shows at all, but if you haven't heard of the Kit Plus shows, we do them regionally in the UK three or four times a year. And we're going to play a quick VT of what a few visitors um, think about the shows, just to give you a bit of flavour. And hopefully in that time, when you come back into the studio, we will be replaced by Jenny Amber together with Penny. So, And we'll be back, Matt and I will be back just after one o'clock. We are running a few minutes late, so um, about ten past one. I'm Graham Risden from the GTC, the Guild of TV Camera Professionals. We're here at Kit Plus in Bristol, having a great day. We've got lots of interesting people. Um, Kit Plus is a great show for us because you get to meet people um, in more detail. Some of the shows are so big that you just don't really get time to talk to people, whereas the, the, the small shows are, are good for us and we, we're getting a lot of interest. So uh, long may it continue. Hi there, I'm Claire Saunders from Cinematography World, a global print and digital platform for everything cinematography, print publication that comes out six times a year, um, and we're offering free digital subscription if you scan the QR code or you can visit our website. And um, we've been here at Kit Plus all day, had some great conversations in Bristol, and we did in Twickenham as well last week. So very pleased to be part of the event and hope that you enjoy our publication. Hi, I'm Russell from Hitomi. I'm here at the Kit Plus show in Twickenham Stadium. A magnificent venue, and it's a really friendly show. I love coming here, partly because I'm local, but uh, it's always good to meet people. I'm here mostly for the networking. You know, I see old friends make new ones, and also some very good business contacts. It's surprising how many people I've been talking to need to measure their timing. So here I am at Kit Plus, 
which is just two weeks after IBC. Um, this is a really, really interesting event. It's much younger, and many of the things you see here at Kit Plus are much closer to where the rubber touches the road. So here at Kit Plus, you can really see firsthand how program making really goes together. You see a lot of the things that you don't see at IBC, and you meet a much, much younger crowd, which is really refreshing. Hello, uh, my name is Joseph Otieno Adamson. Uh, I like to come to Kit Plus shows. In fact, let me just go back a little bit. 2008, I met Simon when he was running the magazine TV Bay. And uh, he encouraged me. Um, I had, he allowed me even to contribute to, Kit, uh, to TV Bay magazine, writing small articles about small stuff. And I'm in, so much interested in miniaturization. Uh, we've been talking about uh, a whole lot of things and coming to this show, I don't, I'm always attending the ones in London, but sometimes I would like also to attend those ones in Manchester, Bristol. But this is a very, very important show because it encourages people like us. We get to find a lot more about the industry. Say, for example, you might be wanting to buy a small camera, or maybe you are into streaming, you will find all kinds of stuff to do with our industries, from big to small. So that is one reason. And I can guarantee you, I, I don't like to miss. I could be in Africa, but if I know Kit Plus is happening in London, I make sure I'm there. Hello. So I'm Jenny and this is Amber and it's always been apparently that women talk too much but I think we've just seen from the last couple of hours it's also the guys. So they've left us a little less time than we'd actually hoped for but don't worry about it, we still will get um, see all our guests and have an amazing show. Um, so Amber, are you ready for this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're ready. So we're calling this next session She Talks and we've got an amazing group of women to talk to. So let's get started. And let's have first up, Gay Bell. She's coming, uh, I think. Are you coming, Gay? <laughs> I, I, ah, uh, okay. Poor Gay. She literally gave me just a couple of minutes. So I really hope that I've still managed to see her and keep her. Hello. Hey, how are you? I'm very good. I miss you, my partner in crime. Come on, we did it for IBC. And this time, I've got the champagne. We had rosé oh. last time, the champagne. Don't worry, I'm keeping it on ice for us. Don't worry. Amber Fantastic. doesn't know well, anything. Thanks for having me. <laughs> uh, and uh, sort of nice to see you both. And well, champagne's very appropriate given that we're all celebrating 100 years of NAV. So you, you, see, you and I get yeah. the branding opportunity. And by the way, I do love all the branding on the back. Very nice. Well, I was persuaded that I should go client centric <laughs> by the team. So as you probably guess, these are our. Clients, sorry, wrong way. These are our <laughs> clients uh, that we're uh, going to be working with uh, at the show. So it's pretty hectic at the moment. I I'm can actually imagine. in London this week, so lots and lots of preparation going on and final sort of um, sort of meetings. But yeah, as always, just really looking forward to being in Las Vegas uh, for the NAB show. So what are you really all about right now? Apart from the mad preparation, 24-hour days and all the rest of it, what's really your focus right now? I tell you what's been interesting actually uh, this year is we've um, we created a kind of new product for some of our clients uh, around sort of account based marketing principles because I think people are sort of finding it pretty tough out there in terms of you know sort of competition, getting mind share amongst existing customers, but also sort of new customers. So we've been doing a lot of really targeted uh, lead generation work with clients to actually help them make sure that by the time they get to the show they're 
diary is a full. Yeah. You know, I think we all talk about this all the time, that there's no point pitching up to a trade show and expecting people to walk past and be wowed by your fantastic oh my gosh. presentation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because there aren't that many light bulb moments uh, when people are walking past. Uh, yeah. So it's, you know, it's all about the preparation, isn't it? So we're just basically helping people to make sure that they've got, you know, good meetings lined up, they're targeting the right people. Uh, and, you know, sort of proving to be pretty, you know, sort of successful in building traction for clients. That's great. So when are you going? It seems to be we're always, always on the same plane at the same time, strangely enough, on the same day. So... Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's hope that uh, we all have smooth travels. I'm actually going to be arriving in Vegas on Wednesday, on the Thursday, sorry. Oh, OK. So a little bit later for me than normally. I yeah. normally try and get out a couple of days early. But with Easter being so close... Um, I'm actually not sort of getting in until sort of Thursday, uh, but then sort of will be hitting the ground running. I've got a pretty busy schedule and uh, I'm actually doing a panel on the Sunday. Ah. Um, uh, so um, NAB are doing their diversity symposium uh, again on the Sunday afternoon. Yes. And um, so uh, actually I'm, I'm doing a panel that afternoon uh, that really looks at actually how you can build better businesses with diversity and inclusion. Oh. Um, uh, and so it's looking at the business case. Um, uh, so rather than, you know, the whole social justice imperative uh, of DNI, actually looking at some hard sort of business facts and, you know, why does it actually make sense? Uh, for companies to actually, you know, really, really commit and deliver on that side. I've got speakers from AWS, from Quilt, uh, who are really sort of, you know, building a very proactive and inclusive uh, culture um, to actually help their business. So, so that should be fun. Should be a good session. I'm looking forward to that. And can anybody turn up or do you have to be registered part of the conference? Or is You have to be registered call? to go to okay. it, but it's on Sunday afternoon in the West Hall. Okay. Uh, so if you go to the NAB uh, show um, uh, website, you'll be able to find the links to that as part of the conference programme. Lovely. Well, that's amazing. Thank you. And I'm sorry that we held you for so long in the green room. Don't worry. It's not a problem <laughs> at all. Absolutely. No, really looking forward to it. Looking forward to seeing you guys. And, yeah. You know, just for me, the whole thing about trade shows like NAB and IBC is just getting to sort of see your industry friends. Yes, yeah, definitely. And spend time with people. I just love that. So I'm really, really looking forward to being back. Yeah, it's you and me both. Moments. <laughs> it feels like tomorrow, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> as long as we can survive the next couple of weeks, right? So Absolutely. We'll, well, good luck with the rest of your session. Thank and you so much. See you in Las Vegas. Indeed. Thanks so much Take again. Care. Take Bye-bye. care. Bye-bye. Bye, honey. Ah, oh, she's so amazing. <laughs> so um, that was really kind of her to sort of pop out because she wasn't meant to be around. So, um, but so I'm really grateful for her to do that. Now, I'd like to introduce probably one of the busiest ladies at the minute, a lady called Dorian Sullivan, with the amazing title of VP Audience Development. I actually want a title like that. I think. Um, so, um, and she's the one that actually we've been working with together on this whole event as part of NAB Amplify. So. Um, Amber, what do you fancy saying to Dorian? Hi, Dorian. How are you? <laughs> Hello. Thank you so much for having me. So, a few weeks left for NAB. How are the final preparations going? Um, well, uh, we're all working 24-7. And I think that you can really get the best gauge of the vibe by talking to operations. Because it's about this time when the exhibitors start um, contacting us about what's going on in their booth and regulations. So I was talking to somebody in our operations department yesterday that uh, got a phone call about fire regulations, right? So that's always interesting. And there was an exhibitor that was asking if they could have a fire eater in their booth, you know, and of course we talked to the facility and we put it all together and they're well on their way. Wow. Um, you know, the, there's people calling about, can I have people on stilts in my booth? We have um, another, we have a vehicle on the show floor that's moving, actually like moving on the show floor. So there's a lot of regulations with that. So there's plenty of um, good vibes. People are, and the exhibitors are really pushing the envelope to, you know, bring it 
uh, this year. And so uh, we're excited. We're excited. Sounds like a circus. <laughs> really? Yes, it does. It does. <laughs> I'm amazed. Absolutely. I mean, right. like, all the time you don't yeah. need more heat. It's I know, Las Vegas, literally. frankly. So good grief. <laughs> well, there's, there's so much to talk about. But um, in a quick minute, yeah. what is your highlight for NAB this year? We have, um, you know, we always have our experiential zones that have our inspiration theaters and all the innovations. And those are must attend places. We have a new Cine Central um, but, you know, I, I think it's always the networking opportunities. I encourage everyone that is attending um, to do at least one networking event every day because it's the serendipitous, you know, discoveries, connections that you make, the conversations, you know, take the shuttles, take public transportation, sit next to somebody, strike up a conversation and and do what we can only do, you know, when we're in person, which is what, you know, makes this event um, so, um, so special. And then I was just checking um, yesterday, and there are actually people from 157 countries, including the US, that have registered to attend the show. So this is such a global, global event um, that, you know, it, it's really, really a unique opportunity. So that would be one of the things that um, I would recommend. And then the other thing that I wanted to just mention was that we have, um, this is our centennial celebration. I'm sure you're going to hear that all day long. Um, and one of the ways that we're celebrating is with a proof of uh, attendance participation, our POAP uh, NFT. And so I encourage people to go to our website, um, search the POAP, P-O-A-P, um, and sign up to participate. There are a number of challenges. We're going to be adding more, but there's great prizes. So, um, you know, you could win this lapel pin, um, T-shirts, access to VIP lounge at the show, um, discounts um, at the store. So, it's free to participate. You'll learn a lot about the show. You'll get access to um, a lot of VIP and cool prizes. So those are some of the tips that I would recommend. Mm. Sounds amazing. Um, and have you got any uh, personal tips that you'd recommend? Purse snacks. Make sure that you got a little bit of a, um, a you know, some something in your in your purse. Um, you know. Definitely do the digital um, digital card exchange, you know, get your QR code ready so that you can do the scanning and such, bring your water bottle. There's 50 locations at the Las Vegas Convention Centers, and you definitely want to stay hydrated, um, but, uh, you know, make the most of it. it. It can be tough at the end of the day to, after you've been talking to everybody and walking the floor and, you know, doing lots of business and everything, but... Um, to kind of muster up enough uh, strength or energy, I should say, to go to the happy hour, but take the time, go to the happy hour. You know, that's where you're really gonna, you know, have some conversations um, and uh, and and a lot of fun. So that's, those are mine, yeah, my tips for sure. Amazing, well, thank you so much, Dorian. Thank you. That's been great. And can I just say before you leave that you and your team have been extraordinary to work with. Um, this is Ouch. the first time that we've actually done it with NAB Amplify. Um, and actually, it's been a real pleasure working with you and your team. And actually, you know, the, the sort of the cross promotion and actually how we've worked together has, um, has been really good, especially with the time zones. And when we were suddenly America was changing, then, you know, <laughs> Europe was changing. What time are we? And I know it is super early for you. So I I am, you know, really appreciative of you. But it was important to get you in quite early so you could set the scene as well. So, oh, um, you know, so thank you. I really appreciate it. And your team are good. And it will be really nice to meet you in person, actually, if I can tear you away, if I can find you. <laughs> I've been to one of the VIP lounges or the happy hours or personally, something like that. So. We'll be there. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> we will definitely meet there. And, you know, one more tip before I go. Um, NAB Amplify, our digital platform that has... Um, great interviews, um, plenty of content and articles, and really highlights the top trends um, that's going on in media and entertainment is the best primer for getting show ready. So if you check out nabamplify.com, 
um, and go through. You're going to see all uh, previews and highlights. We have exhibitors um, also doing demos such as um, what is uh, what is going on here today. And then, of course, we are streaming this on NABAmplify.com as well. So thank you so much, Jenny. Thank you very much, Amber. Um, I appreciate getting the time to be with you today. Lovely. Well, you can't go back to bed, but go and have another coffee. And I <laughs> All right, we'll do. Genuinely a really, really good day. Thank you ever Thank so much. Thank you so much. Right. So now we're going to chat to an exhibitor. So actually what it's all about. So I'm really hoping because I can't hear anything. Anymore. Yeah, I can't hear her. No. Is she there? <laughs> Okay, so I think she's coming. She's, she's on coming. her way. She's coming. So, yeah, that was some really I know, it's such stuff. a shame. Poor Amber, <laughs> I only found out, is not actually going to NAB. I know. So we're talking all about this, <laughs> and yet she's not going to. So I'll, I'll try and win you a T-shirt or something like that. Here. I know, I know. I'm so sorry. Anna, hi, sweet. How are you? Hello. Hello. I'm good, thank you. Excellent. <laughs> Up Lots in of fun in the waiting room there. I know. I'm so sorry. Honestly, all these guys, they just talk, 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 talk. You know? We had a great time. We were having, we were living it up in the waiting room. It's brilliant. I know. There's probably loads of you there, really. It's way better. We should just actually, you know, film that instead. So <laughs> what is life? Is it, I mean, it's not great weather down here, you know, sort of um, just outside London. What's it like in Scotland? Well, the sun's trying to poke its head through. Ah, There's no rain. It's quite warm. We don't need a coat. Um, wow. Sounds like you've right. got better weather than I that. think it's spring up there. My gosh, we better all go there. Or alternatively, we could just go on a plane to Las Vegas, where it's slightly warmer, um, although it has been raining there too as well, which is a little bit shocking. Um, <laughs> so you're on the UK Pavilion. Um, so why do you actually choose to exhibit on the UK Pavilion as opposed to maybe having your own booth? Oh, the UK Pavilion is absolutely brilliant. So Mark looks after us really well. Um, they sort everything out for us. Um, really, we've got the, the a really good spot. So um, we haven't really exhibited on our own there. So we wouldn't have many points. So we would be put into a hall where it wouldn't be quite so good as the position that Mark can get. As Mark always gets us an amazing spot. We're all very choosy and we like to have, you know, <laughs> the, the corner plot and we have it all going on. But he knows what we like now. Um, so he sorts all that out for us. They sort all the stand out um, and it's just brilliant. The hospitality, we've got the teas and the coffees and, you know, the, the person who looks after us there. And then there's sort of the Yorkshire tea and cake as well. Mustn't forget uh, that. Yes, we mustn't forget the Yorkshire tea. <laughs> Definitely not. Yeah. The little tea ceremony that we've got going on. I know. And in the mornings, so they brilliant. managed to get Krispy Kreme donuts. I never managed to get there in time for that, though. I think it's a conspiracy. So. You've got to get there early, Jenny. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know. No, 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 Before no, no. we I'm, get there, really. I'm obviously, yes, yes. That was, that'd that be what I'm doing. Or I'm desperately trying to get dressed from the night before type thing. <laughs> So, why does a company like Hitomi value NAB? NAB for us is really crucial that we go. So, 60% of our customers are from the US. Um, so, it's a really good opportunity to actually meet them face-to-face, -face, talk to them, show them all the products, talk to them about what they've been doing in the year. Some of them are existing customers. Some of them are new potential customers. Um, but really, it's getting in front of people, talking to how they're actually using the product, um, what they like about it, what new features they need. Um, and this kind of the shows really scope out some of the workflows for us for the following year. So um, people are always kind of giving us little tips and things that they need. So listening to our customers is the biggest, um, the biggest thing really is. Um so yeah, that's 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 us really. Just it's, getting in front of the customers and and seeing them. It's another form of networking in a way. People sort of use the phrase quite, you know, sort of freely, but actually networking can be just chatting and finding out, like you say, about the next roadmap or maybe somebody's, you know, customer's pain points and then you can chat about it. And obviously being a slightly smaller, more agile company, you know, you're not bogged down with sort of corporate policies and they can actually chat to the people who design and develop the product as well, which is, you know, th that's a quite a different experience as well, I think. Yeah, definitely. We've got all the products there as well. So we, we set it all up. We come up with, with good demos. 
So rather than just looking at videos or whatever, you can actually, you know, have a have a good demo with an engineer who can ask lots of questions. Um, and for us, that's just the, the best way of showing our products. Definitely. So one of the things I know that um, you value quite a lot and you managed to go to the sports video group, SVG Women's um, uh, Things quite a lot. There's um, even been one up in Scotland. Um, so um, is there something, are you planning to do something with the SVG group at NAB? I'm sure if there are events there, then we will. We perhaps, <laughs> we perhaps need to, to register for them. But yeah, if they're there and they're doing things, we definitely will be. Um, and do you value being part of SVG Women? Yeah, I mean, it is a very different networking experience, I find. Um, it's a very good place to grow confidence. Um, it's, it is really good. And it's just amazing to look at all the different people around the room um, and just feel confident to go up and approach people. Uh, networking is always quite hard anyway, I think. Um, but to go into a room that's so welcoming um, and just be encouraged to network, um, it's just, it, it's quite liberating. And the number of conversations, I've had a number of really good conversations and sales leads that have come out from that. Um, so, so, yeah, it's it's invaluable really and the, the confidence of the people are just am amazing really good ah oh, that's really nice <laughs> to hear and I think they'll like to hear that as well it's just something a little bit different where you can just be you a little bit more as well yeah I do find that I do find that it was funny at the last one it snowed up in Scotland which doesn't actually happen that, that often in Glasgow <laughs> and everybody was wondering how they were all getting back to the train station and some people all made a little gang we all walked back together so it's, oh. it's very different um yeah, it's quite, it's, you're all in it together, really. Nice. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time. Really, um, really appreciate it. Um, and thanks for just waiting around and having a bit more fun in the green room, really. Oh, we had a brilliant time back there. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you, Jenny. Thank all you. All right. We'll see you soon. Bye. Take care. Bye. So what happens if, just like me, you can't make it to NAB this year because you're just too busy? Mm. Um, our, next, our next person, our next guest is Claire Wilkie, MD from Limitless Broadcast, and she's one of those customers. Um, and it's so important for her to kind of keep track of all the news coming out of, of NAB. Um, so, yeah, so I think she should be joining us very shortly. Um, I can hear that she's just joining the zoom but calls, you are so. right it's just um sometimes you know for various reasons and claire is one of the busiest women in the industry at the minute um so she can't go but she still needs to understand what's going on and what's going to be important for her business basically so um and that's why things like the nab amplify platform and whatever or different ways to actually understand what's going on yeah ah here she is hello claire how are you Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hello. I'm really well. How are you both doing? Oh, Good. Not too bad. It's yeah. lovely to see you. <laughs> you too. I'm loving the studio you've got going on there. It looks yeah. great. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. No, it is lovely. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. So, how, um, yeah, tell us a little bit more about um, Limitless Broadcast for people that haven't, or don't know about Limitless Broadcast or, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me to come and share and say hi and take part in today. It's so exciting. Um, so yeah, so I'm founder and managing director of Limitless Broadcast, which is a live outside broadcast company specialising in remote production and uh, cloud production and sustainable broadcast. And um, at the forefront of innovation and R&D and looking at ways to bring that to the market to take everyone with us and to drive change and sustainability. Amazing. Um, so why is it so important for Limitless Broadcast to be across all, everything coming out of NAB this year? Well, it's massively important. It's, um, it's great to, to see the latest innovation, see what other people are thinking. Um, there's a lot of uh, people who are um, bringing new technologies to the market, so looking at ways that that can be harnessed creatively and how that can, um, like the latest in tech can um, support editorial and uh, create 
new television, new formats, etc. And also look at actually what are the big trends happening at the moment? What are people really caring about? What are we caring about as an industry? And how as we as a technical supplier um, look at uh, being able to adopt that and um, bring that to our clients? So, yeah, it's really important for us to check and see what's going on. Yeah, definitely. And how do you keep across all the different um, news coming out of NAB and interested generally in the media and entertainment industry? Yeah, absolutely. So I guess keeping across generally, I think uh, from my point of view, it's kind of keeping an eye on, on the conversations that are happening on, happening on platforms like LinkedIn, big social media platforms, as well as our um, industry publications, but also just seeing what the movers and changes are talking about themselves and actually looking at, okay, where's the conversation going? Um, what is really exciting about that? Um, and um, kind of seeing, yeah, seeing what conversations are happening is actually really important to me as a business founder and company founder. Like I'm driving the vision, I'm driving the the the, the strategy of the company. Um, and then also looking looking at things such as um you know nab amplify this is a brilliant platform to be just keeping across like all the bite-sized things that are happening and, and i think it's a brilliant platform to be able to check in and very quickly understand what's going on and and um i think it's a great tool for communication getting things out quickly as well so all of all of those things are really helpful amazing amazing and just very just finally are you going to miss going to nab yeah, uh, not think not so. going to, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, are you suddenly getting on the plane? Have you managed to find a ticket? Yeah, I'm not the going golden to ticket. Me, just like me. <laughs> well, I, I guess as as trying to do better for people and planet, I'm all about trying to lower our carbon footprint. So, being able to to check in with things remotely is really powerful. Mm-hmm. And um, also, yeah, you can't beat having conversations in person, but. Um, those can always come a little bit later. So, yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Claire. It was lovely to talk to you. Thank you for having me. Can I just ask very quickly, because I know that you're also involved in RISE, um, and I'm going to be chatting to um, Amber later, actually, as a RISE mentee. Um, But I was just wondering how, as a founder, um, you know, um, a woman in this industry and all the rest of it, you know, founder and MD of a company, how you found, um, you know, sort of resources and um, inclusivity, and how you've actually sometimes managed to um, just negotiate those different types types of um, roots a little bit um so for, first of all rise is an amazing platform for for driving visibility and diversity across our industry and i was in the first cohort to go through rise and i it came at exactly the right time for me where i needed a mentor <laughs> to help because i felt very alone um and Amazingly, things are changing through um, organisations such as RISE. Um, In terms of resources, I think RISE have have a good kind of back catalogue of resources that um, I've had my um, female engineers kind of tap into and I'm bringing them along to events. Um, I feel as an industry, like we can always do more. That's not, I'm not shaming anything that has happened before or um, it's looking at, okay, what can, how can we build on this and build on the momentum to really change the game in, in how our industry looks and encouraging more voices to the table. So I feel that there's good resources out there. Um, that are approachable and rise are really approachable as a as an organization um but we can always do a little bit more there's always more to be done <laughs> no absolutely but i think it's a very very good start and shortly we're going to be chatting a lot more um sort of about that and i know that you employ a lot of young people and, and graduates and i'm very much um in that kind of ilk as well but it is quite difficult finding that you know those sort of people you know that you can either sort of mentor yourself or they've got um you know the caliber or the type of skills that you want that then you can sort of nurture into um you know just would help your business as well as help them really yeah absolutely i uh for all of the even our female uh, freelancers that we work with on a regular basis mm-hmm. i'll always talk to them about rise and say if you feel like you're kind of doing things in your own lane 
talk to these people because it's a brilliant community and they have amazing resources and um like a river of mentors that you can just get on board with and and have learned from and grow with so i'm always pushing people to rise because rise was such a big part of my journey no that's yeah. great yeah, same. Like yeah, no, exactly. We're going to chat. We yeah. were meant to start that off, but we're going to do it towards the end of the hour instead. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> well, thanks ever so much. Um, and um, really sorry we're not going to see you, um, but we'll see you another time, no doubt. We'll both be there yeah, in spirit. Absolutely. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Okay, Bye. pleasure. Bye. So it is interesting about the whole, I didn't actually realise that she'd started her journey and that had been one of the, um, the things that really helped her. I suppose I've been in this industry so long, I sort of almost just um, forget and just sort of keep going, really. Um, so the next one is, um, is going to be uh, Vifjaya. Hello, all the way from very sunny, one assumes, Dubai. So, Thank you, Jenny. It's, Good to see you both. Yeah, it's always sunny in Dubai, right? Yes, indeed. <laughs> right, so I would first of all um, like to start by wishing you a blessed Ramadan because obviously um, we're in um, those days at the minute. Um, are you planning um, to do anything during this time? Um, uh, first of all, Ramadan Mubarak to all our viewers. Uh, we have a few iftar parties and a few suhoor invites yeah so i will be going to a couple of them yes <laughs> good but first of all you know we need to chat a little bit about um nab and what's interesting is you have capsat obviously the um the event for the middle east and african region the month after in may so why do you feel it necessary to actually get on a plane and go to another warm place and go to actually um go to experience everything that nab in las vegas has uh, I think NAB has a completely different vibe from both IBC and CAPSAT. It's a lot more intense, uh, unlike <laughs> unlike IBC and CAPSAT, where things are a little more relaxed. Even if it's Vegas, I think it's a little bit intense. Uh, I think NAB is where you see most of the new technologies before they're brought to Europe or to APAC or the Middle East. And uh, if we want to see some of our American clients, I think this is a place to meet them, especially senior personnel. I sort of try to go to all the shows and try and pace uh, meeting my clients. So if I'm seeing the American clients at NAB, I try and meet my European clients at IBC and so on. Uh, and Broadcast Pro is the only B2B publication in the MENA market, this sector. So we see ourselves as representing the Middle East to the outside world. And I think we play a very subtle role in showcasing some of the opportunities in the Middle East, especially in the UAE and GCC. Uh, I'm especially proud to say that we, um, we were very instrumental when a few American companies wanted to come to Dubai. They approached us and we, were, we helped them to get a strong foothold in the region. We introduced them to some of the key clients. Uh, we also helped them with some of the local hires uh, in fact, top regional director, um, you know, roles. So we've, we've played a very important role for, and I'm talking about big blue chip companies. So in that sense, I'm, um, I think we've, we've done quite well for ourselves. Um, okay. The other thing is also, if you, if you also take the Middle East, for instance, uh, there's just one thing as well that I want to add. If you, if you take, the Middle East, a lot of the people out here find it very difficult to go to the U.S. So I think we also bring back stories from there. And it's quite good that we play that uh, role of being in the middle. Absolutely. And that brings me nicely on to because you buck the trend a little bit. Well, you buck the trend a lot, actually. Um, but um, you're a force of nature, actually. So, um, But I do think what's interesting is that your publication is printed as well as online. And a lot of publications have moved all online, the e-zine route or just newsletters or, or Kit Plus, for instance. You know, they changed to be um, a television show. Um, so why do you feel it necessary? to put it in print as well as um, dynamic? 
Oh, well, just to be clear, we have print, we have the website, we have social media platforms, we do video uh, video interviews. Of course. Um, uh, and we also have conferences, which a lot of them don't have. But we feel print is still very significant, especially in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there is something about seeing a photograph in print or seeing a story in print. I've had a lot of people who have been disappointed. Uh, at times when I've told them, I've published your story online and they've said, yeah, but we didn't see it in print. So, uh, <laughs> and also the uh, quality of our paper, I, I think you will agree that the broadcast pro paper is very different. Uh, we have a matte finish and uh, through good times and bad, we've sort of kept that quality. Um, so I think print still works in the Middle East, print still works. Uh, I actually agree. There's parts of the Middle East and India and Africa and all the rest of it. They tend to actually, you know, they look at it, they read it. Um, and interestingly, not everywhere still has, um, you know, good internet connection. So actually being able to have something physical, definitely on a plane, is um, is actually a really, really good um, good thing to do. Out on the plane to Las Vegas, obviously. <laughs> nicely done, nicely done. She's plugging also, you even better, I know. So, so also um, think, uh, think about features, Jenny. How much are you going to read on a big screen? Exactly. Uh, on any screen, you're not going to read that much. No, 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 features, I completely agree. Yeah. So you talked a while back about that you travel a lot and everything else. And I know that you've just come back from Washington, actually, for a satellite show. And obviously, um, NAB is not just broadcast. We heard this mentioned actually during the morning. You know, there's radio, there's satellite, there's house of worship. There's lots of other markets and segments, education, et cetera, et cetera. Um, how, is import sorry, how important is it for you to actually look at different market segments for your readers and therefore your customers? Oh, very important. Um, you know, you look at different trends across different markets and you, you see a trend in a particular market, you know the trend is eventually coming to your market. So it always helps to have that foresight to be able to see what's there. And um, it has helped us a lot to see these new trends and introduce them as new topics in our own conferences. So we are way ahead uh, of the market. We introduce a lot of stories, for instance, just to give you an example, we did a whole series on virtual production, the first virtual production studio in the UAE. And uh, I don't think there are that many in the in the region anyway. There are probably two or three anyway. Um, but the first that came up in the region was maybe just four or five months ago. We uh, we started writing about we started writing a whole series of articles on virtual production, uh, and we got in touch with a company in Canada that just does that. And we were able to get that series going just to show people what are the myths, you know, what are the do's, what are the don'ts. So I think it's very important to be ahead of the trends and to be able to bring that to this market. So in that sense, yes, you need to go to different shows. Nice. So as a female who travels a lot, um, what are your top trips for surviving basically trade shows and still being nice to people as you always are? <laughs> Sleep well, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, sleep whenever you get a chance, sleep on the flight. Don't just be watching a lot of programs. Try and get a good uh, night's sleep or, you know, sleep because that's the one thing that hits everyone when, you've, um, when you're traveling. I think I just sleep whenever I can. And uh, I don't suffer that much from jet lag as a lot of people do. Um, I, I also have some other tips. So, you know, you invest in a very good power bank because you run out of uh, phone battery very often and you need to have one that can sort of charge your phone at least two or three times through the day. Don't forget your travel adapter. Don't forget to read the weather report. Um, when I went to Washington, my hands were freezing and um, all the shops had run out of gloves. I finally found one pair of gloves in a massive hypermarket. They just had one. So... <laughs> I guess pack clothes accordingly and always have a spare set of clothes in your hand baggage. <laughs> Airports, you know, are infamous for losing your baggage and invariably nobody there cares. So <laughs> the, those are my tips. Actually, amazing. The power bank is, is very, very important. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, luggage these days, we all try and do a lot of hand luggage, I think. But when you're going to be going on a long trip, mm -hmm. unfortunately, um, you have to put something in the hold. But you do, you know, cross your fingers and hope it's going to arrive with you. Yeah. Vijaya, it's been a complete pleasure. Thank you so much. And, Thank um, you. And I'll see you in a couple of weeks. 
Yeah, I'm also really looking forward to going to NAB. It's been three years. Ah, It'll be great right. to connect with customers and with all of you at the show. Great. Well, I'll see you there. See you. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. So it's been really interesting hearing about all the different behind the scenes stuff going on um, in the lead up to NAB. Um, so our next, our next person, our next guest is another exhibitor um, all the way from Italy. We've got Barbara from Class X, which I'm really excited to talk to. Um, she seems to have had, well, she's in a very similar role to me. So I yeah. think it'll be very good to chat to Barbara. Hello, Barbara. Oh, hello, Jenny and Amber. Ah, nice branding. <laughs> I am appreciating all the different branding, yeah. actually, on the background and all the rest of it. I just like, gold star, <laughs> Is that a green screen I can see there on the side in the background as well? I'll have to twist this up. Did it it's work? Oh, it's... <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> How are you doing, Barbara? Uh, very fine, thank you. Spring has arrived, finally. <laughs> Not in London uh, yet. Not, no, not quite for us. We're, we're hoping, fingers crossed, getting there. Yeah. <laughs> so how are your plans going for NAB? Oh, very well. It was easier to, to plan the, the trip and all the rest uh, than last year. Uh, so uh, it's only more expensive than it was four years ago mm. or three years ago. And so, uh, but for the rest... Um, for the first time, I feel it's easy to plan some trip, some 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 event without having uh, lots of extra bureaucracy to make, you know, to handle. So this is this is quite good. And uh, apart from that, so it's um, we are on a NAB with our partners for a, and uh, they're hosting us in their booth. So I don't have to do the usual. Uh, also planning of uh, of the whole booth. I I only have to be there and work there and bring good stuff. And and this year I'm going to present. So actually like talking and presenting um, about our virtual production. And so it will be quite new for me, me this year. Sounds really interesting. It's always great to be able to just rock up and not have to do any of the nice. crazy pre-planning. <laughs> Um, so tell me a little bit more about your role, because I think we're in quite similar roles um, within sales, technical sales. So, yeah, tell yeah. me a bit more. Technical and sales. Um, also, because in this in the broadcast industry or whenever you are proposing uh, like technical equipment, it's difficult to sell it just as it is. You just really have to know the background of it. And uh, although my formation was life sciences, I'm a biologist, <laughs> at the end, I, I really found it very enthusiastic. So I'm very enthused about the, the broadcast industry and everything that it concerns, because it is, it is so great to see that you can really create uh, live event and shows. What we do actually is graphics, graphics and also real-time graphics and uh, graphics for augmented reality. And uh, knowing the workflow and knowing the background and knowing the technologies that are involved is very, very important. So I had to get technical backgrounds of all this. And I did this while working and while selling <laughs> and while proposing systems to our customers and understanding their needs so um it was a long way um i started this in 2015 actually i i've been working in classics for uh, for quite a few years now and now that i finally understood it, everything <laughs> <laughs> new technologies every well month or two that we integrate, that we come across, and then we say, okay, we do this as well and that as well. We're a forever young company. Yeah, it's, it it's like tough this. to be, always be catching up with the new technologies whilst at the same time trying to sell them. But it's definitely yeah. a skill um, and sounds like you're very versatile in your role. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it sounds like you've also had quite a different route into, into the broadcast industry. So tell us a bit more about that. How did that happen? How did that happen? Uh, yeah. <laughs> no. I fell in love. 
Oh. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> That's how it happened. So, uh, okay, I was in love with biology first, and then I was in love with my husband, and uh, he was in the industry, and so he dragged me in. <laughs> and he said he desperately needed me for that as well. Um, because I'm multilingual, I, I, I speak four languages, and wow. uh, yeah, I'm... He, he really needed me. And he saw something in me that I didn't know that I had, which is the, maybe the, the um, you know, yeah, well, some some talent to, to speak to people, to understand their needs and put together information and interpolate and then come up with a solution and, uh, and sell, basically, because they understand what they're buying. And, uh, and at the end, I also do a lot of, you know, after sales and check that everything's all right and that they're satisfied and things. And so I'm quite sure of what I'm offering <laughs> and what uh, what they get, what customers get. So it was all a matter of heart getting into this industry. I love it. Amazing. That's really, really So basically you've learned on the job then is what you're saying, yeah. that you had no formal training or you didn't have, you know, anything like being, you know, sort of a mentee with Rise or anything like that. You literally learned on the job. no. <laughs> I think it's really good though yeah. to see there's lots of different ways to still come into our industry. Mm -hmm. For so, sure. Um, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. And love, why not? Yeah. <laughs> nice. I love that story. <laughs> so just finally, do you have any, what's your top tip for NAB? Okay, yeah. My top tip, I found it out last year, was um, to have a, uh, you know, the, a shoulder bag where you have your cell phone and your name cards, your business cards. Because I tend to have dresses without pockets. And yeah. so I never knew where that stuff was. Uh, yeah, the business cards were. <laughs> were. <laughs> and, uh, you know, white sneakers under the, the counter anyway. Uh, so if you have to go into another hole, don't go there with your high heels because you won't get back. Wow, you still wear high know. heels? My well, I, have I call them high. Yeah, I call them heels. high. <laughs> but no, they're no. only like uh, five <laughs> centimeters. Okay. Practical Heel. heels, practical yes, heels. Yes, yeah. Let's call them just heels. Okay, practical heels, but still <laughs> too high to get, you know, a couple of kilometers away. <laughs> so. And what is it about women's clothing that doesn't have pockets? They don't have dresses, pockets. Dresses, well, they jeans. do have pockets, but they're fake ones. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I have fake pockets there yeah. soon, so you can't get anything. Yeah. No, so, no. It's a really, so really, little really shoulder point. bag and so just small and just nothing else fits in. Yeah. Just that. <laughs> and it's enough. And, and you're okay. Cool. And the melatonin because, you know, the jet lag is so yeah. bad. And, yeah. Um, so I started a month earlier taking it uh, before going to NAB, a month earlier, every every night before sleeping. And then I just go on with it. And it somehow helps this system, this biological system, <laughs> to get some sleep because sleep is better than makeup. And uh, so yeah. then... Yeah, I mean, help. I'm on the melatonin now after I've just come back from Southeast Asia. Yeah, so. that is true. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> She's melatonin for a different reason. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, thank you so much, Barbara. Um, thank you for having me. You. Um, and thanks. And we look forward to seeing you. Well, I'll look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. Okay. I'll be saying a lot of Amber says hi to everybody yes. now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye, Sue. Goodbye. So next up, we thought we'd hear from an organisation that actually represents um, a massive percentage of the exhibitors of NAB. Um, and that is the IABM, which is the International Broadcasting Association. No, the in uh, IB, <laughs> International Broadcasting Media Association. It's Sorry, it's couldn't remember. <laughs> Sorry, um, Lucinda, I'm just used to calling it IABM. And then suddenly... What does it stand for? Oops. So I'm terribly sorry. So, um, so yes, we have Lucinda here. Thank you very much. Um, that has a long title these days. Not only are you now Chief Finance Officer, but you're also Operations Officer as well. Yes, Sifu, I like oh, to yes. call it. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. So, um, welcome and thank you for, um, you know, staying in the green room for a little bit longer than anticipated. Um, well, thank you for having me. So, um, 
you came to our industry not that long ago, but probably a fair amount of time ago now. Um, and it's probably changed an awful lot in your period. Um, and I just wondered how, in your experience being with the IBM, that not only has the association changed, but obviously working with um, NAB and actually seeing how it's changed for your members, really. Yes, well, I've actually... Perhaps not as long as you, but I have actually been in the industry now 17 years. Is it really? Uh, 17 years? Really. Yes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I know. Wow. That's it's impressive. <laughs> so probably 15 years of going to NAB. Um, and obviously, when, when I first started going to NAB, IABM was much smaller than it is now. So we were, you know, a little pop-up stand. There was probably three of us. Um, now we have a much larger team going there we have our members lounges for our members um but the show itself it's still the technology's changed slightly but it's still still that buzz when you get there uh, and still lovely i mean as you know we our industry is relatively small so it's the, the experience of getting back to people with people that you you know and uh i don't know if nab has has changed that much really over the 15 years it's still still exciting and great to see the new technologies that is true. I think um, obviously the different halls keep changing, and yes, this year yes. we're sort of you know sort of split up. We don't have the south, upper, or lower. Next year we will. So um, with regards to the preparations for your members spread over west, north, central, how does that work? You know, how do you manage to sort of make sure that everybody's happy um, and that you know what's going on and give them all the time and attention they need? Well, we've got a, a fairly large team going on, uh, going over there. We've got our members' lounges in uh, N110, which is that corridor between North and Central. Um, so wherever we're located, you, you know, somebody's got to walk, unfortunately. Um, but that, that'll be the hub of, what we're, of where we are and what we, we're doing. We've got um, some events going on in Westgate, which is off, off to one side. But we've got a team of people that will be travelling around and, and catching up with our members and hopefully, um, you know, helping them and, and meeting with them when they want to meet us. So we've got uh, our breakfast on the Sunday, Sunday morning, our State of the Industry breakfast, which we traditionally do at the start of the show, which shares with our members and, and you know, anybody else who wants to come along the um, intelligence that our in, in-house team have pulled together. Um, we've got a customer panel, we've got a, um, a supplier panel, and then we've got our awards on the Tuesday evening. So our, our BAM awards, which hopefully, you know, again, everyone is welcome to. It's a bit of a party as well. I mean, Jenny, one of the things that's changed, you'll remember the uh, NAB advanced parties we used to have at, at Gordon Birch. Well, we've now moved our party, so it's wrapped around our awards events. So we're really excited to have this back at NAB. The last one was... 2019 pre-pandemic we didn't do it last year because obviously everyone wasn't everyone wasn't quite sure um what was happening last year how many people there would would be so it's it's great to be back in full flow delivering what we normally deliver at the trade shows brilliant and when it comes to you and your members um I mean, obviously, you do partner with NAB, I know. Um, is it really, it's important that you're actually there physically and can actually meet them, as well as what you offer throughout the year? But I think it is a really good opportunity, isn't it? It is. I mean, nothing replaces the face-to-face, mm-hmm. does it? I mean, everyone, yeah. I think, during yeah. during those years of lockdown, you know, we, we managed really well. We did a lot of online events and really, you know, our members were still able to engage with their customers through that. But, but nothing replaces meeting people but both for IABM and for our members you know meeting customers renewing those relationships with existing ones meeting prospects show showcasing their technology and we do the same you know we showcase what we do so um so we're really looking forward to the show you're right. I think basically people buy from people, regardless of what you're selling, quote unquote. Um, exactly. And I think it's um, the the Zoom, the mirror and everything else, the screen is OK. But there's nothing like, you know, actually yeah. being here. You know, it's great seeing you via screen, but actually seeing you face to face will be so much better, frankly, especially yeah. with maybe a glass of red in one's hand. Exactly. So it's always helps. Good. <laughs> it does rather always help. So you've been going for 17 years and I am so sorry. I had no idea it was that long. 
long. So um, I just thought you were relatively, well, not that new, but new-ish. So, um, so yeah, you'll be getting a sort of a sticker. Actually, you should go to Ross. Ross do these um, little badges, these little pins for how many NABs that you've actually attended. Oh, wow. So, um, well, they were doing it last year, so I'm sure they'll be doing I it this that. year. Yeah, <laughs> no, I got one. I think they stopped at 30 or something, so I had to get, you know, it was a bit, I'm a, it's a bit sad, but I had to get um, one of those. But, um, but yeah, it's actually rather nice that, you know, they sort of honoured that. So you've been going for quite some time. So we've heard that Vijay doesn't suffer from jet lag, so we're all very jealous. We just heard that Barbara is on melatonin um, for a whole month prior to it. Um, what are your hints and tips for sort of um, going and surviving? Um Trying to get in there a day early so you've got time to acclimatise. Um, obviously, without goes without saying, comfortable shoes <laughs> are a must. Um, and then, yeah, a glass of wine before bed. <laughs> One. <laughs> and I, just, I just think you run on adrenaline, don't you, and then just collapse at the end of it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's uh, I, I, yeah, just the excitement and the adrenaline keep you going. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. It is, it is a performance and you do, it's sort of nervous energy, adrenaline, it's everything sort of um, all mixed up. But it is, I mean, it's hard work, but it's brilliant as well, isn't it? So, exactly. Um, yeah, yeah, it is a wee bit of a thrill. Thank you so much. And <laughs> thanks for um, waiting and giving us um, your time. And, um, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Yes, I look forward to it. Thank okay, you both. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. So I've had backstage whisper in my ear telling us to keep it short. So I know, I know. I think the next guest, we'll try and yep. rush our way through them. Um, but yeah, next up, we've got um, Gals and Gear. So Gals and Gear is, um, sounds like an amazing, amazing initiative and I can't wait to hear all about it. Um, they've been working very closely with NAB. Um, so we have the founder, Amy, coming joining us. Hello, Amy. Hello, how is everybody? Good, thanks. How are you? Fabulous. Glad to see you. You got me up early over here on the uh, Washington, D.C. side of the pond. <laughs> I know. I'm so sorry. You're actually somewhat later than poor old Dorian from NAB Amplify. She was even earlier than you. So, okay. um, But yes, I do appreciate and thank you very much, especially as we have actually kept you waiting. But no, um, that's we all will right. Keep I'm it, so happy to be with you. We'll keep it short. Yes. Um, so, Gals and Git sounds like an amazing, amazing initiative. Um, can you tell me a bit more about it and your involvement with NAB this year as well? Sure, sure. Well, uh, Gals and Gear is an initiative that I founded in 2016. Um, it's a community of women who love tech. We're all in media and entertainment and we all have some sort of tech geek in us. Uh, and we really wanted to connect that community of women from um, a variety of countries as well as across the United States and make sure that those women felt welcome at events like NAB Show, IBC, other international conferences and events where sometimes we're in the minority uh, and we're often in the minority in the edit room or behind the camera or in the boardroom. So it's really an initiative to um, be sure that we are uh, welcoming and inclusive of women across all spectrums of the industry and make sure that we also have some educational initiatives and support uh, a student initiative as well to make sure that we have young women coming up and interested in the tech side of the industry and the fields that are so explosive that we know with so much innovation going on in our industry. Amazing. Um, I've also heard through the grapevine that you are working with RISE this year at NAB or you've got a joint event. Is that correct? Yes, they'll be joining us at our party. We always have a party on Tuesday evening. Um, people in the know can get themselves an invitation to that. So, yes, we'll be doing that. And RISE will be joining us again this year. So we're always happy to do that. Anything Amazing. we can do uh, to support their efforts and just make sure that we have a very welcoming community. Yeah, definitely. It sounds, I mean, yeah, it's definitely something we need. Um, yeah. Um, so I'm assuming you've travelled to a lot of different shows, but what from NAB really stands out for you? 
Well, a couple of things. First of all, I, I came to NAB as an invited speaker. So the first time I came, uh, it was really to speak. And it was just such an incredible experience because, of course, you know, it's a huge show. You can really see all the different pieces of the industry, even if you're in just one part. So my company is a multi-platform production company. Uh, we work on both live, remote and hybrid events and productions that often show at events. Um as well as uh, independent productions. And, you know, to be there and see the distribution side, the cloud side, all the technology is amazing and, and useful to me as a CEO. And then, you know, the flip side of that is as someone who's a sort of a teacher and I love to share information, I think it's a really welcoming community for that as well. People are always interested in sharing their knowledge of their piece of uh, the systems that we're all a part of to get all that content out there. So it's an amazing experience. And that's one reason why Gals and Gear partnered with NAD right away um, to, to become a content partner. And so we're producing a, a summit there, a Women's Leadership Summit. It's the fourth time we've done it. We did two virtual ones during COVID. And this is our second in-person one, which will be the Tuesday morning of the event. So that's an extra pass you can add. Um, for only two twenty nine, I think right now it's on a special early bird special, and it's an incredible experience with a lot of amazing workshops, including one on negotiation skills, uh, which everyone can use in any aspect of the business. Wow, sounds sounds like a bunch of really cool workshops, and I kind of wish I was going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, a lot of people say that. That's why we actually changed it to a half day because women were so busy at the show. We did a full day and everyone loved it, but said, like, I don't have time because I've got to do all these other things. So we compressed it. Um, you can find out from galsandgear.tv, G-A-L-S-N-G-E-A-R.tv, and that'll link you over to the NAB site to see the details of the program. But I think it's, we try to make sure that everything we do has both a networking component, an educational component, and really um, a support component. Because like I said, women are often the only one in the room, um, especially women of color. Um, and so we wanna be sure that we're incredibly welcoming and connecting people so that they can do what they want with their career. Amazing, well, thank you so much for joining us, Amy. It's been lovely chatting. It's great to talk to you, and I hope everyone comes to see us at galsandgear.tv and nebshow.com. Yeah. You've done a good amount of promo. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll see you there, Amy, in a couple of weeks. Thank you okay. so much. That'll be fun. Bye. Bye. Right. We are really, really behind. Um, so, and um, Penny... Um, Penny Westlake um, from Entera has been patiently sitting in the red chair um, for the whole of that time. And we were hoping to sort of just have a little bit of a, um, a chat about NAB memories and how long we've been involved um, or not and how we got into the industry. And I have no idea how we're about to do that in basically <laughs> about a minute which is a little bit disappointing. Um, but, you know, we do still have the champagne, so we can share this afterwards. We'll yeah. have to put it on ice. Oh, it's worth coming then. It was, exactly. <laughs> and for those of you in the UK, um, the red chair, I did try and get something from the Graham Norton show that meant, you know, a lot of these people we could actually flip up. Um, and for those of you not in the UK, you won't have a clue what I'm talking about. But if you Google Graham Norton and the red chair, you possibly will. Um, so you very interestingly came up through the apprenticeship route, first of all, um, and then got involved with Ryzen or a mentee. So I'm always interested in how different people sort of got into the industry. I mean, Penny and I have known each other since Quantel days, so we've um, been in the industry for a while. But it would be um, quite interesting if you could just give us a really quick overview yeah. of the apprenticeship route as well. Yeah, so I started off my career with a three-year apprenticeship at the BBC, which was absolutely amazing. They put us through university and um, we got to get lots of hands-on experience um, in the industry and come out of it with an amazing network of people that were just very passionate about young talent, which is really, really great. Um, and Rise came up around five years into my career. Um, and again, it's a, an amazing, supportive network and has really just given me a step up in my career. Yeah, we didn't um, have anything like that. No. <laughs> yeah, Not we, a thing. We literally had to figure it out ourselves and have uh, battle scars to prove it, yeah. really. Well, so. even, yeah, even though I did do a, one of the first fledgling media courses and I wanted 
to use the TV station, mm. to TV studio. I had to pretty much build it myself to get oh, it wow. to work. <laughs> it There's your hands-on yeah. experience. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and I was, uh, at the time, well, wanted to be a video editor. Girls didn't do that. Mm. You could be a film editor. Yeah. <laughs> you know, with a steam bag, cut things. But you, video editor, boys toys. So I think it has changed an awful lot yeah. um, and you're living proof of actually being able to um, have lots of um, different opportunities. And I know a lot of, uh, an awful lot of courses now that are designed and to try and encourage people to come into our industry rather than say, you know, the Googles or whatever, you know, hoovering up. Skill set is a real problem though and actually finding people with good skills, yeah. male, female, any gender diversity, it doesn't matter at all, is still I think quite a difficult thing. Yeah. So there's a lot of work to do um but um but i think you know we're here we've survived um <laughs> and the fact that you actually have been through the apprenticeship and the rise mentee system and everything else um and obviously claire wilkie talked about yeah. it as well um and gals and gear and all the rest of it um i think we're uh, well we always were formidable right mm -hmm. but um but you know <laughs> i think that probably you know bad luck <laughs> <laughs> So um, unstoppable, I think is yeah, the, yeah, the word probably. you're looking for. Yeah, probably unstoppable. <laughs> so, Penny, I'm terribly sorry because we haven't really had much um, of a chance to chat to you, and you've patiently sat there all the time. It's been really um, interesting, though, actually, to to see the different perspectives from all these amazing women, and it's really lovely that there's all these women coming into the interest industry mm. and getting a fair crack of the whip and, and being able to develop so much. It's, yeah, it's really it's, inspiring. It's really, to see. really good. Yeah, yeah. totally. Um, so do you have any closing remarks then for being my amazing co-host? I mean, it's still on a great. bit of jet lag. <laughs> I have to say, um, this young lady um, has actually been away for three weeks in um, Vietnam, Singapore and Bali. Yes. Came back at the weekend, <laughs> so is definitely surviving on the melatonin. Yeah, 100%. But, um, but you know, has been, um, it's been a real pleasure actually to yeah. get to know you and everything else. So is, do you have any final thoughts for any? Well, yeah, it's been great hosting co-hosting the show um and i've had lots of fun <laughs> now onto the champagne <laughs> exactly and lunch let's have lunch yes. and champagne all right we're going to hand back to the guys um so because they're waiting patiently and um hopefully they can catch up a little bit better than we did thank you ever so much for tuning in I'm Graham Risden from the GTC, the Guild of TV Camera Professionals. We're here at Kit Plus in Bristol, having a great day. We've got lots of interesting people. Um, Kit Plus is a great show for us because you get to meet people um, in more detail. Some of the shows are so big that you just don't really get time to talk to people, whereas the, the, the small shows are, are good for us and we, we're getting a lot of interest, so uh, long may it continue. Hi there, I'm Claire Saunders from Cinematography World, a global print and digital platform for everything cinematography, print publication that comes out six times a year, um, and we're offering free digital subscription if you scan the QR code or you can visit our website. And um, we've been here at Kit Plus all day, had some great conversations in Bristol, and we did in Twickenham as well last week. So very pleased to be part of the event and hope that you enjoy our publication. Hi, I'm Russell from Hitomi. I'm here at the Kit Plus show in Twickenham Stadium. A magnificent venue, and it's a really friendly show. I love coming here, partly because I'm local, but uh, it's always good to meet people. I'm here mostly for the networking. You know, I see old friends, make new ones, and also some very good business contacts. It's surprising how many people I've been talking to need to measure their timing. So here I am at Kit Plus, which is just two weeks after IBC. Um, this is a really, really interesting event. It's much younger, and many of the things you see here at Kit Plus are much closer to where the rubber touches the road. So here at Kit Plus, you can really see firsthand how program making really goes together. You see a lot of the things that you don't see at IBC, and you meet a much, much younger crowd, which is really refreshing. Hello, uh, my name is Joseph Otieno Adamson. Uh, I like to come to Kit Plus shows. In fact, let me just go back a little bit. 2008, I met Simon when he was running the magazine TV Bay.
Well, we're back. Thank you, Joseph. We cut, you, him, we cut, we cut him short, short of yeah. it, but he was discussing um, how amazing the kit plus shows are. Thank you very much to Trying Jenny to back. and Amber uh, for that amazing hour and a little bit um, where they've been chatting to some pretty amazing women. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, it's great to see how Bryce is, is, was an integral part on a couple of their journeys there. It was, it was fascinating. Yep. And of course, you can watch it all on catch up. Just rewind and, uh, and watch it all again if, if you need to. So on with the show. Uh, we are halfway there. We've got another 50 or 60 people to talk to. And next up is Matthew Davis from PTZ, PTZ Optics, I guess we should say, shouldn't we? Well, we, or we're say I guess PTZ. so, but we, let's, let, well, let's yeah, go with PTZ. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we'll, t we'll, we'll, we'll take your lead. Hi, Matthew. Hi, Matthew. How are you doing? Hi, Matthew. Good morning to you. Good afternoon here. Good, good morning and good afternoon. Yeah, <laughs> nice to see you both. And, and personally, I appreciate the Zed. I, I don't know. There's just something about it that sounds right. Um, <laughs> maybe it's years of somehow my Gmail got changed into a British style at some point, and I can't figure out how to get it changed back, but I just absolutely love it. PTZ it is. PTZ. Then. So we're, I guess we're talking all PTZs now, aren't we, for the next couple of minutes? And yeah. Then, yeah, 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 exactly. So, well, I'll even throw in one that's not a PTZ, but um, yeah, yeah. Cool. We've got some exciting things coming up here yeah so what's new so first apologies for keeping you waiting and the floor is yours to tell us everything exciting that we can expect in a few weeks time at nab Woohoo! yeah exciting <laughs> um yeah always always exciting times at nab um so big things going on for ptz optics um you're going to see a number of new cameras for those of you who haven't heard uh, PTZ Optics recently launched a line of 4K, 60 capable PTZ cameras, um, which is great. One of the most uh, interesting features we found from our clients, uh, they love our auto tracking that's on it at this point. Um, so you can change between different people. Uh, the best has been watching videos of people try and run away and hide from the camera and pop out from corners for it to just follow them. Um, beyond that, we also had, so all of the move 4k cameras are NDI enabled by default, no more needing to upgrade them with licenses. Uh, they are HX three compatible for anyone who doesn't know it's a higher quality stream out of NDI with lower latency. Um, we are also going to be showcasing, uh, our new link 4k cameras. So these are Dante enabled instead of NDI enabled. Um, for anyone who lives in the Dante world, I think you already know exactly what this is going to do for you. It just plays nice in your whole universe of Dante. Um, and then a camera I'm actually using today and is one of my personal favorites, uh, the Studio Pro. So this is something that falls somewhere in between a digital SLR and a webcam um, to provide much higher quality video for a lot of people who are trying to use little webcams. Um, and one of the nice features it does offer is the option for vertical or portrait formats, uh, natively from the camera. Mm. Does that have any kind of tracking facilities in it as well? I mean, like, cause if you're moving around to and fro. Yeah. So I have been playing a little bit with like an automatic zoom for the cameras, but there's okay. nothing in there yet more tinkering than anything <laughs> at the moment. Cool. But there is some, uh, yeah, because I, I just re remember thinking that, you know, I, I think, I'm pretty sure I saw a demo of walking away and walking towards. Yeah, we were chatting at the time. Maybe, to Paul at yeah. IBC, weren't we? And yeah, maybe Paul was being was, a little bit too confident. That was before the launch, I think. <laughs> but um, yeah. So is, is everything that you're talking about at NAB, is that all available now, Matthew? Uh, the only thing that has not, or the Link 4Ks have not yet launched, uh, but will be launched very soon, actually, firmware just went through its final checks. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Studio Pro should be launching right around the nab time, actually, yeah. um, for purchase. And is this all under the PTZ Optics banner, or are you doing the Huddle Cam banner as well? How does that Yeah, so, so all of this is under the PTZ Optics banner. Um, yeah, not anything yeah. new and exciting yet under the Huddle Cam banner to no. uh, speak of. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, a lot of weight going there on the PTZ Optics yeah, side. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. And what, I guess from what you've explained, you've got quite a a, a diverse audience there, a di yeah, diverse customer base. What sort of people are you hoping to see at uh, NAB? Um, so I'm personally, I love meeting the people who are actually using my products. Um, and this comes from long ago, you know, made a camera, mm. 
Good. Cool. I'm an engineer. Wonderful. And then I met actual producers. Um, and it was like, wow, your job's amazing. And these are all these pain points you experience. Like, I love meeting people to find out what problems they have, what yeah. they're encountering, what unique things they've created out of my products. Mm. Um, so really, that that's what I am super excited to have the chance to do is just interface with real people that are using the products. Yeah. What, what's the most... A bizarre thing that someone's done with a PTC yeah. camera. Careful. Uh, yeah. So I, I think it was almost more impressed. I guess I can cite two things. The first one is there was a storm chaser that um, had used our cameras for <laughs> documenting driving through tornadoes and all sorts of things. And it was cool. just one of those like, mm. hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> more power to you. Like this yeah, is yeah. really, really cool. Yeah. Um, and then for a uh a touring band, they had this giant spinning cube for the DJ to be in where they put our cameras all on the outs or inside of the cube to look at the talent in the middle as this thing spun around oh, wow. him. Okay. And then they programmed all the cameras so that they were all slowly rotating with the cube to always maintain ah, the focus clever. on the person in the center. Mm -hmm. To me, it was just one of those like, ah, seeing all the cameras move, you know, in synchronicity with each other was just a beautiful thing. Well, get the footage, get, get good information, get it to your booth, and then people can come to the booth and see it. And <laughs> yeah. where, where do they find you? Um, that's North Hall. A, North Hall. That's a, yeah, North Hall. I wish I knew the number off the top 1, of my 8, head. 1814, 14 oh. or 1814. There you go. Thank we'll, you very much because right. I just saw that yesterday and was yeah. like, oh, I need to remember this. <laughs> no problem. Matthew, thank you very much again. Thanks for hold, holding on. Um, yeah, oh, sorry. my pleasure. And Your monitor's yeah. on fire, by the way, behind you. <laughs> <laughs> need a little bit yeah. of warmth here. You know, it's a little chilly today. <laughs> yeah, I doubt that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look forward to seeing over in Vegas in a few weeks' time. Likewise, and thank you for the opportunity to come on and talk today. Cool. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 So we've got John Hickey is coming on next from Black Box, I believe. No, it's oh, not. we've got Joe, have we? Okay, so yeah, I've jumped ahead. I'm getting ahead yeah. of myself. Yeah, I, I thought, what we, yeah, where'd you get that from? <laughs> um, yeah, so Compromato. Well, now, now Com I don't, uh, have we spoken to Compromato before? I know. I I think so. Uh, I don't think. Well, I haven't spoken to this chat. Oh, are you muted? Hello. Am I? Oh no, you no, you're not. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. How we you can doing? hear you. You're live. How are you doing? And outdoors. Hey, good. I'm on my way to Berlin for the broadcast summit uh, with the DPP. How are you doing so far today? Yeah, the DPP. Cool. How's it going so far for you guys? Yeah, it's good. Good. So, just tell just us. Running a bit behind. Tell us a little bit about. Compromato and what you're showing at NAB this year. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, we do video encoding and transcoding software for um, broadcast production, like the live uh, broadcast production sports. Uh, we uh, are deployed on prem as well as uh, you know, mostly serving as a kind of a gateway to the cloud where we can receive anything and, for example, transport to NPI, which is becoming kind of a uh, different standard, uh, standard for uh, the cloud uh, mezzanine uh, format. And at NAB, we will be talking uh, about uh, uh, remote cloud production. Uh, we'll be introducing uh, JPEG access, TR07 encoding and decoding on-prem as well as uh, in a cloud. And we'll also be talking about the motion compensated uh, frame and conversion that we have introduced recently. It can go uh, or you know, can help you to uh, uh, change the standards from 50 hertz to 60 hertz. So, so where 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 are we going to find you? Well, I'm, I, I guess the, I'm saying I don't want to finish off with just the where, but what are people going to experience when they come to the booth? Is it discussions or can they see demonstrations? So uh, we will be, uh, so we have a meeting room in the West Hall. Uh, so it's on a shop floor, but it's not like a, a yeah. uh, regular booth with the demo and stuff. It's a meeting room for, for, for things that will be scheduled with our customers. Uh, however, we still have a slot. So if anybody is uh, interested to, to hear about what we do for broadcast or the remote production in the cloud, uh, we're more than happy to uh, meet uh, with those folks. 
But we will also be at our partner's booth, uh, AJA, uh, showing our joint uh, encoder bridge light. It's uh, yeah. uh, an appliance encoder between AJA and Complement. Cool. We're going to be speaking to AJA a bit later on, aren't we? So I think so. Your, I think your West Hall 2378, I think that's the place people can find you. Exactly. Fantastic. Well, um, wish you well for the rest of your day. Um, yeah, enjoy the, uh, um, enjoy the DPP. Yeah, enjoy the event and thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Have a good day. You too. Have a good day, guys. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. That's been our most mobile guest, I think. Most mobile. <laughs> He's very modern as well, because he was upright. If he Portrait. Podcast people would have been... Would have, would have, would been have shot him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got John Hickey from Black Box is joining us next. Absolutely. Uh, we're here till just after five o'clock UK time. We're running about 20 minutes late. So if there's someone on the playlist that you particularly want to see, do bear with us. You probably haven't missed them. They probably just haven't... We just probably haven't got to them just yet. Um, but yeah, if you look in the YouTube description, you'll see who's coming up um as i say we're chatting to john hickey from black box um we in a minute be. yeah i mean it's well we yeah so yeah. matt and i will be trawling the halls won't we of um nab yeah. we'll tell you about that in a minute because okay. we've got john hickey I have got john. hello john oh how are you yeah we're great how are you i'm doing very well very good good to see great you again. To be here yeah fantastic now you've been part of nab for a number of years i believe um a tenth of, uh, of of NA, NAB. Yeah, you've just been a tenth, a fraction of the NAB yeah, life. We've been we've been <laughs> we've been NAB 100. for ten years. Yeah, fantastic. And obviously, a black box or a leader in KVM technology. Um, what's what's new this year in the KVM world, and particularly for black box? All right. So, I mean, as you said, like black box has been NAB for ten years, and we've been a leader in KVM or keyboard video mouse technology since the early nineties. Um, KVM, just so people know, it enables people to take users and separate them from, from their computers by potentially large distances. Mm -hmm. So essentially, KVM takes a user interface and uh, peripherals such as keyboard, video, mouse, USB tablets and headsets and webcams and extends them across an IP network to, a physical, to where a physical computer is, be that across a building, a city or even across countries. So the user has a small receiver unit on their desk or in their workspace that allows them to remotely access many different computers at different times or to virtual machines. Um, this has evolved to very large KVM systems spanning all parts of the broadcast workflow from outside broadcast trucks, allowing remote users to potentially thousands of miles away to operate and control equipment in trucks to studios and control rooms going through uh, to graphics and post-production all aiding the efficient and resilient operation of a broadcaster. And we see you know, NEB as a great opportunity for us to meet customers and demo our latest technology. Our theme this year at NEB is around evolution of KVM and how KVM is evolving as the broadcast industry is evolving. And our focus is very much on high performance KVM over IP, which we see as the major growth area in the industry. Uh, Black Box award-winning Emerald family, which we introduced at NEB four years ago, has grown to be the leading KVM systems in the broadcast sector, having been adopted by many of the top players. And at this show, we are launching for the US our newest member of the Emerald family, Deskview. Deskview is a new concept in KVM where up to 16 different connections uh, or targets can be shown on up to four different displays. We call each of these connections a tile, and the user is freely able to move these tiles across the displays, repositioning them, resizing them as desired. And these tiles can have connections to Emerald transmitters to allow them physical access to physical machines or PCs, or to virtual machines using protocols such as RDP or PC over IP, or to things like IP cameras or other source that use H.264, H.265 uh, type protocols. Deskview has many advanced modes of operations that allow an administrator to build optimized workspaces and workflows for their users. Uh, the Deskview EMD 5004-R supports up to four displays, as I said. Each of can be up to 4K resolution, and one can be up to 5K resolution. And we're excited to demo this technology to customers and discuss how they can use this in their workflows. So please visit our demo uh, of this new game table technology at our booth in W1322 in the West Hall and experience these exciting new products firsthand or register for a demo at 
uh, blackbox.com forward slash NEB 2023. Cool. I'd like to ask a question, but it was such a complete... Yeah, I mean, the I only mean, question arising out of that, I suppose, is because you go to a show like NEB and there'll be many vendors offering KVM solutions. Um, and I guess this goes beyond just your company, John, but with your knowledge, what does a broadcaster looking to move to KVM over IP, what do they need to ensure? What boxes do they need to tick to make sure they get the right solution for their needs? So there's multiple kind of criteria broadcasters should look at. Often ones are very specific to their application their, or their workflow, but fairly generic criteria of importance are, number one, the, the vendor track record. Um, an enterprise KVM system is often installed for five to six years at a site, so it's important to work with a vendor with a strong track record of quality support and ongoing innovation, all of which Blackbox has through its 40 years of operation. Uh, second would be technical breadth to allow you to tailor a solution because uh, over four or five, five, six years, um, uh, things will change. And so you need to be able to allow the system you've, you've selected to be able to evolve over time. And Blackbox has the widest portfolio of KVM and AV in the industry with a focus on interoperability between our products to deliver on this type of criteria. Mm. A third one is support for both physical and virtual machines. You know, the usage of virtual machines is increasing and the integration of their support at the heart of KVM is important. And then finally, a fair, uh, the kind of fourth and final kind of generic criteria would be network bandwidth, security and operation because you're operating over a network. So you want to be able to create resilient, reliable, and secure KVM deployments, which are vital for the modern uh, broadcast system. There's lots of other kind of criteria yeah. in that kind of track record, and some of that will be covered by a presentation that Black Box Ed Crack will be presenting at the Connection Innovations Theatre on the okay. 17th of April at 4 p.m. Uh, at W3421, which kind of covers a lot of the latest innovations with Black Box and how to select a KVM system. Cool. John, thank you very much. We're going to find you in, as you said before, West Hall 1322, I believe. Yep. Up, as the number is just up, shown up there. There we go. Just about oh, it. Go. Lovely job. John, thank you very much for joining All us. All right. Thank and, you very much. Uh, yep, Pleasure see you over in Vegas. Thank you very much. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. See ya. Great. So, move on. And we're on to Carol. Yeah, talking to Carol, I believe. Carol. We just wait for Carol uh, to be connected, connected in. Uh, amazing. A tech team behind the scene, Beth and John, are, are switching people and pushing buttons and making it all work. So we're very appreciative to them. And, of course, to Manor Marketing, who's been doing all the social media for us. And, uh, of course, to NAB Amplify as well, where you may even be yep. watching this stream on the Amplify channel. So, Carol. Carol. I think Carol's here. Good morning. Good afternoon. <laughs> well, Is, you're in good morning. We're in good afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a small world. It is. <laughs> So, Carol, NAB 2023, um, I look, you know, you're, you're, all of your traditional products are evolving. What's new for NAB show 2023? I think this year the emphasis will be on showing how our customers have used all of the great things that we introduced last year. As you may know, we won a product of the year for our cloud native all-in-one implementation. So we'll be having several get thank you. We'll be having several guests on our booth um, showing various case studies of that, some of which show how live production companies can um, scale up their production capacity without having to invest in entire new trucks or new control rooms just with a simple cloud implementation. And then on the other side, we have some guests who can show us real world examples of how they've actually actually leveled up their production value, maybe some smaller universities that don't have those massive control rooms or all of the traditional broadcast equipment, they've managed to achieve that that professional sportscasting look and feel to their broadcast. So we're very excited to show actual, actual use cases. Um, another thing that's exciting, kind of going back to our roots as Chiron being the name that means um, graphics design. We yeah. will be giving our first ever designer of the year award. Uh, so that will be announced yeah. Monday morning at 10 on our booth um, in 2647. 
Let's see. What else is new and exciting? Uh, I'll, I'll take a breath there. I'll see if yeah. you have yeah, another so, question. So I, I think it'd be worth cool. rewinding back to NAB 2022 when you when your um, cloud native all in one platform won an award. What's been going on with that ever since in this last year? We've done a number of proof of concept, a number of customer case studies. Um, we have a number of customers actually using it. And we're finding when we launched the product, we speculated, we did our marketing research, we talked to people about how they might use it. People were very excited to see it come out, but we were still not sure who was going to use it and how they were going to use it. So we now see um, we have four different production companies using it to they're already at capacity with their control room. Um, one is already at capacity with their trucks. And this gives them a chance to test new markets, test new events that maybe they'd have to make a value decision. Do, can we cover this or not? And now they can. They can scale up with the cloud implementation without having to invest millions in a control room. So so that and then um, the, the various universities – also, even though it's very sports focused, it does have illustrated replay and AI driven instant replay. Of course, an operator can drive their own instant replay as they wish, but it's just a workflow efficiency to have it AI driven as well. Um, despite the emphasis and the, the high value for sports, we're finding that lots of news organizations want to use it too. So we're starting to venture in with various OTT platforms that want to use it for their field reporting, uh, various journalism schools that want to use it to give any student the opportunity to do broadcast quality content. The other, the other thing that I was thinking about, you, you, you know, we, we all talk about, uh, it's very easy for us to talk about doing everything in the cloud and implementing this when, you're, when you have the skills, when you have the knowledge, when you have the backup. A lot of people might be quite scared. A lot of a lot of universities, a lot of sports teams, a lot of you know. Now, when you know, are they going to come along to you and get help in, uh, well, getting over the fear of costs, getting over the fear of of uh, the impact and the, the change that's going to happen to their organisation? Are you you helping there? Yes, those are all very legitimate questions, and I would either you'd either think I was lying or stupid yeah. if I told you, oh, don't worry about any of that. Well, exactly. Um, <laughs> you know, you got you do worry. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yes, um, we do a good bit of hand holding. In fact, uh, my marketing team has jumped in. Most of the people on my team have heavy broadcast backgrounds as I do myself. Um, and we've realized that this isn't a product that we can just turn people loose with some people more yeah. so than others. And we've augmented our staff to have specific um, experts on hand to help the first time implementation for anyone and even even beyond that as needed. So, yes, there there's questions around latency. There's questions around if they don't want to use the content we provide as far as graphics. How do I upload my things to the cloud? What is it going to cost me? Uh, so far, we've been very easy to work with, I would say, in sorting, helping sort out how many hours it's going to take. We've made no assumptions about yeah. what it should take or could take, and we've been very flexible in the cost. No, I think, it, yeah, even if you're a traditional Chiron customer who's, who's on the traditional uh, CG equipment, you're still going to have those fears about and that's a good, moving to the new technology. That's a good point to pick up on. Your legacy Lyric, people, I guess you're going to be getting older customers coming on to the booth at NAB looking at your new platform now, aren't you? Um, what can those sort of people expect to see? So just to be clear, our legacy, le legacy Lyric customers don't have to jump to the cloud. Uh, that would that would, might to. be a bridge yeah. too far. Okay. <laughs> they don't have to jump to the cloud. Um, the direction that we're encouraging most of them to go is to our newer Prime platform, which yeah. is software based. It can exist in the cloud, but it, it we, we will sell it on our Chiron hardware or we will sell it as software that they can download and install wherever they wish. Cool. Um, so we are helping them make that transition. We've been very careful over the last three years and just coming in, a, I, can, I think I can tease this, coming in a few days will be the latest release of the Prime platform that has even more workflow efficiencies, more of that fast play out that the Lyric operators know and love in a high-paced high paced 
sports environment, yeah. more data integration. It has had those things, but we've been very careful to interact with our existing Lyric customers and find out what's missing, what's missing, mm, what's missing yeah. with Prime and fill in those gaps. And the ones who have adopted now are very happy to see that that same platform, that same design interface can drive their video walls, can drive their um, touchscreen implementations, can drive their branding so they have a single design interface. Anything in that design interface, as well as our virtual set implementation, can be driven through Cameo. So it can go through the NRCS rundown. Um, so they're they're very happy, the ones who have adopted, with the advances that we've made, the new efficiencies that, that we've provided. We do provide 100% free, um, graded, step-by-step, -step, um, online training, and hand-holding with that as well. So we, we want the jump to be as easy as possible. Cool. Thank right. you, Carol. Where can, where can we find you at NAB? Uh, North Hall, 2647. 2647. And Fantastic. Yeah, we Imagine look forward name. to seeing you. Yeah, look forward to seeing you too. Yeah, it's only two or three weeks now, so it won't be long. Oh, don't remind me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Carol, thank you very we'll much. You Thanks you're, for joining us. You're welcome. Have you, a good day. You thank too. You. Bye. bye bye. Bye bye. Great. Right, we are right. now going over to Hopefully. Mark Price from Densitron, I believe. Oh, Mark we got Mark Peter. and Peter, yeah. I believe, which is would be nice. Um, yeah, we 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 uh, well, we spoke to Mark um, last time. Uh, and we always <laughs> we do speak to Densitron quite. We do. Frequently, anyway. Yeah, uh, they are. Oh, there, we really have two of you. We do really have two of them. Nice yeah, and, nicely we're branded up, guys. Yeah. Looking we're good. Branded up yeah. for a double act. We've got, <laughs> got one of us here in the UK and Pete's over in uh, Canada at the moment. So uh, we'll try and make sure we're properly synced. Yeah, I think Fantastic. We, were, we were muted last time as well, so, so we can hear you. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. So shall we, start, then. shall we hand you to the floor? Um, what? And what's, yeah. Yeah, what's happening at NAB for Densitron? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. So you've, you've alluded there, you've spoken to Denstron in the past, and, and, and Denstron have been at NAMP for a, num a number of years now. But actually, this year is very much is very much a new approach for us. Um, both Pete and myself have been in the business six months, and there's been heavy investment by Denstron um, in the broadcast team. So Denstron, as you well know, has been a, a leader in HMI technology for so, some 50 years now. Um, but over the last uh, few years, there's been a real focus on bringing that technology to the broadcast market. And as I say, it's been significant investment sort of far, you know, huge expanded team, uh, both myself and Peter, as I say, new for six months. Yeah. Uh, and we're bringing that we're bringing that new team here to NAB this year. So there's, there's sort of two things really that we're focusing on the show, one on a sort of a broader scale into, you know, just making sure customers are very clear what, what, what our propositions are as a business. And then we'll go into, and we've also got some more specific technology um, innovations that we're bringing, some building blocks that we're bringing to, to sort of talk through with our customers and, and then people we've not met before. Um, so on a broader scale, as I say, we, we've, um, we're have we leaders in HMI technology. And, you know, with the rise in HMI technology trends, the aim of our business really is to provide that specialist knowledge to allow our customers to sort of focus elsewhere and not tie up their internal resources on, on their core on their core propositions and we can bring that technology to bear with them you know so really as, as a business we've got four main propositions and it's, this year a lot of it is about us making sure the market is very clear and making sure that we can be very clear on what we're offering so two of those propositions have sort of been seen before so we've got our core display business that um so we we, we provide that out to the market yeah. we also then take that into sort of finished control panels um, for one, I use two, I use four, I use four, I use many incorporating computers as well. And the market has seen those before, but we've got new iterations of those products um, we can show at this show. And also on that finished product range, we've also got our IDS control system as well, which is our software um, software proposition. So these are propositions we've been developing and seen the market before. But there's really two two new product sets, pro proposition sets that we're looking to talk to um, customers this time. So firstly is our um, HMI modules. So that's really taking the building block technologies that we've got and allowing them out um, for sub-assembly to our customers. And also then an ODM proposition as well, whereby we can we can bring to bear our expertise in manufacturing and supply chain management for the, on behalf of our customers. You know, so we've got we've got three real routes to market that we we look to deal through. So really largely through our IDS control system, we look to deal with end users, the end broadcasters, but primarily more and more, we're now focusing on working with broadcast manufacturers and systems integrators. So build, build, bringing these technology road, um, building blocks 
to bear to make sure that we can add this this specialist technology um, knowledge, as we said, to 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 to, that, to bring to their benefit. So that's sort of yes. the broader concept in terms of what we're looking at as a business. And then there's some sort of specific building blocks um, that we can talk to with our customers as well. Cool. And to, to dovetail onto that, Mark, specifically on the building blocks, it's really important. What we're really excited about at NAB is having the customers, having the broadcast manufacturers come and see the look and feel of our broadcast building blocks. Um, we've done a lot of innovation uh, over the past few years and really bringing it to market now. And as we know in the broadcast environment, the tactile nature of control systems <laughs> is very important to them. And yeah. you really need to come experience it yourself. Uh, we've integrated haptics as well into some of our, our product lines. So uh, to get that um, response back as well. So we're really excited about showing these lines uh, to our customers at the show. Yeah. yeah, I remember doing it. We did it at the show. We did the demonstration at IBC, yeah. didn't we? And I did. I it took me a couple of minutes to get it right, but a couple of a couple of attempts. But once yeah. you get it right, bang! You're it's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it's that it's that crossover from the old mechanical to the sort of new benefits of HMI. So, yeah, we'd we'd encourage you to see you again. This sort of integration of haptics and the tactile together, we really get that sort of reassuring yeah. touch on the new technology. So, um, yeah, absolutely, brilliant. So, where can we find Densitron at NAB this year? A wrong way. So we're in Hall uh, C one eight two six. Sorry, I have to check in my notes. Make sure yeah, I've got that wrong. That, <laughs> that matches what we've got written down. So I oh, that's good. We're that good. Right. We're good. Yeah. We're synced. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, thank you both for joining us. It's been a pleasure talking to you and for all, all the information. And yeah. we'll, we'll we'll see you over there in a few weeks, no doubt. Look forward to it. Thanks very much indeed. Take care. Do that. Do, right. Do. So we've got uh, we've got Ray. From Avid. From Avid. Okay. Yeah. Um, we were speaking to who? Oh, no, see, now. Is, now I've forgotten who, who now, mentioned, Who were you talking to uh, Avid earlier? Marcus. Was it Marcus? It was Marcus. And, uh, Paul uh, Glasgow. And the Sony and the Avid integration. Yeah. Hello, Ray. Sorry, how are you doing? Hey, how are you? Yeah, good What's to happening? see you. Good to see you. Good to see you too. We were just discussing, we were talking to Paul from Marquis Broadcast this morning. Oh, about yeah. His Avid oh. integration. Um, and I think he's got some of his kit on your booth at NAB. But hey, he does. Yeah. enough about Marcus. We've done we've him. Done, yeah, let's, done talk him. About Av- <laughs> let's talk about Avid, Avid and what you're doing at NAB this year. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate you guys giving me the opportunity. No, no, um, no. So, and real quick, I'm Ray Thompson. I'm Senior Director here at Avid for Partners and Alliances. And I can give you thematically sort of what we'll people can expect to see when they come to the Avid booth. Great. Uh, So while I can't uh, divulge any specific announcements we're going to make because they'll be coming out shortly, I can give you a sort of a sense for what people can expect. So uh, as we've come out of uh, the last few years and all the many challenges that we've all had, um, people can expect to see an expansion from Avid as to the possibilities for collaboration, right? Um, And so from a cloud perspective, you'll see a significant enhancement in terms of what people can actually do, uh, you know, both in terms of getting stuff into the cloud as well as sort of review and approval style workflows, right? You'll see uh, significant improvements there. Um, You'll see a lot of announcements around what's possible workflow wise. Um, And then from a sort of more custom uh, production in the cloud orientation, you'll see some pretty big announcements there as well um, that further expand what's possible there too. So those are two uh, sort of pretty significant things you'll uh, experience at uh, the Avid booth. Um, The other thing you'll see is certainly uh, from a news perspective where Avid certainly has a strong uh, position in the market. You'll see an expansion in terms of uh, uh, story-centric news creation and digital-first news creation. So you'll see tool sets that allow for uh, greater tracking of news stories throughout the sort of content delivery pipeline, um, as well as uh, tool sets that basically enable uh, more on the both the digital and linear side. So there'll be some exciting things that people can experience in the booth uh, as it relates to what Avid's offering on the news side of things. Um, in terms of uh, post, um, we're going to further expand on uh, interoperability. So you'll see uh, sort of an expansion of what we showed at IBC here at NAB, where it will make its debut, which is uh, greater collaboration between Media Composer and Pro Tools. And so you'll see a lot of uh, cool things there, um, making it more seamless in terms of the experience and hopefully uh, saving more time, uh, making it far more efficient, and basically allowing post teams to deliver content much faster. Um, and then in terms of, uh, you know, from a storage perspective, Avid has certainly uh, built a strong reputation over the years uh, on its storage and reliability, uh, certainly in demanding production workflows of all types, right? Broadcast, 
post and otherwise. And so uh, you'll see some great announcements there, right? The further enhancement of the product line um, that sort of just expands sort of what we're offering, right? For really all the different types of workflows, whether they're high performance workflows or just traditional posts or certainly news, sports and so on. So there'll be some pretty exciting things there. And then, you know, one of the big, big themes that we've certainly heard here recently in the market is uh, sort of the the, uh, the the knowledge gap, if you will, right? And sort of the demand for talent um, yeah. in business, right? It's a real concern. And so you'll also see some pretty cool announcements around that as well, right? And how Avid is helping sort of bridge that gap uh, with sort of the next generation of content creators. And so you're going to see those types of themes um, sort of reinforced uh, with announcements really in the coming weeks. Uh, and then you'll get to experience that uh, not only in the Avid booth, but you'll see Avid really all over the show floor. You know, Avid's really worked hard over the many years to really establish um, a strong uh, set of partners. Um, you know, you mentioned Marquis as one, right? You guys have already interviewed uh, earlier today. Yeah. Um, certainly there's, there's you're going to see at the show quite a few uh, partners that are Avid partners that are exhibiting ways in which you can further extend Avid workflows, right? All over the show floor, um, which is something we're also very excited about. I personally will be spending a lot of quality time in the Microsoft booth um, where Avid will also have a kiosk uh, we'll, we'll, we will be uh, showing a lot of these cloud uh, possibilities. So it's going to be an exciting show. I'm really excited to go back. Uh, yeah. I was there last year, um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm expecting big things this year. Yeah, that was going to be one of the questions that came up earlier, actually, when we were speaking, speaking to Marcus, is, 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 is where are you going to be? Because... <laughs> Normally, you kind of know that you go to South Upper, you can't, but we're not in South Upper this year. <laughs> right. uh, and I can't remember last year. Where I, I could just picture Avid South. Was it South Upper or South Lower? Yeah. Uh, anyway, South Upper. Anyway, definitely where not in are South. You? Where are you? Where, where, where do yeah, we so uh, that's a great question. So we are actually in North Hall. We're uh, okay. uh, booth number N1221. That's N1221. Cool. Um, and so, uh, yeah, not the typical uh, Avid spot in South Hall. I don't even think South Hall is even open. No, it's um, not. not right. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, and, and uh, we don't have uh, the same, you know, mega booth we used to have. We'll, we'll still have a very strong uh, presence, but we've sort of changed the approach, certainly coming out of the last few years. Um, but, you know, really the emphasis is on innovation and sort of all the things that have happened, you know, because people have not been able to attend a lot of these events, if you think about it, um, and even though last year was actually a better than expected turnout uh, for yeah. NAB, um, this year I think that it's almost in a way sort of the debut in many ways for a lot of these things because, uh, you know, a lot has happened over the last three years, yeah. right? And a yeah. lot of, uh, you know, very innovative things have happened from an Avid perspective in terms of tool sets that we brought to market to sort of address the many challenges we continue to face, right? And opportunities, right? And so, uh, so yeah, so this in many ways this will be uh, – uh, a lot of debuts for a lot of cool things. Yeah. So there's a lot to talk about and a lot to see. Brilliant. Ray, thank Brilliant. you very much indeed. Lovely talking to you. We'll find and, you in North uh, Hall somewhere. We'll, we'll be over yes. in North Hall. And, uh, Excellent. Yeah, we'll uh, it'd be great to see you guys there. And yeah. thank you so much for the time. No. Have a great day. Thank you as well. Take care. Bye-bye. Cheers, Ray. Cool. So we're going to share that over with Neil again, aren't we now? Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> You ready? I can do for yeah. you, hard-working <laughs> gentlemen. <laughs> so who have you got on yeah. next, Neil? Who, so we have to? Kirsten Brinkman joining us now. From uh, She's the NAB show lead for the Bavarian Pavilion. Oh, so, cool. Okay. Yeah. Ah. Well, Looking forward to speaking to with Kirsten. Over to you. <laughs> Hi, nice meeting you. And here she is. Hi, Kirsten. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Well, it's great to have you here. You know, NAB show is a, an increasingly global event, so it's great to have, uh, you know, an international pavilion to speak with us today. Just for those that don't quite understand the geography, perhaps, can you just explain why this is a Bavarian pavilion and not a German pavilion? <laughs> well, <laughs> um, Bavaria is, is the biggest state in, in Germany and uh, Munich is a central location for companies um, for film and television industry for, for the past decades. And that's why the Bavarian ministry decided to sponsor small and mid-sized companies to go abroad. And we started in 2004 to sponsor um, companies to go to NAB show. Okay. Fantastic. And... Um... What what is it that the show offers? Do you think to uh, to your exhibitors, the people that come with you? 
I think it's the networking part, uh, and and of course to to see new customers. Uh, I mean, most of the companies have been with us for for many years, and uh, Ari, for instance, um, was founded in Bavaria in Munich, and so were a lot of small companies um, that come with us. Um, companies like Panta, Crossseal, Dedolite, companies that probably a lot of people know. So it, it's a networking event at, at NAB show and um, yeah, sometimes hopefully getting to know more um, new companies as well. And I know you're located in the Central Hall this year. Could you just tell us a little about who you have with you as, amongst your exhibitors and how many you have in total? Yeah, this year we have 10 companies with us. Um, Geckocom, Engstler, Bebop, Dedolite, Crossseal, um, Panta, which is Camadeus. And uh, we also have new companies with us, um, the company Yamdu and the company Munich uh, Media Intelligence. Um, Sounds excellent. Well, we look forward to uh, seeing them all. It's great to have that international flavour, as I said earlier, and uh, we're, we're grateful for uh, your participation and your, you joining us today as well. Um, we wish you safe travels over to Vegas and we look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. And we look forward to coming over. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Cool. Brilliant. Interesting did we, stuff. Did it, I, I might have missed it while I was sorting out my paperwork. Did we? Where is the Bavarian Pavilion? It's in the Central Hall. Central. Yeah, yeah. So it's. Uh, are all the pavilions in the Central Hall? Or are they scattered all around there? These? There's. I think there are six pavilions in total this year. But they're, okay. they're spread around a little bit. But okay. uh, some are in West, definitely. And uh, but but Bavaria can be found in the Central Hall. Yeah. As you go out that North Hall lobby, it'll be right in front of you. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. Brilliant. We we so have Alex now from Periphery. Hopefully, have Alex. Is, yeah. yeah, I think. Um, uh, can you hear us, Alex? The division of Data Core. I can hear you guys. How are you today? Yeah, we're fantastic. Whereabouts are you from, so, Alex? <laughs> Los Angeles. Okay. Right at Six a.m. I was going to say. Oh, well, yeah. it is early. Yeah, good morning. <laughs> good afternoon here. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for making the effort. <laughs> to get... So, how does Periphery? fit into the media and entertainment industry and what you're going to be showing at NAB show 2023? That's a great question. So Periphery is a, a new name, but not from a new company. We're a new division of DataCore. DataCore has been around about 25 years in storage business and uh, on a, a big acquisition trail in the last few years. And we acquired a company called Coringo a few years ago, which really put us in the middle of the media space. Pringo is one of the early object storage leaders out there building archive products for media and for about 15 years. So not, not newbies to this market and not a new team. And the reason we, we built the periphery brand um, and the division under, under data core is really to take advantage of what we see in the media entertainment market and the changes that we can. So we're really excited of what we're gonna show at NEB this year. We think for the 100th anniversary, it's gonna be very interesting. So we're, uh, we're all about um, content archive, content preservation, and content delivery. And, and that's, you know, all the changes we see in the market, the one thing that never changes is that your content still needs to be secured and be able to be monetized, not just faster as, as we build production, but also over the long time. The value of, of content is important. And we've seen a lot of changes there, as you know, right? People moving to the cloud, a lot, of, a lot of changes with, you know, how quickly can I get to my content? How quickly can I find it? A lot of different changes in there. And we're making a lot of moves to help people maintain the content for a longer period of time and also access it more quickly and easier. Does this involve quite a lot of, I mean, uh, you, uh, it's just involved quite a lot of partnerships. That's what I'm, where I was going with this. You've got, you know, so many angles here, security, as you say, access, transfer, transport, you name it. Um, yeah. This is this has got to include a lot of partnerships with 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 other companies, right? Yeah. In a modern workflow, I mean, we all have to fit together, right? It it's just it just becomes yeah. so many moving parts. I mean, you know, one of the things we we see, one of the big trends we're seeing is that as people work more remotely, you know, we're seeing that in the U.S. more than anywhere, right? People are working more remotely. We're starting to see, you know, content being created 
outside studios, outside broadcast centers, you know, remotely more and more. Everything has to come together. The cloud looks like the perfect place to do that, but costs become unpredictable. You've got to get the content up, bring it down. You got egress fees. Sometimes you have to control that content more. And so we fit right in the workflow. So whether it's a, you know, we're talking about a production workflow where they're Adobe based and, and we build a plugin panel that makes getting metadata a lot easier or an Avid workflow where we fit into Avid correctly. In fact, I, I should mention that we just acquired one of the pioneers in the storage archive business called um, Object Matrix right over in your area in Cardiff, not too far away. Yeah. Uh, I'm getting yeah. across the pond quite a bit more lately. Yeah. So we, we've really beefed up what we do and they just have an incredible story of how they work with that. And we have a great story how we work with uh, Adobe and all workflows. So also the cloud, you know, all the cloud vendors, everybody that we work with. So having a, what we call an ecosystem of partners is so important today because you can't walk into somewhere and say, well, change your workflow. You know, that's just crazy. All the changes that have been happening for remote workers and supporting that workflow are enough. The, the talent pool just really gets burned out on all these new changes and technologies that make workflow more efficient. So we're trying to, you know, ease them over this and, and get them more efficient in their workflow, but do it in a way where everybody can work together and, and just plug in. Yeah. yeah. So what do you, in, a, in 30 seconds, what do you do differently that your competitors don't do? Um, that's it. That's why, a great question. Why should people come and see you at NAB? Well, of course they should come see all the new innovation that we're doing, but there's a few areas in, at, that really were different. Number one is from, uh, just as you said, fitting in, in the workflow. We do that real well. We make it really easy so people don't have to spend a lot of time to do it. We give them an alternative to putting everything in the cloud. So we work very closely in and out of the cloud to be able to, to do workflow, but our integration of how we handle metadata and making it easier for media asset managers to be able to acquire content quicker, or for people even who don't have MAMS to be able to do that. And we'll be introducing some new technologies that in AB that have to do, let's just say with AI, making things a lot easier to get content. So we think that we, we cover the market, especially now with the acquisition of, of Object Matrix, what we've done with our Swarm technology, uh, as far as uh, archive and long-term preservation, there's just nobody who really does what we can do at the level that we can do any scale, any any performance. Fantastic, excellent. And I guess, well, where are we going to set? Where are we going to send people to? I assume it's a periphery booth. It's not. It's not a data, yeah, data so core. Yeah. It's we're actually we're actually at periphery and division of data core. We're in the North Hall, North Hall. in booth uh, 1331. We're right next to uh, Avid, so uh, we're sandwiched between Avid and the big stage. So it should be uh, <laughs> should be an interesting place. Alex, thank you very much indeed. We're looking forward to seeing you in Vegas in a few weeks' yeah. time. Thank you very much for joining us. You guys, take care. Thank you very much. Thank Bye -bye. Appreciate it. Right, um, Matt. I think we've got someone on a train. Altion. Altion, I think yeah. it's Altion. If, it's anything, is, if yeah. his internet's anything like ours on Eurostar to IBC, it's not going to be very good, is it? No. It was a great trip, wasn't it? But it was just appalling. Um, mobile data. Mobile data, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Right, let's Al get on quick, Matt. Alex, <laughs> from Al uh, Matt, sorry, Matt from Altion. Hi, how are you doing? Hey, great, guys. How are you? Sorry, I'm, uh, I'm on a train right now moving through. So if it's a little shaky, I'm sorry about that. No, so everyone's going to be intrigued of where you're going. Uh, we are shooting something actually before NAB. We're we're preparing some content. Okay, cool. Well, so now more. we've got to come to NAB, come <laughs> to the booth to find out what the content is. <laughs> shooting on, yeah. So I, I'm looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to it. What so we're what talking about cloud, yeah. yeah, cloud stuff, cloud based collaboration. Look, I think it's funny. I was on office hours last week, and one of the biggest things that I said is I've been going to NB, NAB for the last two decades, and you know, years past, it's always what's the latest lens. Or or what's the latest camera that's coming out? And I think as of the last five years or so, it's what's the latest cloud product? What's <laughs> yeah. the latest? You know, it's it's turned into so much of a digital show. Um, yeah. And you know, when I got into the industry, we were still doing tapes. So uh, so that's yeah. just to kind of age me a little bit. But no, I. <laughs> I think that the biggest thing that we're excited about this year is our recent iOS uh, app for last week. Um, that's been really exciting for us and, and hearing from our various users that are starting to shoot on iPhone and being able to shoot up their cloud, their footage to the cloud has been, has been really well received so far. 
Mm, cool. So talk to us about the sort of technologies that we're going to see on your booth. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing is we're reaching a lot of our workflows for both Final Cut Pro and Adobe Premiere Pro. So I think that's one of the biggest things that we're going to be highlighting this year at the show. And then also just our our overall cloud product. So what you can do now as an independent creator um, and also being able to stand up your own content management system within virtually seconds uh, compared to some of our other competitors is, is definitely a, a, a big competitive advantage that we have. And they can do, I mean, are, are we going to have a full experience of your... Uh, your Absolutely. Monster? So... Yeah. So we're going we're gonna to actually be releasing in the next uh, day or so a full schedule of what you're going to be able to see inside of our booth. But we're going to be doing hourly discussions. Uh, so every hour at the top of the hour, we're going to have a new guest come into our booth and talk through a workflow, whether, again, that's uh, Apple Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere Pro or iOS workflows. We have a journalist named Kerry Sanders. He's from the Today Show. He's going to be joining us in our booth uh, a few days as well, um, talking about what he experienced throughout his 30 years at NBC Network News and uh, remote journalism that, that he experienced. And then we're also going to have guests like Tom Mohanian from IBM, formerly a Avid. And, and, you know, he's sort of a legendary uh, mm -hmm. individual, and he's certainly going to be talking in our booth. And there might be a couple other exciting announcements that you, that I can't really spoil <laughs> just yet, but... Again, you know, we're going we're gonna to have a little bit of a, a town hall session area. And then also we're going to have 12 computers available to people as they enter into our booth to not only demo our product, but we also have people uh, from our customer success team that are going to be there to help people one-on-one -on -one and actually get them signed up in our product and, and seeing what we can offer to them. Brilliant. Yeah. Matt, well, hang on, yeah. where, where are we, we oh, done yeah. that already? You... N1521, is that correct? Yeah, I, I believe so. I, I, you, you guys are probably better, more, better informed than me. But yes, we're <laughs> we're in North Hall. Um, we're right next to. We're right right across from Avid, uh, and you can't miss us if you're going to the main stage because we're we're going to be, be right the North there. Hall uh, thing at the moment. We do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Going fast. Matt, we will leave you to your journey. Hope you have a successful shoot today, and looking forward to seeing the results on your NAB booth. I can't wait to meet you guys there. Hopefully, and thank you guys for having me on today. I really appreciate it. Still Just uh, you know. Yeah, you can you can see more information at altian.io. Fantastic. Thank you very much indeed, Matt. Cheers. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. And now um what we're now we're going to yeah, pass the, load the buck again. over to Neil again, uh, aren't we really? Yeah. This is um, who, who have you got next now? Uh, I believe we have Rick Young, who's senior vice president of global products for LTN. Cool. He sounds like he's just been patched across. Okay. Um, Hi, Rick Young. Here, here he we is. go. There. Hi, Rick. Hi, Rick. Nice, Rick. Yeah. Hey, guys. Uh, how are you? Yeah, we're all good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you. Yeah, well, thanks very much for joining us today. Uh, excited to hear, you know, having, having watched uh, the amazing growth of LTN over the last few years, you know, through uh, organic growth and acquisition, it's been uh, something uh, quite spectacular to watch. So I was hoping you could tell us a little about the com company as it currently stands and also walk us through the booth for this year's NAB show. Uh, absolutely. First of all, thanks for, for having me. You guys are doing a great job. Um, appreciate the chance to get up early and have a cup of coffee with you. Um, so it's been we've we've been busy, as you said. The growth has been quite spectacular. Um, you know, over the last several years, there's been both, as you mentioned, sort of organic growth and acquisitions and technology enhancement. And so, I mean, our, our portfolio continues to get bigger and broader, solving um some of the biggest problems the industry is facing, right? How do you reach content, put content in the hands of viewers and consumers on every platform under the sun in ways that are relevant to how they want to consume it at times of day that they want to consume it. So um, we've been we've been growing those solutions in um, at, at a pretty steady pace, adding new customers, you know, daily, weekly, monthly, for sure. You can talk about that this morning if you want. I'm certainly available to talk about it in our booth at NAB. That'll be a big focus is just sort of sharing some of the successes that uh, folks are having, leveraging some of our technology, integrating with others, et cetera. Um, in terms of what we're showing at NAB at our booth, 
Um, we're going to really focus on three primary solutions. Like I said, we have a broad portfolio, but there are three primary solutions. The first one is uh, LTN Wave. Uh, LTN at its core, uh, kind of going back to your original question, is a global IP transmission network. We've been moving folks off of satellite and fiber networks for years and really doing it in a better, more efficient, more reliable way, but enabling a lot of opportunities. And LTN Wave is the next generation of that where now in real earnest, folks are making the leap from satellite and fiber uh, networks and, and moving on to LTN. And we have a number of customers in real time making that transition. We'll talk about all of the enhancements there. Uh, LTN Arc is something we announced and rolled out last year. And that solution is all about versioning live events, live sports. I mean, that's a huge problem in the industry, right? How do you reach the tonnage that's required on OTT and digital platforms to keep consumers engaged and subscriptions from churning? And LTN, uh, our ARC solution is really an answer to that where you can version a primary produced feed for lots of platforms. Can talk about that for sure. And we have a panel where we're discussing both the first example I gave moving off of satellite. We have a panel uh, at NAB where we're talking about uh, Televisa Univision's VIX platform. And uh, the last solution we talk about for sure is LTN Lift. And that's all about versioning and creating new linear channels, right? Taking a primary channel and creating similar but different channels for fast platforms or OTT platforms or owned and operated digital platforms. And we have a lot of new enhancements around that. I'm rambling a bit, but we got a lot to talk about. The growth has been a, a bit uh, uh, crazy the last few years. And as the product guy, it's it's been a lot of fun. Well, that sounds uh, fantastic, Rick. I mean, as distribution models change, you've always been uh, there right at the uh, at the forefront. And uh, from past experience, I, I know a, a visit to the LTM booth is time well spent. So, you know, I'm sure people will be rushing to join you. I believe you're on W2621 uh, in the West Hall. So uh, that's we, correct. We look forward to seeing you there and uh, and wish you a very successful show and thank you for joining us today. Pleasure. Hang in there as you as you roll through these interviews. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Rick. Bye. <clears throat> Excellent. Yeah. As brilliant. you say, always a good um, booth to stop by, isn't it? Absolutely. It's, I mean, there's, the stuff they're doing there is amazing. The innovation and growth there is almost second to none, I think. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, make sure where we go now. Yeah, he's. Uh, we're we're going to have to ask. Uh, we're going to have to ask him to to, to leave to to just to hang up to, uh, to hang out if he can because uh, we've got our next guest. While we're just switching over to oh, we've got him now. We're talking to Kevin Good. Yeah. from yeah. Um, Kevin Savage Leader from Europe. Leader Europe. Hello, Kevin. Okay. Hello there. How, How are you doing? Yeah, we're good. Thanks. How are you? All right. I'm good. I'm good. Looking forward to. We're just over what two weeks away from the show now. Yes, Absolutely. indeed, indeed. So you've got your leader hat on. We can see a Fabrics logo above your head, and we're chatting to Philip from Fabrics later on. So what can we what can we expect new, or what, I guess, a better way to do it, what new challenges are facing the test and measurement world at the moment? Well, I, th I think the great thing, whenever there's change, there's a requirement for test and measurement, because hmm. we're going into really the unknown. Fashion, does it? <laughs> and... That's our kind of messaging for the show, that we are making our customers transition, whether that be from SDI to IP, HD to 4K, SDR to HDR, you know, as smooth and as seamless as possible with, you know, the test and measurement tools that they're familiar with today in the world of SDI video. So um, that that's kind of our whole focus at the show. And um, you're quite right, for the first time, well, you will see the leader and fabrics products range kind of intermixed on the stand. And the aim this year is very much it's targeted at different production genres. So whether that's on set, post-production, live production, broadcast QC and play out, or even delivery to online services. Yeah. We have solutions, you know, for our customers you know, that we can show both the leader and fabrics products that best suit their requirements. Hmm. And so what's, what, 
What's uh, uh, actually, I mean, when people come on the stand, what are they going to notice different this NAB than the last NAB, and uh, whether that be NAB New York or NAB in Las Vegas last year? What, what, what's going to be the change? You, are, you, are you able to identify that? Um, well, I don't want to steal Philip's thunder because he's going to be on in a few minutes. Yeah. But you'll, you'll start to see what Philip's going to talk about as, yes. you know, being, you know, the, the two companies or the two parts of the companies coming together. So, um, but the whole thing is, you know, it's not just production, but it's also manufacturers, it's R&D, it's engineers. Yeah. You know, people who use our products cover the whole breadth of this industry. So if you're coming to NAB, come and see us. We're in the Central Hall, and we've basically got something for everybody. Well, think, Anybody who's yeah. got a test measurement requirement. You've covered that something for everybody, but is there, I, I guess, let's get, let's rephrase it. If, if, there's some, if there's a particular product that you've got at the moment that it, you'd be really excited to meet someone that's going to solve one of their problems you, 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 well I would say that probably falls the one we're seeing the most interesting in is the leader LV56 and 7600 waveform monitor and rasterizer yeah. that is a true hybrid so IP and SDI waveform monitor so that you can simultaneously monitor both SDI and IP signals on the same screen at the same time but it also presents IP information in a form that any SDI engineer is going to understand. So, you know, again, it's making this transition as smooth as possible by giving tools that you understand and use today, but putting them onto the new transport and infrastructure systems. Cool. Brilliant. So where are we sending people to, to come and find you, Kevin? So we're going to be in the Central Hall, C4920, um, our kind of usual location right in the middle of the Central Hall. So, um, you know, it's both product ranges. We look forward to seeing everybody at the show. So I'll be over there. You know, if you want to set up a meeting ahead of that, uh, I think most people have my contact details now. So, um, you know, please reach out and we can get a slot in the diary. Fantastic. Yeah, brilliant. We'll make sure we send people your way, and uh, I will certainly be, t you know, uh, rocking up and, and, and saying hello and having a chat. Um, we, we look forward to seeing you and, and doing a recording in a bit more detail of what we're what we're showing. Yeah, cool. absolutely, excellent. Thank you, Kevin. We'll see you Thank over you there. Kevin. Thank you. Good luck with the rest Best of the day. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. See ya. Uh, so, now we're going over to Brad Rumler from Zero Density, I believe. And after yeah, we've got a, Kevin. Brad. We've got a we've got another real person in again. We've got a real person uh, after oh. Brad. Not that not that okay. Brad's not a real You're person. Not. He's just not here. He's just not with us. <laughs> hey, Brad. How you doing? Oh, nearly here in New York. Ah, there you go. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were muted for a moment. So yeah, sorry about that. No worries, Brad. So um, you yeah yeah. Well, we didn't we speak to um we I think we spoke to Hakan. Is it? <laughs> Last time? Yeah, it was, uh, I think it was Hakan last year. Yeah. I uh, wasn't here with the company last year, so I've been here with the company for two months. Uh, very exciting. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, great. And what can we expect from Zero Density at NAB this year? <laughs> uh, we're having a very exciting NAB this year. Of course, um, I've been at NAB many, many years. This is my first with Zero Density. I remember seeing them a few years ago in 2016 when they first launched with their incredible uh, reality engine. Uh, reality key as well. So reality engine was actually the first uh, engine um, uh, introduced to Unreal Engine to the broadcast uh, community. So um, if you remember, so uh, we were the leaders in that in that market. We also introduced uh, image based care as well. Um, so these are going back to kind of what we've done in the past. We're a very innovative company. Uh, we're focused on on R and D as our core strength, um, and we also have really reliable uh, solutions, which really uh, battle tested. Big clients here in the US, such as uh, Weather Channel, Fox Sports, uh, you know, Warner Media, those clients rely on zero density. Um, but NAB is going to be amazing this year. This is going to be um, uh, some really great new products, really expanding the team, expanding the products. Um, just to touch about on first what we're doing at NAB, we're having um, introducing our have a Traxxas uh, brand of products, which is our camera tracking systems. Uh, we'll be expanding that. So that's going to be exciting um, as we're getting more into into that sort of hardware tracking space, providing turnkey bundles. Um, it's based on our what we uh, uh, got an award for last year, actually, for the Talent S solution um, for tra doing AI-based markerless tracking uh, for talent without having to have anything, any wearables. Uh, we're also doing uh, launching this year a, um, a new software bundle. So we're very excited about that. 
Um, it's going to be a real game changer for virtual production. Um, can't say much more about it at this point. <laughs> Have to come to the show and find out. Uh, we're doing uh, also uh, broadcast on-air graphics development. So we're very excited to announce some developments in that area for on-air graphics. Uh, a lot of folks know Zero Density for green screen, um, for our Kia, the quality of our Kia. Um, but we're really expanding beyond that. So we're also showing um, on the stage, on the, on the stand rather, we'll be having a green screen psych. Um, we'll be showing a new set uh, in that. We'll also have an XR LED stage um, showing a basketball set for the sports community. Uh, so um, we have multiple demo pods, so we'll have very hands-on experiences for uh, a lot of users as well. So, yeah, we're very excited to leave a, a big and lasting impression this year at NAB. Yeah. And just um, before we finish off, Zero Density has been expanding its presence in North America recently. Just tell us the reasons behind that. Yeah, so uh, so Zero Density is a global company. We have um, in we have customers now in over fifty countries around the world. Um, as I mentioned, some you know key clients we can talk about here in the US. We have many more, of course, uh, but we are growing here um, every every year in the US. So um, we've expanded. You know, the community that we have is at the center of everything that we do. We uh, we have community training event coming up in LA right after NAB. Um, so we've really expanded the team here um, in North America, uh, covering Latin America, also the US and Canada. Uh, we have uh, additional support uh, tech and engineers on the ground here to in increase and support our, our growing community. So, so we're very excited about that. Lots of growth, new products, new teams. Uh, it's my first NAB with Zero Density, so I'm excited about that too. Brilliant. Cool. Uh, Brad, thank you very much. Did Finally, you know we're sending you North Hall. Yeah, yeah. North Hall. Yeah. You did say North Hall. 1817. 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, nice and easy. Right. Well, I, well I we that. wish you well on your first NAB. And uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing you over there. Fantastic. Thanks very much. Cheers. Take care. Bye bye. See you. Take care. Bye bye. Cool. Right. It's good. So, yeah, it was good. I mean, I. I, I I think, if I remember rightly, now that I've seen it at Zero Density, Hakan was the guy that came in and he was in the jungle. He had some wild dog going on behind him. <laughs> oh, he was uh, in the jungle. Yeah, 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 he was. He was. It was a very impressive uh, backdrop. We thought it was a virtual we background. It, was a virtual it background, wasn't, but he yeah. was really in the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. anyway, we're going to widen the set because we've got someone in the red chair, uh, Nick from In InSync Technology. Hi, Hello. Nick. Hello, gents. How are you doing? Yeah, very Hi. well. Very well. Looking forward to it. NAB. My, I'm also uh, first time there as well. Is, is it really? Okay. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. At NAB, I've been to uh, other events um, okay. in, in Vegas, but uh, yeah, this is my first NAB. Cool. So, so should we rewind and tell us a quick bit about InSync technology and why you're going to NAB, I guess we could start. So yeah, we're, go we're going again. Um, you know, we are putting our head above the parapet now. You know, we're talking about the technology. We've been around for a number of years. You know, we've got 20 yeah. years of engineering, um, you know, pedigree in, in us. Yeah. Um, and we are arguably, you know, the world's leading you know, gold standard for frame rate conversion technology. So, you know, we want to go there. We want to engage with um, our partners. Mm -hmm. We want to meet new partners um, mm -hmm. and really show, you know, what we've done with Frameformer. Um, mm. And it's, uh, obviously, you know, seeing is believing. So it's, yeah. it's a great platform. So what are InSync doing differently to other people in the frame rate conversion world? Uh, well, you know, there's a lot of um, enhancements that we've done to the, to, to Frameformer, and that continues. Um, we've got ARM processing technology in there, which is enhanced now. Um, you know, you can reduce uh, CPU usage by as much as uh, 20%. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, there's, there's many things that we're doing in there that we'd like to show, and it's a great format for us to show you know, screen side by side uh, and a live yeah. demo so they can come along, they can see that there's obviously enhanced features in there that, uh, you know, broadcasters and partners um, and content owners would want to see. Mm. I should recall that you were one of those technologies that everyone knew and no one knew that they were using it in so many different products around that, you know, yes, you're everywhere. Yes. But who knows it? Yes, it's, so, it is a challenge. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so you're you're coming, you know, a bit more, you know, direct to market now. And obviously that's great that you've got, uh, um, you know, well, 20% <laughs> saving on CPU. If you, if, if you multiply that up with the amount that's going on, let's absolutely. say, during a multinational broadcast of certain sporting events or whatever. Yes. Um, yeah, this is significant for the, for, for the, uh, for the yeah, global... It is very significant, in. and it, yes. Uh, what, what, what does you coming direct to market? What does that? What, what's that bringing the customer now? 
Well, it's bring, it's bringing availability, uh, accessibility. You know, yeah. all these things that you know cloud allows and enables. You know, right. so the, it's very cost effective now. Um, you know, you can remote work and uh, and all that kind of thing. So, you know, it's bringing a lot of flexibility to to that, and the cost reductions are you know enormous regarding from a, mm. you know from a CPU. Um, mm. Point of view, so be a, a carbon, yeah. I guess, yeah, yeah, a carbon. Yeah, you know, yeah, green credentials. Green. You know, we are going for um, different awards and things for green credentials because it's massive. You know, people turn mm. on that that piece of hardware and they leave it, um, and you find people move and they leave the company, and someone comes up and says, "Oh no, don't switch that off." You know, because they, yeah, yeah. you know, they don't want to shut things down. So, um, you know, yeah. that, that 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 thing is eating kilowatts of electricity, and yeah. you don't have to do that with frame formula. No. So can you identify any other challenges that you, you're solving? Is, 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 is the, the, the challenge is, obviously, you know, we, we are world leaders in what we do. Um, it's about getting case studies and people to talk about what we do. Everybody's very yeah, protective yeah, okay. of their brands, but, you mm. know, major sports and events across the globe, um, you know, whether that be football or, or you know, anything, is, yeah. you know, are using our technology, but we can't name those names. And, and it's very difficult because the first thing they want to know and understand is, who are you using? You know, yeah, yeah. who are using you? Mm, you know, what's yeah, the case yeah, study? Yeah. Can you give yeah. me a name? Yeah, yeah, you say, well, yeah, I yeah. can't do that because no. of legal reasons, but no. it's the same for them as it is for us. You know, it, yeah. it's very difficult to to yeah. to get that. So, in terms of, of your your space at NAB, what's going to be the star of the show there? What are people? What's going to turn people's heads as they walk past? Um, well, I think they're going to see a different theme from uh, InSync this year. You know, we are looking more at the um, sports broadcast and content okay. owners the standards you know we've got some astroturf on the, on there so you can okay. come along and have a nice feel of the carpet yeah. um which is very good you're in we're in uh stand uh c2 c2013 which should be okay. easy enough oh. to remember yeah. which is uh yeah, yeah. In, in central hall so so come along there and it, you know it's got that kind of um play on a sport small ball you know, whether it be tennis or rugby, or okay. et cetera, which is what you know what we're looking for. You know, so it's the sports visitors you're looking to. We're looking, engage yeah, we, with. We, yeah, that's where we really play. You know, that's our kind of segment of channel um, in in sport, and whether that be ball sports or whether it's motorsport, or you know, could be basketball, baseball. But you know, obviously, mm. there's a big yeah. broad breadth. But uh, hopefully, we've got a little bit of a, uh, a theme going on, so uh, it should be good. Yeah, excellent. Sounds good. And you say so you're in Central. 2013. 2013. Central should, Hall 2013. Yeah, 13, so it should be yeah. an easy easy yeah. one to remember for everybody to, <laughs> yeah. to pile in and, and see yeah. what's going on. Absolutely, Absolutely, yeah. Fantastic. Cool. Thank you, Nick. Thank you for Thank coming you very in. Much for Thank you, gents. For, 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 good to see you. It's been a pleasure. Hope to yeah. see everyone yeah. at C2013. Yeah. yeah, a couple of weeks now. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Thank yeah. you very well, much indeed. Well, Thank you. Might see on the flight, you never know. Right. Onwards and upwards. I'm not sure who we've got coming in next. I'm sure there's somebody waiting in the wings. I think, actually, we're talking to Philip Adams from Fabrics. That's perfect timing. Now, he, he's, he's got no excuse for not coming in, has he? He's just down the road. <laughs> he's not far away. Yeah. We'll have to... Um, yeah. So, well, we couldn't have the backdrop. He couldn't have the backdrop, yeah. Philip, how um, are you? I'm pretty good, thank you. And yourselves? We're good. We were just saying you've got no excuse not to be in person, but Matt was admiring your backdrop. I didn't, I didn't. I hadn't realised that was an option. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Then, but, you, but you're right. We've got the backdrops. So yeah. It should, um, yeah. should help with uh, the descriptions, etc. Uh, it's good to see you. So we've just been talking to Kevin actually from Leader, who's been okay. filling us in on all the test measurement challenges in the world. Um, he didn't want to steal your thunder. He didn't want to steal your thunder. <laughs> so, so we're expect we're expecting big things now. For <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> so the floor is yours. What's new at NAB for Fabrics? Okay, well, I'm proud to announce that we have a brand new product, uh, which is not something that comes along very often in a test and measurement company. Um, you know, we're, we're on our third uh, generation of products. Right. Uh, we're still shipping yeah. our first generation, you know, 15 years on. Um, and what happens is you launch a new platform and then you develop it for the next five or six years as you navigate the, uh, the changes in this fast paced uh, industry that we're in. Um, so we launched the QXL about just under three just under three years ago. Um, and this is uh, the big brother of the QXL, the QXP. Uh, and this right. is a product which integrates. So it's a new platform. Uh, it's, got the, um, it's got the nice, beautiful kind of high resolution 3U uh, screen that you can see there. I, I was just about and to it, say, you've actually got a screen on it. Yeah, We've got a screen on it. Yeah. We've integrated a speaker. Um, we've got lots of control mechanisms. You can see we've got the buttons there. But you can also use mouse. You can also use uh, VNC and connect remotely. You can use no VNC. Uh, you can stream the. You can even stream the user interface out over 2110. So mm -hmm. it's a very flexible, uh -huh. integrated, um, portable uh, waveform monitor. 
Uh, on top of that, what I should also say, uh, so it's got the integral screen, um, the built-in speaker, etc. You can buy in rack mount versions. You can buy it in, uh, as you can see here, in, in a hand carry version. You've got three uh, power sources. It's got an internal mains uh, power supply, but you can also use an external power supply if you wish. Uh, and key to it is that you can have a battery. There's a battery plate in the back. You can choose V-mount if you want to go with the Sony style batteries or G-mount to go with the Anton Bauer type batteries. Um, but it has the battery plate, so you can you can uh, connect your own batteries. If you fit a 150 watt battery on there, then you've got two hours um, use out of the unit uh, untethered. Wow. Uh, okay. And with everything integrated. So, you know, re really, really. And all really the features powerful. that you'd expect from a Fabrics QXL or QX product. Yeah. So, if you, so it's designed to go for production workflows for HD, UHD, uh, SDR, HDR, uh, SDI operation, if you wish. Uh, right. But it comes as standard with IP. SDI is an option on this, uh, un un unusually. But, but yes, I, I guess as we move forward, then. that's going to be yeah. more usual <laughs> as time goes on. Mm. It's got some brand new patented uh, waveform technology in there. Um, you can see the image on there. It's really clear. Take mm. that full screen. It's lovely. Yeah. And you've got lots of, con lots of controls uh, in order to, to bring out the detail. So this will bring us into new markets that we've not been in uh, previously. We're also doing some work on full range. Um, so, so, so that will bring us also uh, to new markets. Okay. Um, so, you know, with this product, it's a full portable 25 gig uh, IP uh, 2110, um, you know, product. It's got a very significant signal generator in there uh, and also a very significant um, set of features for a signal analyzer. Mm. Um, you can also do the same with 12 gig SDI. So you've got the, the, the unique SDI stress tool set that we've got on the QXL. It's also available in here. We've got a really nice user interface. The user interface is touch-based, um, uh, which you can see here in a quad sort of style. So we've been doing lots of work to change the GUI so it's uh, usable at a different DPI, a different, different dots per inch, uh, which is what you're seeing here. But you've also got the flexibility to use it as a rasterizer. So you can have up to 16 um, instruments uh, you know, on screen at any one time. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is a new user interface. Uh, we've put a lot of work into this. Um, we're going to be using this interface across our product range uh, as time goes on. Um, and, you know, target markets, we're addressing R&D, uh, commissioning, production, edit suites. Um, we launched it earlier uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we the first batch is pretty much gone. Uh, we're waiting for the second batch to be delivered. Um, you can buy it in three variants, just the same way as the QXL. So you can have an IP-only version of it, IP plus SDI, or IP plus SDI with physical error analysis. Right. Um, it's got a ton of options. It's the same set of options that you get with QXL, and it's shipping with all those options on day one. Uh, as, time, uh, as, as we move forwards, it'll be using the same software uh, version, um, but that version, as I say, uh, will now be flexible, so it'll operate on smaller screens and on larger screens. Um, mm. So you've got, a, you've got a unique PCAP feature, we could do full line rate capture uh, of PCAP files at 25 gig across two networks. So you're actually capturing at 50 gigabit per second. That's unique. Uh, and it can take it at full line rate, both interfaces simultaneously. Um, very good signal generator. So lots and lots of options. So you can yeah. tailor it to your application uh, and to your budget. Yeah. yeah. Um, a very with, very yeah. quickly, I, I think this, uh, I, I've, Sorry, I didn't want to cut you off there, but I just That's think okay. you, from, from a uh, uh, w w you've been part of the leader family, or you yeah. know, Fabrics and Leader have been the same family for quite a while. But I understand that at the, at the show, uh, am I right in thinking there might be a little bit of a closer relationship now? You might be a bit more integrated with each other. Yeah, so we've made a very deliberate decision to integrate the Fabrics and Leader products on the stand and to be demonstrating the products according to application. And when you right. look at the applications, sometimes right, the leader yeah. product will be um, very well targeted at a particular application. And the Fabrics products have their own uh, unique target as well. Um, and different geographies around the world are more familiar with the different products. Um, so, so that's what we're doing. So we're kind of bringing mm. them together. Um, we now have combined sales teams worldwide. Um, so we have, um, so we're learning each other's products. Um, yeah. as, as we go as well. Uh, and we're learning which products fit which applications the best. You mentioned, Philip, you mentioned earlier on that it's open new markets to you. Yeah. What, um, what type of visitors are you hoping are going to see the, exit, the QXP in, in Las Vegas? Okay. So one of the new markets is on virtual sets. 
Um, and I understand there are quite a lot of those around the world these days. <laughs> yeah. and a lot of those are now moving towards 2110. Yeah. Um, and we, so we, we have some partnerships, uh, in particular with a company called Seven Sense, uh, where we've done a lot of work for the last two years um, on uh, 2110 streaming. And a lot of those sets run RGB. So they need a different set of formats. So you're not looking at your 422 YCBCR stuff. You're looking at RGB, you're looking at 10 and 12 bit pixels, and you're looking at uh, 444 sampling. Um, so that, that was um, not available when we started. Uh, and I think we're still fairly yeah. unique actually with that. And we're running with payloads up to 21 gig. Um, so mm. these, are, these are big big old payloads, uh, 4K, um, but as I say, with the more advanced pixels, which you, you require for, for reality on those kind of sets. So we're expecting to see uh, some people from that, that kind yeah. of industry. Um, also, uh, the product's becoming, um, because it's got the integral screen, et cetera, it, it's taken us you know, closer to the camera and closer to post-production. And they're, they're areas that we didn't play in before. Um, yeah. so, but, but this product is now moving us in, that, in those directions. We'll also have a lot of engineers. We'll, we'll have engineers on the stand as well. So, um, you know, please come by the stand and we can get into some real detail. Yeah, that's, it's that's going to be like to do at, at NEB. Central Hall 4920. That's where yes. you're going to be. Oh, Fantastic. Yes, we, are, yes. yeah. we are out of time, Philip. It's always lovely to talk okay. to you. And I know we're spending time with you and the team at NAB, so we can yes. find out a lot more then and uh, and record that so people can watch it, which would be great. So uh, we will see Thank you me. in a few weeks' time. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Simon. Thank you, Matt. Cheers. Take yeah. care. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Right. So are we going to go to Paul Scurll? I don't know who. We're going to go to Paul Scurll. Atomos. From Atomos. Excellent. Cool. Brilliant. Let's uh, we'll uh, wait for Philip to disconnect we'll and then we'll... Um, disconnect, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yep. Which he will do. Um, yeah. We need, we need a way of I mean, I hate like, to this to Phil, but like a big, like a, a big red, a big lever, thing. A, b yeah. a big lever to just chuck them out. Yeah, we don't ah, want to right. chuck this guest out though, because no, no, this yeah. is Paul from Atomos. Yeah. How are you doing, Paul? You right? Hello, gents. How are you doing? <laughs> We're doing really, really right. well. Yeah, We're, I, we keep on being told in our ear, "You're running over. You're running over." Yeah, yeah. yeah. but what can Wait. you do? It is quite a marathon you've got running here, though, isn't it? I mean, to be fair. <laughs> it's been going on quite a while, yeah. So, Paul, we've been, um, we've been um, big users of the Atomus Shogun Connect recently at ISE. Loved it. We managed to Actually stream used it, yeah. 5G from the show floor for the yeah. two or three days. It worked really, really well for us. We're going to be using the Ninja Connect, um, I think, if we can at NAB. If we can, yeah, if it works. Uh, if, it's it, not well, if it works, it will work. If, if the interconnectivity works. works. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we use your products. We love them. Tell us what everybody can see at NAB. Well, yeah, so we'll be back in the central hall. So we're, we're, we're slightly further up at the top of central, actually, down where the steps are in the middle there, mm -hmm. booth 4135. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so, we, yeah, we're looking forward to NAB. So basically what we'll be doing at NAB will be really highlighting all of the new key features that are enabled with the official launch of the Atoms Cloud Studio that we did last week. So yep. um, you probably noticed there was a new firmware update for Ninja and Shogun and Zato last yep. week, our three connected products. Yep. And that was really central for the launch of the official cloud services, as, as you probably know, and obviously you've been using them yourselves, actually, in, in mm. beta terms. We've, we've already had camera to cloud working and we've had streaming from our devices. But um, the the new launch of the new cloud subscription really opens up a whole new bunch of services, including live production, but also some valuable enhancements to that camera to cloud experience, the, the frame IO Adobe camera to cloud experience that you've already used at ISE, actually. And obviously everything you're talking about at NAB is, is it's ready now, isn't it? It's, it's shipping effectively. The new update is an update that we can. I haven't got around to updating our Shogun yet. Yeah. I must do that. Do that. To do that but, um, <laughs> I think you can. I think I can. It's in the air, isn't it? On the way to. Oh, anyway. no, I can't, it's not, we don't physically have it. No, no so I can't do it. Yeah, it's, it's actually shipping on the way to NEB now, isn't yeah. it? Yes, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, It's already been shipped. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah we, we were very keen to get the um, to get all the update out and to get it all live ready for NAB because obviously we're going to be so proud showing it to the people there and uh, and we may even be doing some, some other uh, sort of live stuff as well. So um, really the key features that we've got for the camera to cloud uh, side that we've been talking about is uh, 
what we hope is a real game changer and i think something that you'll that will mean a lot to you because obviously you've been using it already as well as thousands of other people mm. is that as part of the new cloud uh, subscription tiers that we have uh, there is an opportunity there for anyone that's on on a on a paid plan and the paid plans literally start at five five dollars five euros a month is that you have what's called the progressive upload feature for camera to cloud so whereas before um up until this point you have to wait till you stop recording before that file starts to go up, uh, that proxy file starts to go up to Frame.io and then appears yeah. in your timeline. What we have with the progressive upload is that literally as you start recording, that clip is already going up in real time in chunks. Yeah. So yeah, that when good. you finish recording, you've literally got a tiny bit of the file to close off. And then really you're transferring cloud to cloud super, super quick between Atomos Cloud Studio and Adobe with, with Frame.io. So that changes the upload speed and to an, an immense improvements. I mean, you could be doing over an hour's take of a reasonable quality, a decent quality, and it could take less than two minutes to be on the timeline. Mm. Yeah, just turn around. Just yeah, you, you, yeah. You turn around of your final cut. Yeah. The editor's at it. So before you yeah. finish filming. Yeah. How long is it until we're going to be seeing some sort of five G encoder from Atomos to? tether this onto because i say that's the big yeah, issue isn't it that's answer, the big issue isn't it Interconnect, it's the the i mean we were tethered to my phone that fortunately yep. picked up a 5g signal um but obviously it's not ideal no it's, it's not ideal. we're, we're definitely we're, we're looking at different solutions but as you say people at the moment there's lots of options obviously we have ethernet and wi-fi in the products and yeah, we have course, yeah, yeah. really the best of breed wi-fi we have wi-fi 6 on our products as well and that at, at, at some point, we actually have a Wi-Fi 6E chipset as well, which we can we, we can update in the future. So, uh, as you say, people are getting on pretty well. Actually, the thousands of people that start using it already are using it with with their hotspots, yeah. and also with sort of uh, off the shelf sort of products in terms of gateways between 4G, 5G, LTE, and 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 Wi-Fi or Ethernet. But um, it it is an interesting one because obviously a lot of all of our products, um, the connected side of it is super important. So obviously that, yeah, that's definitely something we're, we're, we're looking at. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. and the other opportunity that the other sort of big enhancement actually with the camera to cloud thing is that we now on our paid plans have selectable bit rates. Whereas before you had a fixed bit rate, you can now choose depending on whichever plan you're on. You have a lot more flexibility in, in having a super high quality file which really in its true sense is not a proxy because actually a lot of people we're seeing now with camera to cloud are actually wanting to get a really high you know a, a pretty decent quality hd file up to edit to use on social to get out as, as you were doing to get out on yeah. mm. on, on a youtube channel or, or, or a digital platform and you're not really going into the traditional sort of proxy hero workflow you exactly, know and yeah. so yeah. to have that adjustable bit rate i think will, will, will be super good for those people as well actually Absolutely. yeah no, brilliant so it's where can we right. where can we find atomos at the show? Steps in central hall you did say that, yeah. yeah so it's the middle of Central Hall, so just down on the lower level of Central, but right at the top of it. Um, and it's, yes, yeah, C4135. And then we'll also be showing you all of the latest live production stuff where literally with the new Atomos Pro Camera app, which is an iOS app and an iPad, you could literally create a whole live production, polished live production with all of the components that you need all running virtually in the cloud. I've got that running behind me on this iPad. Wow, and okay. that is just incredible when you see that working for yourself. I'll have to drop by we'll and demo drop that. By. We, we will we drop by. We haven't got much time to spare. Huh? <laughs> we'll, we'll, make we'll, make we'll make time. We'll make time. Great. <laughs> Paul, thank you very much Paul. indeed. Great to see you, and we'll see Great. you in a few weeks in Vegas. Yeah, see you soon. Yeah, take Safe care. Trip. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah, bye. 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 Okay, so we're straight we're, on to a real, a real person, got another real in, person in the flesh. At last, yeah. Oscar from Emotion yeah. Systems. That's yeah. right. Yeah. How are you nice doing? Nice to meet you guys. Yeah. Thanks <laughs> for having Sorry me. Sorry to keep no. waiting. No, don't worry about it. Don't worry. Yeah. Too many interesting things. So there you go. Yeah. yeah. They keep, yeah they keep it's telling us. It's stuff. a conveyor belt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so I remember reading some ingest. Uh, news not so long ago from Emotion. That's and right, yeah. Yeah, so you're probably here to tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, yeah. A bit more about that. So what, NAB. Yeah, we, we we started showing this at IBC um, you know, last year. Um, it was very much in its sort of you know baby stage at this point. It's right. it's just pr progressed in sort of development, but it's really a tool for QC operators, sort of ingest operators, and there was we're aware that there's a challenge, you know, how do you verify sort of audio content mm, within yeah. within your files? You know, it's all it's all well and good being able to drag and drop it into, if you've got a big edit suite, brilliant, drag and drop your file into there. But what if, what if you don't? And what if it's too late? Mm. You're at the end of the chain. We need to verify if we've got muted channels in, in the audio. Um, 
And that can be a challenge as well because you could have encoded audio, uh, you know, your Dolby E's, your Dolby Digital, right. Digital Pluses. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you can't really do much. If you try, and, I'm sure people will be aware if they've done it before, if you try and drag this audio into, you know, something like Adobe, you'll just get a big fat square sort of line. And that's, that's a stereo, it looks like a stereo channel, but it's got your 5.1 in it. Mm -hmm. So how do we verify what's in our 5.1? We need something to decode it. We need something to play it out. We need to check the videos there, um, the metadata. So we've, we've built this big tool called Eve. Um, yeah. And in conjunction with our other softwares, um, we're primarily a loudness company. So mm. if you actually export some loudness data in an XML, you can put this into Eve and find out at what points in your file you're you know, breaking the loudness breaking parameters. And um, yeah. you can go over and see, oh, it's because of that explosion that we, we've gone over. So you could jump back in the edit suite at that point, or you could then loudness correct it with one of our softwares. So we've really sort of tried making a big suite of tools here okay. um, to so really who, address. Who, who do you want to turn up and invest? <laughs> well, in product? Is it, you know, is it the broadcaster or is it the post-production house or is it the, yeah. Well, we, we can, we've envisaged actually, you know, both broadcasters and post-production houses okay. using it. We, we think it's going to be useful, um, you know, let's say a post-production house is, is sending out some content and they just want to check they can't afford to get the content sent back to them at this point and, and edit it when a broadcaster tells them that you're out of tolerance. So it's going to be a really useful tool there um, before they send it to the broadcaster. And then, like I just said, the broadcaster is going to find it useful whether, so they can verify if the content's going to be rejected at QC or, or allowed to play out. Mm. Um, so and it uh, takes the form of a hardware box? No, this is, this is a software, software um, product. Um, but on top, of our, on, on top of our development with Eve, we've also been working on... Um, an immersive sort of upmix, so you can take any stereo file and, and take it to one of these immersive formats, sort of 9.1.6, yep. 7.1.4, and create sort of a, a synthetic immersive environment with your overhead speakers and, and your, your rear overhead speakers, front overheads. Um, so yeah, there's been a lot of work going on, but that's mm. going to be based in engine. So um, the use case there is if, let's say, you, you're broadcasting live sport how do you make it so that your content isn't you know it's not jarring when you cut between an immersive yeah, mix yeah, and live yeah, sports yeah, yeah. and suddenly your stereo commercials yeah. so you know it's going to be perfect for broadcasters who want to up mix mm. a bulk of sort of short form content just run it through an automated process and create the right immersive output that you need and these brokers that i guess they get involved with the sort of emotion family of products and yeah. they release whatever they need exactly you know and then build support as well so any further releases because yeah this is just an update to engine but we can imagine previous sort of customers are going to have a real fun time working um adjusting mm -hmm. the settings and getting their their right sort of immersive formats that that they want to create mm. so yeah a lot of lot of work going on here and we, yeah we can't really wait to show mm. it nap actually yeah yeah in terms of loudness is it you for a broadcaster you fit and you forget it or is it a continually evolving process where you're having to continually either meet new regulations or the new products so uh, definitely at the start of the sort of the the loudness wasn't really a thing, let's say, mm. 20 years ago. Mm. Um, and then between that time, there has been sort of an agreed set of standards that, um, you know, Europe's EBU R128, Australia OP59. And so a lot of these broadcasters try and fit with those things. Mm. Uh, but if, if you're a broadcaster and you're, grab, you're getting content sent from America, which has a different loudness style than to the one in Europe, you know, how can you then make sure mm. in bulk you can just correct this content to the correct loudness standard for right. your local area um, and that's where we really jump in um, yeah. so we, we, we engine is, is a great example it's not just loudness we, we do audio processing for content delivery so that encompasses a lot of things like the immersive up mix i was saying you know then there's pitch correction a bunch of other tools as yeah. well. Mm. Um, and so demonstrating this or experiencing it on the booth yeah is, is that an easy I mean, when, when it's an automated workflow, it's it's hard. But um, <laughs> luckily, problem. with Eve, you know, when, when you can import this loudest data into Eve, you, there's a bunch of loudest meters, and um, you know, on the right hand side of the software, telling you where you're passing. So that's a lot vi more we, visual. We <laughs> yeah, can, it's a lot more visual. Yeah, yeah. And, and you'll be able to sort of interpret what we do because of that, I imagine. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Um, Looking Fantastic. forward to showing it, yeah. Where Five minutes goes so quickly, yeah. doesn't it? <laughs> we, we could talk all day. Where are going to be? N2868. Yeah, eight. in the great, that, great British Pavilion. In the Pavilion. Yeah. 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 We are. Oscar, thank you very much well, for coming well, in. Thank you for having me. It's great to see thank you. you. And uh, we'll see you Hang in Vegas. Hang yes. on a minute. <laughs> oh, yeah. right. Stay there, because you've got to unplug. I certainly do. You can go now, though. Brilliant. Brilliant. That's fantastic. Again, it's frustrating when you've only got a few minutes, isn't it? It is. It is. For a subject that, frankly, doesn't sound exciting... 
It actually is really interesting. It didn't, yeah, it's um, really important. Yeah, yeah, I see. So now we're chatting to yeah, Andrew Wolf from Synergy is yeah. coming on. Um, and we're just waiting for him to connect. And I think we'll be talking about um, their product well, range. Well, not Lewis. I don't know what he's done with Lewis. There's going to be trouble. There's going to be trouble, I'm sure. Is it? <laughs> Hello, Andrew. Are we well today? We are well, yes. Very well indeed. Right. So are you looking forward to NAB? Ah, uh, as always, uh, this is going to be, I think, the 20th uh, NAB that Synergy has attended. Okay. Although I haven't been with all of them. And, uh, you know, always the same, always different. There's uh, a good chance for us always to meet up with the partners and and also see what everybody else is up to. And, uh, you yeah. know, it'd be, be nice if it was somewhere else, but Las Vegas. <laughs> so <laughs> what, what can we expect um, in terms of new features from Synergy's product range for uh, remote and cloud operation? Okay, well, they, there are various different things. Um, initially, one of the biggest things for, for uh, uh, cloud operation is our move towards a uh, cloud native synergy operation, which is something that we're taking plenty of time to get right. Okay. Uh, but it will mean rather than the old cloud model of uh, basically VMs somewhere else, uh, you have a proper cloud connection with uh, a cloud aware uh, client and using all the good stuff. Uh, so that's very much something that we'll be uh, talking a lot about. We have the new flavours of our Capture and Air product. Uh, Air has recently been uh, enhanced with uh, Kantar audience measurement, which is something that's becoming more and more popular. That's the, the, the big feature on that one. <clears throat> Furthermore, yeah. as ever, we'll be showing off the multi viewer, which uh, always gets a lot of attention and even wins prizes every now and again at an yeah. <laughs> Um And uh, uh, then there will also be um, our new graphic system to go with our playout, which is called uh, Title. Uh, the reason being that everything else was a, a definitive noun and only Title was like a description, so we changed it to Title. But it also reflects the fact that there's a whole bunch of new code, new functionality. Um, uh, we have a new graphics expert on board who's been uh, re rejigging it for us. Uh, so this version of title that we'll be showing has the first of these benefits, and there'll be many more of those coming as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the, the, the full product palette. Uh, mm -hmm. And crucially also, we'll be talking a lot about how we use SRT. Uh, we think that right. SRT uh, is a, a major game changer. We've been thinking that since we got involved, and we got involved like half a dozen years ago. But we're starting to see more and more that people are wising up to what it can do and what it can mean for things like contribution and distribution. And since we have it right. uh, running through our, our software, like lettering through Brighton Rock, <laughs> uh, uh, both for inputs, outputs, and indeed we use it internally as well, we think it's that good. So we, we expect to be talking a lot more about SRT this year. I think that that's going to be uh, uh, becoming more and more of a hot topic. Mm. And then finally, the uh, always as always with our stuff, the, the bleeding edge that we like to occupy. So we will again be showing off uh, 8K, uh, given that we can produce end-to-end -end in 8K now and have been able to for, for some years. Um, of course, in order for that to happen, it has to be widely embraced. As of right now, we don't see 8K as a broadcast format in the immediate future. Um, even if the televisions are being sold in the uh, mega stores around the world, but what we do see is the old classic uh, downer res for production. In other words, producing 8K to do UHD. Yeah. Uh, so we're sticking with it. We still believe in it, and uh, and we've made it work throughout our, our workflow. So yeah. that's uh, that's what we'll be showing off this year. Fantastic. Yeah, I don't think you're, the, you're not the only people that still believe a little bit in 8K. Well, it, it seems, to be honest, it off. seems that Synergy have Bubbling been into there. 8K for years now, because I do remember yes, going to an NAB or an IBC and seeing an 8K screen, well, a few years ago now, and it was like, wow. And, um, Indeed. It's, yes, it, it, that's true. Uh, one of the issues that you have to deal with 8K is, of course, uh, as 
previously with UHD uh, is another level as far as uh, bandwidth and infrastructure yeah, goes. Of course, yeah. Um, and also you're going to want to have a choice of of, of hardware to use, uh, cameras, etc. Right now the, the, the selection is still pretty small. Yeah. Mm. Um, so, yeah, there are some practical hurdles to overcome. We have our Daniel 2 codec. That's what made our 8K demos possible. Uh, and Daniel 2 solves a lot of 8K problems uh, of different kinds. Uh, uh, support of LUTs, for example, allows the, the funny colour things that happen when you get up into super high resolution. Yeah. We, can, we can work on those. And, um, and generally the transportation of the signals and the storing of the signals, uh, uh, Daniel 2 can, can be a great help with that. So uh, we, we've already shown uh, 8K end-to-end capturing one end, play out the other end. And uh, as I say, we we do see this coming forward, but crucially in our MAM area and in our uh, Synergy desktop production tools, uh, that's where we think that uh, there's, there's going to be the most immediate need for it. Cool. Where can we find Synergy um, at NAB, Andrew? We are in the North Hall this year, and uh, like an imbecile, I've completely forgotten our number. But, that's right, uh, we've got it written down. Yeah, it, was, it, it would have been a perfect stand last year. It's 2022? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, no, last last year we were uh, um, we did a sort of a, a um, commando trip. <laughs> Just a handful of us, um, a quickly assembled stand. We didn't know what to expect. No. Of course, it was very much smaller last year. Yeah. Um, but it worked out okay. Yeah. You know, the, but... the old thing with. Uh, uh, being near the toilets and the food never hurts. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to draw visitors, I know exactly uh, where you are now. Well yeah, I know exactly where you yeah. are. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So that's um, it's not our usual South Hall haunt. It's uh, something else. Yeah. Probably won't be the same size as um, previously. No. But uh, no, um, we're looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we we're looking forward to seeing you there. We are indeed looking forward to it. Thank you, Andrew. We uh, yeah, safe travels over to Vegas. Nice See you guys. in a few weeks. Yeah. See you over there. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye And now uh, we're we've on got to Roger. Roger from Next Edition, um, who's just coming on. Once we once Andrew's disconnected, he has. I mean, yeah. yeah. It's about the third time so far that we've been right. It's Adam. No, 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 it's Roger. Adam. No, 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 it's Roger. <laughs> definitely so, Roger. Uh, um, it's definitely Roger. And I'd have been disappointed if he hadn't been on the set that people are about to see. Roger, how are you doing? Hello, guys. Great. Well, Adam is not here. He's actually in the DPP thing in Berlin. Oh, okay. So uh, okay. I'm, uh, I'm the second best, so let's... Uh, <laughs> Let's hope it, uh, it, so, it will, will be okay. So, so is sure. this, how are you guys? Yeah, pretty good. Good, pretty good thank you. Is this, uh, is this Next Edition's first NAB or your first NAB? Uh, well, for as an exhibitor, it will be the first for us. Uh, okay. Me, myself, uh, I've been there once before. And so we, it's going to be really interesting to see what, uh, what this year will, will bring us. So well, it's, it's actually, it's a, yeah, it's a valid point. What? See, every every show has a has a, a theme. You've been doing shows for a long time. Every show yeah. has a theme. Now, so, you know, if you're coming home, what what would you like the the narrative of the show to have been for that, that would fall into your lap? You know, what 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 do you want to get from uh, from this year's NAB show? Well, let let me dream away a little bit. Uh, <laughs> let me see if I'm sitting at the airplane um, back from uh, to Sweden, I would hope that the narrative would be about change it that, changes that significantly has an impact on the broadcast organization and less about how should I put it, cool features or minor, minor superficial impacts. I mean, I would love to hear or that CTOs are bragging about beating the competitors to be the first notification on the phone, for example. That would be lovely. Right. And uh, or after reporting uh, the breaking news situation or uh, on a on a, a goal in a sporting event or something like that, because that is about efficiency and productivity, and that's what next edition is more or less all about. Mm. And can we expect new features from the next edition platform? Um, an offering at NAB? Yes, that we, we will show some uh, things as well, of course, with uh, ChatGPT and uh, all of that that everybody else will do. And also 
some extra features from uh, our next editor that has been L next edit that's been uh, quite popular because uh, yeah um, I mean a simple journalistic tool so to speak to 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 uh, to use the, the editor that's that's one of examples for sure but in general I would say that I hope really that the discussion will be more about things that hasn't big impact and I think I may I, if I may go back to this efficiency or productivity theme yeah. that I'm more or less married to I would say that in other in other businesses or industries I would say that's the most important KPI that you are always focused on and I believe I'm a, I, I would say I'm a new newbie within the broadcast industry I've only been in seven years but it still okay. strikes me that it's so little discussion about efficiency and productivity and especially in this day and age I would say it's even more important I, you know rising inflation and we can see budgets are I mean huge budget costs etc and I think it's going to be even important to how how can you speed up things that's that's what I believe. Well, I think you're learning be important. Yeah, yes. how immovable some broadcast engineers and broadcast people, people who are uh, traditional broadcast workflows, how hard it is to change them. But change is there, actually, it is happening now. And, uh, yes. People are changing. People are, well, thanks to the, the well, As soon as they see a benefit, there's, there's a need to change, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. There really and is also, I can, I can just say that we, I mean, if I can ask you guys, if you were a broadcaster, for example, and had a traditional setup, and I call you and I say, well, with the next edition workflow, I can double your productivity, and I can also cut your cost in half. What would you say about that? Well, yeah, there you, you go. You need to chat to John. He's not going to be very happy if it'll be, <laughs> be half his wages. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, we don't pay him, do we? So, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, no, what I mean, then you can focus on other things, what I mean. It's just not about uh, that. Yeah. So you can, but just double productivity. I mean, that's quite amazing. I mean, the, what things you can do. So I think there's uh, opportunities here that we should definitely yeah. use. Not be scared of the what, what you are discussing a little bit of yeah. cutting uh, people off and I'm, that's not the discussion here I mean there's other things that we can do uh, that is really impressive I would say what we yeah. can do yeah, yeah so you've always been quite good at actually having a demonstration as well because again you know with a lot of these uh, cloud solutions it, it's, it's actually quite difficult to really demonstrate to show what it is it's yes. just sit down on a computer screen but you've always been quite good at, at doing a demo have you got you know what's going to attract people to the next edition stand I think that they just can, I mean, just uh, come by and they can just try it out for themselves, for example, to use the script, how easy it is to actually tell a story, uh, how you get information in quickly, for example, by one of the features that's called virtual assets, for example, that we have yeah. uh, IP, IP, API um, direct to, for example, um, Reuters, and you can get that content immediately and you can start making a story. And we can make that story together with uh, the, with the visitors and they can just see how it how much it makes sense. And as I said to you guys before, we more or less w w are, are aiming for eradicating all the headaches that you usually have in a traditional broadcast setup. And I think we yeah. can show that definitely at their stand as well. Fantastic. Right. Brilliant. We've we're out of time or unfortunately. So, so where are we sending them? Central Hall? Eighteen nineteen. Correct, guys. And if you are, please come by and I will have I have some Swedish candy for you as well if you want to that's, that's we'll be there. definitely a reason to visit Central Hall. <laughs> yeah. Yes, definitely. How about uh, Swedish really, meatballs? Really salty, oh, meatballs yeah. Swedish no, meatballs. not this time. Maybe next year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Roger, thank you very much indeed. Send our regards to Adam and we'll see you both, I'm definitely. sure, in Always Vegas. Always a pleasure, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Cheers. So, um, I'm expecting, uh, we don't know. We don't, we don't know what's going on. Do we? I mean, no. we'll be the last to know. We, I reckon Sunil. Sunil from the... Edit Share is coming on. So we just need um, Roger to disconnect and everything will be lovely. Yeah. And we'll find out if Sunil's got orange shoes on. Um, I think Roger will disconnect in a minute. Roger will disconnect, yeah, once he knows he's finished. <laughs> <laughs> Someone will disconnect. <laughs> there he is. Hi, Sunil. How are you doing? Good. How are you guys doing today? Very good. good thank good, you. Good, Very good. Good, good. Good. So straight on, we are way behind time. It's not your fault. Apologies, and thank you for waiting. <laughs> uh, That's okay. For once, I'll accept that something is not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> NAB, a couple of weeks away. What can we look forward to from Medicare? 
Uh, yeah. So um, we've tried to sprinkle in a little bit of magic, I think, for a couple of the different personas that use our stuff on a regular basis. So I think, you know, in no particular order, um, you know, for the IT pros, uh, oftentimes that we're uh, that we're working with, uh, we've been doing quite a bit of work on uh, security as well as in our um, what we call our multi-site architecture, which allows you to synchronize content between multiple on-prem locations or on-prem and, and in the cloud. Um, we've also been doing a lot of work on our integrations with um, with our NLE partners, in particular. Uh, this release, we've got a lot of improvements to our uh, Adobe Premiere panel. Um, you know, sort of designed for making the you know the everyday, uh, the little everyday things a little bit nicer. Um, and then uh, we continue to do you know sort of a lot of um, um, a lot of innovative work on um, unifying the the user experience of, uh, across our platform. So trying as people are working across multiple locations, trying to give them a continued feel of a single pane of glass that they can work from. Mm. Brilliant. So, um, I, I also, I mean, I, yeah, Cinedec. I, 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 I was thinking there in my mind, and you caught me off off guard a bit there because he was. Uh, we were talking to him earlier about his integration with. with, with yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we've um, so you know one of the sort of tenants here at EditShare has been yeah. um, has been avoiding building sort of walled gardens right within our experience and working pretty closely with uh, with partners that can bring you know best of breed solutions in there. And uh, on the on the Cinedex side, you know, uh, folks that we've been partnered with for for quite a while now, um, we've been working with them to integrate their live capture solutions into our flow asset management solutions. You know, they got some really nice um, uh, advantages uh, to, to to come to market, uh, especially in the areas of uh, of some 4K, some advanced codecs, as well as uh, edit while capture uh, workflows as well, allowing you to really turn around uh, some of that uh, those those live reality multicam workflows uh, pretty quickly with their asset, uh, uh, excuse me, with their capture solution in combination with our flow asset management system. So mm. uh, uh, the most important thing, uh, are you all going to be wearing your orange shoes? Absolutely. Uh, We've had to diversify our supply chain a little bit. Uh, <laughs> some of us will have uh, Converse chucks and some of us will have vans, but everybody's used to, you know, uh, working with different suppliers these days. So yeah. we definitely we'll have the orange shoes. May just be a, a, a few different uh, vendors uh, sprinkled in the mix this year. Cool. And where can we see those fine. shoes? And so, no, which which booth are you on? Uh, we are in. That's a very good question. And one that if I was a, a proper uh, marketing cool. person, I would be able to tell you off the top of my zero. head. So I'm going to tell you right now, since it's should conveniently be in my signature. Uh, it is. It is booth N2100. Fantastic. Good yeah. stuff. Well, uh, we are well. we are spending time on your booth as well, chatting yeah. to the team. So we're looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, catching up more and it'll be in a few weeks' time. I imagine we'll yeah, we'll see you guys day live. Day. I think uh, I think we're looking forward to uh, an even bigger presence than there was uh, than there was last year. Our sales team's pretty excited, so uh, so Brilliant. we'll see everybody there. Excellent. Before Thanks for your time. There. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 So so we're going to Daniel, Daniel from Internor now. Oh, Daniel um, Yeah, Daniel. Are we back Daniel? to Sweden again? Sweden, isn't it? Norway. Norway. So, God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's in Norway. Now I'm going to look. Yeah, no, they are, uh, yeah. and um, they, yeah, connecting uh, direct links. Direct um, links, indeed. Yep. Ah, right. It looks like he's in. There Hi, he Daniel. How you doing? Hi, Daniel. Hey guys, I'm doing well. Uh, it's all good here in the the northern parts of Sweden. So Sweden. I, I told you it was Sweden. I told you it was Sweden. Now I'm silly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But you didn't you didn't mix it up with Switzerland, right? No, 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 no you're okay. No, okay, don't you do that. <laughs> um, we were in the right part so of the world. So how are you guys doing? <laughs> yeah, no, we're, we, okay. we're good. We we are running behind time, so thanks for sticking with us. Um, no worries. So you course, had a long day. We're talking NAB, Daniel. So bring us up to speed on what Something people can new. expect. NAB show. <laughs> of course. Uh, yeah, excited to to once again head to NAB. Uh, we uh, will focus on a lot of the, the solutions we are known for uh, on the, the back wall here with uh, remote production solutions for esports, uh, network bonding. Um, yeah. We have our proprietary transport protocol, Bifrost, with uh, 
uh, network bonding, receiver bonding, error correction, and so on. Uh, we also have support for SRT and RIST. So we talk a lot about interoperability and, and having the ability to, to send and receive from different encoders, decoders, um, being able to open up the, the IP workflow for, uh, for broadcasters. So uh, that's what we will focus on. Uh, we do a lot of yeah, a lot of work on that. I mean, uh, so. did, did I hear a rumor that there's going to be, I mean, maybe you've had this already, but there's going to be a backpack version. Oh, sorry, did I beat you to, well done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, we've had a backpack uh, for cellular bonding for a while, but okay. uh, we will uh, kind of showcase the new one. Um, so this is uh, our cellular bonding small version backpack right. uh, one camera return video vpn for for uh, remotely controlling cameras return audio all of those fancy things uh so we're eager to to showcase this and and to to get some some good input from from our visitors Anything uh, you need. um yeah and so when did you launch the backpack just out of interest because I, I i'm gonna i'm gonna hold my head in shame and so I, I've always thought about you rack mount products so uh, uh, when, when did you when did the backpack launch so we have we have one version that's built on the uh, on a easy rig uh, vest yeah uh, so we've had that for a couple of years uh, but then um, now it's been kind of six months with uh, kind of trial and errors and and all the the things that are are good with the hardware development uh, so we've done that and uh, uh, now we feel ready to to kind of push this out and we have some customers that have tried them and and are happy with them so um this will be the the first expo we we kind of showcase it for real uh yeah. it's been with us for i would say six months or something but but uh yeah like you know hardware uh, there's yeah. always tweaks to be yeah. done <laughs> so is there a is there a standout product from Intenor at NAB this year? Is there something that people have to see? Like, um, I would say, like, this giveaway is pretty cool. <laughs> Go on, it's tell, a us more, tell us more. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a fidget hammer. spinner hammer, so everybody needs to swing by and get your hammer, of course. Uh, uh, okay. I, I, we'll have to pick <laughs> one up for John. Uh, but other than that, uh, come by. <laughs> Get um, your weight and package yeah. weight and all that. Yeah. We, we yeah. always uh, we always play on the wording with uh, sweet Sweden and Switzerland uh, that we have the <laughs> Swedish army knife for encoding <laughs> decoding. So um, so swing by and and get your hammer and look at what we're doing. And uh, uh, we will be in um, the West Hall, uh, twenty eight seventy nine. Uh, so um, and also attend the. Uh, JBNA pre-show that will be at the Sahara Hotel. Uh, so that will be on on Friday and Saturday. Fantastic, uh, cool, Daniel. And, thank you very much. Always a pleasure to talk, talk to you. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll see you. We'll, we'll see you in Hall. Vegas, West Hall, twenty eight seventy nine. See you in Vegas, guys. Thanks okay. very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank Bye-bye. you. And now we're talking to Steve a, Connolly the, the from IBC. Anniversary as well, IBC. And it seems a bit weird talking for someone from IBC when we talk about NAB. But um, and I think actually Steve's in India at the moment, but we, I'm sure he'll, he'll fill us in on what he's doing at NAB and what's going on. Why so uh, we're just connecting uh, him across and um, we shall see. But yeah, we'll have to go and get uh, the, 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 the Thor's hammer. Um, West Hall, wasn't it? West Hall. West Hall. Yeah. Uh, well, we're going to have to go and get one for John, as you said. Well, he's, already, but, he's, he's got two, he said. He's got two. That's oh, really? That's, that's well, there you go. You should one bust. each. One each, yeah. yeah. If he's not yep. looking in his toolbox later, we'll have those. Yeah, um, and but we will. Uh, uh, yeah, we we will uh, be singing to know, I'm sure. And okay. Steve is here. Hello, Steve. Hi guys, how are you doing? Yeah, very good, thank you. Very good. Where in the world are you, Steve? <laughs> uh, that's a good, a good point. I forget myself sometimes. Yeah. Um, currently in Delhi. Okay. Um, at the uh, Convergence India show. Oh, cool. Okay. So. Thank, firstly, thank you for joining us. We are running a bit late, so we've lost track of time, as I'm sure time zones you have as well. Um, yeah, no problem. I had my time got mixed up anyway. So, no, no uh, worries yeah, at all. Sure no you worries. guys are doing an amazing job. Thank you. Um, NAB, we're all heading over there in a few weeks' time. Uh, you're going as well, I think. Uh, yes. What are your your plans for IBC at NAB? 
Yeah, so anyway, it's always been a very important show uh, for IBC. Um, obviously, a good time of the year um, in our kind of sales cycle, I suppose. But we're, we're going really threefold. So obviously, see as many customers as possible. Uh, we've got over 350 exhibitors um, at NAB in two weeks. So seeing as many of those as possible, getting feedback, giving them updates on the progress of the show is obviously uh, the priority. Um, but we also, <clears throat> from our marketing point of view, um, setting up or finalizing existing media partnerships and looking for, for new media partnerships as well to obviously give as much profile to exhibitors and stakeholders as possible. Mm. And uh, and lastly, looking to uh, generate content from, um, from 365. Yeah, or full three six five. So we'll be producing content on a daily basis that will be up on three six five. Cool. What what type of content can people expect to see? Is it news releases, reports, or videos? What sort of thing could people expect to see? Um, the, the main objective, really, I'm, we're still finalising the exact plan, but the main objective really is to give coverage and get profile for, for our exhibitors, our customers. So finding out what they're doing, what their latest product launches are, why they're at NAB, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, it was be uh, as much about profiling our, our customers as much as possible. Cool. Sounds good. Brilliant. And, and if people and... feel like they want to engage with you, at, 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 you know, that you may not be, uh, uh, you know, engaged with at the moment, um, uh, how... how uh, yeah, where do people find you? I mean, you're going to be moving around, speaking to people a lot, but how do people get in touch to say, I'm going to catch up with you at, at NAB show? Yeah, it's a good point. So um, we have a meeting room on the show floor. Uh, so I think we're in the North Hall um, this year. So it's uh, N3103 for anyone with quick fingers or a pen to hand. Um, as you say, we'll be mostly kind of running around and seeing people on their stands where it's easier for them to, to kind of have, have the meetings. Um, but we'll be sending out messaging before as well. So anyone who wants to kind of drop in or uh, reach out to us for a meeting or a catch up, um, then uh, we'll, we'll make sure we see them as well. Yeah, Fantastic. Well, we're sure to see you over at the show in Enjoy the rest of your time you've got in uh, New Delhi. And, thank you very much. Uh, and yeah. Thanks for joining us. And Sorry for being a bit rushed on this Goodness case. knows yeah. no worries what no time your head is going to be by the time you get home from Delhi to Vegas. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? <laughs> I, know, I know. Well, uh, yeah, if you see me sleeping in a corner in Vegas, you'll know why. But, um, yeah, thanks very much <laughs> yeah, for your time, guys. Yeah. No problem. Take care, Steve. See you. See you soon. Thanks now. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye now. Bye. So we've got Fabio, Fabio now from 4A. We've spoken to Fabio, Fabio on a number of times, haven't we? Virtually and in person at IBC and various shows. Yeah, absolutely. Fabio, and, welcome uh, to the show. Here. Hello. Good afternoon. Hello. Hello nice Fabio. to see you. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing very good. Uh, what about you? Yeah, we're good, thank you. Um, so what are you featuring this year at NAB? Well, uh, as always, for us brings uh, very exciting news to the show, mm-hmm. and um, a couple of highlights uh, uh, will be over the remote production. Um, okay. We will be introducing uh, Sora, which is a platform that allow basically uh, to um, the. Um, it will allow to remote manage an event, to move the signals over the network, uh, to monitor it, to control it, to stream it uh, uh, over the RISTA technology. And this will be uh, showcased uh, in, in our booth uh, in NAB. And uh, another big point uh, we are introducing in, uh, in, in NAB is uh, the new video switcher, the HVS190. It's going to be dedicated uh, to the entry level uh, uh, production because it's one mix effect uh, video switcher, but it will be powerful uh, uh, like uh, a very big switcher. It allows to be remotely controlled uh, so you can manage the event uh, uh, remotely. It will embed uh, PTZ camera control. Uh, so the switcher will allow you to manage your camera in the network, to move them and to be part of the switcher, part of the memory system of the switcher. Uh, one, uh, one other uh, uh, very nice features will be the NDI support. So it will, uh, will allow mixed SDI and NDI workflows. And uh, uh, also the possibility to internally convert and route uh, from uh, IP to NDI, and then it will be rich of features as all our uh, uh, video switches in, in the line, uh, multi-viewers, keyers, yeah. uh, TV with rotation, all the, all the uh, standard functionality we have uh, in the other products. Cool. And you're going to be featuring this Saw A live 
production suite as well, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. we will uh, we will showcase in uh, in our booth, and uh, so you can see live in action uh, if you visit uh, for a in NAB. Mm. Yeah, so I mean NDI SRT. You're mentioning a lot, a lot you know, sort of your uh, um, uh, in, including technologies. You know, NDI is a big thing for you. You know, you you are rolling out across the range, so to speak. Uh, in generally, yes, um, we see a grow demanding uh, for a mixed environment. Uh, so not only not anymore any longer only SDI, but all this. Uh, this uh, other uh, format uh, streams uh, yeah. uh, that the video production requires so we are uh, we are adding that to our uh, to our yeah. current equipment as well is including in the new one and uh, it's going to be very exciting to showcase uh, all this new functionality because of course we are over ip and not only over sdi and all together we will make our our yeah. work Fantastic. And are you in the usual space in uh, uh, in Central Hall? Where do we find you? Yep, uh, we will be in the booth uh, number C4507. See you there. Yeah. Fantastic. Fabio, Thank looking forward for to it. We'll in. see you there. And I think we're actually spending time on Fabio's booth talking to him as well. So we'll... we'll I hope so, yeah. yeah. We'll yeah. see you there, Fabio. Take okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right. Okay, now we're, we're getting all virtual now and with uh, Moses, well, I think. We're going to be chatting to Stephen Gallagher Green. from Moses Engineering uh, coming up next. Um, um, yeah, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You can go to kitplus.com as well and you can search for any manufacturer and come up with the videos we've shot with them, news about them, any articles, even any kit for sale that people might be selling with that name on it. So do check out the new website, kitplus.com. Absolutely, yeah. It's been a bit of a labour of love, isn't it? It's, yeah. <laughs> More for you. Thank you. Um, but it's been relatively seamless, but it is, uh, it, it is working now. So we've seen quite, quite, quite a few people today. I mean, have you... No, I, I'm a lot, I think I've noticed a theme, but have you noticed a theme that everyone, everyone's been talking well, about? Apart from West Hall. Apart from West Hall, <laughs> but uh, yeah. North. Well, do you know, it's nice that everything's not a cloud something or other. I, not everything. I, I yeah. do remember particularly during COVID, it was cloud, 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 cloud. Yeah, yeah. At least um, we we sort of talk about some hardware products, which is quite interesting yeah. as well. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, well, it's becoming much more of a hybrid world. Right. Indeed. Okay. Stephen Gallagher, welcome to the show from Moses. How are you doing? I'm, I'm good, guys. Nice to see you. Yeah, very nice to see you yeah. too. Yeah. Good. So... I'm sure you've got a very hectic schedule for NAB. Tell us all well, about it. We're doing it in true Morse's style. <laughs> he says it in a very weary voice. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of getting to that. Yeah. It's getting to that stage now of the prep, isn't it? Like you've you've kind of it, you're almost out of energy. I'm going to go and spend a few days in the lakes to kind of recharge yeah. in, in a few days' time. So, That's a yeah. good idea. Yeah. So before so, yeah. you do that, tell us all about Moses at NAB. All right, so we've got a ton of things going on. Um, I think we're going to be on something like eight stands. Um, <laughs> eight stands, right, okay. Eight stands. So most of technology. I, I heard Let's just go about, through everyone in detail. Let's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. As, I, uh, yeah, as I was waiting to join you guys, I heard you talking about a theme. And I think Central Hall, the theme has got to be virtual production this year, hasn't it? Um, we yeah. are going to be all over the place within Central Hall uh, with virtual, virtual solutions. Um, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So... I guess the, the main thing I need to let you know about is on our own stand, we've got something that's pretty unique and I hope is going to prove to be really interesting. And that is, you know, we run the Virtual Production Academy mm -hmm. where we yep. train students and get them hands-on experience. Well, we've got some graduates of the Academy who are going to be running a, a an audience-led interactive virtual production on oh, our wow. stand. Right. Wow, well, impressive. So there's an opportunity for people to get up onto the booth take part in a virtual production and hopefully leave with a really unique souvenir. Um, wow. So I think that's going to be nice. as well. Yeah. And um, and also they're going to get um, the opportunity to see all of the robotics that Moses is well known for. So I guess that's, that's our stand in Central Hall. The other big one is LG. We've got a really close partnership with LG that's developed over recent months. Okay. And, um, We've got some exciting stuff happening on their booth. We're going to be showing BMR, which is one of our new products. It's the first time anyone's going to see it in action. 
And it's a product that um, combines uh, set extensions with multi-camera switching um, and data fed graphics. Okay. So this is a, a real big development for, for Moses. So anyone that's interested in that can come down and see us on the LG booth, uh, where they'll also get to see the more real. I think I've talked to you guys before about the more rail. Mm. Well, the more rails are a robotic rail where we can get a nice controlled parallax movement around a presenter. Might be handy for you guys doing this. Um, <laughs> Anything you, that makes our life easier, yeah, Stephen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'll um, I'll not. We would be here till midnight if I told you the everything on all of the stands. But um, that's the that's the headline act. And if anyone yeah. would like to know more, then please come check us out. And, yeah. Uh, I mean, as far I guess probably one of the things to do is to come to even though you you know you've got partners you're working with, uh, is to come to you first and then uh, the discussions will lead on to where you send them uh, yeah. so where do we send them to find you all right Central. So to find, yeah to find me um come and see us in central hall and we are on stand 3325 cool i think the moses academy i mean we we partnered with Moses last year for the three Kipper shows, yeah. offering the taster sessions, which yeah. were really well attended, I think. And uh, I think that's really because I think a lot of people we've spoken to today, it's the education, the, the skills gap and so skills on. Gap. So addressing that, I think, for our industry is 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 a great investment yeah. for all of us. And the, do you know, the Academy just goes from strength to strength to strength. We've um, everything that you've seen us doing in London and within your shows as those taster sessions have been really successful. And in the last few months, we've expanded it to our LA facility. Oh, okay, good. So, so we've got a team out yes. there now who who are delivering the courses. And and I guess as we go, it keeps on fine tuning. Um, and like I said to you guys before, just to kind of to kind of flag to everyone that might be watching, the courses are all all based around a small group and it's hands-on practical learning. Mm. So there's no sitting down in front of a TV screen or a monitor and doing you know, there's no textbooks really. It's it's really getting it. getting up, up close and personal, getting on with it. Yeah, yeah. and you're learning from. You know, we've, we're looking that we've got some amazing tutors who are incredibly experienced, well connected, and they come from and they're still actively working on projects for likes of Netflix. Yeah. Um, so these guys are, you know, you're learning from people that are, are really at the at the top of the game in this space. Yeah, I think that's really? a very important approach, isn't it, for yeah. those that don't necessarily learn through textbooks and there's a lot of us that don't learn through textbooks I learn by doing and seeing yeah, yeah, um, quite. and I think uh, that's, that's great Stephen we, as you say we could talk to midnight we can't so it's goodbye from us we will see <laughs> we you, will see you there, <laughs> we'll see you in yeah. Las Vegas yeah. safe yeah. travels and thank see you for joining us yeah, hope cheers <laughs> take care well. yeah. bye bye see you soon bye bye yeah. Yeah. right so next up have we got sorry I didn't see I didn't hear Russell, who was. Russell from the Hitomi Cool. Hope this so, is, uh, in sync. No pressure on John, but if yeah. this lip syncs out, we're in trouble. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> Russell, hi. Russell, how are you there doing? You go. I'm good. Thank you very much. Nice to see you guys. Nice to see you too. See you. I'm liking the set behind you. Is yeah, good. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it it so, looks like you're you know about what to I'm give us a demo. About. <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah. we know what you're going to talk about. Russell, talk to us about lip sync. Off you go. <laughs> okay. And almost anybody who works in the world of live broadcast will recognize this test pattern. So this is the Hitomi matchbox circle and flash that you'll probably see in every gallery when there's a major sporting event going on. So if you take something like a tennis tournament or something like that, before the actual tennis action starts, this signal is sent around the world for anybody who's taking the feed. And it's used for timing. It's so that anybody who's taking that world feed can check the timing that's being sent to them. It's for lip sync, and it's also for measuring video to video timing and yep. audio to audio timing. It's uh, well accepted, as you, as, as you know, but uh, what's probably something that some people haven't seen is the QR code on the corner there. That's on by default now, and it allows people to measure the latency, the actual time of flight of the video signal from where it started to whoever's gonna measure it. Matchbox is a two-part solution, this silver box down here. You have the generator, which is putting out the test pattern, and then you have our analyzer at the other end, which is looking and listening for it. The difference between what it's expecting and what it actually gets is a measurement. It's as simple as that. But we've got something else that's new for NAB, which uh, is rather exciting. Yeah. We are 
In addition to having uh, our test patterns available on the wired version and also the Matchbox Glass app, which measures from in front of the camera, we're going to launch a cloud service. Mm -hmm. Hitomi in the cloud. <laughs> okay. And it's an addition. It, it's not by any means a replacement for the Matchbox itself. Matchbox yeah. is a piece of dedicated hardware which is extremely accurate, completely real time. And if you're doing live broadcasts, you still need one of those. The cloud service is for people who are doing things like streaming and they want to check the timing in the middle or they want to check it across lots of nodes. One thing that you can't do with Matchbox very easily is to check, say, a thousand devices all at the same time. But with the new cloud service, you can. It's going to be a file-based approach so that people record a little clip, send it off to the Hitomi measurement service, and then they get the lip sync reading back. Okay. It's pretty new. Yeah. So um, we haven't set up the, uh, the, the structure for the pricing and what the breaks are, but we really want to demonstrate it to people, and we've had a lot of interest already. And so if people is that do want service... to have a demonstration, they should book with it. Just to interrupt you there, so is that a service that you've developed because you've been asked for it or you've seen that it's possible? Uh, it's been something we've been asked for. So people okay. have said, we love what you do with measuring lip sync, um, but it doesn't suit the type of workflow that we have. Gotcha. Okay. So we've been listening to the customers and we're thinking, well, there's something we can add here. Yeah. Um, yeah. People in the hardware world, um, they're used to using the box. Yeah. But in the software world, where there's, uh, of course, the cloud services are getting more and more, mm. there's nothing really there to measure lip sync and latency. So that's why we've added it there as is part now. of our arsenal. There is now. Yeah. yeah. So where do we send people at NAB uh, to, to come and see you? Can we get a demo at NAB? Uh, yes, we're in the North Hall. Uh, we're on the UK Pavilion, so our yep. actual number is 2860. Yep. Um, but uh, you'll recognise the test pattern and hopefully a, a large gather of people. Um, <laughs> They'll find you. They'll find you. <laughs> Russell, so, that's, that's excellent. It's a good. Uh, yep. Yep. It's always no, no, it's good to always hear good from you. Time. And we'll probably be dropping by and seeing you anyway. We uh, will, absolutely, yeah. yeah. We look forward to welcoming you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very All much right, indeed Russell. for the demo, and we'll, we'll see you in Vegas. Take care. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. gentlemen. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Cheerio. Cheerio. Right, Mark. Next. Now we're talking uh, to audio. our uh, self-confessed one hit wonder. Not one hit wonder, one take wonder. One I mean. take wonder. Yeah, <laughs> He's not going to like that, is it? Yeah. One take wonder, Mark. Um, yeah. I think um, we, we've interviewed him. John's interviewed him loads of times. We've interviewed him loads of times. Well, John interviews him a lot just because of, of, yeah. of the type of product that Dante Audio uh, and, and uh, um, well, we're using the talk. Yeah, I was going to pick it up, but right I'm worried no, it's going to fall out, so I'm not going to fiddle with it. But I don't no. think we've ever had to say retake. I actually might have done, but uh, no, we did. We, no, well, yeah, I, I reckon he's made one mistake in the do past, you but not yeah. just not many. <laughs> hello, Mark. How are you doing? Oh, Mark. Hello. Hang on. I've, I've got the I've got the list. If you want to go through the list, <laughs> <laughs> and you die, how are you doing? Uh, we're, All right. we're very good, thank you. How are you? Are, are you really though? <laughs> 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 that hip is giving me a bit of chip. Well done. Yeah. Congratulations. You're yeah. doing a sterling job. I well, know it's a tough one. You'll be pleased to know that we've got a lot of boxes with your logo on it sitting underneath us with various knobs and buttons to I talk to I was going to say, actually, that your mics, your mic amp sounds superb. Well, it's They're so clear. They're so, it's going, so crisp. I was going to ask what you were using. It's going through a Glen Sound Express yeah. IP Mini. There you go. There you very, go. very fine product that is. A too. very I'm fine product. It's doing a sterling yeah. job for you. Yeah, no. So, <laughs> so, so, so that's probably a pre-existing anything new at NAB <laughs> show 2023, please, because we're about yes, an hour so, late. <laughs> so, there's a few things that we're going to highlight at NAB. Um, obviously, esports is a huge area for us yeah. now with our GTM, uh, and initially, one of the uh, sources for the game audio was SDI, and we were going to add SDI as an option as a D embedder as a game audio source. Uh, but from last year, actually, at NAB, it was very apparent that some of the, the gaming organizations were saying, what we'd really like is um, be able to embed the gamer audio. And if we're using a local game audio source, because you can use analog line in, SB diff in, or USB audio in, we'd love to put that right. audio back into the network, uh, back into the SDI stream and the network, actually. Um, as well as the game audio. So that means it needed to become an embedder as well as a de-embedder, which is quite a bit more work. Um, but we've, we're have we pretty much on top of that now. So we'll be showing that 
at NAB is a, a key new area. Um, a second one that's been very popular for us, again, that we showed last year initially, is what we could call our Vittoria DR, DR for Dante and Ravenna. Yeah. It's a network bridge with two network interfaces that are completely separate. They're isolated. There's no network traffic between the two sides. We just pass 32 channels of audio in DSP. But since we've added the Ravenna card onto this as an option, what it means in environments where you might have the two technologies coexisting, or if you're in an OB truck using uh, Dante and you turn up at a venue or an event and they're using Ravenna, it means you can both just plug into each side of the Vittoria. Um, there's no network conflicts because the networks are isolated, but you've still got 32 channels by direction of audio. Um, this has been hugely popular and is really taking off with Dante on one side and Ravenna on the other, the Vittoria DR. So we'll be showing that as well. Uh, and finally, because I know you're running a bit late, the the, um, <laughs> the new phones that we have, mobile phones have always been really popular for us. Yes. We've got a new generation of mobile phones. Um, and interestingly, in America, um, our modules are pre-registered with Verizon 18 broadcast phone straight onto the network uh, for American broadcasters uh, is very straightforward comparing to others. And of course, we're looking forward to at NAB to meeting uh, all of our customers, new and old, um, not just in the US, because uh, NAB is very much our international platform for many parts of the world where yeah. they all come together and we meet at NAB and we right. can't wait to meet all our, uh, our customers there and you guys as well, of course. Yeah. I'll stop talking now. Of course. We can see on the screen behind you your booth uh, C, Central Hall, 6111. That's correct, yes. I said earlier on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh... I'd, I'd love to know what your nickname was for me. Maybe we shouldn't <laughs> go there. Well done, yeah. guys. Good luck for the rest of the day. Thank, Thank you very you. much. We'll see you in Vegas. Thanks, Mark. Cheers. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So, uh, yeah, we're 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 going. Um, we're going. We're getting through them. We've, quick. we've got a. We uh, are. We are. Sergio, I size. We are running a little bit late. Uh, we're just uh, waiting Mark for Mark just to disconnect. Disconnect. And um, he's gone. And uh, we've got Sergio. From Hi guys. Hi Sergio. How are you doing? I'm very good. How about you? Yeah, pretty good. I think, I think we're, we're still we're okay. we're doing all right. All right. Still. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if sound surprised about that, but yeah. So. so Sergio, you're, as far as I understand, you're not an exhibitor. You're a visitor to NAB this year. So yeah. we're interested in what technology trends you're looking at, why you're making the trip to NAB, and why you think the show is worth going to, I guess. Um, uh, first of all, thank you for having me again this year. Um, and yes, I mean, NAB is an important show for, for, for us. Uh, we recently announced some uh, partnerships with uh, Google Cloud. We did some uh, launches with uh, Intel and, and uh, uh, AMD uh, recent CPU uh, lineup. So we're really looking forward to going to NAB to uh, to meet our partners and 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 some potential uh, customers there. We're also preparing some announcements and demos uh, with some of our partners there. But uh, a really important conference to to. Uh, to uh, to meet to meet everybody and really look forward to seeing uh, seeing our existing and, and future potential customers. Hmm. And what sort of new innovations are you looking forward to seeing? Um, you've mentioned the partnerships. What partic what particularly stands out that you might be seeing this year at NAB? So, if you recall, uh, last year at, at NAB we launched uh, a big clear our deep perceptual uh, denoiser that yep. won several awards uh, since then. Mm -hmm. And we have been really working on deploying uh, this technology with our partners and clients, and have seen uh, very successful use cases. For example, in broadcasting, uh, in live sports, in in uh, de interlacing some of the legacy legacy broadcasting content, but also adding some. Uh, uh, features of generative uh, video as well. So it's quite interesting uh, uh, use cases that we have seen uh, with the with the bit clear. So we're going to be uh, talking about that with uh, with our customers and showcasing some of these cap new capabilities. Um, and then besides bit clear, uh, really a few days ago uh, at the recent GTC NVIDIA conference, our CTO Yanis Andropoulos has talked uh, about how generative AI that everybody is talking about. Uh, can support the uh, streaming industry. And uh, really, he's talking bridging the gap between Avatar and Codec 
uh, has talked about the, our new hybrid approach to photorealistic neural avatars. So we looked at delivering a photorealistic experience while maintaining a bit rate between three to five uh, times lower than the standard video codex, which uh, is, is revolutionary. And uh, you know, such substantial bitrate reduction is really a commodity that enables like 5x lower video latency or 5x lower uh, transceiver power, but really the uninterrupted remote presence under poor wireless signal conditions. And you know, significantly better quality of experience that everybody is 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 looking for, and increased user engagement uh, time for the 2D and, and 3D in both gaming metaverse uh, applications, and really accelerating uh, these these universes, uh, you know, to to be a, available to us users today rather than in a few a few years time. So uh, we really are looking forward to having discussions about that with some of our partners and 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 uh, and the customers and. If there is anybody to uh, uh, to be interested about that, we can we can talk to them and they can get in touch. Really, brilliant. Thank you, Sergio. If people want to get in touch with you before NAB to meet up, what's the best way for them to do that? Uh, they can just drop us uh, an email at uh, info at isize.co. So info at isize.co, and we can definitely get connected and set up meetings for NAB and talk about uh, all our tech. Brilliant. Sergio, thank you very much indeed. I hope you have a successful visit as a visitor to um, NAB and meet all your partners that you need to see. Thank you, chaps. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank Bye-bye. you. Bye-bye. Excellent. Interesting so stuff. We're back to an in-person. We've got an in-person. Now we're going to widen the set. Red chair. Duncan. Widen the set. How you doing? Nice to see you. How you doing? All right. Yeah, very good. Yeah, thank you. Good. Another marathon session for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're yeah. getting for it. Really? Yeah. Well, I think we've lost your mic, actually. John's saying in my ear. Can you have a little look at the connection yeah, and we'll just see your, if it's... Uh, on your microphone. That's... Uh, uh, sorry about this while we... It's a dodgy mic. Should we, should we bring... Uh, should we, well, should, should we, we get bring another one mic? of our guests in and we'll re-mic? Yeah. Yeah, have, have we got someone waiting in the wings? Fantastic. Let's. Uh, so who are we talking to next then? Yeah. Okay. So we go talk to Mark Birchall while Duncan, uh, while we fix his faulty microphone. Our yeah. fault, not Duncan's. Um, and we, we will. Think. <laughs> <laughs> he's only, been, we'll here. He's, he's only yeah. been here two minutes. He's yeah. broken the set. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah we're, so we're just connecting Mark. Uh, Mark looks after the uh, UK pavilion at NAB for Trade Fair. So yeah. um, lots of companies will go to Mark for a presence at a show. And Mark looks after him, effectively. Yeah, absolutely. In a nutshell. Um, yeah, he's there. Oh, here we go. Very red. Mark, <laughs> how are you doing, Mark? Hi, Mark. Here we are. Here we're... we are. All, all set. Branding <laughs> and everything. <laughs> we can definitely see you're the GB Pavilion. There's no doubt about yes. that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, I couldn't squeeze in the tea bags in the background, but <laughs> it's a good start. Yorkshire tea. Never go anywhere without it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, Mark, um, I was... Briefly saying, Trade Fair UK Pavilion, you're representing a number of UK companies that need a presence at NAB. I guess, uh, why would they go via Trade Fair? Why don't they just book their own booth? And sort of, what are you doing there and who are you doing it for? Well, I think that the main thing is, as we've mentioned before in the past, is that we uh, manage the whole process for the for the companies. Um, book in the space they're, they're going to be with a collective in the north hall with 23 like-minded media tech companies so mm. they're under the banners they're visible you know it's it's not for everybody so some companies will go on their own on a small stand but probably likely to be at the back of the hall and hidden away so yeah the visibility the support that we offer and the uh, promotion um, as well that we we give the companies to 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 shout about them pre-show and during the show. Mm. Strength in numbers. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. So, give us an idea of who you've got under your wing this year. Okay, so we're seeing twenty-five companies uh, as part of our group. As I say, probably twenty-two, twenty-three are with us um, 
in, in the North Hall. So that's yep. where the main UK pavilion is positioned this year. And then we've got uh, two or three exhibitors in West and one in, one in, um, uh, in the Central Hall. Yep. New to the group this year. Okay, so we've got Aqua Broadcast, Cube Studio, uh, QScan, Grabio, Trint and Videosys. Okay. So they're all actually new new to the show, uh, new to the pavilion. Cool. And can you give, um, I guess you've got new exhibitors there. What sort of advice are you giving those new exhibitors on the, the best way to make the most of their presence at NAB? Well, preparation is key, as we know, with these events. So, you know, we can do so much for these exhibitors, but... It's a lot of time and effort um, that they can do through their own social media, through PR, through any free opportunities that NAB are offering. Make sure that their information is comprehensive on the website, their product categories. And also, as we, we know, that not always are their target audience are uh, visitors. Sometimes mm. they're exhibitors as well. They're potential partners. Yeah. So yeah. invite um, potential clients, invite existing clients, just shout and, and work hard. And, and the main thing is, is for companies to try and get those appointments in pre-show. So they have a list of appointments um, for during the show and they're not just standing there, fingers crossed, um, that somebody's going to walk past and see them. And also the last thing is don't just sit on your stand, get out, get walking around, yeah. network, loads of events going on. You've, you know, you burn yourself out for three, four days, but you know, that's what you've got to do. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it is amazing yeah, how many still waiting. Yeah. It, it's amazing how many exhibitors might come back and say, well, I didn't see any of my customers. Did you tell them? Oh, no. <laughs> I thought they'd come and see me. Because I guess you just naturally think your customers yeah. are going to come and see you. But as you say, unless you badger them and badger them, they probably won't. Yeah, no, absolutely. You've got to, got to work hard at these things. You're making a big investment, depending on what the size of your company is, mm. you know, with the, your presence at the show, your travel and accommodation. And you've got to make sure that you get get your return on investment. Yeah. So are trade fair organising things like the transport, the goods backwards and forwards? You do the whole thing? Uh, we have partners in place that deal with travel and accommodation and freight, and we manage more the the space, the stand build, right? Okay. Fix AV, um, anything like that. But yeah. Um, yeah, we do have specialists for that in place um, to 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 assist our companies if they need it. Fantastic, cool. And I guess it's probably too late now for people to get in touch with you for this year's NAB. But if people want to engage with you for future shows, because it's not only NAB you do, is it? You do loads of shows. What's the no, best way? We, we we cover pretty much the whole um, broad the, the main events for the broadcast and media sector. And yeah, they can visit our website www.tradefair.co.uk. That has a full list of all the events. But we will be at NAB, of course. Uh, we will be at CabSat, Broadcast Asia, IBC, ISE. Um, so yeah, uh, give us a shout. Yep. Brilliant. Mark, thank you very much indeed. So we're going to find the main UK pavilion in North Hall. Yes, that's okay. where we'll be. And, and we'll also be promoting our directory online so people can find all the details of all the companies we're working with. Fantastic. Cool. That's all we need to know. We Mark, need, yeah. thank you very much indeed for joining us. We'll Welcome. see you in Vegas in a few weeks. No worries. See you there. Yeah. Take care. Bye-bye. Take, Take care. Bye-bye. Right. Okay, we're going to try, so we're going to try, try again, again with the microphone. See so it's broken two microphones. <laughs> and, uh, hopefully we're back in the room. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've just well, had a note saying it's working. Yeah. So that's, that's about it. People can actually hear what's, what's, what's going on. Yeah. So, uh, Duncan, Duncan yeah, you're, Roden you're with uh, Roden Roden Yes, Schwartz. yeah. Fairly new addition to Roden Schwartz. Yeah, since February. And okay. uh, it's been a bit of a roller coaster since then, beginning of February, absolutely, and with NAB heading heading this way. So, yeah, really exciting. So, cool. And you've got a launch of a new storage product. We have. Um NAB? Yes, yes, we have. Yeah, we're launching Spice Node 2, which okay. is a kind of an evolution of the very established Spice Node platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the largest Spice Node that's in there. So it's designed for sort of media and post and broadcast and, you know, well, sort of high. Well, how's the product evolved? Uh, it's evolved really to work with sort of the new workflows that are, that are being out there. So, you know, it's got cloud integration, so additional yeah. cloud integration. Um, and one of the main things we've done is we've changed the physical makeup of the box. So we've moved the, the controllers to the external 
So there's two one-use servers now, so the controls are external, which gives yeah. us much better processing power in there, mm. um, faster processing for the for the RAID controllers, um, more expansion capabilities with the, with the box and get much bigger. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and also, crucially, it's got um, NVMe capability as well now right. in those servers. So we're introducing something called Dynamic Media Cache, which is okay. um, helping the products really um, work with post-production editing environments. You know, so Yeah, I think it's important to say that whilst Rotary Sources as a group do you know, well, you can do the you can do the full. Yeah, absolutely. TV pro the TV solution, yeah. the, the full yeah. broadcast solution, but you've got to play well as a storage solution. Yes, you've got to play well with everybody. Yeah, I think that's quite a key as well. I mean, one of the things that excited me about joining Roden Schwartz was um, their workflow from end to end. You know, you've got from ingest all the way through to transmission in the broadcast and media section. Mm. Yeah. So we've got play out and we've got things that are sort of Prismon, um, the uh, Pixel, Proud, Pixel, Pixel Proud. Power products are mixed up in there as well. Mm. So we've got Gallium and Stream Master and yeah. Clipster, which is, you know, one of the best products out there for mastering. Mm. Venice for ingest and, and storage is in the middle of all that. I mean, all the products are very agnostic in their own right, but when they're put together, it's a, it's a really fantastic solution. Mm. So it's really exciting to be there. And is, is Spicer Node 2, well, I guess you had Spicer Node before. Yes. So I anyone with Spicer Node, can they update to Spicer Node 2? Or is it a yeah, so it's, new it's a new it's a new chassis. Uh, it's okay. a new product. It will be alongside the other Spicer Node products. So it's actually right. expanding. So it's not just a firmware family upgrade of products. Like that. Yeah, it's to fit a greater workflow okay. opportunity for clients. It'll so sit in the same choice. environment. Yeah. You could yeah. add. Absolutely. Um, yeah. But crucially, with the caching environment, it helps mix editing workflows inside the broadcast side. So normally right, they can separated yeah. it because they have such different requirements on the storage. Um, mm. But having the caching mode in there then allows us to, to mix those environments together, that mixed mixed workflow. And it, and, and, and I get, uh, like, uh, yeah, come in, uh, Premiere Pro? Admin. Yeah, Premiere. Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. Um, do we have to go through a list? Or, I mean, or no, I mean, the usual anymore. suspects, I the would say. Suspects um, there. Yeah. But on top of that, we've also got the latest version of our Spicer PAM as well, which is a production asset manager. So that's, it's not really a MAM solution, it's much more production environment. So okay. it's based on a project style mm -hmm. environment. So it's really good security. Um, the idea that you're opening a project and all files that are linked with it rather than opening a file and then the media. So right, um, okay. in terms of security, locking it down, people are going to get access to the files they need when they have the project open. So, mm. And it works with Adobe and with Avid and, and all the usual suspects. And it's, it's okay. a really nice combination of the two. So we'll be sh talking about that as well, Great. all the new functions. Anything else notable you'll be shouting about from the Road and Sports stand? Uh, yeah, there's some uh, some updates to the other products as well. We've got some great updates on the other uh, on the other products I mentioned earlier. So mm -hmm. come along and have a look at all of those. Um, yeah. We're in the North Hall, okay. 1949. So where are you? Yeah, that's, that's where we are. Yeah. Uh, yeah, in and left a bit. So that's similar to where last you year. were last yeah, year. Yeah, shuffles yeah. and left a bit, and you'll be there. Yeah. So yeah, I'm really excited. My first NEB for three years, but my tenth in all. In all. Mm. Um, yeah. So really looking forward to to being there. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Good job. Yeah, some good stuff. Come and have a chat with us. Yeah, fantastic. Do. We'll make sure people come by. Thank you. Thank yes, you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you for your time. No and thanks for your yeah, efforts as usual. Well, that's it. We're now on a churn. We'll see you there. A... <laughs> yeah, the lights have <laughs> yeah. turned off at half yeah. five, so we've got okay. the area up. <laughs> yeah. I can see I'm being ushered, so that's great. Power <laughs> turns off. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you very much, no, My pleasure. Thank you. So we're now talking to Keith Buckley, I believe, from, from Zytec. 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 Fantastic. Let's, um, yeah. Should we find out what we're talking to Keith about? Because that's, that's always a bonus, isn't it, when we know what, we've got a rough idea. Yeah, um, well, we've, we've, we only normally speak to him on... We normally speak to Greg, ...on don't location, we? if It's you normally like. Greg. Uh, uh, Greg Dolan yeah. we normally speak to. We normally um, uh, actually... I actually sat next show. to a, um, a Zytec chap all the way back from Vegas last year when we weren't sitting together for some reason. Well, you'll um, be... Yeah. I can't think. What his I can't think what uh, his name was, but uh, to, uh, it might have been Keith. <laughs> we'll we'll, we'll, we'll see in a minute. Keith, you'll find out. Um, Don't forget to uh, we keep saying it, check out um, the new website kitplus.com. You can do a search on the search bar in Kitplus um, for any, um, any any manufacturer content or anything you want. So um, we are now going across, as we promised, to Keith from Zytec. Yep, he's Hello, here. Keith. He's in. Hello, Matt and Simon. How are you? We are very, very well, thank you. Good indeed. How are you? You okay? I'm doing okay. Now that I could, I could see, I put my glasses on, then I took them back off. Yeah, <laughs> well, you know, you know who everybody we are does now. that, yeah. yeah. So it wasn't Keith you were sitting next to on the flight. It on wasn't home. Keith no. I was sitting next to on the way okay. back. <laughs> I was just saying, on the way back from Vegas last year, I had the pleasure of sitting next to a, a Zytec member of staff for the nine hours. So I should be an expert, but we didn't talk about work at all. 
<laughs> oh man, well, we missed an opportunity. I would have loved it if you'd give the pitch for me. To, <laughs> to be honest, after, after a week, week in Vegas, Vegas yeah. a week in Vegas, you don't want it. <laughs> right. So, updates to the media operations platform, I believe. Yes. So, so what's we... happening at yeah NAB Show Twenty Three? Oh, absolutely. Well, let me let me give a tiny bit of background just to get everybody level set from where we were last year, and then and then kind of talk about how we're going from there. Um, so. We have, uh, uh, you know, as I, you said, I'm CEO of, of Zytech. I've been been with the company now for, you know, call it uh, call it nine months. Um, we had a significant investment uh, about a year and a quarter ago um, into in the company, all with the goal of of really growing the the business. Um, you know, as as you know, Zytech works with the world's uh, largest media producers and distributors. Um, probably, you know, over the last 24 hours, if you've looked at anything on a screen, it's probably been something that Zytec, uh, you've probably seen something that Zytec has touched. So okay. uh, along with what you previewed, and, and I appreciate the preview earlier this month on Kit Plus, um, you know, we, we, uh, uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. So, you know, come, being an industry, being in industry for over 30 years or so, um, what we've, what I've certainly seen and what Zytec has seen has been a, uh, a, a need for unified, simplified, you know, efficient, uh, one-stop shop for, for people to manage, um, manage their media content production mm -hmm. and their media operations. And so with the investment that we have, we've, we've, uh, it's since certainly since last year, um, we've been making key, key moves to improve on the company's performance all the way around everything from the products, um, and and uh, you know to make the work easier for our our media operations teams out around the world that that utilize the product uh, and for new customers that we're going to get um, and and so not only do we make the major investments in sort of the the, the infrastructure and systems that um, that were necessary for the company's operations so professional services for implementations our tech support team the real key was the major commitment to enhancing and improving the functionality of that media operations platform. And so, um, you know, again, what we've seen is, is teams want media operations, teams want simplicity, they want efficiency, they want to have one single view of everything that's going on from the concept of their production all the way through until the time that they distribute it. And so by put, giving them one, by focusing on improvements to our product and giving them a single pane of glass, one-stop shop to be able to manage that, We've we've had to make a lot more improvements to the core of the product, and and um, as you as you saw prior, and as I think you've covered prior, you know we did our we put out our first generally available release uh, of the of the media operations platform, for, uh, the first one that we've done in four years, and we put more than you know four hundred enhancements. We've had a, over a thousand operational improvements put in, fourteen thousand hours of coding, uh, <laughs> and all kinds of of. Uh, uh, all kinds of things that we've done to make the product better, to make it work better, to make the quality of the product better, to get customers onto a common platform, which then leads us, of course, to the move to the cloud uh, and make sure that the, we, that we are dealing with cloud workflows, that customers are dealing with our product in, in a you know in a SaaS manner, not a point uh, kind of a point solution or an on-prem um, single solution, customized solution. So that's the the big things that we're doing major shift to the cloud and then major new integrations um, uh, with other products that allow for us to continue to expand how we're able to control, monitor, perfect, make efficient that whole media operations uh, for, for our customers. Brilliant. And so people who want to come and see you, have a chat, have a demo, do whatever you can on the show floor, where are we sending them? Where, what should be so, the number? Do you remember? Oh. Yeah, so we're it, it's up on up on the screen, but we're the West Hall <laughs> at uh, W twenty nine forty nine. Um, you can also go on to uh, ZytechSystems dot com and yep. pre schedule meetings. We will have demos there. The goal is to show people the high level of of the of how the platform works. You know, demo that, and then certainly to get into specific use cases. We're very yep. good, at, as people know, over our history of making sure that that we handle the the needs of every specific media operations team um, with, with all of the various features that we have and make ensure that, that uh, the system is working for them. It certainly sounds like anybody that's looking at it that hasn't seen it for a few years needs to take another look because it sounds like there's been some significant yeah. changes there. 
So absolutely. That, absolutely. Thank, thank you very much thank indeed, Keith. Much. We are out of time, unfortunately, but the good news is we've got more time at NAB where we'll be chatting to you at the show, I'm sure. Yeah. So we'll see you then. Looking forward to seeing you there. Take Thanks care. very much. Bye bye. Yeah. So yeah, we're on to uh, we're Marshall. On to Todd now, Todd, Todd Mudgrave, who anyone no. that watches Kit Plus TV on a regular basis yeah. will will know he's part of the family. Really, uh, we we'll just wait for Keith to disconnect, to disconnect and, then and then we'll we get could, uh, we'll be able to we'll see, get Todd uh, in full view. Uh, see to, um, Todd in full view. Uh, here right. he is in he, all his glory. Todd, all, how yeah, are you doing? There you go. There's, there's quite a queue outside. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it seems that way. The Some people has like gotten to very busy. Yeah. <laughs> So that's a very uh, gold microphone you've got in the middle there. I like that? That's my, I just upgraded. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to sing a tune while we do this. You don't mind? Very good. This is my, like, this is my, uh, what do they call it on CNN? The, uh... do you know, I anyway. don't know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, am, am I coming in okay? You, we, You're, we can't hear a thing, Tom. <laughs> no, loud and clear. <laughs> Go wrong. Should so, I turn it down? Should I get closer? Yeah. No, 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 no. That's all right. You're that's fine. All right. Perfect. So, uh, come on, Marshall Electronics. We've we've got to we've, we've got to try and reduce this queue outside. So yeah. over for, over forty years they've been Marshall in business. Cameras even. Uh, over, there's over, a lot of people outside. Yeah. Um, so what's uh, what can people expect to see new that they Are we might on not air? have seen <laughs> in Las Vegas? Uh, so, okay. so, uh, so we're so we're we're going to be showing uh, a no, well as you guys know we're we keep on enhancing our line with uh, NDI uh, models. Uh, we we've upgraded all of our NDI cameras to the new NDI HX3. We also have a full NDI PTZ camera coming out. What I'm most excited about are these little guys, right? So this okay. is a this is a small. It fits into our POV camera line. It's NDI HX3. It's up to 4K60 with NDI HX3 and HDMI output. Um, okay. We have zoom blocks. We have PTZ. But these are unique because they're prime lenses, right? So uh, a, a zoom block camera with, with autofocus will have a depth of field. These are, you know, as a prime lens, everything's in focus, near contact to infinity in focus. So these POV cameras being able to plug in with one cat cable into a Netgear AV over IP switch or any kind of AV over IP switch with POE is really unique. And uh, again, we've added NDI HX3. We have standard IP in this camera. Uh, and we're also going to be adding uh, the Audinate AVH uh, into this camera as well. So this is a very versatile, very affordable yeah. way of getting a fixed POV shot into vmix or 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 your new tech uh switching equipment or whatever you're using this camera is very versatile and again with those prime lenses and interchangeable lenses right so you can choose the right angle of view and everything's in focus near contact to infinity so mm. these are going to be real exciting at nab this year um we're going to be have four models actually we're going to have one uh actually with miniature m12 mount lenses so these little lenses here yeah. Uh, in the in the 570 and the 574, again up to UHD 60, and then the the little larger footprint. You may want a longer focal length or longer throw lens on this one, so we use a CS mount. Uh, this is will be our CV 370 and CV 374, again up to UHD 60. So, very good way of adding a very high quality camera. And as we know, uh, NDI HX3 adds that ability to maintain that high quality. When it's uh, when it's um, you know packed and unpacked for IP use, and just highlight for me because we we we've, we've used and just very very quickly because we we, we have got a you know, I don't want to get into a lengthy one, <laughs> but it's, let's get into uh, a lengthy we've conversation. Got the, we've got the Max, mini you've got the mini cameras. We've used the uh, the, the, the yeah you know, the small form factor with the with the M12 lenses, and we've used them. So just remind remind me, why am I going for the the bigger one that you've just launched? So uh, in M12 lenses, they're very good lenses. Again, all yeah. the way up to, this is an eight and a half megapixel sensor. So we have eight megapixel M12 lenses now, but the CS mount, you're going to want for a longer throw, a longer focal length, because okay. as you know, as you get into the telephoto side of your lens, any vibration or movement is yeah. going to be exaggerated. Um, it's more stable in a larger format like that. Also has auto iris. So 
If you don't want to be always manipulating iris, uh, an auto iris hook up to the back of the camera allows that DC auto iris, but can be manipulated remotely uh, by adjusting brightness and gamma and gain control. And you can control it. You can control all the features of the camera remotely as well anyway. You can. You can. You, yeah. So, yeah. so all of our you cameras have that yeah. ability. So in a movement robotic camera, that's essential. But uh, also, I want to say that we, we've upgraded all of our POV cameras, even in the SDI range and HDMI range. So we're all, we're using all first-party Sony sensors now. Cool. So not okay. only high, high quality, but you can match them with other cameras in your workflow, no matter what format, fixed, okay. zoom, PTZ, that kind of thing. Yeah. Cool. Where and we... I was going to ask, Todd, is everything shipping that you're showing at NAB? It, the, the, the new POVs with NDI HX3 and HDMI, those will be shipping within a week of NAB. Cool. So, okay. so they're ready to go. I'm real excited about it. We're doing final testing now, and uh, we should be able to ship right after the show. Fantastic. So we're seeing you. Uh, I think we know where we're going, but remind, uh, remind everybody of your stand number. Right. So we're in Central Hall. Um, we've actually gotten some digital signs to, to help people with, with getting to our booth, right? But cool. it's uh, booth 5520 in Central Hall. Fantastic. We're spending quite a bit of time on the Marshall stand at NAB, Todd, so we'll be capturing lots of content about all the different products you're doing. Yeah. So looking forward to that and, of course, seeing you as well. I can't wait to show you guys. Good we'll stuff. see you there. Thanks, Todd. All right. Take care. Thank you. Don't Thanks forget you to click out to let the other all guys right. in. You've got to get that queue down. <laughs> see you later. I want a little more time, though. I can't have more time. Yeah. <laughs> put, you have to put some more money in the, um, in the oh, meter, Todd. The, okay, <laughs> the, the old way. The, the analog way, right? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, Todd. See, see, see you. See ya. Bye-bye. So, um, it seems like NAB is quite a good networking facility, but yeah. it seems like our Zoom waiting room is quite a good it's networking good, area yeah, as well. I think so, yeah, we're going to have to <laughs> we're going to have to charge our way through them. But uh, Jeremy Miller from Tajiro, um, <clears throat> yeah, we're going to be talking about five G um, bonded cellular bonded, and was, all that type uh, of stuff. I and expect. was it NAB? No, it was IBC that we had quite an impressive demo of that. Actually, getting five G bonded in the hall where it was was quite impressive. It actually worked. When we did the speed test, um, we, we we did the yeah. speed test, there, didn't we? It, it did. It was, it was, it was off very scale. Good. It was yeah. uh, it's pretty um, impressive. Pretty impressive. So, yeah, don't um, forget, as you mentioned there with Todd, we'll be doing like loads of booth interviews that you'll be able to see on our channel. So do subscribe. Yeah. And Jeremy Miller is here. Jeremy, yeah. hi. How are you doing? Hello, Matt and Simon. Thanks for having us on. No, it's good to see you, Jeremy. So, um, for the delay. you but, launched your five G products last year at NAB. Um, what can we expect this year? So we're expanding on that 5G product offering by showing or going to be able to discuss the Engo 3S. So now we have three iterations of the Engo 3, which we were talking about the 5G products. So the Engo 3 is kind of our, our base model. So that's going to be, you know, uh, typical HD capabilities on there as well. Now we've added the 3S, which is S is in Sierra. What that does is it's the same as the original three, except we added 4K. So now we're going to have a single input 4K capability to add on to, obviously, as you guys, have, we talked about last year, is the 3X, which is our multi-camera feed option as well with the 4K capability. So we've added a different product or a different version of the Engo 3 along with some of those different capabilities. And we've also had some great testing in the field and some great experiences by our customers on demos and actual purchases as well. Cool. Well, I mentioned that at, at IBC we had a really good, good, good demo that actually worked in the hall, which is difficult when you're talking about 5G. You know, with all of those frequencies that are flying around in these exhibition halls, especially a technology show like ours, um, it worked. What are we? I mean, uh, uh, are we going to have good demonstrations uh, uh, on the booth? Are you trying to achieve? Because you, you normally you kind of try and achieve something quite dramatic on the booth, on the stand. Correct. So uh, the I think you when you guys have come to the booth a few times, we've set up a our Engo two six five, which is our our la, uh, our previous version of the Engo, which was our LTE version. We were able to run that on the side of the booth with our antennas above the the yeah. crowd, if you will, to help get a better performance. But what that was able to do is show people the speeds of our gateway mode, which is a really important factor that we're, and feature that we are added to our transmitters is the ability to have that blended hotspot capability. So what that allows people to do in the field is to use a, to move files faster, push and pull content from the field to really enable those field capabilities that people are looking for and asking for more in the field as well. <laughs> so we'll be able to show those in our booth. A great experience, like you guys were even mentioning, even in poor conditions where our new product is performing really well. So. 
An example of that is I was recently at a, a major U.S. broadcaster where we were able to do a demonstration in their basement on our uh, 5G, our, N our NGO3, which was able to actually function and be able to stream at 500 milliseconds of latency at one megabit per second on two modems uh -huh. in the basement of a major broadcaster. We were able to sustain that for over 20 minutes and that's how long our test went so that's why we stopped it there's no reason yeah. for it we were just letting yeah, it go and they're like to get that to get to the end of the test, like, oh, that was it well, yeah it's not doing anything <laughs> so let, let, let's kind of call it at that point because it was holding so steady they were still yeah. happy with it uh, so that's one of the great yeah. things that this thing is able to do and that what that is is really speaks to the great work that our internal hardware team has done when it comes to the antenna design because as no yeah. you guys know we've had these conversations antenna design is very important to us because the modems are more than capable of pushing bandwidth. So it's not a modem thing. Like you can throw modems at it all day. The big important part of this is your connection to the towers. Yeah. And then the obviously the infrastructure on the other side of that from the cell carrier. So all of that has been boosted obviously with 5G with, with the capabilities on there. So it's really important to get that really good connection to those towers and to those access points by the providers in order for us to be able to get these amazing being with performances in gateway mode and be able yeah. to stream our live content. Well, I, th I, th I think it's important to say that it's a robust antenna as well, isn't it? it it's 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 made for the field. Well, exactly, and and you know to really harness five G as you guys know is like there's these great bandwidth capabilities. You really have to push and look at your antenna design. And for us, we had we went from you know having four antennas per modem, or I'm sorry, two antennas on, for LTE to having four antennas per modem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That alone and the, the different spreads and the different uh, frequencies that are covered, as you guys alluded to on 5G, that's really opened up a really good capability that we yeah. have and that we're carrying forward with our product lines. Yeah. So um, actually, one another last comment. There. Bad 5G <coughs> is a hell of a lot worse than medium 4G. Mm. You, you know, Okay. 5G is 5G, but if you've just got a very weak connection, it is really useless. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so well, that, exactly. It's very important to have that solid connection. Yeah. Like we were yeah. talking about, I think yeah. uh, the way I always relate it to people is it's like why no one really paid that much attention to Wi-Fi in their house until they until the pandemic, right? So yeah. like we're all walking yeah. around working on uh, Wi-Fi at our house and granted our, our, you know, our smart devices, our phones. Yeah. Uh, if I'm on a single bar on Wi-Fi, just like you were saying, well, if I'm on a single bar of Wi-Fi, there's a really big difference between that and like two bars and so on. Right. Same thing like you're saying on like different carriers and different spectrums as well, yeah, right? Absolutely. Where can we find you at NAB, Jeremy? I got. I'm, I do apologize here. I was we've, looking that we've up. We've got it uh, written down. We're just asking to be nice. We've got it. We, yeah, we, we're just asking to make you look clever, but we're going to look clever instead, which West is Hall. West Hall 1435. <laughs> Yeah, I do. I do remember it's West Hall. So I apologize for the <laughs> yeah. number, but it's, we'll, we'll be the there showing off our great capabilities, and then also discussing some of our future offerings that'll be coming down the pipeline, such as going more virtual and being able to put our software on other devices in the future. Fantastic, cool. Jamie. I'm afraid great. we're out of time. We could talk all day about this, but we will when we're at NAB because we've got some time yeah. with you on the booth. So look forward to that. Absolutely. See you guys there. Cheers. Bye bye. Catch up. Bye bye. So, so we're now going got to Jeff. Main concept. Yeah, Jeff. Jeff from Main Concepts. We're not who... allowed to call him Sarah. <coughs> no, I don't know why we've got Sarah Cook on the phone. Well, but because it was supposed to be Sarah. Just... Oh, was it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, well, we'll, we'll, um, yeah. we'll, we'll be all right. We'll be all right. We'll, I always uh, like to chat to Dejiro and, and people like that just to, because um, it's all about connectivity, isn't it? You can have the best camera in the world. You can have the best production world, but you can't get the thing up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quite. You, you, you're screwed. Jeff. Hello, Jeff. Hello, How are you Matt doing? Simon. Good to see you, Jeff. I am doing great. It's uh, nice and early in the morning here for me. Is it? Has <laughs> had a pretty long day over there. <laughs> it's it's been an interesting day. It's been yeah, uh, we're full eight of, hours in there, so. full of NAB yeah. news and information, which is great. Yeah. So, Jeff, tell us, give us a quick elevation elevator pitch about who Main Concept is and what you're doing at NAB this year. Yeah, great. Thanks. Um, yeah, that actually how I wanted to start exactly because I'm not sure how much your audience knows about who Main Concept is. My first time being on your show might yeah. be Main Concepts as well. So we've been around for for 30 years. In fact, this year is our 30th anniversary. We'll be celebrating that alongside NAB for their 100th anniversary. Um, and during these 30 years, we've been behind the scenes. You can almost think of us as I don't like to use the term, but I'll use it the Intel inside yeah. of. Uh, of 
and the video codec side. So we, we do everything video and audio codec related. We've been doing this since MPEG-2, and this year we're going all the way through to the new stuff, including VVC. Uh, so we are, again, we're behind the scenes. So a lot of people who've already been on your show today use our codecs, and a lot more do. Companies like Adobe and Dale, Pebble, Teletream, Avid, Blackmagic, um, and so many, so many more. So that's the quick and dirty of, of who we are. And so what, Elena, your, your NAB uh, uh, show in your own right, let's say, for argument's sake, going direct to customer in, in, in this regard, why? If you're, well, if you're um, codec, if you're we, we behind focus, the scenes, yeah, that's, you know, what's the, what's yeah, the change? Yeah, behind the scenes, but there's a lot of innovations going on. We are, you know, we focus across a bunch of the industries, but broadcast is one of the big ones, streaming, gaming, medicine, a lot of stuff that's going on over there. And so we found over the years that it's been of a lot of value to be there, show how our codex can be put into action. That's what we're exactly going to be doing this year at NAB. Cool. And so is there any major changes that... You know, you want to say if you are in streaming, if you are in gaming, if you are in, you know, whatever technology you're in that can use your codecs, why are they going to come and meet up with you? Well, uh, I mean, we're talking about codecs specifically. The really, the really exciting part is everybody who's part of the business knows that the next one up and coming is VVC, H.266. Uh, we launched our VVC encoder in beta during uh, IBC last year. And so this year, we're actually going to be launching our VVC encoder and decoder SDK, as well as our VVC FFM plugin. And so we are bringing these to the market. Uh, the, we know that the codec lifecycle is generally pretty long, so it's very early yeah. in stage for VVC, but there's a lot of interest in it already. A lot of people who support the broadcast industry especially have been asking for it, so we have it out there. We will have it out there now so that people can, can work on that. Uh, so we did have it in beta. We've had it in beta for about six months. We got a lot of really great feedback that has been implemented into what we're going to be launching and showing um, with some specific te technologies at NAB. And what type of visitor are you um, hoping to see, Jeff, at the show? So we got really we have two things, two two major demos we're going to be showcasing. So one is uh, one is specific to broadcast, and uh, what we're doing is really we, we we're calling it our immersive broadcast uh, demo. And so there's really two aspects to it. The first one is we are going to be showcasing, again, using our BBC codec, uh, we're going to be showcasing live broadcast via AWS in 8K, 4K, and HD, all at uh, 60 FPS. So that's that's the first thing. So showing the power of going up to 8K. That's been a, another big talk in the industry these days. And so we're using that. Uh, we've shown that before in 8K. We were using um, HEVC a year ago. And showing that, uh, and we've got a lot of customers that are using it. This year, we're moving that up to VVC to show the power of that, the efficiency, the, the quality over there. And then we're also going to be talking about, we've been working with a lot of partners, including Globo in Brazil, uh, Vnova, Fraunhofer, Interdigital, and Philips, on this whole initiative in Brazil on what they call TV 2.5. And so what that is really is providing Brazilian consumers with an upscale uh, video and audio content. So they can really get up to uh, HD quality video. They can get uh, MPEG-H quality audio. And there's not a lot they have to do as far as resources or investments in, in new devices. Mm. So those are the two other things we'll be showing on the broadcast side. The other piece is the, the other hot topic is um, advertising. So going doing the rounds last year at the shows, we know advertising was a big, big focus. And so we're really focused on codec-based advertising, how we can use our codecs or how customers are already using our codecs to make advertising that much more efficient. And so what we're really showing there is how, again, using VVC, the newest codec, but also HEVC and other, other codecs, how that can be used to use those more interactive type commercials, not the commercial breaks, but how we're gonna be overlaying those over the screen, making them immersive, interactive, and all that kind of stuff. So very much a lot of applications here that can be used in the broadcast world as well as other spaces as well. Brilliant. I'm interested. Jeff, yeah. no, that sounds great. Jeff, we're sort of out of time, but finally, where can people find you at the show? Yes, so we've got a booth in the West Hall. Our number is 1749. So sort of on the right side of the of the, of the hall over there in the West Hall. Yeah, it, it sounds like West Hall is going to be the place to be this year. There's a lot of... Um, a lot of things happening by the sound of the people we've been speaking to today. So uh, we can't forget. Them. They're green, yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But we, no, it's definitely worth a visit. West, there's a lot going on. Absolutely. Brilliant. Thank you very much for joining us, Jeff. And uh, yeah, hopefully see you in Vegas and have a great show.
yeah, thanks. Thanks for your time and, and enjoy the rest yeah. of your show. See you there. Thank you very much indeed. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So I think we're going back to uh, we, a, uh, an AJ. old uh, Bryce, yeah, yeah Bryce. As, as we were saying uh, before, AKA. anybody that watches or has watched Kit Plus t- uh, TV over the, the pandemic years, year, we had yeah, yeah, Bryce on, on a pretty, pretty um, regular um, speaker. Um, well, AJA products blended beautifully into the, uh, you know, into, in, in, into helping people through. Ex- ex- expert in red wine. Once, expert in red wine. Once swam in a swimming pool with James Hunt. What else do we know about him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, not nothing we can talk about on here. Nothing we can talk about it. Yeah, no, tell anybody else. We, no. we can, can say that. Um, but he, he, cool. he's, he's literally on his way over. But and we also, who there was some technology earlier. You, I'm, I'm forgetting there was there was a someone a, did a mention a, an, an AGA collaboration. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So as we, um, this is the hundredth centenary of NAB, isn't it? It's, so and yeah, we were okay, yeah. Chatting to Neil earlier on, and it, it really is the hundredth show. Starting yeah. back for 1920 something, yeah. I uh, imagine 23. Yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, and um, the uh, oh oh here he is. Yeah, no, I saw a flicker. It's uh, hello, Bryce. Yeah. How are you hello, doing, Bryce? How are you, gentlemen? <laughs> how are you? How are you doing? You okay, we're okay. <laughs> Good. Yeah. It's, it's kind quite of the green morning. room back there. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were just saying the the green room of Kip Plus TV is probably the best networking place to be at the moment. <laughs> oh, it's great. <laughs> Bunch of familiar faces. And some yeah. It's wonderful. Cool. Well, it's good to see you, a familiar face on the Kip Plus TV and often obviously someone we always speak to at all the shows as well. Um, yeah, we're what, trying to reduce that queue. In the, we're in trying the to reduce the room. queue. So, yeah. over to you. What's new and exciting for AJ at NAB? Well, I'm here to tease you. Uh, uh, as to, usual. Uh, <laughs> no, I can't. We, quite, we, can we get to it. release all our news in uh, in a couple of weeks here. So, on yeah. April 12th, uh, we'll do our announcements at 9 a.m. PST, which is basically a day before most of us hop on the plane and actually go to Vegas itself. Right. Yeah. Um, so we're really looking forward to it. We've got a lovely new uh, booth in the West Hall, very close to the Amazon stand. Um, it's been redesigned for this year, so we've got a, a great front end for meeting our partners and the public and having good chats. And then we've got some uh, nice uh, meeting booths and a bit more of a wooden uh, sort of aesthetic going on in parts of the design. I'm really looking forward to this one. and. Quite honestly, watching the build-up, I think there's going to be a lot of great news, a lot of great attendance, and looking forward for all the you know conversations coming up for this. Yeah, it does seem uh, there's a lot of interest in this year's show. I mean, a lot of it is just the ability to get there without any barriers, without yeah, any yeah. challenges. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just to elaborate on your tease, then, what sort yes. of people are you hoping to reveal the product that you can't talk about to? Who, who should come and see AGA? Pretty much anyone that's dealing with professional audio and video, <laughs> you know, without broad, <laughs> with, our, with our broad portfolio and uh, yeah. the updates and the uh, products we have going, uh, this is going to serve people across the industry, uh, broadcast, sports, live, um, you know, even education, wherever you're at today. But uh, uh, I think we've got a lot of really exciting news to, to share. We've got a lot of partner work we've been doing, which is always fun to bring to the table. Um, so I think you're going to find, regardless of whether you're in sports broadcasting or if you're doing streaming like you guys are doing right now, uh, there's, there's just a lot of um, great options out there. Yeah. And we look forward to, you know, the chats, because the whole point of NAB is to meet and hear what everyone's doing and hear what they're trying to uh, solve in terms of any challenges they have. So, yeah, we're really looking forward to this year's show. Yeah, I've just heard in my ear, Bryce, all the list of equipment from AGA that we're using from John. Code <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you're not wrong. Hope's and like, working. And, and we'll be talking, to, or you'll be talking to people about various Open Gear solutions at the show as well, I guess. Yes. Um, so, you know, Open Gear is, is one of the platforms that is utilized in many scenarios from uh, broadcast, again, even to college sports, uh, what have you. Very convenient format, right, for yeah. uh, mixing and matching stuff from uh, uh, different vendors. Mm. So, you know, um, we get to play well with others and 
if users the choices they need um, to utilize with, within these different environments. Yeah. Mm. Uh, exciting stuff. Yeah, no, we're looking forward to seeing everything that you're talking about. Um, and when did you say that big announcement was? The 10th or the 9th? Um, so oh. April 12th, uh, oh, 12th, which is <laughs> Wednesday just prior to us getting into uh, Las Vegas and yeah. 9 a.m. PST. Uh, we will leave our um, uh, our video uh, from the day live for a while. So if the time zone doesn't quite suit you, uh, you can always watch it a little bit later. But we look forward to having as many people there with us as we go yeah. through it. There's always a sense of excitement bringing you news to folks, you know. I think yeah, we touched down about two hours before that, don't we, in Vegas on the turn? Well, maybe yeah. we'll watch yeah. it then. Yeah, fantastic. 10th, 12th. 12th. 12th, that's when we're flying. <laughs> Where, there you go. <laughs> so you're in West Hall booth 2600, Bryce. Is that correct? That's very. That's correct. Yeah, just a couple of uh, booths down from the Amazon stand. So um, it should be pretty easy to find us. And yeah, again, really looking forward to it. I think uh, the sense of excitement I've had speaking to people, even when we were in Europe earlier this year, and we all met up yeah. on FIC. Uh, I think the excitement's high, and I, th I think uh, the pundits and our partners and everybody's just ready to get back together and chat away you know oh, absolutely sure. yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. brilliant bryce thank you for your time it's always good to speak to you even if you can't tell us everything we need to know it's yeah. always good to speak to you <laughs> yeah. wait till christmas you know <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. we'll we'll find it all out in a few weeks time yeah, so well, uh, not far away is it we'll we'll catch up yeah. at the show yeah <laughs> see you soon take care bryce. cheers bye-bye yeah, so Tim Godby. Godby, uh, yeah. So we Bob spoke to Bowling, Tim, Tim for the first time ever, I think, at ISE, didn't we, a few months ago? Uh, we, we were in Barcelona, yeah. Barcelona, we were chatting to Tim, <laughs> and we were chatting about his PTZ. Uh, then we're going to have to work out PTZs yeah, and PTZs. Um, well, I, I just, I'm thinking about this. We are at NAB show here, so... Let's PTZ. PTZ. Yeah. It. Um, we'll, we'll, and, uh, we'll keep it safe, yeah. Yeah, they had their new range of, I think, from memory, was it the Blue Line, did they call it? Blue Line, um, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. The, well remembered. Um, yeah, another one of those manufacturers of PTZs uh, that, has, that has cropped up, uh, uh, that, 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 that's, that's going direct to market themselves. Ah, mm. there he is. Yeah. There's Tim. Hello, Hi, Tim. Tim. How are you doing? Hey, good uh, afternoon for you, right? Morning for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we were just talking about your... PTZs and and here we are. Uh, we, we, oh, we, fantastic! You're yeah. surrounded by them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so we. I think I was right. I mean, you know, you probably didn't hear as I was saying it. It was the blue line. Am I right? You are correct. That yeah. Was the launch at uh, in Barcelona. So that's right. Um, so how, well, I guess the the only thing I can ask is: is there anything that we can you know, tell people about NAB show 23 and why people are going to come to the bowling stand. I am so glad you asked that, of yeah. course. Um, <laughs> is it everybody? Yeah. You you mentioned the blue line. So we have one of the examples um, that you saw at ISC. This is yeah. the two series. But we have been very, very busy and we are releasing another new line of cameras. We're calling the red line. A red line because they're fast, very fast. I want to mention fast HEVC. We don't have time today to really get into the depths of what that means, but I want you to be aware of it and I want the audience to be aware. That is a reason to come by Boland's booth. Find out what fast HEVC is, what okay. we've done with it. The, um, the fact that we're getting 4K P60 422 at 12 bit in 50 megabits or less is something people need to see and um, an experience. We're very excited about it. So this okay. is our new R9 from the red line. And this gorgeous, <laughs> amazing camera. Um, I'm supposed to feel that way, but I yeah, honestly yeah. do. <laughs> uh, this, this is, uh, sometimes in, a, in America, we'll say this is a beast, but it's a, it's a real compliment when we, we talk about yeah, it this yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. This is our new uh, outdoor camera. It's, uh, we call it the EX Ultra. And it, it is a thing of beauty. The, the performance, the um, 100, 100 degrees a second in, uh, in, from preset to preset, things like this, IP67, all weatherproof, including the cover. There's so much to talk about, about this camera. Um, and it will be on display and in action at our booth at NAB, which is a Central Hall 5939, by the way. I think I forgot to put it on our, uh, 
That's okay. Screen. We'll we'll we will re we will remind them eventually. And that beast Thank you. in front yeah. of you. Uh, uh, very quickly, without going to uh, too many, but application-wise, what are we talking? Sports? Are we talking or, or yeah? Yes, yes to to, to all of the above, and then yeah. things that uh, maybe people. Well, uh, professional sports for sure, but sports of any kind, um, anything that's outdoors. This can take up to a, a little beyond category three hurricane force winds. Right. Um, it is. As I said, IP67 completely throughout the camera. So yeah, um, all sorts of sports all, all over the world. It doesn't matter the shape or the size of the ball or whatever the device is. Mm. Yeah. Um, but you know what? We People have used cameras in this category from us for a long time for things like oceanic research vessels. And okay. any... Yeah, where where salt corrosion, that kind of thing, because it's fully fully coated. Now it's not stainless steel, so it's going to eventually become. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, all sorts of applications this way, but it's broadcast yeah, quality. So, um, yeah, lots of uses. Mm. Cool. And we did cover where you are. That's fifty nine thirteen or five nine three nine. Yep. Central yes. Hall five nine three nine. And and it's it's obvious to you you've got a very wide customer base there that you're you're looking or that your your PTZs appeal to is there a particular type of visitor you want to speak to at the show this year oh that's a fantastic question um you're exactly right uh we've actually broadened the perfect audience for our PTZ cameras by a lot uh, the blue line opens up an entire world of possibilities where you might not consider yourself a high-end broadcaster but you still want really great quality at a, at a more reasonable price. That's what the blue line is. So if, if you're that customer, come see us. Yeah. If, if you really need things like Genlock and, and other you know, true broadcast type things, then the, the new R line is absolutely for you, especially with the imaging and the 12G SDI and all the outputs. And same kind of market, if it's outdoors, this is, this is the camera you want to see. So I would say... Anybody who does anything that is, um, we call it broadcast, but it doesn't limit, that's not just, you know, professional broadcasters. Yeah. It's any live venue, any time you need a really, really great image with streaming options and multiple outputs at the same time. We're your company and you are our audience. That's who we want to see. Fantastic. Fantastic. So Central Hall Central 59, Hall, 39. 39. Yes. And we are spending time on your booth as well, Tim, as well. So we're looking forward yeah. to um, creating yeah. even more content as we did at we'll ISA. A bit more time then. A bit more time to, yeah. to uh, chat in depth. We're but, trying to bring the queue yeah. down in the, in the green room. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, at least we'll all be on the same time zone for, for a bit. For a bit. <laughs> That'll be really yeah. fun. Yeah, cool. So thank you. Thank you very You're much. So see you there. Great to see okay. you. Okay, see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> So, <coughs> Greg, Disguise. Greg from Disguise, I think, is coming in next. Yeah. Um, if you're looking at the YouTube description of the times, and it's all a little bit wrong at the moment, we're running about 20, 30 minutes late. So if you've got someone particular that you want to see, um, yeah, you might want to do something <laughs> until they come on. <laughs> yeah. Go yeah. make a cup of tea. Oh, but keep don't, watching. <coughs> but don't anyway. do it now because Greg is here from Disguise. Hi, right, Greg. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. That, How are you doing? Pleasure. Yeah, I'm with Disguise. I'm the GM broadcast for Disguise, and so we're excited to talk to you guys today, especially like uh, with NAB coming up. So are you over there? or? <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're headquarters in London, but I'm in New York. So okay. You're in New York. Okay, cool. cool. So it's and, not that early for you. Yeah. Uh, no, it's not too bad. I'm used to the yeah. 5 a.m., 6 a.m. slacks. So. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. tell us all about your plans for NAB this year, Greg. Yeah, so this year, Disguise, we're going to have our, our biggest booth yet. So I uh, convinced our CEO to get us, we have a 50 by 50 booth and really showing off, um, you know, like end-to-end -end workflows around XR, virtual production, real-time graphics. So, you know, Disguise is not traditionally in part of broadcast. We've been really trying to grow the space over the last year for us. We do a lot of film production live events, you know, and we power something like, I think it was with 450 stages xr stages and virtual production stages globally okay. and now we have somewhere you know half a dozen to a dozen of those in broadcast but we're you know we're really trying to aggressively grow so this is our big kind of splash this year to show what we can do in broadcast 
Mm. And what's so? Uh, I mean, uh, you know, obviously your kit is evolving as well. Uh, your offering is evolving. Is there anything new that we can, you know, send people to the to the disguise booth <laughs> that they're going to see, or, or 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 even unique? Yeah. So uh, we're definitely pushing a lot of. Uh, cloud production and cloud yeah. control for broadcast graphics for, and not just for XR, we're really going to be showing off how you can do utilizing our platform and Unreal Engine, how you could do any type of graphic. It could be master control, it could be CG graphics, can be virtual AR. So we're going to show kind of that end to end. Uh, we're going to be show a, revealing quite an interesting workflow using some AI technology. Okay. So, um, and then how that's going to work and make production easier. I mean, that's definitely a hot topic, I think, for within broadcast is how you know AI is taken over. Yeah. Mm. And I've I've heard of I I can't remember where and when I heard the word someone told me about Avalanche. I should be asking you about Avalanche. <laughs> yeah, Project Avalanche. So it's not officially out. Definitely we're one of the companies that are beta testing and uh, you know, having tools coming out in the market. So we're gonna release uh, some press probably around NAB around that. I can't Reveal oh, too much, but we about. definitely have, I uh, have some tools uh, <laughs> with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, next time. And 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 this Porter is this another another yep. tool? Yeah, yeah. Porter. So Porter is a cloud control application that lets you do you know graphics control uh, either you know for sports production with an operator or we have integration now that we release with newsroom systems. So yeah, definitely can be used for any kind of remote. Uh, production or in-studio production. It's all cloud-based. Um, you can really make it easy to to uh, preview graphics right in the browser. It's all, it runs in the browser. And um, yeah, we do that by either running, you know, Unreal Engine <clears throat> in, the, in the studio, or, but also in the cloud as well. So I guess mm. it's also important to say that, you know, uh, there might be a lot of people out there that think, hang on, this isn't for me. I can't afford to invest in this kind of technology. I'm not going to put a volume in, in my in my in my studio in my warehouse in my office or whatever it's not for them but they might like the idea of it i guess you also want your customers customers to turn up and get an experience of what they can do you know you you just you just need people there to get mm -hmm. into doing productions in this environment don't you really for sure i mean yeah i mean it may seem like a big cost up front i mean i get that led is expensive right but yeah. there's different ways to go about you know, in general, how you're doing that kind of production. And, you know, over the long term, you know, what you can do with LED, I think ends up being cheaper than let's say green screen or even in studio. I mean, you go to any, a, a lot of what we're doing is powering just, you know, we call it LED in a studio, but it's really any kind of display. Um, it doesn't have to be an XR uh, production. So, oh. and, you know, our whole thing is like, how, to, how can we control those pixels easier? And, um, you know, you can start off controlling a monitor and then at least with our platform, you know, turning it into XR is kind of a click of a button. So you can start with, you know, a monitor and then you can add a floor to it and then it could be XR. But I think right. like what we're seeing is, you know, broadcasters are adopting this kind of workflow. It just makes it easier for them to do their daily, you know, versus like with green screen, you know, it's it's not the same as getting a guest on and then you get that green screen fatigue. So um, I think I think more and more folks are going to be adopting, you know, doing it on, on LED in the long term. Yeah. Cool. So you've got the biggest stand you've ever had. Um, where is it? Where is it? Where can we find <laughs> it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're we're in Central Hall. Uh, you know, we're booth C six one one eight, according to our marketing. So uh, yeah. yeah, and um, we've got yeah, we're going to have uh, quite a number of different things to show off and also some some uh, some of our guests from our customers over there doing some keynotes so yeah we're excited to 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 be over there and uh, hopefully we'll catch up there too if you guys uh, yeah. swing by we'll be coming absolutely by. we're, we're spending some time on the disguise booth so yeah it'd be good to yeah. uh, good to talk further yeah right. perfect brilliant <laughs> journey's booked us in so awesome. cool thank you very Good. much indeed we thanks better, for having we me better keep take care guys getting this getting this queue down thank <laughs> you <laughs> cheers bye bye <laughs> So uh, <coughs> I believe so we're talking to away, and I hope it's Majewell. Yeah, yeah, Mike Nan from Majewell. Yeah, um, yeah. We're just. Uh, I've, I've been been speaking to Mike for years on email, but I've never seen him. So this is going to be a revelation. Um, oh, right. Probably vice versa. So if he, if he doesn't stay long, we know. We, well, know, yeah. we know he doesn't like what he says. Well, <laughs> so um, yeah. 
So do um, you do um, subscribe to the channel. We'll be, we'll be doing loads of videos at NAB. Uh, we'll be roaming the hall for the four days, talking to exhibitors like Disguise, our major one, actually. Yeah. Um, we normally spend about 30 minutes on each booth doing about two or three videos, don't we? And it's always quite yeah, good to... try and cover what they're... Uh, you just give them a bit more time than they get in a... In a in an in an area in a in a forum like this where we've we've got a big churn, even though we've got a massive queue. Yeah, people, that's it. Yeah. But he's uh, cool. he's in. We're here, Mike. Great to see you. Hey guys, how are you? Yeah, fantastic. I was just saying to Matt, I've been talking to you for years and never put a um, a picture to a face. So there we go. Well, face to a name. We, we get this now. We get to meet at NAB. So it's <laughs> looking, fantastic. <laughs> looking forward to it. Yeah. So Mike, we're talking Magewell. Uh, Magewell yep. have put their products into three core categories, haven't they? We've got capture, convert, and stream. Um, yep. And I'm guessing at NAB, you're going to have new releases for each of those three categories. We're going to have a bunch of new releases in each one. Um, you know, I know you're on a schedule here, so I'll focus on just one in each category, I think, go for this it, point. Please. But, okay. Uh, the floor is yep. yours, Mike. Off you go. <laughs> Fair enough. You know, starting with the capture side of things. Now, a lot of people know us for our USB capture dongles because they're like the easiest way to get a signal into software. And I think you've used some of them on your show as well. Yep, absolutely. Well, one of the things that a lot of people have faced, you know, if you're a producer doing a multi-camera show, if you try to hook up multiple USB devices to, say, a laptop, you quickly run into the laptop's limitations of what it can do with the, US the USB bus. Yeah. yeah. So what we've got now, last year we introduced a product called USB Fusion, and it's a multi-input capture device that connects via USB. It can take two HDMI inputs, a USB webcam input, you can upload media files into it, and you can switch and mix all of that in the hardware, and then it feeds just the one result into the USB of the computer, so it overcomes that limitation. There's also a companion tablet app with a whole lot of other cool presentation features, things like you can do note-taking, you can draw on the video in real time, so like telestration for sports. You can do graphic overlays. That's what you're seeing next to me right now. I'm actually running this through a USB Fusion. Okay. So for NAB, you know, we announced that last year. For NAB, we're adding some new features. Now, much like two guests ago, it's a few days too early for me to give you all the details, so it's more of a teaser. <laughs> but suffice it to say that what we're doing is dramatically expanding the input possibilities of the device. Um, you know, with a whole lot of new types of devices that you could connect to it. So, you know, it's already a very flexible device. Now you're going to be able to bring in even more types of devices. And we'll be announcing that next week. So keep an eye on our website for that. And, you know, we're looking forward to showing it to people at the show. Mm. So that's the capture category. Um, you mentioned conversion. And all of our conversion stuff that we're focusing on is really about the IP workflow revolution. And our, the main new product we're showing actually isn't even a new video over IP product. It's a new audio over IP product. Uh, we announced recently something called the ProConvert Audio DX. And it's Majewell's first product with support for Dante Audio networking. And it's pretty cool because it can convert between Dante Audio, NDI Audio, SRT Audio, and also has analog audio in and out. So it can work as a capture or playout device too. Really is like a universal translator of IP audio. Now, of course, we're going to be showing our video IP over IP solutions, too. So we're going to have demonstrations of end-to-end -end NDI and SRT workflows, all managed by the latest version of Majewell's centralized management software. So last category you mentioned, you know, would be remiss if I didn't mention our live streaming solutions. That's going to be, you know, the focus there is the NAB debut of our new Ultra Encode AIO, sort of advanced live media encoder. Now, we had the Ultra Encode family already. It's been very popular. This builds on it with new features, including uh, HDMI and SDI inputs in a single box, the ability to mix those inputs side by side or picture in picture, 4K encoding and streaming, uh, simultaneous multi protocol output, and also recording to media files within the device. So, I mentioned uh, simultaneous multi protocol streaming. This device is incredibly flexible that you can use it for not just live streaming, but also remote production. It supports uh, H.264 and H.265 compression. Uh, Format-wise, protocol-wise, it supports SRT, RTMP, uh, HLS, TVU's ISSP format, and a whole lot of other acronyms I won't get into right now because it's yeah. becoming acronym yeah. soup. But <laughs> it's also perfect for IP production workflows because it supports NDIHX2 and the newer NDIHX3 as well. So it's probably one of the most versatile encoder boxes on the market for any application you have that needs live, whether that's streaming or other types of things. Yeah, cool. Absolutely. Well, that's a very good roundup, 
Mike, thank you very much. So you're in Central Hall, booth... 5031. 5031. So looking forward to seeing everybody there. We've got other new products that I'm not even mentioning here because I know we're on a time frame, but uh, come by. We're looking forward to seeing you. Yeah, we're yeah, trying to smash we're gonna our way be, through the queue. We're going to be spending time on the major stand, so um, we'll get those exclusive interviews with you um, on the booth and we can find out more then. Absolutely. Look forward to seeing you in Vegas. Thanks, Mike. Cheers. Take care. Bye-bye. Cheers. So, so we're next going we're over to studio technologies. Yeah, we have. We've got to wait for Gordon to Capes. Is room. yeah, we just wait for Mike to hang oh, up. Oh, we need Mike to hang up. And then uh, we'll have Gordon Capes from Studio Technologies talking about well, new products from NAB. Yeah, uh, which would um, be cool. Um, he's still trying to hang up. Oh, there he is. Right, he's gone. Do you know my knee's just gone? Oh, <laughs> there you go. You sit down too long. Hello, Gordon. Wait, do you, do you, would you like to take a break? No, You've been doing this for a while. I, th I think we've kept no. you waiting long enough. Yeah. Oh, and that's, the other that's people okay. behind you. Yeah. Gordon, so, it's great to see you. Um, doesn't seem a year since we saw you last, but it's great to see you. Um, what are you talking about this year at NAB? Well, we're, we're doing two things. We're showing a new product, which I've got with me right here. This is a... 12 channel Dante intercom station, right. which adds to our line of Dante enabled intercom uh, equipment, uses standard Ethernet networks, you know, standard Dante. Yep. So we'll be showing this. It'll be a nice addition to probably our 20 products that we already have. Yep. But also, I want to talk to people and make them um, feel better about where we're going and where people in the Dante world are going, because I know that delivery has been an issue over the past, you know, year or two for lots of manufacturers, but things are getting rapidly, uh, better, uh, parts are coming yeah. in and, um, we've used the, the past, uh, year, year and a half, instead of, you know, climbing under my desk and whimpering, I've decided that, you know, we're going to use the time to improve our products, to change components when they aren't going to be available. So really, I think when we come out of this in two, three months, um, our products are going to be, you know, I hate to say it, but better, better than ever. We're using newer processors and newer, newer parts, adding features. So instead of just saying we can't deliver what we've been making for the past few years, what we're now delivering and will deliver soon are really better products. Yeah, you well, you probably did suffer a little bit from the supply chain, but instead of suffering, you've responded and, 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 and got out there and done something different and therefore better. Right. We, we hope so. It was uh, pretty brutal when we call somebody and say, are you on tap to deliver parts in six months, like you said? And they said, oh, no, it's going to be one year. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a hit. But, but uh, what we did was, and hopefully other companies did it, too, is we were pretty proactive and we ordered parts knowing that they'd be a year out. They're coming in now. And frankly, sometimes we're getting more parts than we want. But we're, you know, we're. We're, uh, you could put them on the open market to it. for immediate delivery and just make money out of component. No, no sorry. <laughs> anyway, move on. Um, right. The, <laughs> the um, so well, you know, yeah, a new Dante panel there. Um, is there anything else we can we, we that'll attract people to the booth this 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 year at NAB show? I think mostly um, we're we like to talk to people about their application and see where our products fit in. So it's not, you know, any one specific product, but I think we have um, an ecosystem of products that can really address people, whether they're a university or a college or um, a broadcast operation. Um, we've done some uh, work for some military customers and not on the weapon side, just on the communication right. side. And, and uh, also in, in the industrial area um, and a little bit aerospace. So we like to talk to people about applications, how our products fit in. And maybe if there's a specific feature that we need to add to address their market, you know, we, we really enjoy doing that. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. So where are we going to send people? Pro probably to roughly a normal place where you, where you normally are. You're always in the same spot. Cent uh, Central C2730, is that correct? Should be right in the central hall. We've been there for many years and uh, I'll be there and a couple of my colleagues who are engineers. So um, if you want to talk tech, we we are ready to uh, to do that down we'll to the bit level. Solve it. Fantastic. 
Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you, Gordon. Thank you we're, we're out of time. Thank you for waiting and persevering with the queue. And we're looking forward to spending even more time with you over in, in Vegas. Okay, great. Thanks again, guys. Thanks. Cheers. Bye-bye. Yeah, thank you. Cheers, Gordon. Right. Uh, who have got next? We got, I think we've got, Heidi, got Heidi. Heidi Shakes for, for Memnon. Memnon now. Um, um, do you know Memnon? Well, it rings a bell, yeah, but I, so I can't remember why. Um, Heidi, how are you doing? Hi, Matt. How are you? Hi. Yeah. You, apparently, you ring a bell, but you need to tell <laughs> us. Who would know? <laughs> yeah. so, I'm guessing I've probably got some of the older technology that's not really been shown much today, given we're talking about NAB behind me. Well, let's. the floor is yours, Heidi. Obviously, we're talking about uh, NAB, but yeah. give us a quick idea of what Memnon does and what's exciting you about NAB. Um, well, NAB is just getting back to the conference. So obviously we were there last year, it wasn't as big as it's been before and it's just catching up with people and getting the energy back about being part of this industry, which I love. Yeah. Um, Memnon is all about taking legacy content and making it accessible again. So we really take companies that own content on that journey to actually unlock the content that's locked on very old media formats and some not so old media formats that are slightly less stable than perhaps we thought they were in the 90s, mm. um, making them accessible again. Okay. So, and so and you're offer, are, are, you, are you offering a service? Are you offering hardware solution? Are you offering... You know, we offer the end-to-end the -end solution. So we have facilities. Um, we have our own media migration facilities in London, uh, Brussels, North America, and New Zealand. But we also have on-prem solutions. So... One of the things about Memnon is we're sitting on a, 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 a very, very significant catalogue of legacy, very, very, very old kit that's obviously no longer being made and no longer being, um, the parts are no longer being produced. So we have a significant in inventory for that. And then we have the, a very sophisticated sort of technology backbone that sits over it all, which allows us to do mass migration on-prem with clients' facilities, which from a global perspective minimises the risk of having to move archives across the water or, you know, across... By, by land. Um, so you've got all these legacy uh, formats, for argument's sake, legacy machines. You've got yeah. them pretty much in every location that you just mentioned? Um, oh, we have, yeah, we definitely have them in every location. We also have on site, we're just spinning up a couple of new solutions at the moment, one down in South Africa to deliver about 220,000 hours of content down there, another one in Greece to deliver uh, 180,000 hours, and we've just recently launched a full service facility down in NZ. Wow. Um, which in the next four years will deliver about 400,000 hours of content. And so at the show, at, 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 at the show when people... I'm not bringing a two-inch machine before you ask, no. <laughs> Getting into? I missed that. <laughs> um, at the show, when, when people come and visit, the, you, you, you've got a booth at the, at the show uh, yeah. or a meeting room or w w wherever you are, they come to, what are they? what are you going to show them? What are, you what are they experiencing on the show floor? So we've been more talking about the the journey of actually how we can actually support their media migration plans. So again, right. we're seeing a lot of archives moving from on-prem storage solutions to the cloud. So it's how we can actually facilitate that and support that as well. Mm. So it's really talking about how we can actually fit into their workflows to help, particularly the legacy content um, that wasn't born digital, or if it was born digital on is now sitting on digital formats, how we can actually make that available. Yeah, yeah, it's not only the and ancient stuff; it's I, also I, digi digital beta cameras. Yeah, and I guess I'm I'm interested, um, Heidi, in in the longevity of a business such as yours, because you think of archiving. At what point does everything that needed archiving has been archived? I mean, I how much how much stuff is out there? Yeah. I don't think it ever will be. I yeah. think the bigger problem is going to be how many head hours are actually left. So I think that right, the, okay. at yeah. the moment, I think that the head hours will run out before the, before oh, the wow. assets will, hmm. um, which is the bigger risk because there aren't more parts being made. We're working with a number of different providers. And luckily, I have a lot of engineers um, that are basically rebuilding and cannibalizing the machines that we've got. So we'll take, you know, one to, to fix one machine, we might have to take parts from four different ones. Of course, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. So where do we send people to find you at, at NAB? Um, we're going to be in the West Hall in the AWS Partner Village, uh, the oh, yeah. Content Experiential Zone. Fantastic. Good stuff. We'll and if sure people aren't at NAB, where can they find you online? I guess it's memnon.com? Memnon.com, absolutely. Fantastic. Yeah. That's M-E-M-N-O-N. N-O-N, -N, that's correct. Yeah. But it's lovely to see you, Heidi. Uh, thank Thanks you for so telling much. us all about your your activities. Yeah. And hopefully we'll see you at NAB. Fabulous. Thanks a lot, guys. Brilliant. Thank by. you. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye-bye.
Right. So, Neil Blake. Neil Blake from Axel AI is going to be with us in yep. a few seconds. Um, they released a cloud editing solution recently. Um, yes, they did. They did. Right. You could, um, yeah, you could upload sort of your your content directly to them for a long time, um, and then edit they got remotely. A cloud. Yeah, yeah. Uh, cloud editing. So I'm sure we'll be well. talking to. Here he is. I think it was called Axel Edit actually. <laughs> Neil, how are <laughs> you doing? Hello there. How are you? <laughs> Very well, thank you. Very we were good. just discussing your recent-ish launch of your cloud service, but uh, should we give you Excellent. the floor and you could tell Go us on. what you're talking to people about at NAB? Thank you very much, yes. Um, I think what's very clear is everyone is super excited to get back to the trade shows. And yeah. just listening to what people were saying in the, the green room and also what they've been saying here and also just visiting a lot of shows, every, there's, a, there's a demand for trade shows. So it's uh, it's great to be involved with the 100th anniversary of NEB, I think. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, we're we were in North Hall. Um, we're in N1021. Um, we've got a little booth, but we're going to be cramming a lot into it. Um, working backwards, Axel Edit. That's our cloud-based um, uh, editing service. But just to preface that, one thing we've noticed is most of our customers are not ready for the cloud. Everyone talks about it, but when we were actually going to see customers and talking to them, they're going, now. We, we've still got everything online. We've got petabytes of content. We don't, we're not ready to move to the cloud yet. So, you know, we can help them do that. And, and also, we've been helping people work remotely for, for years, even before the pandemic. Um, we've been helping people work remote. Mm. So, I mean, at, at yeah. NEB, we're going to be showing um, Axel AI, our radically simple media management. Um, with face recognition, speech to text with over 40 languages, um, object recognition with over 1,200 objects, which is cool, and obviously speech um, logo recognition as well. Connector is our workflow engine. Um, it is key to allow us to provide um, repetitive workflows or complex workflows. Yeah. And the, facility, the, the, the um, philosophy is we keep Axel simple and push everything into Connector. And it's allowed us to do projects that we'd never even been able to touch in the past. And of course, the, the hero is the uh, the Axel Edit. Um, and as I say, it's our hybrid cloud um, management and editing application. Um, I just mentioned that our cloud customers aren't ready to move completely to the cloud, but they are ready to run in hybrid workflows. Mm -hmm. um, so they can upload content um, to Axel Edit either directly from Axel or even just dragging and dropping. The key thing about it, um, it's a little bit about like um, Google Docs, where you can have multiple people logged in and they can work on the same file. So a number of people can be working on the same sequence. Um, an editor can be building it. Another editor could be working in a second version in the same sequence. And a producer could be looking at them both and approving everything there and then. So the whole thing about that is we're really speeding up the review and approval process. Yeah. yeah. And um, are, that, are they editing a proxy file then? Nope. Now, no, well, yes, they are, yes. But they've uploaded the high res. Yeah. Um, they're editing with the proxy. And then when they publish it, they get the high res. Right, sure. Um, yeah, yeah. We also integrate with a lot of um, social media sites so they can actually publish directly from Axel Edit into social media, both in 16 by 9 and 9 by 16. So if they are shooting mm. on their phones, they can edit in that format and then publish it straight to, uh, you know, like a Vimeo or TikTok T or something TikTok, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if they do need to complete something in Premiere Pro, for example, they can download an EDL and then relink back to the original content, uh, which is very cool as well because they've got all their content on Prem anyway. Mm, so yeah. there's there's lots of things to talk about. I mean, it's a 10 by 10 booth, but we're squashing all this in, which is very cool. We will also be demoing Axel Edit via 5G. Um, as well. So you do not need huge amounts of um, network throughput to uh, to actually edit in the cloud, which is very cool. May we ask how you're getting your 5G connection on the booth? Are you, are you using some sort of WYSI <laughs> encoder? <'Cause... laughs> I'm plugging my phone in. <laughs> okay, okay. So, well, that's the same as we did yeah. in ISC a few months ago. We were roaming around the, the halls with a tethered 5G with and actually... Two phones. Yeah. It was okay. Yeah, we yeah, did. We did the same thing at IBC, um, 
and it worked very nicely. We could do our remote um, editing demos. We could log into remote Axel systems to show um, face recognition. Uh, it worked very nicely. Yeah, cool. fantastic, brilliant. So and remind us where we are again. Yeah, where you are. We're we're in the North Hall. Yeah, yeah. N one zero two one. So ten twenty one. Ten twenty one. Ten twenty one. Brilliant, Neil. Axel AI, Axel Edit. Thank you very much indeed for that. Look forward Thank to you. seeing you over there. And we will see yep. you over there. I'm yeah. Sure. Yeah. Cool. Brilliant. All right. Thank Thanks. you, Neil. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Right. So we are talking prompters, no doubt, now. I with, imagine so. Uh, Michael from QScript. Uh, when Neil logs out. Just need Neil to hit the leave button and we'll he's no doubt... He's talking to somebody, so. but he's... he's Where's well, the not. green room, you see? It's the place to be. Well... He doesn't yeah. want to go. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. There's Michael. I recognise Michael now. Hello, Michael. Hello. Hello. Good to see you both. Yeah. Great to see you too. Um... Michael, let's cut straight to NAB. What's new? What's new? Well, um, we have a couple of different things new, and it's very, very well timed for what's happening in in, uh, in in the world. We have a cloud offering, and that's quite exciting to us because we've always had the ability to do uh, prompting anywhere over the internet, but you needed a VPN. And it was a little heavy lifting for some of the applications. Now we have the ability that you go into the field with no VPN. Uh, you literally can plug your controllers into the side of your monitor and scroll from, from uh, local places. Um, with what's happening, you, you know, we, we talk about the uh, primary season starting in February. Well, that might be when the first votes are, but my customers are all preparing for a summertime uh, on of traveling to all the different events right. that are going to be happening, the speeches, the the rallies, uh, all preparing for it. So when you think you could be doing that without having, you know, uh, the prompt is actually physically there in the field, you have your monitor there, your monitor hooks up to the internet, no VPN, plug in your controller, and you're flying. Uh, a really well-timed offering, I think. Mm. Um, in addition to that, we have a new NP NTP Wi-Fi uh, system where uh, you connect it to the back of our clock, and now we pick up NTP from Wi-Fi, and again, all your cameras and everything are on exactly the same time. You don't have to worry about LTCs or, or, or VITSEs or DBITSEs. It's a, it's a really sleek, small, creative product that positions us for the, the kind of travel we, we see happening by our customers. Our customers are, are of course, are the studios, but those yeah. same studios are putting people in the field and doing field studios. It's not a headshot anymore in the field. They put a full studio out there mm, and, yeah. and they put it up for one day or two days and it's gone and it's off to the next place. And we have the kind of product that tears down, goes up, well thought out, and, and you really can move with our products. Um, our wireless uh, scroll control has been out a while now, but 915 megahertz, they work anywhere. That's in the States if you're uh, in a uh, EU person is going to be the 858 megahertz yeah. one. But the true RF devices, no Bluetooth, no Wi-Fi, you're on air live. You can't be taking those ch those chances. Um, so we have that. Uh, we're, we've uh, been doing more and more with our QTalk, and that's basically one of the ways you can control the prompter speed. Instead of having someone turning a knob or using a foot control, it literally follows the, the uh, presenter speech. Um, really a nice product fits in some places really great some places it's uh it's right for some places it isn't but it's one of the things that we're keeping a very very well-rounded offering mm -hmm. from the wireless foot controls and hand controls the wired controls the field controls um we're really really feeling that it's going to be an exciting election season for us mm. One of the one of the challenges that we always face with with you said in the field and portability is is is, is the size of, of prompting, and you know folding things up, hoods, monitors, you know the kit is mm -hmm. it's, it's quite it, it just it is going to be quite cumbersome. Um, have you worked on that a bit with with the at all? We've done two different things on that. One of them is. We do have a 10.4, which is an absolutely gorgeous prompt. <laughs> yeah. It folds up small. Um, but we've really looked at the way we build the kit more than the size, and I'll get to that in a second. Our That's folding fine. hoods yeah. fold up with the glass in them, so you don't have to take them out. It's time-consuming. You don't get fingerprints. They don't break. It's a smaller hood. Our, our mounts come apart with no loose pieces. You don't need tools. It's very fast. It's also very intuitive. You can look at it and figure it out. 
Uh, you don't have to slide down a set of rails and stop when you balance. You don't have to hope something snaps in place. It's really designed for the run and gun. And, and the way that happened was we designed our kit with rental houses in the room and they were brutal, but we got a great kit for it. And that goes from our, from our 10.4 to our 19 inch. And, and yeah. the reason I point that out is you say, oh, it's in the field and I want to be small and light. Well, the pieces you're doing in the field are tending to be longer and longer. And the talent isn't getting any younger, so they need a bigger screen in a lot of cases. Mm. Yeah. A small, a small, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. a small yeah. piece. The ten point four is fine. We have a yeah. beautiful fifteen inch now as well. But if you're going to be doing, you know, a a portable studio in the field, yeah, you're going to want a seventeen or a nineteen. Um, but we do have the range. The other thing we have is our QME software uh, application, and basically the QME allows you to take uh, a. a a phone, a tablet, or whatever you want, and download all your scripts. It's not a true prompter, but you have everything in front of you. So what you'll see is you'll see the reporter sitting there with the tablet yeah. in his hand, and he's just moving it as he's going through his notes. It's, it's a beautiful way you can get all your rundowns from your from your newsroom systems and uh, be up to date at all times with it. And it's a real nice, fast, small, lightweight way to maneuver in the field. Cool. So I expect we're going to find you in around about the usual spot at uh, at NAB, which is just inside Central uh, Hall. Do you remember your stand number? I... <laughs> Do I remember my stand number? Of course not. <laughs> four four two, two one. I have here. C so four four two That's one. It. There we go. Thank, thank, thank as you. As long as that. it matches what you. We are good. we are sadly out of time because we could got talk, we could talk forever, but uh, hopefully yeah. we'll see you over at the show. I look forward to it. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, we'll Michael. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Up. Cheers. Bye. So, now we're, so on we're on to Client. Gary Rosen Gary from Rosen. Client Technologies. Yeah, we read this um, news out the other day. I seem to recall. Yeah, we, we often get news from Client, don't we? It um, was, was interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you're on the NAB website, do check out the stories they've been getting from people. NAB.org forward slash 100 forward slash stories where um, anybody has been writing stories to commemorate the 100th centenary of the NAB show. Some really interesting... Um, First centenary. 100 years, sorry. 100th centenary? Don't be picky. I'm sure it says 100 centenary. Well, it is, the... it's, 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 it's the centenary, isn't it? Well, anyway. You are picky. There we go. I'm being... Yeah. <laughs> So, so <laughs> but we're, we're, there's some there's some good personal experiences, isn't there? Because they've asked people yes. to, you know, what's been your favourite moment? What, what's been your experience? It's funny how the number of people go back to 2010 when there was the volcano that stopped there a lot of people getting home. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah. that was. Uh, yeah. um, if we get time, we'll go on to our experience of that, but no, maybe not. Hello, Gary. How are you doing? Hello. Good afternoon. It's good to see you. So, Appliant Technologies, um, NAB, three weeks away. How are you preparing? Are you ready? What can people look forward to? You know, um, we're, we're, we're excited. Uh, we also participated in uh, ISE recently in Barcelona. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say that was the first post-pandemic show. Didn't feel post or pre-pandemic. Absolutely. Correct. Yeah. Regular trade show and uh, hoping NAB will be the same. Yeah. Um, you know, kind of getting back to, to normal. Um, I know we'll have a good participation. A lot of our partners will be out there. A lot of our customers will be there. So yeah. I'm uh, I'm excited and happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, we were amazed at the numbers of people in Barcelona back in February for IC. It was, it was as you say, it was like a pre-pandemic show, a normal show, so to speak. So yeah, fingers yeah. crossed that it's the same. So what are you talking to people about this year at the show? Well, you know, we're a wireless comms provider. And um, we have a few new additions to our product line, which are kind of exciting. Um, we have a, uh, a new transceiver coming out that is IP rated. And uh, the idea for that is to be able to do a lot of outdoor events and not worry about weather, which is uh, always a challenge. Uh, we've also expanded the product line with some interoperability for some of our existing products. So we have in our, in our higher end line on our crewcom line, we have a couple of different uh, products, the CB2, which is kind of a, a smaller system, but has the same radio module. And then we have the Crewcom, which is our flagship line. That's the infrastructure with roaming and you know tremendous options for it that can get quite large. So um, we've taken the smaller belt pack, which is a bit less expensive and a bit more uh, yeah. bit simpler 
for the users who don't need the larger system and made that operable with the large, with the uh, crew comp system. So, um, you know, more value, better pricing, and a simpler interface for those who just don't need a larger system, but need a lot of users and need a lot of utility for roaming and other things. Mm. And so that's, uh, remind me, this, uh, the CC, this, we also, we read out the news recently, the CCU08. Zero eight. Thank you. Yeah, I missed that. So this, so uh, prior to this, for the Crewcom line, we had the uh, CCU twenty two and forty four, and it. they were uh, the amount of I/O. The twenty two had two two wire and two four wire. Forty four was four of each, and uh, you know, from demand for the broadcast market, where the two wire is not a popular interface anymore, uh, we've gone to an eight four wire system to allow more I/O uh, and more. Uh, uh, more availability of input. So with a scaled up system at that point, you're talking about the 32 IO channels for a, a 4CU system. Yeah, cool. But really quite expandable from where we were. Mm. So where um, where are we gonna send people to uh, to find you at, at, at NAB this year? You know, oh, that's a wonderful well, we've got it. We've got it written down if you, if you haven't. So we, we normally we just got to hope. Yeah, I actually up. I actually don't have the booth number in front of me, and we do so many shows. I, I don't <laughs> Central yeah. seventy five twenty one. Yeah, I've got you in Central Hall. Yeah, yeah. seven five two one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I had the I had the C seventy five twenty something, but I didn't know the last digit. <laughs> well, that's the one, yeah. and we'll be yeah looking forward to seeing the new CCU oh eight as well. Be cool. Yeah, so they, 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 thank they you guys. It all up. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Gary. Yeah. We'll see you over we're there. We're going to try and catch up a bit of time because <laughs> we're already 15 <laughs> minutes over running. <laughs> all right, cheers. Take care. Bye-bye. See you later. Now we're talking to um, a regular, really, Freddie Freddy. from New Gen Audio. Um, he's going to be queuing up very soon. And then we, we are approaching the end, actually. Oh. Uh, I think we've got a, pro a couple that are probably Freddy we've... And, um, uh, quilt might turn up. Yep, and we've probably got a couple that we've missed that are going to come in, and then we're we're catching up with Neil and the NAB team just before we close. So that'd be quite cool. Uh, do make sure you subscribe, hit the red button on the channel to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, and if you want to catch up on what we've been doing over the day, you can just scrub backwards on the YouTube timeline. If you go back to 12 o'clock UK British summer time, you'll see the um, hour that was hosted by Jenny, Mark Evans and Amber Holbrook, where they were talking to nine very inspirational women from the industry, talking tech, NAB and all that sort of stuff. It was really, really cool. That was from about 12 to 1.15 because they overran, didn't they? And they messed the day up, really. 12.15 to 1.15. <laughs> we started it. Oh, I actually, we started, yeah. They had a late start. Really want to be. But, uh, yeah. yeah, really, really um, good show, worth watching, definitely. Yep. Um, Freddie is here. Hi, Freddie. Hi, how are you doing? Yeah, great, thank you. Your T-shirt is beating like it's alive. <laughs> I mean, it could well be alive, who's to say? <laughs> the 80s <laughs> certainly lives. Yeah. So, <laughs> no. Freddie, nice Good to, to see you, see you again. Excellent and, to see uh, you. Yeah. Um, new gen uh, at NAB Show 2023. Go on, what's happening? Why are people coming uh, to see you? Why are people coming to see us? I ask myself that same <laughs> they're question. They're coming to see, they're coming to see no. what, he, what, what he's <laughs> wearing. <I> yeah. <laughs> That's it. Um, well, so actually, I won't be at NAB this time. Oh. I'll be at NAM, but not NAB. But some of the other new gen team members will be there at NAB. Okay. Um, and what we're going to be demonstrating, for the most part, is a brand new plugin of ours called Jotter. Um, that's going to be out on the 4th of April. So it'll have been out a week or so before NAB. But um, yeah, we'll be kind of introducing that to the world um at these two trade shows this month fantastic so what uh, so brief briefly because we are short you know you've been waiting in the queue but jota what, what what's how is it what's it solving so jota is a utility plugin it's designed for making notes comments and annotations on a project timeline within a digital audio workstation so if you imagine when you're using something like Google Docs or something like that and you uh, make suggestions on the document and other people can um, see those, you can kind yeah. of work collaboratively remotely from each other. The idea is that it's essentially the audio equivalent of that. So you'll have notes locked to the project timeline at specific points, um, locked to the time code, and you'll be able to collaborate with um, 
either your bandmates or your colleagues if you're working on a film or TV show or whatever it might be to give each other feedback, make comments, or even if you just want to make a note for yourself to check back on at a later date. Um, so it's just trying to simplify and streamline working remotely from other people. For anyone who doesn't use a digital audio workstation, it can also be run as a standalone application. And for someone who doesn't even want to download that, it can be exported as a .csv file so people can um, open it up in like Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel or whatever. If someone still wants to be involved, but they have a have a, a vendetta against New Gen for whatever reason, um, they can print it out. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> yeah. For the real Luddites. Fantastic. Where do we send people to see whoever's going to be at NAB? Not you. Uh, not me. Um, that's a good question. What is the booth? We have number? got it. Uh, uh, it's you're one oh one six. North it is N1016. You beat me to it. But really? uh, that's right. N1016. You can speak to one of my colleagues um, at the show. And if you want to go to the New Gen website, you can go to newgenaudio.com slash Jotter and find out more information about the new plugin. Freddie, it's a, always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you very much for all the information. So, uh, we are disappointed, aren't we, that we're not going to see you because it's always good to see yeah, you. But see um, always do a good video. We'll see you in Amsterdam, maybe. Yes, see you in Amsterdam. Distance yep. makes the heart grow fonder. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, have a good one. All right. You too, mate. Take lot. care of yourself. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. So, bye -bye. Yeah. so Excellent. let's go into Edgeo now. I think it's Edgeo. Yeah, if you want to find out anything about the products that New Gen Audio do, I say just go to kitplus.com, type in New Gen, N U G E N, and it will come up with all the news articles, all the stories, art, um, news stories, articles, and better than that, if you scroll down a little bit, it will have every video, which I think Freddie probably much features in most yeah. of them. Um, Guy really knows his stuff, doesn't he? As you'd expect, really. Well, but, he does, um, yeah, he does. It, 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 it's, yeah. it's always um, really good to talk to him. So, so um, not long now before we're, uh, well, we're coming towards the end and we'll be catching up with, with well, with Neil and with NAB. Okay. Yeah, we're going to be looking at NAB. Uh, we've got Jason Freelander, Freelander from Edgeo coming in at the moment. Jason. Hello, Jason. Hey, guys. How you doing? Yeah, great. How are you? Good. Probably not as tired as you two. No, no. Apologies <laughs> if you've been waiting in a queue for a while, but hopefully you've done a bit of networking. <laughs> yeah, we've been good. Just had some really interesting people to talk to. That's <laughs> so um, that sounds a bit disingenuous. I meant that. Uh, <laughs> AGO's attendance at NAB this year. What are you? What are you showcasing? What are people going to get excited about? Well, it's a big show for us. Um, you know, this is our first show at NAB after Limelight had acquired Edgecast uh, about a year ago. So it's the first time we're showing up as a unified company as an AGO brand. Um, so we're really excited to showcase um, a lot of enhancements that we've made to our uplink platform and our media delivery platform. And, you know, really want to show how media organizations can harness uplink and our streaming solution to monetize their and deliver to uh, global audiences. So we're excited to get back out there, let everybody know what we've been working on for the last few months and show everybody uh, what Edgeo has to offer for the market. Fantastic. And um, and where where are we going to send people to, uh, to 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 find you? I mean, I, actually, I can see it. It depends. Uh, the last two or three people don't know where they are. <laughs> be done, yeah. I, I, I don't, I'm not sure exactly uh, where yeah. I am right now. So, no, yeah. no, there you go. Yeah, you know, since this year was our first time back, we really wanted to put a focus on meeting with some of our core customers, core prospects, and. Uh, and partners. So we have a uh, we have a room in the hospitality suite section of the floor, and right. we also have a wind suite uh, where we will be taking most of our executive meetings and stuff like that. Cool. So, so no booth, no booth this year. You know, ready to ready to just have those serious conversations. But you've got a you've got a room in uh, over west, I think. Yeah, correct. Correct. Three, three five, five seven, seven three. three. Yeah. yeah. So the people you're meeting, what are the in a nutshell, as I say, as short as you can, what are the really most interesting updates you're going to share with them? Yeah. So, you know, one of our main focuses ever since we kind of founded Uplink about, you know, 13 years ago at this point was really to um, scale operationally and viewership scale within a, a unified platform and really offer that kind of end-to-end uh, -end experience for content owners to seamlessly integrate their broadcast workflows and their online workflows. And obviously over the last few years, those things have come, you know, together and, and are now 
you know, delivering to all ends of the spectrum. So we're showing some updates around uh, reduced latency with our full end-to-end -end platform with the ability to serve ads and all your business rules to, you know, uh, 10 million plus concurrent viewers. Um, one of the things we found with a lot of our core customers is that ultra low latency is not as important as reduced latency, matching broadcast, and being able to monetize every opportunity. So we're really excited that we finally have full platform functionality at that reduced latency, um, full DVR functionality as well. Um, and then um, one thing we're really excited about, it's odd, but is, you know, our specialty has been inserting ads and keeping those live streams and those VOD events and the live events acting as if they're watching broadcast cable, right? So um, we have the ability now to hook in any, uh, we have a universal ad config, so anybody can hook in any of their ad vendors that they want, any of their ADS, and we can serve the ads. They don't just have to specifically be with GAM or Freewheel or any, they can use the vendor of their choice. Brilliant. Jason, thank you very much. Um, West Hall 3573 is the place to be, it sounds like. Yep. All right, guys. Thank cool. you so much for your time. Thank you, much indeed. Cheers. Thank, thanks bye -bye. for waiting. Bye bye. Uh, we're going to quilt now. Quilt. Lisa, Lisa is going to be waiting uh, for us. Once. Strictly speaking, our last guest guest. Yeah, then we're going to be chatting with Neil and the NAB team. I think we're yeah. going to all be chatting to them, aren't we? Rather than just Neil, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 I, I think we're all involved in Scott. And I think Lisa's in the room. Hi, Lisa. Hello. Hello. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. <laughs> you're the, you're, you're our final official guest. <laughs> How does that feel? Yeah. <laughs> Feels good. Feels really good. There you go. We've reached the end. So, uh, so Lisa, Quilt at uh, NAB 2020, I was going to say 2022 then, uh, NAB Show 2023. Tell us, why are we coming to see you? Absolutely. So um, just like last year, um, it seems like yesterday, uh, yeah. uh, talking, <laughs> talking to you all. Yeah. Um, Quilt is is still on that mission to deliver content in the quality it is imagined to all neighborhoods, big and small. And the way that we do this is through partnerships with service providers, directly collaborating with service providers so that content providers everywhere may deliver their experiences um, directly from the service provider edge, closer to their subscribers um, and at higher quality than ever before possible. So and go on, go on, carry on. I won't oh, interrupt. Well, I was just thinking, so what's changed since the last time we spoke? What's the new? So, so actually piece? what's happened since this yeah. time last year is that there's been this large embrace of this approach that we're offering. Yeah. Um, since last year, um, I can definitely say that, you know, well, it has uh, definitely become the technology and commercial leader of, of open caching movement. And, um, and basically what this means is that we've now onboarded close to 200 service providers and content providers. Um, this includes many members of the uh, NCTC right here in the U.S., yeah. Uh, as well as Airtel and JCom. And just this week, uh, we uh, announced Telefonica. And we have uh, over 100 um, terabits per second of all edge capacity. Yep. This is 700 pops in 30 countries. And we're proud to say that we're serving a billion subscribers worldwide. Um, so other than big telcos and big, <coughs> the big, the big, big world, are, is there other, are there other customers that you'd like to turn up? Who's going to be the ideal punter? At, at, so, at so really, this is this is a, a new approach and really a playground for content providers everywhere to be able to again de deliver content much closer to subscribers than before possible. This is really a uh, a quality play. So this is ability to uh, deliver at quality. Um, the reason our mission is is deliver quality um, as it's been imagined by yeah. those content providers to neighborhoods big and small, because like what we've done with NCTC, um, you know, this isn't just for large service providers and people who want to deliver content through them. It's also um, reaching uh, what have been historically har harder places yeah. to serve. 
uh, video content too. So this it, it's been a, a big year for that sort of progress for us. And we're really proud to together be uh, exhibiting alongside our partner, Cisco, in um, in the West Hall this year. Hmm. So do we find you on the way on the Cisco stand or just nearby? <laughs> We will be on the Cisco stand, and then we will be speaking around uh, the event. Uh, we'll right. actually, I'll be on a panel uh, at the NAB Diversity Symposium. Uh, it's building a better media business with uh, DNI, and that's in the West Hall. That's Sunday, April sixteenth at two p. two thirty. And then uh, Dan Rayburn will conduct a fireside chat with our VP of sales, uh, Gautier Demon, uh, at the streaming summit. And okay. um, I, in our most recent addition to the leadership, John Jonathan Candy, will host a session in the Innovation Theater as well. Brilliant. Well, thank you, Lisa. That's a great um, update of what we can expect from Quill to NAB. Uh, have a great show, and hopefully we'll see you over there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Thanks bye for coming. Sorry to keep you waiting. For some <laughs> um. So we, we've reached the end of our five-minute guest, but don't go anywhere yeah, because yeah, yeah. we're now chatting with Neil to um, the leadership team, I guess you could call them at NAB. Right, I, I, I think probably before we go there, we've got some um, thank yous to do for the team that have helped Matt and I put this together, yeah. so we should thank the Man and Marketing team. If you've been in the queue uh, to come on the show, uh, you've been apologies. <laughs> we are running about twenty minutes. Out. I think we've yeah. done quite well to catch up. I think we've done okay. Sort uh, of. But Man and Marketing have been helping us um, set up the show, organise social media. Yeah. You've been talking to um, Manor when you've been in the queue. John Pratchett, of course, has been behind the controls, doing what he does best. Um, check out his YouTube channel for everything streaming. Streaming tech is, I think he'll correct me if I'm wrong in my ear, but I think I'm right. Um, look up his channel. He's got some amazing videos on there for streaming. And he has promised, because there's been a bit of a hiatus, so he has promised to add some new content at some point in time. So maybe... Um, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. So, yeah, thank you to everyone. And, of course, thank you to NAB Amplify for... Um, for supporting the show yeah. and if you've been watching it on the Amplify website hopefully you found some really interesting content on there as well yeah so let's bring Neil back in well and hopefully uh, Eric and Chris somewhere Eric and Chris as well yep they're on they're their way, way. Um, it's been a good day Neil so it's been it? a great day it's, it's been a great day and it's been uh, so encouraging to hear that how enthusiastic everybody yeah. is that's about why we've overrun just because exactly. people have got so much to there say there's an element of enthusiasm <laughs> about getting back to not a new normal show a normal show a normal show with normal networking opportunities new tech yeah and all the additional things that uh NAB have put together for their centennial event as well. Yeah. So I think the the buzz is is huge this year, and I'm I'm so looking forward to the event. Yeah, itself. yeah, so yeah it's going to be yeah a normal event. Absolutely, <laughs> it's just going to be NAB show 2023. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we're just waiting for the guys to come in. What part of the states are they coming in from? Are they they're both on the east coast? So okay. Eric's um, up. Uh, in New Jersey, I suspect. Okay. Chris is just south of DC, so they're they're both. Obviously, the office are, offices are in DC, so they're both. And uh, what part of NAB part do these two guys play? Just give them a quick intro. Yes, so so NAB is broken into divisions, and this this division is called Global Connections and Events, and that's okay. the division that delivers the show, um, as well as other uh, initiatives. Uh, Chris Brown is the EVP and Managing Director. And Eric is essentially responsible for all business development and sales. Uh, so his, his title, I believe, is SVP and Chief Customer Success Officer. Oh. But really what that means is he runs the sales <laughs> team, <laughs> makes sure the thing is successful. And yeah. frankly, is, you know, behind what, what we're going to enjoy, you know, in, yeah, in yeah, a few yeah, weeks' yeah. time. So. Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. just waiting for the clogs of Zoom to, to work when they're yeah. transferred from the... Uh, the green yeah, room into, into saying that, you know it's it, it's it's the zoom is even though you know it's it's one of those technologies that is used at home we're using it here just simply because of the numbers that we're dealing with exactly. absolutely yeah and it's so fun. we've got the guys in hi welcome to the show guys how you doing hey how chris hey eric Great to hey, see you. Hey, Neil. How are you going? Good to see you. Good to see you too. We've done Good the afternoon. introductions while we were dealing with the technology <laughs> issues of getting uh, 
zoom across. Not that you need need any introduction, either of you, but the introductions have been made in your absence. So uh, <laughs> great to have you join us. Um, we've had a fabulous day here today. And uh, I think the big takeaway for the three of us has been the real enthusiasm and uh, optimism for, for the centennial NAB show, um, an event that everybody expects to be as good as everything we knew pre-pandemic. So it's great to feel that and to get that feedback from exhibitors and visitors alike. Um, I'm going to, well, I think the three of us are going to put questions to you if that's okay, but I suggest sure. we just, we just hit you with some general questions and then, mm -hmm. you know, just let you feedback with answers, you know, as you see fit. But to kick off, I mean, you know, as I, as I say, so much expectation for this show, the centennial year. What can attendees expect, both in terms of uh, on-floor um, exhibits and also in conference sessions, etc.? Well, uh, the good news is the uh, the short answer is uh, more. Um, and, and appreciate your comment, Neil, because uh, you know to hear people are excited is is great. Uh, things are shaping up really well, and and. Truly, if we can have half the energy and the, you know, just kind of sheer joy that people had last year, you know, being able to finally get back together uh, carried over this year, it'll be it'll be a great, great show. But but we are going to be bigger, which is uh, which is great uh, from an exhibits and exhibitor standpoint. Uh, Eric and his team have done a great job and have brought in another 250 uh, exhibitors to the mix. So we'll be up to about 1200 companies. Uh, which is uh, over 20% uh, uh, larger than than last year. So the footprint grows, a number of companies, which is all good news for everybody, right? More products, uh, more more uh, new introductions, all that sort of good stuff. Um, and uh, I'm going to let Eric just talk a little bit about some of the things, you know, and some of the highlights on the exhibit floor. I'll give you a quick rundown just on the on the education side. Uh, as you guys know, you know, we always do uh, a whole lot uh, relative to education, conference programs, workshops, uh, you name it. And, you know, this year's no exception. Uh, we've added some some content here as well. But, you know, our core structure is still uh, pretty much what people will be familiar with. Uh, we've got a core conference program just called very simply the NAB Show Conference that is built around uh, three tracks that, that that mimic or mirror our overall organization. And we'll talk a little bit more about that, but the three tracks are create, connect, and capitalize. Uh, so that is the, the main program for people who are really kind of looking to get a, you know, a look across the entire kind of media landscape. And then we have two uh, significant partner programs. One is uh, our uh, post-production world conference, which we've been doing in partnership with Future Media Concepts for probably uh, I think about 18 years now. I think it's been a long, long run. But that is a you know a, a hands-on learning conference, all about teaching folks the uh, the tips, tricks, and tools that they need to uh, to produce. Uh, and then uh, our other you know, key uh, partner program is the streaming summit, uh, which we which we uh, is is a little newer to the equation. Brought on board maybe a couple of years before we got uh, hit by the pandemic. Uh, we do that in partnership with Dan Rayburn, but that's a deep dive for people that are in that space and really want to understand everything from sort of tech to business models to you know consumer uh, trends. So. Uh, that is a, a strong and growing program for us. And then we'll talk, we can talk more about it if we have time, but we have a, we have that all, all by itself probably accounts for 300 to 400 sessions. Then we do a whole lot on the show floor and folks that went last year will remember this, but we have a number of theaters uh, on the show floor. That's probably another couple hundred sessions uh, that again, kind of organize around, create, connect and capitalize. Uh, so, and those are all three for folks who are on the floor. Uh, they're a little bit more short form, a little bit more practical hands on, um, but a, a whole lot of content for, for people. Uh, sometimes, you know, it can get a little bit overwhelming, but, uh, you know, my philosophy has always been let's give people lots of options, lots of things so that they can really customize their own, their own journey. And, and Eric, you want to talk about show side or floor side? 
Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that for a minute. Um, fellas, I just want to also, before I get into, you know, sort of all these other zones and, and how we designed the floor based on workflow, just congratulate the three of you for putting on a great event today. It's not easy to do the overview that that you intended to do here. Um, it's pretty, <laughs> you know, I know there's a hundred companies, but it, yeah. here, their enthusiasm yeah. and, um, and, and just, you know, getting through all of that, it's a, it's a really good job. So congratulations to, to both of you. Thank you to Jenny for helping us all to orchestrate all this. Um, I think it's really important, you know, that we have the ability now to highlight those companies. And in particular, you know, listening to a lot of your European and international um, exhibitors who, who are now coming back for the first time in three years and hearing their enthusiasm for coming back. And then, you know, to, to Chris's point about the way the, the floor is laid out, um, I heard several companies today talk about, hey, we're in this new location and this yeah. is different for us and those sorts of things. And so we were really mindful about how we were going to design this floor even before uh, the pandemic started, largely around the fact that, you know, the industry has been telling us we need to sort of create this better experience for us to bring us, to, to make the experience a little bit easier for us to navigate once we're on site. It's a big show. And uh, the exhibitor community has been saying the same thing. Help me bring buyers and sellers together better. I have four days. I want to make the most of it. So as yeah. Chris pointed out on the conference side, we've designed the, the content around create, connect, capitalize, and this new area intelligent content. And the goal there was to try to organize companies based on workflow. So that regardless of halls changing, incidentally, I should mention this year, just so everybody knows, we are utilizing the West Hall, the North Hall and the Central Hall. So, you know, I heard today again, some people say, well, South Hall is this, and we're used to being in South Hall. And, um, you know, we we, we know that this, this um, you know, our campus is going to change a bit over the next couple of years, but more importantly, listening and taking the insight from attendees and exhibitors about you know, how they need to find their way through the show. So we we lined up the conference side with the show floor side. So we feel like that experience can be better for both sides of the equation. And then we added on what we call these experiential zones. And so in each one of these areas, you'll find um, in Connect, you'll find an experience zone. And to Chris's point around these theaters, we've designed two types of theaters in each one of these zones. So one theater is more inspirational. It's meant to be sort of put your rock star in that location. The other is a little bit more intimate setting. It's meant to be talk about your innovation, talk about, um, you know, smaller, more sort of hands-on what's happening. And it's not really meant to fill more than maybe, let's say, 25 people. And then we have hands-on activities that are happening in the space too. So you have two theaters and then you have hands-on learning taking place. So some, for example, you know, with our partner, Ben Kozik at, at FMC, and that might be some editing. And then over in another space, we're working with AWS and they're bringing this thing called the Jam Session. And the Jam Session is a gamified learning experience where you get into this um, gaming environment and you learn practical skills on how to use uh, AWS services and 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 but it's done in a sort of fun and interactive yeah. way. And so we wanted to be able to bring things together that provided the community with, hey, I can get, um, I can discover in the space that I'm in, I can network in that space. And it's all sort of around my universe, right? Like if I'm a create professional and and I don't really, I don't really need to know about transmission related products then, you know, put all everything I need to know in one space. So I don't have to waste time going from yeah. one hall to the next to find what I need to know. Yeah. And and we found that that's, that's been a really good formula in 22. And then just building upon that again for, for 23 with just more and better and, 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 um, and different partners and different experiences. So there's, you know, we're, we're ending out your day long event here. We could literally spend another hour <laughs> and you guys are sure are ready to head to the, to the bar to get a pint. Yeah, <laughs> so, so, so why don't I stop talking and let you ask us some other well, questions. Well, I, I, I am interested to, with, with the, uh, the capitalized connect create zones when 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 visitors want to engage want to get involved is there a booking process for any of it or is it all just turn up and get in uh for the for the attendee um depends on the activity 
Um, if it's a theater experience, it's just turn up and yeah. uh, and you'll you'll probably be fine. Um, for some of the other experiences where you're you're expected to bring probably a laptop and uh, right. and there's a, there's a little bit of a registration process because there's limited seating in all of those spaces, but all of those other sort of hands-on activities do have um, do have a registration process, but it is all free. So you just just go to the site, find your way to those activities, and <clears throat> and and you yeah. can you know see the schedule and register for all those at no charge. And we, yeah, we we tried to make it as easy as possible. And is one additional note there: uh, there are a range of networking activities also built into those zones. Um, we have roundtables, which are facilitated discussions, uh, and then we have an NABIQ program, which is uh, sort of an idea hackathon, sort of a competition. Uh, type of networking event, if you will. Uh, last year, we probably over-engineered those, and we did have a booking process, and we had, you know, some hurdles that people needed to walk through. And, and I think what we found is, you know, that made it a little uh, imposing for people. So this year, for both of those roundtables or in a BIQ, if people find them on our schedule, they just need to add them to their planner and show up, and they'll be able to participate. So it should be an easier kind of in and out for, for people uh, in those zones. Cool. You've got another question? Sure. Yeah, I mean, one of the sort of key strengths of NAB Show, I would say, is its ability to sort of evolve and innovate. So can you just give us a, a, a taste of what's new at this year's event, things that we won't have seen in the past? Mm -hmm. Eric, uh, roll. Sure, I'll, I'll go first. Um, so we've been working on this concept for some time around the Hollywood community. And the idea was, what 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 does Hollywood need? What can we provide to this community that they're not getting anyplace else? And we had actually started this concept pre-pandemic, and, and we're now really excited we're able to execute on this. But this is the idea of bringing hands-on training to the show floor for people to participate in. So um, we've partnered with uh, organizations like the ASC and the SOC. So that's the American Society of Cinematographers, that's uh, the Society of Camera Operators. So the idea is to do training on the show floor, bring in everyday equipment, cranes, dollies, and replicate, you know, sort of the work that happens on set. And, and we've partnered with those companies to actually do the training and then integrate real life products. So um, this isn't something that's sort of just done, you know, in, in a classroom someplace. This is actually, you'll get to go on to the dolly, you'll get to move the camera, you'll get to move the crane, you'll get to see the shot. Um, this is different than we've ever done before. Again, bringing back more of this sort of hands-on experience that you that you can't get anyplace else. And um, we're really, it, it takes up a lot of square footage. Uh, we've partnered with a lot of companies to execute it. And then it also gives us the opportunity to work with our exhibitor partners who have their cutting edge technology integrated into the experience. So you'll get to see, you know, attendees will get to see how those products actually work in, in, an, in an entire workflow. Sometimes this is difficult to recreate, right? If you have a camera and it's just sitting someplace, it's like, oh, show me that camera in motion. Show me that camera under this sort of setting. This allows that to all happen now and, and have that camera operator sort of experience things differently. So we're, we're for that community, this is, this is groundbreaking for yeah. us. And yeah. we think we'll definitely bring bring them and engage them on the show floor. Cool. Neil, if I if I could jump in, Brooke, yeah. like there's the sort of and and improved side as well. Uh, we're doing some things that we've done before, but we've kind of changed up the approach. Uh, you will hear us, or you, I know you, you know it. You've known us long enough that you've heard some of our our, our language, and we probably overuse it. But we we are uh, uh, focused on curation, right? We're focused on trying to help people find their way to the things that matter to them. And so, uh, good example of of how we can help there are, are facilitated tours. So we have show floor tours. We did some of that in the past. We've now partnered with a new group, StoryTech, uh, who is a group that's done tours at CES. And hey, if you can do tours at CES, you can do tours anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they, um, and they have a great approach because they basically get the group uh, together ahead of time, do a briefing, uh, provide them uh, a white paper going in, and then take them through, uh, you know, a tour based on specific subjects. So they've got a data centric tour. 
they've got a production centric tour, uh, and then they have a kind of next gen tech kind of web three focused sort of tour, um, you know, which are all, you know, areas where folks could use a little guidance for sure. So, uh, you know, that again is something that we've just tried to take a different approach to do a little bit differently and a little bit better. And then the other thing too is networking. So, uh, we know that folks, you know, uh, very much value the network than they do at the show. And uh, we have tried to do more or tried to add more opportunities for people to network. So what you should see without going through all the different things, uh, you know, if you go to our site, you should see a lot more of those kinds of opportunities, both the facilitated kind that I just mentioned, but also just uh, social based on community. We've got, you know, pretty much daily happy hours in the zones. Uh, again, trying to bring together, uh, you know, like-minded people and uh, a whole range of other, uh, you know, social events and other activities that people can can kind of plug into to meet and network with others. Yeah, we're, we're running pretty tight on time. I've just, we probably got time for two more questions. I, w- I would like to ask something that's come up from a lot of people we've spoken to on sustainability and what they're doing to improve their their footprint, so to speak. What can what can we expect to see around the show on the topic of sustainability? As I say, we've only got a couple of minutes, so just a, a quick insight would be great. Yeah. So the big the big first new thing that I think has started our whole platform is the introduction of our Excellence and Sustainability Awards, and that's going to happen on Sunday at the main stage. And just to summarize real quick, the idea here was to celebrate the people, the organizations and the products that are making a difference today. And, and it's a responsibility. We took it seriously that as a show organizer, we, we have the ability to really, no pun intended, amplify the, the story around what these organizations, people, and products are doing to make a difference in our world today. And, and so this is a start. I think it's important just to take a, a first step to, to that effort. And hopefully this starts to highlight the work that all the people in this industry are, are doing and up until now, probably have gone a little bit unnoticed. So we're looking forward to celebrating, you know, their success yeah. with this main with this with this main stage program. And there's there's probably a half a dozen other sessions um, that are are related to at least the, that that we've seen that are related to this. And then whatever's going on with exhibitors in their booths around, you know, the introduction of those kinds of products. I think you'll I think you'll see a lot of it. Our insight showed us coming out of the last show that from an attendee perspective. Um, they're really looking toward, you know, solutions from our technology partners that are sustainable, that they can implement into their organizations right away, that that put them and meet these sustainability goals. So, um, yeah, we're looking forward to that and and hoping everybody can join us to celebrate everybody's success. With two minutes left. And, and very two quickly, we are. Oh, <laughs> go on. Yeah, I was go just going to say very quickly, we are we are also looking at how we can make the show itself sustainable. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we are taking you'll see some things happening this year that uh, are pointed toward that. Uh, there are steps. There's a lot more that we can and, and do need to do. But uh, it's an important initiative, an important focus for us. So you'll see more of that to come. Fantastic. Well, I think we we'd love to chat to you all uh, all evening yeah. here. You know, other than the fact the pub's calling, but uh, <laughs> um, just to, just to round off, then maybe you know this is but today's been all about the people and people's opinions and people's excitement. What what is it you know in a nutshell for each of you that you're most looking forward to about this year's show? Eric, you go. I'll think. <laughs> a minute um, each <laughs> yeah yeah i'll do it i mean just, even just listening today to what the exhibitors were talking about and their enthusiasm i think i'm just excited to welcome back some of the some of the community that has been that has been away that um are, that are coming back and that we can demonstrate you know how important this show is to them and to their their customers and so you know being part of that being part of the cycle um, being, being, being in the middle of all of this, it's really exciting. And then frankly, just celebrating all the hard work that this team, this show team has put out there the last 14 months to get this show back in the place that I think we're all going to be really proud of having this year. So, cool. um, I was looking forward to celebrating that with our team and, and the whole show community in general. Yeah. yeah and, and, uh, for me, um, 
speaking of the coming back theme, uh, it's exciting to kind of see international participation uh, in our registration counts looking really strong. Uh, I think you probably know last year uh, those numbers were, were actually better than we expected, but lower than, you know, a normal year, if you will. It yeah. looks like this year that number uh, so far our, our registration counts have shown uh, over 30 percent. Uh, coming from outside the U.S. We've got more official delegations than we've ever had, 53 at this point, and still still uh, adding more, 155 countries. Um, we've, got, we've, we've got ministers coming. I, part of that may be just that um, people are excited about the hundred, you know, the centennial and the celebrating of that. Uh, obviously, folks around the world, you know, appreciate, you know, history and that history. And so, uh, we're. I, I, I'm really excited to kind of see the international uh, participation coming back this year. Brilliant. We're done. Fantastic. Well, Chris, Eric, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for bearing with the overrun as well. But uh, that was just <laughs> yeah, a measure of the enthusiasm that. for the show, I think. So yeah. Oh, uh, oh, well done, and we really appreciate the partnership, guys. This has been fantastic. Yeah, it's been a good, good day. Um, once again, thank you to Man of Marketing for their support. Yep. Thank you to John, of course, as we said before, behind the controls. Thank you, Neil, for taking the strain off of myself and Matt on well, many thank occasions. You guys for, <laughs> thank you guys for how hard you've worked as well. I mean, it's been uh, it's been a privilege to be alongside you. Thank it's you. It's been good fun. So we've been Clip Plus TV. Do subscribe to the channel. We'll be doing loads over at the show, roaming the halls for the four or five days. So do subscribe to the channel. Check out the new website, kitplus.com. And uh, thank you for watching. Yes, thank you. Yeah, we can call it a day. See you next time.